Here on the Sunshine Coast, you'll find sunshine makes the sea sparkle. The skies pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger, moments longer, hearts beat fast, and time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment, for real. Today, Maruchidor Beach on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland. And things are only going to get even bigger with each passing day here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. Hello and good morning and welcome to day two of the Aussies. My name is Sam Jordan, sitting alongside an Aussies legend in Courtney Hancock. Courtney, it's only going to get bigger and bigger, isn't it? It certainly is. I've been watching what the weather's doing and, um, yeah, the swell looks like what we saw yesterday, how big it was and how challenging it was for the athletes. And... It's not going to slow down. Yeah, that's right. We do have a huge day of racing coming up with some really big races this morning. The Open Iron Women's Semis. The Open Iron Men Quarterfinals will be on the water as well shortly too. And the conditions are the big talking point today. Well, let's get straight into it and have a look at how they are. Josh Minogue is down on the beach. Josh, how is the beach looking? Thanks, Sam. Yeah, more of the same from yesterday. Plenty of swell around. The only thing that's changed, it's a little bit smaller than yesterday, but that swell period's closed up, so a little more consistent than the guys and girls saw yesterday at Maroochydore Beach. Tough out there at the moment. A little bit of rain overnight will make things very hot and humid here on the Sunshine Coast for the next couple of hours, but we're fired up and straight into it this morning. The Open Iron Woman semi-finals are on the line. A lot of nervous faces and a very tough way to start the day. Top eight will go through from both of these semi-finals into the final on Sunday afternoon. A couple of the big names already out in the heats yesterday. So all of it is on the line here this morning. Plenty of racing. We're going to wrap things up with some finals later on today as well. That's what we came for. Aussies 2024 is happening down here on the beach, and I'll bring you all the action from in the sand. Josh, you mentioned some of those nervous faces down there on the start line. What are we seeing at the moment in terms of the athletes getting ready? Because we're not far away from the start. Yeah, down here, a lot of back and forth between the officials. They're just trying to get even starts. This area, the pink arena that the uh, girls are in, out the front of Maruchidor Surf Club, traditionally the toughest area to race in. There's a lot of water movement out in front. Makes starting and finishing very, very hard. So a bit of back and forward between coaches, handlers, athletes and the officials just to make sure it's as even as possible. They're trying to sort of move the start line up and down the beach, but it makes things tough and that's the nature of surf. It's going to be a little bit unfair no matter where it goes, but they're just trying to get the fairest course possible down here. A couple of the old heads down here have been in these situations before, maybe offering some advice to the officials. I can see Lizzie Wellborn, Emma Woods, a couple of those other girls, Naomi Scott, the defending champion, just having a quick chat with the starter, making sure that they get off the line very, very even. And then you've got the second semi-final. I think they're in a better position because they get to watch the first semi. They get to make sure that they sort of see where the girls go and the lines that they take out to see, and they have that little bit more experience in in terms of racing what's happening today than this first semi. So it's all happening down here. The nerves are very, very high for day number two of the Open competition, but there is a lot on the line. A spot in that Open final is tough to come by. It's very coveted, and these girls, their entire season's coming down to this moment. Thank you, Josh. It's a big morning. We'll come back to you shortly. Courtney, we heard Josh speak there about some of the nervous pacing around from some of the athletes. It's a big race to have first up in the morning. What's going through your mind in this kind of position? When you look at the program for the Australian titles, you always, for the women, look for that semi-final of the Iron Woman. And it's always straight up, whether it's the Saturday morning, the Friday morning, and the girls, as Josh was saying, the nerves going about, you just want to be really ready to go. I think that's the best tip I could give because straight up sometimes you might feel a little bit funky. And, and obviously from yesterday it was such a big day at the beach, so a bit of an overlap of you know sore legs and heavy legs. But today... They've got to get themselves, they've got to book that ticket for that Sunday. So the girls, they're going to treat this like a final and absolutely go for it. I was just looking at the two semis and 
I guess when you talk about seeding semis, they look pretty even at the moment. We obviously had Brielle Cooper and also Emily Doyle miss out last year, so they will be devastated. Those two girls, very, very good in the big swell, but we've got, you know, looking at semi number one there, Harriet Brown, Lizzie Wellborn, Emma Woods was going really well yesterday, Gemma Smith-Welsh, Bella Williams, Hannah Scully, Naomi Scott in the first one. She's obviously our defending champion, so they look pretty even at the moment. Yeah, that's right. We will bring you a full start list in just a moment. You can see that semi-final number one getting their last instructions from the starter. Courtney, Josh did mention the conditions out there. We're about to get a really good look at those as well. But that swell period has shortened a little bit, maybe a little bit smaller at the moment. But there is still plenty for these athletes to try and figure out. We will bring you that start list now because these are the 30 best iron women in the country. Two semi-finals of 15 and this is the start list for heat number one. In position one is Harriet Brown from Northcliffe, Georgia Singleton from Manly, Michaela Whitney from Currawa, Lizzie Wellborn from Newport, Holly Main from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Piper Harrison from Newport, Brody Trinker from Southport in Queensland, Claudia Rose Slaven from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Emma Woods from Alexandra Headland, Gemma Smith Welsh from Sunshine Beach, Bella Williams from Northcliffe, Naomi Scott, the defending champion from Northcliffe. Madeline Thompson from Mermaid Beach, Grace Otto from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, and Hannah Scully from Northcliffe. And now they are entering the water. The order is ski, board, swim in the iron events here at the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships for 2024. And in just a few minutes' time, we'll have eight finalists in the Open Iron Woman. How nervous are these moments, Cor? Oh, it makes me think back. <laughs> you, feel, <laughs> you feel sick in your stomach because... If you're lining up and, you know, as you said, you've got the best girls here in Australia, in the world. And, and just as we saw yesterday, those one little slip-ups can certainly just, you know, either, you know, be that top eight or that back top eight. So at the moment, we can just see the, the starters. It's a very tough, I get a very tough job for them to try and get this even. Uh, but at the moment, the girls will definitely be just holding their skis tight there, keeping it straight, and definitely the nerves will be about for not only themselves, but also their handlers and coaches. And you can see that water really moving in that gutter at the moment. Uh, there is so much water going from side to side and trying to get that ski held straight because it is all about not making mistakes when you're paddling, mistake-free racing to start this Iron Woman event because... Gee, one little slip up here. We saw it in those earlier rounds yesterday. It could be insurmountable in terms of coming back. So the starter just trying to line them up at the moment. Some of those girls just creeping a little bit further forward on that bank. Looks like it's a little bit shallow on the right-hand side, but there is that gutter, uh, that rip rather, uh, on that right-hand side just through the shore there. So much water moving. So we do not envy the job of the starter today. No, certainly not. I'm just having a look, and you can see Harriet Brown. She's on the northern side, and she looks... Just her skis very straight, not moving. Then we see Hannah Scully and Grace Otto, and here they offer a start that they just had a little bit more water movement, but here we go, they've got to get straight into it. And it looks like they did get in clean. Lizzie Wellborn on that yellow ski, four in from the right-hand side, making a strong start. But at the moment, it is relatively even going too. Bella Williams looks like she is moving really well at the moment. And there on the far right-hand side of screen, Harriet Brown, She's found herself some clean water, which can be so important and also give you a bit of peace of mind too, Cor. Yeah, definitely at the moment we can see the northern side and the southern side got out the best. That was Harriet Brown and also Hannah Scully, both from Northcliffe. And at the middle, you just saw Lizzie Wellborn. She almost had a look out and saw there was maybe a few more waves in the middle there. So she just absolutely went for it. And, and these girls, as we've seen it so many times on day one, and see Lizzie Wellborn on the bottom of the screen, they're going for it. Now she sees something, a window. Hannah Scully out on that southern side just got absolutely pounding for everyone watching when you get hit in that chest on the wave it almost kind of wins you got to take a big breath and get that next stroke going it is a solid set that he's rolling through at the moment but it looks as though harriet brown is going to get out the back lizzie wellborn back shot there in her ski and it looked as though michaela whitney came out harriet brown is out the back she did sneak around that set and that is a really big advantage to open up what is going to be a really gruelling race. But who else will be able to get out the back as well? Piper Harrison is off her ski. She's upside down at the moment. That is Lizzie Wellborn on the yellow ski. She's now fallen in as well. Just when it looked like she was out the back, she has slipped out of her ski. Another costly mistake at the moment as these waves continue to drill this liner. Oh, it is insane out there, isn't it? Oh, that, I think that may be Lizzie Wellborn's ski on screen, as we can see at the moment, and that would be absolutely devastating. Lizzie's got to get back in, get on 
Hopefully she's got a paddle in her hand. Get on her ski because she's still not out of it. There's eight going through, so we just hope for Lizzie Wellborn because she, I said it yesterday, she was, you know, looking to be one of the, the favourites that for is, that Ironwoman final. That is a huge moment here at the Australian Championships. Lizzie Wellborn losing her ski after slipping out as she tried to make her way through that break, but this is the race for the front at the moment. We'll keep an eye on Lizzie. Harriet Brown has a one can length lead as she makes her way back in. You can see Emma Woods did a really good job of punching through all of those ways too because there was nowhere to move for her. And we have seen today already what Marucci or Betch is offering. So Lizzie Wellborn on the yellow, she ducks that way. She got driven all the way back and did all the hard work to keep going after that. It was when she got out the back court, just when she thought she was safe, she did slip out. It was just a difference, wasn't there, for Lizzie. She just, looking at the start of that, you definitely saw that, that left-hand side where Harriet was. That was the clearing. But good on Harriet. She took that window and she absolutely went for it. She was very brave and just absolutely flew. But in the middle there, Lizzie, I thought she worked really, really well to give herself that opportunity on the left. But unfortunately, as we see on screen, Harriet's really setting herself up nicely. And Harriet hasn't won an Australian Iron Woman title before. And I tell you what, this being potentially her last ever time we'll ever see her doing the Iron Woman. How nice would that be for her? Well, she's doing everything perfect at the moment. A nice little small run to bring her back in because there are some sets building and it's going to be really interesting to see who takes the waves on the way in. Emma Woods gets a little one in. It looks like Brody Trinker behind her as well from Southport. Brody is going to have to go to try and hold this ski. It's starting to go sideways at the moment. Emma Woods, though, is on her way back in expertly done. Now there's some even bigger waves starting to stand up. Court, do you take it or do you not? I noticed a couple of girls actually sat up the back and they were waiting but I felt like they should have gone because they were actually smaller than the ones that were out the, behind them. So you just got to be super aware of what the what the swell's doing. Have a look at it before you go and try and count those number of waves, which one's going to be the biggest. But Emma Woods looked fantastic. She, You can tell she really thrives in this big surf. She body surfed incredible yesterday. So she won't be slowing down as well as Harry. As you can see, Harry is on a mission to get on that board, get out there, because when we get into the swim leg, there was athletes that were catching waves from that back string can. Yeah, that's right. You can see a pink ski there. I do believe that was Brody Trinket. We saw her start to go sideways a little bit earlier. Gemma Smith Welsh starting to run up now as well. We will keep an eye on what's happening out the back. That's Piper Harrison. She's catching her ski like a lay down <laughs> paddleboard. It looks like her paddle was about 10 metres behind her. So she's made the decision to leave it at the moment, which is a big call because, you know, it's all about getting back to that beach now as quickly as you can. Ski, board, swim is the order. Now, you would say ski is probably the most challenging leg to have in this surf, but you mentioned the body waves that are on offer. You can get those from a long way back. So, Court, what are these girls trying to think at the moment who are outside of that top eight, of that cut zone, as they make their way into the board leg? Well, as we can see, Harriet Brown and Emma Woods, they had a good, solid lead. That's where you want to be at the moment. That's the spot to be. These girls here, because there's only go eight going through, so two are out. We've got six more to come. You've also got Lizzie Wellborn that will be hunting these girls down. So they really, as we see up the top there, there, we think that, believe that might be Lizzie Wellborn. So she is still there, but she's going to have to work very hard. But for these girls now, the board is slower than the ski. And so they are going to have to really, really get moving. Because I noticed yesterday... It wasn't where people could win the race, but it was certainly where they could lose it in this board leg right now. Yeah, so that was Piper Harrison who just picked up that board and started running in. We thought it might have been Lizzie Wellborn. We don't have sight of it yet. Josh, what can you see down on the beach? Born just came all the way back to the beach, grabbed her ski, went out again, and I think she's going to sneak through maybe. There's a couple of big sets out there. Hers is the lone board left on the line here. We had basically 10 girls stay upright on the ski on the way around. The rest of them all had a swim at different points. Brody Trinker, uh, Hannah Scully as well. Nomi Scott had a swim. Piper Harrison had a swim. So a lot of the big guns you'd expect to be in that final and probably a few favourites for the final, not even getting around. And the tough part for the girls, it's difficult to get out but I think coming in is all even more problematic because if you go sideways and you get go down the mine on one of those that ski is gone and it will continue to run away from you and you're going to add an extra swim leg into this iron woman race and that's not what you want to do Josh we're seeing the field getting smashed by some waves on the board at the moment is there a right line to be taking out the back it looks as though it's a bit of a lottery 
Yeah, it's really tough. Definitely the far right-hand side as you look at it early on. That water's sucking back out. But once you get to the bank, it all just depends on what's coming through at the time. A few of the girls have snuck out on the left-hand side. A few of the girls have snuck out on the right. I think the only guarantee is you don't want to be bang in the middle. You've really got to roll the dice, take a risk, and go one way or the other. Thank you, Josh. We'll come back down to you shortly. Wow, you could see Claudia Rose Slavin on that red board there. She had to paddle around a couple of bigger waves then because that was solid stuff on the board. And this was the inner short up that caused plenty of cut. That's not even the back break. Yeah, you can see the boards getting thrown around on top of each other too, the club mates Great getting in cutters. each other's way. Gee, it is really tricky out there. It really is, and you've really got to keep your craft nice and straight. You've got to be super aggressive. So if you're feeling really tired, don't worry about that. You've got to make sure you get out the back, get going. And if you want to have a breather, it certainly has to be at the back of those cans. But on screen at the moment, we have Emma Woods and Harriet Brown. They're setting the pace for this first semi-final of the Ironwoman. And I was going to say, we should ask Josh next time. I would love to know the girls' faces that are on the beach for semi number two <laughs> because I always remember... You know, when we were racing Australian tyres at Curra, when you'd look out and you see some of the top athletes losing their skis and, and the nerves kind of go that, you know, that second level up. But at the moment, these two girls, they haven't booked their tickets yet, but they're certainly the place you want to be. So it's Harriet Brown from Northcliffe and Emma Woods from Alexandra Headland comfortably out in front at the moment. This is a chase pack that we do have on screen. And they are doing a good job of chasing as well because that gap is starting to close, but the field is stringing out further and further. Emma Woods is trying to get down a little wave at the moment. She doesn't, but I don't think she'll be too stressed about that because it is a comfortable margin. They now need to think about getting around cleaning that swim and ideally not having to swim the whole way in is what they would be hoping for, right? Definitely, yeah. You want to try and set yourself up and get a wave. and. You want to kind of, I guess, have a little look behind. I wouldn't usually say this, but have a little look behind. As you can see, this is the open women's. These girls are in the Nutri-Grain, and you just see how challenging it is for them. And I just feel at the moment Harriet's working hard, Emma Woods working hard, but Emma Woods is really shining out at the moment. She just looks really relaxed. And I think when you go into big surf, and, you know, there's no point getting, I guess, you know, feeling a little bit stressed and everything like that because all you can do is... Try and make your own luck out there. Read the surf as best as you can and really thrive off it, and that's what she's doing. So that was our chase pack that we had there. Claudia Rose Slavin, I believe that's Grace Otto in the middle, and also Hannah Scully as well, someone who does love racing in surf too, and you can see it on show at the moment. But when they went into that board leg, that was about a group of 10. Now there's only three of them. This is the rest of the chase pack, which only three of these athletes, if the top five were to stay in front, would be able to go through and they're all about to come back together now as well as the set starts to stand up these are our leaders making their way out into the water for the final leg the swim in these wild conditions here for richard or beach and it is going to come right down to the wire we know that it certainly is and i know someone like harry brown she'd be absolutely loving these conditions it's it's looking like kind of a 14 minute race so we turn, definitely turn into the athletes their body goes into endurance mode but for Piper Harris and Lizzie Wellborn, we can't see them on screen at the moment. They are our nutri grain athlete girls from the season, so they are certainly going to have to put in a huge swim. I, they not, I know they've got it in them because they are extremely fit, but they are really going to have to push because only eight going through and everyone really wants to be there to have the opportunity to be crowned Australian Ironwoman champion. I think, I don't want to speak too early, but that looks as though it could have been Piper Harrison on the right-hand side of that wave. Just hard to pick out those caps in the sun at the moment. So she may well be back in contention, but... A club mate, the big story here this morning to start day two is Lizzie Wellborn is still a long way off the back of that top eight at the moment. Anything can happen in an iron race, especially in conditions like these, so we will watch with interest. That is Piper Harrison there running around that transition flag ahead of Naomi Scott. Bella Williams also there. A really strong swim pack we're starting to see form there as they hunt down those top eight. The Kayla Whitney and Gemma Smith-Welch as well. Caught... We're starting to see some different lines from these ladies as they run into the water for the swim. It's a big call to make at this point of the race. It certainly is. I just see Gemma Welsh-Schmidt. She's going down there. She's following Wes Berg, I see, pointing out. And he is certainly extremely good in the surf. Yeah. So I'd certainly be trusting uh, Wes Berg where he points out. But we'll just go down to Josh. And can you tell us what's going on, especially that second semi looking out and watching? Yeah, I'm down here with listening to Kelly. Emma Woods' handler. Woods is doing a great job out there, but it must be stressful for you guys on the beach. Obviously, big surf, but she's handling it well. Look, I think Woods are in the surf. She, time and time again, shows that she's there. She's competitive. She always sneaks through. It's not luck, it's skill. Yeah, that's exactly right. And sitting pretty going into this swim, but there's still a hell of a lot of racing to go. 
I think it's really easy to get sucked back into that rip this morning, so I think it's just picking your line back in, and she knows where to swim. So. Is that the instruction heading into that final leg? Definitely. I told her a spot to pick on the beach, but she knows what she's doing. So. What about yourself? You're out there in the ski race as well. You're in the ski final later on this weekend. How tough is it out there from somebody who's experienced it? I think, like, you just got to bide your time out there. Like, you can't be too silly. If, if a wave's coming, you just got to wait. And I think, like, there is luck, but also there's a lot of skill out there. Well, good luck for the ski final. Good luck for Woods and this one as well. She's doing well so far. Yeah, she's great. She's the fittest she's ever been, so... Go Woodsa. Love it. We love to see it there. Guys, the girls are into that swim. They're working very, very hard, but it's tough out there on that back bank. A lot of water moving, and as Lucinda said, the real danger is swimming back into that rip. And as I speak, Lizzie Wellborn's just got a wave all the way back in. She's a long, long way down from the top eight at the moment, but to be completely honest, she's probably not out of it. One big wave from the back of the break could be something to get her into this one. So it might be a miracle, but stranger things have happened down here at the Aussie titles. Okay, so that is something to keep an eye on as they go into this final swim leg. Harriet Brown, our current leader, is on screen at the moment. She has raced the perfect race from start to finish at the moment, Courtney. And now she gets the luxury of trying to pick a wave and trying to pick her line on the way back in and not having the pressure of the field beating down on her. Absolutely. If you can set yourself up in this semi-final, it's, as we are saying before, just the nerves. And a lot of the girls may not have had a very good sleep last night just thinking about this race. But Harriet set herself up and, and we can, you know, pretty much say these two on the screen right now, these ladies are going to be in the final. They both deserved it. They really, really, from that start, they went for it. They didn't muck around and they didn't have any fear either. I think a lot of the time when you go into big surf, if you have that little bit of fear... I tell you what, that can be, and, and as we heard from Lucinda Kelly before, it's, you know, Emma Woods, Harry Brown, they certainly didn't have that fear, they went for it, and they trusted their skill. Well, it's a really good point, because they were in different positions on the start line, Harriet was number one, she snuck around a set on the left, but she saw that set coming and still went for it, Emma Woods, well, she did it the hard way and punched straight through the waves in the middle, <laughs> they were rewarded for their aggression. It's a bit of a boxing match out there, isn't it? You with no one else, obviously, but you and, and the surf. And, and that's a, a, absolutely right. These two athletes, they just went for it. And if you, I guess when you're on the line, you have to think, I've been training for this since the 1st of June last year, and, and I want to be in that final. Because if you're in that, I can promise you, if you get to the finals of any Australian title event this week, you have an opportunity to win. Anyone out there, you've just got to back yourself. And, and that's what these two girls did. And we can see at the moment you've got... In that pack, we saw Bella Williams. There was also Hannah Scully, Claudia rose slave and she's been absolutely swimming incredible. Holly Maine, she's also in there as well. And, and the, the numbers add up really, really quickly, don't they? So I think we may see that could be Hannah Scully coming around now. So it's... Um, or Naomi Scott. Sorry, that is Naomi Scott out there as well. She's a little bit further back than what I thought she'd be, but... She's definitely in that top eight at the moment. And it looks as though she's going for it in that swim definitely. too because she knows that she's currently in sixth place, top eight to go through to the final, and you don't want to take any chances. Interesting what we're seeing on screen at the moment. That's Harriet Brown and Emma Woods, our two leaders. They are a lot further in, but it looks like they're going to have to swim most no of the way back in. Harriet now sitting up. Maybe there is a wave coming. That's exactly what they want to get them to the beach. Emma Woods goes down the face. Will she be able to hold that wave? It looks as though that she has been lost in the white water there. We were trying, will try and pick her up. Gee, she couldn't have swum out of that, could she, Court? Oh, I saw her catch a wave yesterday, and we'll just see. We'll try and get a replay here at the moment. Here's Emma Woods coming down. There's Harriet Brown just waiting to sit up the top. Emma Woods is definitely one of the best body surfers in the open female at the moment. So here she goes. Anyone watching, she just plants herself, setting herself up. And this is the hardest bit. This is where you really want to drop out. She got one more stroke in there, and... We certainly didn't see her for, you know, it would have been a good five seconds or so. So we'll see where she pops out. We're hoping she pops out the front of that. And Harriet, unfortunately, leading that race, she'll um, just have to settle for another one. Here we go, Emma Woods on screen. Well done. Great body surfing. She's held it through, Court. Yeah, I'm not surprised. She's got a really great one yesterday in the quarterfinal. And this girl on screen, everyone, I tell you what, she's going for one of the favourites. She is in form and um, looking very, very good for Sunday. And another athlete gets away from out the back as well. We will try and see who that is, but that's a great body wave that might bring them all the way through. In fact, that could have been Harriet Brown who chose to sit and wait out there for a body wave to come through. But Emma Woods, on each of the three legs, she looked right at home here at Maroochydore Beach, and she is going to take out semi-final number one and be the first athlete to book their place into the final. But now the race 
is starting to heat up. No, it looks like Harriet Brown has come through. So maybe Emma Woods didn't quite hold that wave as long as she wanted. Harriet Brown able to take one all the way through to the beach. Either way, both Woods and Brown are through to Sunday's decider. This is where the big race is starting to stand up. Naomi Scott makes another one. That was a really strong body wave that we did see from Naomi Scott when she came through. So she's currently somewhere around third, perhaps. But the race is starting to heat up court. Now the tension is starting to rise as well. I just remember these moments. This is where the handlers start to go, you're in fourth, you know, eight, <laughs> eight, 20 metres behind you. But at the moment, we've got Harriet Browns come through. Emma Woods, Hannah Scully, she can definitely body surf, but all the other girls, Gemma Smith, Wells on screen at the moment, they will kind of be just try, frantically trying to get in as fast as you can because you know what it's like when you're out there swimming. Waves come over. You don't know who's body surf. There's Cla Claudia Rose Slave, and she's in very good form at the moment, second in the Queensland tiles recently. So we'll wait and see, but here we go. And can we see a Lizzie Wellborn and Papa Harrison? Well, Claudia Rose Slave makes five. So that was five across the line of booking their place. Six will be Gemma Smith. Well, she's a huge smile on her face and a big round of applause from her handler. She is into the open iron win final for Sunday. And now we have a sprint starting to line up as well. It looks as though Naomi Scott is going to have to put the head down. Bella Williams may be coming through for position number seven or eight. We don't want to call it yet because there was a little bit of confusion. Piper Harrison, after that horror start when she did fall off her ski, she has come all the way back, but I think she might be finishing in ninth, which would have her one outside the top eight. We will bring you those official results in just a moment, but for now, let's head back down to Josh Minogue on the bench. Hello, guys. Thank you. I've got winner of that semi-final down there, Harriet Brown. Harriet, I said to you then, was it stressful or just really, really tough? Um, it wasn't too stressful towards the end. I think once you get off that craft, there's a little bit lower risk of nose diving, losing your ski, that kind of thing. So once the ski was over and I actually got out really well, I think I was a bit lucky on the start then. Um, it felt a lot easier after that. Was it luck or skill? I think it's a little bit of both, actually. I think you definitely need the skill, um, but the luck definitely helped me out there. I think it's going to be like that all week. It's just all over the place. You just have to make the most of the luck or that little opening that you get and go for it. On the tail end of the career, I guess the experience plays into it a little bit more as opposed to a couple of these younger girls who are, I'll take anything, I'll send anything. You look like you played it safety, safety in the last half of that race. Yeah, I definitely played it safe. I tried to lower my intensity just so that I'm better at making good decisions. And I think that's something that I've taken a long time to get good at. 10 years ago, I would have just charged anything and probably fallen off. Um, but now I'm trying to be a lot better at making those choices and it, and it pays off. <laughs> last uh, last Aussie titles as a professional athlete, not your last one ever, but is there a little bit more emotion around this one? Oh, definitely. I mean, I love this sport. I love racing. I've dedicated so much of my life to it. We get up every morning, 4.30, train hard three times a day. Floody at BMD North has got us going so hard. It's awesome. Um, I'm definitely going to miss it. But I think the best thing about Surf Life Saving Club is, is you can always come back and it's open to anyone. You can come back and whether it's masters or come in a team race or just have a go at the board race, I think that's the greatest thing about it. It's such a good community sport. And a ticket to Sunday, what would it mean to win? Oh my God, it would be everything. I've come second in the iron at Aussies. I've come third. Um, I've never won. I would love it, but <laughs> the girls are going so good at the moment. I train with them every day, and I see firsthand how quick they are, so um, I would need a little bit of luck and to use all my skill. <laughs> well, you're the crowd favourite down here. Good luck on Sunday. Harry Brown first through that Iron Woman final. Congratulations. Thanks, Joshy. Thank you very much, Josh, and congratulations, Harriet, winner of semi-final number one in the open eye moment. And here's how the results did fall through to the final. Brown, Woods, Scully, Rose Slaven, Smith, Welch, Scott, Williams, and Otto are our top eight. Piper Harrison from Newport, after coming off her ski and doing so unbelievably well to fight back, she finishes in ninth. Brody Trinkin from Southport was tenth. Oh, that was... That was brutal, wasn't it? We saw a couple of the top girls, you know, especially looking at Lizzie Wellborn. She's been up the front for many years, and I know how much it would have meant to her to win that. So there's a lot of broken hearts out there, but here we go. We move on to the second semi final with Olivia Corrin, Lucy Derbyshire, Sarah Sataki, Lily Fanati, Holly Hosby, Tiani Massey. She is on her local beach there. We go Charlotte Cross, Pack Pack, Stitt. Outram, again, this one is looking very, very tough as well. And, and we saw just on that 
that again where Harriet Brown was. Olivia Corrin, if it's going off what the first semi was, she is sitting in the box seat at the moment. And our last five athletes on that start line as well. Annalise Kibble from Newport, Georgia Miller from Northcliffe, Gemma Smith from Newport, Lana Rogers from Northcliffe and Lily O'Sullivan from Burley Heads, Mowbray Park. There are no easy semis, but this is stacked full with superstars. And after watching that first race this morning, we do know that some athletes will miss the cut. And now is their chance to qualify through to Sunday's Open Iron Woman final here at the Australian Championships. An even start across the board, but now there is some sure breaks starting to come through. Gemma Smith from Newport, she's won Australian ski titles. She just got driven right back. And so too did Dominic Stitt from Mooloolabar as well. It is the right-hand side of the line who has the best of it at the moment. And at the front, that is Tiani Massey. Yeah, I spoke to Tiani yesterday, and she just is fired up and ready to go. And again, she's like Emma Woods. She's just coming to form really, really well. Lana Rogers got ninth and did a sprint finish to get into this. So she'll be making sure she doesn't muck around the start. But I thought what I took from Harry's interview, which was really interesting, she said that she lowered the intensity. Um, so that she could actually make better decisions in herself. And I think she's an experienced athlete, and I think listening to that, I think she's very, very correct on that because when you are tired, not that you make silly decisions necessarily, but you're just not as sharp. And as we see, Lucy Derbyshire and looks like Olivia Corrin, they were paddling so well out in front there, and they have just been absolutely smacked. They have had to roll a wave, and so too have some more athletes. Tiani Massey coming off her scale along with three others as a huge wave comes through here in Maruchidor Beach. No one is out the back at the moment. Our current leader, whoever that was, has just jumped in and rolled their ski as well. There is absolute carnage. And what it does mean is that after an incredible flying start from all of our athletes on that uh, northern side of the line, it is now even again, which is great news for the likes of Georgia Miller and Gemma Smith, Lana Rogers, because they were a long way back off that start. And just like that, the race has been flipped on its head. It looked as though no one lost their ski. Tiani Massey there, she was our leader. She's back in the boat and moving now. Absolutely. Um, definitely the girls got hit at the start. They were actually quite fortunate. Um, as Harriet was saying, you need a tiny bit of tiny bit of um, luck out there and, and they just were a long way behind and got hit and as we can see this replay in the northern side Sam we've got Tiani and then we've got we're just about to wait you see Lucy Derbyshire in the blue Olivia Corrin's north side and they just get scooped it might be this next one coming through and it just was a huge wave wasn't it good on the girls for charging and a bit quick decision to roll there from Olivia Corrin and Lucy Derbyshire some of them getting around the outside but the next couple of waves cleaned them all up as well Derbyshire and Corrin doing so well to hold their skis look at that one Tiani Massey ducking through but she wasn't able to stay in her ski everyone has done so well to hold on to their craft because that was brutal and that's just one half of the ski leg as well now they have to make it back in court the skills out there are incredible especially seeing um, I have to Lucy Derbyshire, Liv Corrin, that role was incredible. And also Tiani Massey absolutely charging through that. That would have been a, a six foot, five, six foot wave out there. So it's um, the girls, they really, really want to get into the final. As we can see up the front at the moment, Lana Rogers, Georgia Miller, and Dominic Stitt out the front. And Stitt, I believe, was the one who was hit on that first short up. So she went from the back of the field right through to the front. We can see Gemma Smith making her way around the cans as well. She's won an Australian surf ski title. She's the World Ocean Ski Champion. She didn't make yesterday's ski final as well when she was cleaned up. So when you see the likes of Gemma Smith in that pack as well, you know that it really is challenging conditions out there. It looks as though it's a nice way for our leaders at the moment. Will they be taking it? It looks as though a leg's starting to go off the back, but now it's time to paddle if they are going to make that decision because I'm sure there will be another wave coming from behind. So it's Rogers and Miller, just like we've seen all season. They are battling it out in front. Miller sitting on top of that wave. She chooses not to take it. So Electra Outram goes down the face. Lana Rogers doing well to keep her ski straight. It is Rogers and Outram is off her ski just as when she appeared onto that lead wave. She has come out. We'll need to get back in and keep moving. She's done well to hold the ski, but here comes that next wave. It is all happening at the moment as more competitors come out of their craft. I think that might be O'Sullivan from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. Look at the water that is moving across the bank. It is very tricky conditions. It is really tricky. And again, we haven't seen big swell in the Australian Times for a while. And this is really where 
I, you know, you're going to be challenged for your skills, and especially coming in there on the ski. So a few of the girls out the back have to take more of the bigger waves. Lana Rogers got a small one, held it very well. But when you're a bit further back, you put that pressure on yourself that you do have to take the waves to try and catch up and make those meters. And as we see on screen at the moment, Annalise Kibble, she's she's very good in the swells. Well, Electra Alsham came back very well. Dominic Stitch has got Reese Drury there handling for us. She was really, really good in the quarterfinal as well. I also noticed Carla Packpack's in good form. She's obviously got Darren and uh, Jordan Mercer as well, so they'll be giving us some good tips. But we haven't seen Olivia Corrin, Lucy Derbyshire, or Georgia Miller at the moment come in. Yeah, that's right. That big wave cleaning up Olivia Corrin, forced to roll. That was one of the heavier waves that we have seen come through today, and it landed right on her head as well. So that is a big story. As the field heads into the second leg of this second Open Iron Woman semi, the board, and this is the back markers, just trying to make their way out at the moment. And they're still within range as well, because from what we saw from that first semi, Piper Harrison was a long way back. She came back down to a sprint finish to get through. So how important is it, Courtney, not to let the stress get to you, not to let that adrenaline get to you uh, as they start to make their way out? Yeah, you really, really got to relax and just focus on you as well. You can't worry about anyone around you. But I'd love to know what Josh's thoughts are down on the beach. Yeah, we just saw come through there. I think Olivia Corrin in 14th place, Lily O'Sullivan in 13th place. Georgia Miller sitting pretty in that top four. We just skipped her as she went through. But a couple of the big guns who we really expect to be in that final are right in the red zone right now. Lily Fanati, the last of the girls, has just gone in on the board and they're all getting hit on that back bank there. A lot of the girls come around. A few had a smile on their face because they know the pressure's off. If you can pick the right line and get around from this point, just you might do a little bit better than they've done on the ski all day in terms of board swim so I think a few of the girls the, the tactics survived the ski and then the race starts at the board leg so a few of those girls looking very confident going in a couple of little rattled after having a few swims but Electra Outram and Dom Stitt did a fantastic job getting back on their ski after having multiple swims early on in that ski leg. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, that field is starting to come back together even further now. We did have Rogers, Massey and Miller get out the back on that board, but the rest are now rolling waves and popping waves in that bank, and all of a sudden, that fight for the top eight is well and truly alive once again. I think when you do have, you know, swell like this, and a, a lot of people talk about the luck involved, I'm still a believer in you do make your own luck, and at the moment, the cream is rising to the top. We do have Lana Rogers. She found a way, even though she got nine to get herself here. Georgia Miller got hit at the start. She's found a way as well. And Tiani Massey, early on, as we can see, she absolutely got flogged in that in that in that center of the field at the start of the ski. So, and she just kept, you know, charging and charging. So you do see the cream rising to the top. And I think with today, any one race, you've just got to get yourself there and keep putting yourself in the right position. And with Lana Rogers, Lana Rogers on screen right now, she learned her lesson yesterday. She got back and she, you know, she lost her ski and had to swim in. But if you can keep putting yourself up at the pointy end of the field, you're going to make that top eight and you're going to be up the front every single time. Which is a really important lesson as well, isn't it, Courtney? In that, you know, I think a lot of people have the idea, particularly younger athletes, that when there's big waves and people say that you need to pick your moment, that you know, you hang a long way back. And, oh, it looks as though we've got a little bit of carnage at the can. Annalise Kibble has had to sit up on her board to get around that can. She very all much, very uh, nearly missed that, rather. There actually is a lot of water moving out the back. We saw it in some of those double ski races yesterday, too. Competitors missing that turning marker. It's a really important thing, which when you do get tired like this, it's very easy to get wrong. We can see some sets starting to come through on the board now as well. Will our leaders be taking those waves? That's the decision. We were chatting about that. Oh, Tiani Massey is now starting to push down the front of one of these waves, and it's a nice way for her to come back to the beach as well and get a little rest before she heads into the swim court. Yeah, Tiani just looks so comfortable, doesn't she? You just saw her. She just kind of sat back up and was almost she was enjoying being here at her local beach. She knows these waves so well, and she just looks looks so comfortable. So I think for Tiani, you know, she hasn't booked her place yet, but she's certainly looking the goods. But going back to that string can. Uh, the water is moving, but also these girls know there's only eight through, so they're not giving any anyone an inch out there, and so that's why we saw a bit of a push and shove. And unfortunately, for Annalise, she's um, yeah really got to try and hold her space that next time going around the swim. But here we are. This is where it starts to get really, really tricky. And it's time to take a set if it is coming through. We can see our field. Will they be able to hold that wave on the board as well? It's a big moment. 
in the course of the race. It did not pick up Gemma Smith. She was on the right of frame. Carla Papik on the left did get down one of those ways, and it is all about getting into the top eight, which is what the field is starting to do at the moment. We have Dom Stitt there on that wave as well. There's Gemma Smith. Looks as though that is Lucy Derbyshire as well, fighting her way back in. They were really important waves because it went from about 10 athletes now to another strung out field in the battle for that top eight. Court, just coming back to what we were saying about Tiani Massey before, she's continually put herself in the positions to get through those waves, which is a big difference to what some people think you should do in surf, which is hang back and wait for the ocean to go flat. I guess in conditions like these, it's not going to go flat at any point. So it is that balance ride of making sure that you're close enough and, and you have that aggression to get through when it opens up. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you've really got to back yourself and, uh, and back, you know, that you do paddle a ski every single day and, and this is what you what you train for. And um, and that's what I really feel like. It always comes down to that confidence and, and, and also being smart as well. If you see a window, I always remember in big surf, whoever you are, Whatever time of the race, you will always have a moment of opportunity. That's I, every single race that you step your foot onto, and that moment of opportunity is going to get you to the place that you need to be. And if you see it, you've got to take it. So I always tell my kids, if you see that window, you've got to go for it because it's going to close. You don't have very, you might have five seconds, ten seconds, but you have to go flat out, and and you have to give it that shot. If you don't make it, at least you've given that shot because I tell you what, if you don't, you'd regret it and you'd never know whether you made it or not. Well, we just had a shot of three of our iron women running into the water just there. Olivia Corrin, Lily O'Sullivan and Charlotte Cross, three on the professional Nutrigrain series as well. They are certainly hoping that their moment of opportunity is still to come because they are trying to catch back up at the moment and there is high stakes on the line here today. A place in Sunday's Australian Iron Woman final. They've done the ski and the board. We're now into that final swim leg. And it could go either way still. We can see the swimmers really getting thrown around by this water as well. This is where the real battle is at the moment. This is around that top eight mark. I think that these swimmers at the moment would be inside that top eight as they swim shoulder to shoulder there as well. You could see Electra Outram and Carla Papik there coming together. And these are our leaders, Tiani Massey, Georgia Miller and Lana Rogers just going under a set and they're now at the back. So these three girls are looking the goods. They've got a, they've got distance as well between this next pack. All these girls on screen here, they are not safe because these waves are coming through and anyone can body surf and go straight past. But, Josh, please tell us what's going on at the moment. Yeah, it was that top eight that was really the red zone there. We had Gemma Smith in eighth place, Annalise Kibble in nine, Charlotte Cross in ten, Olivia Corrin in eleven, Lily O'Sullivan in twelve, and realistically, it's Gemma Smith who has the pressure on her there. We know how good a ski paddler she is, but she hasn't done much swimming in the last couple of years. Great Iron Woman a couple of years ago, but is more focused on that downwind paddling stuff. So the pressure's on Gemma Smith to hang on to that eighth spot. And when you've got the likes of Lily O'Sullivan, the World Junior Surf Race Champion, in there. Charlotte Cross, I would say one of the better swimmers coming through in the field as well. Annalise Kibble and Olivia Corrin chasing you. You know it's on for all money. I heard Reese Drury, who's handling for Dom Stitt, say to her, you need to have the swim of your life if you're going to get through it. And that's what it is. You have to produce your absolute best when it matters most in these semi-finals because the level of quality is so high and just to make that top eight is so hard. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, they're relaxing words to hear, aren't they? Of course, you need to have a similar life going into yeah. the water. But it, it really does show the depth of field in this second Open Iron Woman semi as well. Gemma Smith in that top eight there at the moment. A really interesting story here at the Aussies as well that I guess does sum up what Harriet was saying in terms of, you know, you could always line up and compete at the Aussies. Gemma Smith burst onto the Nutrigrain series when she was a teenager. She was a wild card when she was still at high school, actually, at 17 years old and has then taken time away from the Iron Woman scene to compete in downwind paddling around the world. She's the first two-time world champion, but here she is today, back in the iron, battling it out as well. And although that ski leg didn't quite go to plan, she knows that she's one body wave away from booking a place in Sunday's Iron Woman final after missing out on the ski final yesterday, which you would have to say she would have been the favourite for. Definitely. I know she'd be devastated. I had a chat with her after that ski, and... 
she, you know, she's just so happy to be in the Iron Woman, and she, we know she's tough. She's so, so tough. And if you're an Iron Woman and you want to win and be in that final on Sunday, you have to be tough. That is one of the words. If you, if you had in the dictionary, what is an Iron Woman? Tough would certainly be in there. But at the moment, the local girl Tiani Massey, she is in form at the moment. She has Georgia Miller and Lana Rogers behind her. They have won this race before, but they're not going to stop there. They want more. And we have a, we actually here we go. We might have Gemma Smith. No, that's Annalise Kibble coming through at the moment and then we also have a turning around the corner now that is Olivia Corrin so those two girls at the moment as you said before are just on the cusp and hopefully they can push them so they've actually gone past Lucy, Lucy Dove she actually can see a little bit of definitely a bit of push and shove and grabbing a few bodies around that can at the moment and and wow, we can just see the swell picking up there. It's actually hitting on that that swimming string hand. Oh, that is a huge set that has come <laughs> through on top of our leaders at the moment. There is no body way for them there. They're going to get pushed a long way in after that. And another one to come through as well, that's Georgia Miller and Lana Rogers. I think that might be Miller on the left. She's about to get picked up by this wave. That is one of the biggest sets we have seen come through today. And although... It is an inconvenience. They would rather that didn't happen. That has pushed them into the break zone, and they really are now safe. This is where the race is starting to unfold because we saw in that drone shot before as they came around the string of cans that this field has been shaken up. Some of those athletes that we did mention, Dom Stiff going in 11, well, she might have produced a sim of a life because it looked as though she was well inside that top eight. But it is all going to be about who can hold a body wave because you can see on this camera angle at the moment there are waves starting to build out the back. This is going to come right down to the finish court. And it absolutely is. And it was a really good example of showing when Georgia and Lana were there that just you need that distance just to be in that safety zone. And because they have, you know, I guess that 50, 60 metres on the other girls, as we see, Tiani Massey, she will take the first place for this second semi-final and sometimes you know it is nice to actually win the semi because it gives you that little lift of confidence so she'll be feeling really good but on screen right now this is where it's going to come down to I think the swim in the life we've had from Annalise and certainly Livy Corn but as they, we just saw on screen they were looking behind them yeah, there might be a starting to build out the back so we do have three that are safe Massey, Miller and Rogers but the battle is going to be to see who can claim those minor placings Georgia Miller in second Lana Rogers in third and a set has come through it looks as though that it might have broken on top of some of our swimmers there. That is Dominic Stitt. And she has started to come through the field as well, but will it be enough for her to hold that wave all the way through? We will wait and see because there is still so much to play out in this open Iron Woman semi. After more than 15 minutes of racing, it is all coming down to the very end. Five more spots are available. It's not many. As we see, everyone's going to be thrown around. When we see in a moment when everyone's... I was going to say they're going to get moving on the beach. They have no idea how many girls in front. Dominique sit on the right. Olivia Corrin on the left. Someone coming through there. It looks like it could be either Annalise Kibble. I think I'm going to say that's Annalise Kibble with the goggles on. And they have no idea what they're coming right now. This is the panic sign. There's three girls already in. Look at this, Sam. It is a tight finish. Gemma Smith at the back of that field there. She may just be outside the cut zone. We saw Olivia Corrin stand up and run ahead of Dominic Stitt. They went in 11th and 12th into that final swim leg. That is a huge recovery from the two of them. But here is the race at the moment for those last places. So it is Corrin that will come across in what we believe to be fourth place. Dominic Stitt in fifth. Annalise Kibble in sixth through to her first Australian Open Ironwoman final. And now a tight finish. There is a Burley Heads Mowbray Park cap. We believe that's... Charlotte Cross and Lily O'Sullivan. There's the two club mates that are running now across the line. They could well be seven and eight. Sarah Tazaki from Northcliffe. I do believe she'll finish in nine with Lucy Derbyshire in tenth as well. That is a big omission from Sunday's final. But it just goes to show Electra Outram, another big out as well. We saw her right at the front of the field throughout that race too. Gemma Smith from Newport missing the cut. Wow, that was a brutal race, and it really did come down right to the end. Carla Papik, she was sitting comfortably for the majority of that race, and now she has missed out. Sorry, mate. That one was absolutely wild. I can't believe how many people missed out. And really looking forward to hearing from Josh. I'm sure he's got someone down the beach fairly soon, but it would just be nice to hear what happened then. So we have got Josh already. Who have you got for us, Josh? I'm here with Tiani Massey, winner of semi-final number two in the final on your home beach. That must be a relief. 
Yeah, it's a big relief. Um, these conditions are really tricky and tough out there, so you never know, you know, what's going to happen. And I had a few moments of high stress out there, especially on that ski. I had to roll a big set out the back, and I was just like, if I lose this, like, the day's done and I won't be in that final. So I held on for dear life, and lucky I've been out there many times on this exact beach getting smashed just like that. Tell us about that opening ski leg. You weren't the only one to have a swim, and I guess it's about survival, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's really important when you're out there to just have a, you know, clear mind and just have the be as calm as you possibly can because when you're in that calm state you can make the right decisions that you need to make and when you're going you absolutely have to be going but when you're sitting back and slowing down and waiting you're just breathing and just waiting and so um yeah I was lucky that I held on to that ski and when it was time to go I had enough in me to get out there. Is it a pressure or a privilege to have the Aussie titles on your home beach somewhere where you grew up and to have this crowd cheering you on like they are? It's an absolute privilege you know I've done Aussies um, on this beach before and I've lost many races in the sprint finish and I've also won a few so you know win or lose it's just a, an incredible experience to be here on my home beach and have everyone that's watched me grow up into the woman I am today from you know way big six years old to who I am now have them watch and I mean yeah it's just the biggest privilege and I can't wait to be in that final and you know try and do them proud. Congratulations good luck on Sunday afternoon you got a lot of racing between now and then though. Yes thank you Josh. Thank you, Josh, and a huge congratulations to Tiani Massey as well. She's through to the Iron Woman final on her home beach. She's raced stro so strong throughout the season, and she's showing it here again today. So our finalists are now set in the open Iron Woman. For that full field, head to liveheats.com and search for Aussies because that is the website where you will get all of your results, not just from the semifinals and the finals, but right throughout the carnival as well. We're now heading a little bit further down the beach towards the open men's area. This is the last leg of quarterfinal number one in the open male iron person as well. So we will try and pick up some of those caps as they come back into the beach. But at the moment, we could see that those waves were causing a lot of carnage right throughout the beach as well. And we know that our iron men will be no different. As the set starts to stand up, look at that set. And I do believe that might be Oliver Monaghan from Maruchidor has just got one of the great body waves to come all the way through. Kendrick Louie from Manly was right there as well. And Courtney Kendrick has got that a long way back into the beach. And there's even more waves to come. What an exhibition. Yeah, Kendrick, he's an incredible body surfer. We saw early, just about um, 30 seconds ago, that was actually Ali Day out in front and just had Kendrick Lewis. And as you said, Ollie Monaghan was actually the partner of Tiani Massey, so he would have been fingers crossed for each other. And, and here we go coming in now. That actually potentially looks like Ryan Green from North Burley. And we're just going to actually check out a replay actually that those waves are looking solid down that southern area talk us through the technique here court oh i do love ollie mollahan he's got the he's got the butterfly hands out like that but look at that slow motion you see that his feet up in the air then he's done that really really well kendrick's just paused himself and slowed himself down so he's taking that hit a little bit later which is very smart because you don't get that impact of coming down onto the shore but as we can see ryan green from north Berlin, he'd only be a young gun and there we see ali day we always see him up the front and He's actually trying to go for his fourth Ironman title in a row. So he's through to his quarterfinal. He's still got to get through the semi. But all the boys, again, just trying to get through these and get to that semi so they can get through the final. Jason, big re results here. So we do have Finn Askew and Ali Day, Ryan Green. And it looks as though it could be Kai Kinsella as well making his way around the flag. That is uh, with Kendrick Louis at the front of that field. So that is six at the moment. I think I saw maybe potentially a Newport cap in it as well, as well. Rather, that could have been Charlie Verka. Yes, it is coming across the line. So that is a great result for Charlie after what's been a really impressive summer for him as well. That's and a it, tough one, isn't it? It's a really yeah. tough one. And now the battle for those last couple of places as well. We don't know exactly how many. I think we do have six across the line too. Is that Kai Taylor now making his way out the beach? Burley yeah. Heads, Mowbray Park. And it's a sprint finish on as well between the two surfers, Paradise Clubmates. Is this the battle for eighth place? Now, Ollie Monaghan has just come across the line. So that body wave from Monaghan could have been the one that put him through to an Australian Ironman final. We will try and just get those official confirmation results as they start to come through. But again, another example, Courtney, of how important it is to be racing your race all the way to the end because you never know what's going to happen. 
definitely you've got to focus on yourself and you've got to take in take your um you know your way out but we're just here we've got josh on the beach so we'll hear from him Oh, I'm here with Ollie Monaghan, a very tired but still in the Ironman. Ollie Monaghan, congratulations, mate. Tell us about that body wave. Yeah, thanks. I um, kind of was out of it. I didn't have the best of them. But, um, yeah, got that body wave. I kind of sat back, turned back out, got it, held it halfway maybe, kind of buckled me off it, and then got another little bump and something I snuck in, eh? So, frothing. How hard are these quarterfinals there? Obviously, the, you look at the guys at the top half of that race there, and there's a lot of guys who can win the final there. It's very tough, isn't it? Oh, man, it's brutal. Like, every single heat, every single quarter, semi. It's pretty much a final. Like, the guys that make the final is anyone's game then. So, yeah, it's good just to be in and amongst it. So, yeah, happy. You'll be very happy. Tiani Massey won her semi final down there as well. She's straight through to the final. Good day for Maruchidor. Yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, she's probably been in and around, like, the top mark for this season. So, be cool to take the mantle this year, but you never know what happens. So, yeah, everyone's doing well. Eighth place is enough. Congratulations. Good luck in the semi. Yeah, thank you so heaps. <laughs> thank you, Josh, and congratulations, Ollie. A good reward for his decision and commitment to take on that wave as well. He finishes inside the top eight. Kendrick Louis, Finn Askew, Ali Day, Kai Kinsella, Ryan Green, Charlie Burko, Kai Taylor, and Oliver Monaghan all going through quarterfinal number one. And we will stay with these open Ironman quarters as well because number three is hitting the water now in this arena. I'll quickly run through the start list. We do have Joel Piper from Maruchidor, Tannen Linden from Karawa, Ben Highfield from Surface Paradise, Nicholas Middleton from Wanda, Odin Parrish from Northcliffe, Bailey Kristevsky from Wanda, Zach Morris from Northcliffe, Tim Senior Skinner from North Bondi, Corey Fletcher from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Zale Outram from Sunshine Beach, Robert Whitaker from Northcliffe, Nick Stoddard from Swansea Belmont, Joe Collins from Northcliffe, Kai Howe from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Will Savage from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, and Matt Bevilacqua from Northcliffe. These are the Australian Championships, Courtney. There's no easy quarterfinals in any event, but wow, there are stars right throughout this start list. There certainly are. Just listening to the names in that first quarterfinal, everyone, no one had to muck around. And the same thing here again, I think, um, as we were talking about earlier, just when the surf picks up, there's a little, a little few more nerves thrown about the beach. And again, it's just, as you see, these boys stretch out. Here we are. We are off for a start. And the, the starter has done a very, very great job. It looked very even across the field. You saw Matt Bevelacqua. I feel like he's going out extra hard because he did almost miss out yesterday. He had a sprint finish to get in. Yeah, and I think that he'd be pretty glad to have a little bit of space down his end of the line as well when he did get hit by a ski yesterday. That is Zach Morris from Northcliffe on the screen at the moment. He's in the middle of the field and made a really strong start ahead of both Middleton and Kristevsky from Wanda. But you can see there's waves starting to stand up. Joe Collins on the right-hand side of screen on that blue ski. He has an opportunity now to get through, and he knows it as well. He's put the head down. He might have to duck under this wave. Now he gets over the top. Bevilacqua cops another one on the lap, and there's another one standing up too. One of our paddlers is in the water. That does look to be Joel Piper from Maruchidor. He's been so impressive right across the summer. He now has some work to do as well because there are even more sets coming. So this could be a huge advantage for those inside the top eight because the rest of the field is going to get held back. It is Collins in one. We can see Corey Fletcher there, Zach, uh, Zach Morris, Matt Bevilacqua are our top four at the moment. But look at the carnage that has been left behind. That is a huge disadvantage for those athletes at the very start of their race course. That is where you do not want to be because from the start, from the get-go, you're playing catch-up the whole time. And, and we know how fast these boys are. They're very, very strong in this swell. And it just really, you can see all the way here, it's just it's absolutely devastating. It might be Nicholas Milton from Wanda there at the back there that's just unfortunately got the worst that way. But Joe Collins, we've seen him so many times. He's just had a look behind. He'd be kind of counting, I believe, the numbers of how hard he now needs to go because this is a quarterfinal. You want to be saving, I guess, as much cookies in the bank as you can, but also at the same time, you don't want to be on that back end of that eight. So it's Collins in one, Fletcher in two, Morris in three, Bevilacqua in four, Tannen Linden from Karawa is in five, and Will Savage from Burley Heads Mowbray Park was inside that top six. But now they're starting to make their way back in. Bevilacqua draws alongside Fletcher Morris on a run. 
and Joe Collins too actually so now we have four wide at the front of the field and it will be interesting to see who takes these waves there isn't much coming through at the moment so it is time to go and Joe Collins knows that as well he's really putting the foot down as he looks to try and get down this little bump his nose is starting to dip and he does get down it so too Corey Fletcher he made that decision to cut further back up the beach around that can and he is being rewarded for it very smart of Joe to do that just then because you just these these waves are a little bit unpredictable and we saw that Matt Bevilacqua bring that up again. Someone actually took him out. So if you have someone next to you and you're holding it straight, it doesn't mean that someone can actually kind of come accidentally slew to the side and take you out. So Joe did the right thing. He did it smart. He wants to get through nice and safe. And, and if you don't have to take one of those big boppers out there and you take a little one, it's just safer and get you through. So as we see again, the cream rising to the top in this quarterfinal of the Ironman. Yeah, Zal Outram from Sunshine Beach catching up as well. He's now battling for about fifth place in this quarterfinal. It looks as though that is our top eight, but we do know that it is going to get shaken up right throughout this race as well. There are no doubts about that. So eight to go through this quarterfinal number three of the Open Ironman. It's Corey Fletcher who currently leads. One of the best board paddlers in the country. He was a big casualty yesterday in the board heats. Courtney, how hard is it to pick yourself back up after a you know, really tough result on, on an opening day of the Aussies? Yeah, that's a great point, Sam. The emotions that you feel over this whole week, that's why the athletes are so exhausted um, next week. And that's why you see a lot of the crew go off to Bali, go overseas, and, and just really have some downtime, not only from a really big season, but the week of Aussies. I swear you go through about 2,000 different emotions, <laughs> if there is that many. I've just thrown that number out, which may seem really dramatic. But you just go through so much. So much. And last night, it was, a big, it was a big day yesterday, so the crew would have been doing the ice baths and recovery and getting a lot of food in and... And I know for all the Ironman and Ironwomen, they just want to get through that semi-final because it's it's stressful. And as we see on screen right now, Joel Piper, his home beach, he's been really on form and, and certainly one that we would have, you know, hoped to have seen and definitely seen in that um, final. But the emotions you go through is crazy and you just have to really go with the flow. And, and for Corey Fletcher out there, it doesn't look like it's bothering him too much, but he definitely would have been one of the top favourites to win the board at this Australian title. We've seen him over the season, but he's obviously done, you know, he's a, he's got a very relaxed mode. He's, he's a very nice guy, so he would have been like, okay, I missed out. I've still got my Iron Man, so you've just got to really reset and go into that next race. So it's Morris, Fletcher, Bevilacqua and Collins. They're our clear-cut top four at the moment, and all class paddlers too. We spoke in that last Iron Woman semi about controlled aggression, making sure that you attack those opportunities when they do present themselves. And that is what all four and five, if you include Tanner Linden as well, it looks to be catching up to the back of that pack too. That is what they did on that opening leg of the ski because, you know, the ocean is always going to serve up something. There isn't going to be a red carpet for you to be able to paddle out the back <laughs> too, but you do need a race smart. And that is what they're trying to do at the moment, conserving a little bit of energy as they start to make their way around the camp. They certainly do. And as we can see, we can see a top, it looks like, clear eight at the moment. So these guys are, you know, they won't be slowing down too much because the boys behind, they are a fair bit behind at the moment, but you don't want to be sitting on that top eight. I always feel you want to still be in that four or fourth or fifth and just definitely secure your spot. So at the moment, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could even be nine from like, counting there, but um, the boys out in front, yeah, doing really well. And the pace is really hot and high. I don't think I've ever seen a quarter finals throughout this Australian titles this fast. I felt like the quarters, you know, some of the top athletes are kind of back off a little bit, but certainly no one has. And, and Joe Collins is definitely one of those athletes out there that's not backing it off. Well, it's a reflection of the conditions as well, right? Knowing that, you know, anything can happen on each of these three legs. So they need to make sure that they are at the front of the race throughout. I think we're going to see that particularly in some of our ski races later today as well, the athletes won't be taking it easy in those heats like they normally do because it's all about survival at the moment. I did call Tanner Linden in fifth place before. That's actually Ben Highfield from Surface Paradise. But Linden is in that group. He's further back at the moment. But that clear-cut top eight, two at the moment, as a wave starts to stand up for our top five athletes coming down the front as they all get back to those back straps and they now make their way back in for the last leg. So we do have... Collins, Bevilacqua, Morris, Fletcher and Highfield on the far side of screen as well. That's exactly what you want, Court, a chance to rest and get ready for the swim as you make your way back in. There's nothing better when you're on the front wave. You've only got a couple of guys with you and just relax and you can see just on bottom screen there, Joe Collins just 
you know, swinging his arms around. So Ben Heifel just got on the the back end of that, so he'll be very excited. Zach Morris, and we've also got Corey Fletcher. Matt Bevelacqua, definitely a lot better spot than when he was yesterday. But all these guys looking really, really good, and they're really setting themselves up. We've got one, two, three, four, five. So top five here, bit of the gap. It's where you want to be. Yeah, and we did see on that, uh, that second wave as well for our top eight. It looked as though Will Savage might have missed getting down that wave too. So maybe a door has been open for our chasing athletes at the moment to try and catch up to that top eight. And this is a shot of the under-17 uh, iron women at the moment too. They are starting to go around in their semi-finals. We will bring you those results a little bit later. But for now, this is the chase pack. That's Tanner Linden and Zale Outram. They are in sixth and seventh. Will Savage is still in eighth. But the door, as I did mention, has been open ever so slightly. So they only need one body wave, that chase pack. That is Savage now going around into that swimmer. Really strong swimmer as well, Will Savage, the man from Western Australia, before he moved to the Gold Coast. But he wants to make sure that he's not leaving anything to chance as well because plenty of athletes like the ones on screen are certainly coming chasing. Definitely. And he's definitely right now got to have a savage swim. <laughs> Someone had to say it. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Well, yeah. he, he, he certainly is capable <laughs> of it as well, Will. So looks like there's a little bit of waiting coming across that bank as well. That tide is starting to drop out. A low tide today is somewhere around that 11 o'clock mark this morning. So... It will be interesting to see not only what that does to the surf and the wave size and the way that they are breaking, but also the banks and the rips that do open up even further because there already is so much water moving around today. On that turn of the tide yesterday, the swell started to drop off a little bit as it pushed back in. So, yeah, there will be very uh, a few very interested onlookers, rather, um, as we do start to make our way towards some of those big races today. We do have surf team finals coming up in the men's area later today. We do have open mixed double skis at the end of the day as well. So it's a big day for all of our open men's ski paddlers because we are going through to the semi-finals in the single as well. But for now, this is quarterfinal number three of the Open Ironman here at the 2024 Aussies Maruchidor Beach on the Sunshine Coast. And that pack is starting to get further and further in front. But as we have been saying throughout the morning, there is no time to rest. It was an interesting point you made, Court, about reflecting on previous Aussies, perhaps. You know, if you compare it to last year in Perth, if you have a lead like that going into the last leg, you know, last year there was no waves at all, so there's no chance you can get swamped down. But there is still plenty on the line for guys like Odin Parrish, who is now running a long way down the beach too to try and get into that rip. Yeah, unfortunately for Odin, he is not in the spot where you want to be. Just saw his coach, Kevin Morrison, just tell him to go down that south a little bit to jump in the rip. But he has to do a lot of work. And we're not, you know, we want to keep positive for Odin, but he's really going to have to get going from the start and get a body wave to get himself in. So he wouldn't be feeling good about himself at the moment. But I know what Odin's like, and he's got a, a great bubbly personality. So he'll just get into work straight away. But on screen right now, I'm loving these shots with you know the drone and the camera crew. They've really got you can see it all. There we go. We're going back to a drone shot at the moment. You can really see all the all the all the men out there. Just you know the pace that they're moving. The pace is certainly very high, and it's um it's now about getting around this stream, getting on that body surfing wave, and just booking your ticket in for that semi final of the Ironman. And again, you can see that our competitors have to swim back a fair bit, and that is because they did run down the beach a little bit, but. There is a sweep out there towards those cans. You can see Ben Highfield getting pushed on that red and yellow out ever so slightly as he turns and starts to head along the string of, uh, string of nine as well. So, yeah, even even in the clean water, there is still plenty going on out there today. Let's head down to Josh Minogue on the beach, who is watching his quarterfinal unfold from the beach. Josh, it looks reasonably clear-cut at the moment. Yeah, it's comfortable on this one, but I've got a nervous man here. He's handling for a few guys, coaching most of them. Northcliffe's coach, Kev Morrison, you're handing, handling for Matt Bevilacqua, doing pretty well in this one. You had uh, Corey Taylor in the last one there go out. It's really up and down on the beach at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a lottery out there. Um, you know, Maruchidor throws up a, an interesting uh, carnival for us, usually, so uh, we're glad we've got that. That's part of our sport. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's tough for some of the boys. And, uh, as you said, uh, poor old CT got, um, got caught on a bad side there and uh, just couldn't, couldn't work his way back into it. Same with uh, young Jack. But, um, but, yeah, we've got some boys at the front of this next one. I saw Wes uh, Gould go through in, um, in uh, quarterfinal two, and I've got Kai Harlan over there in quarterfinal four. I think he's at the front of that one, I'm hoping. So just watching that as well. As a coach, what are the final instructions when the conditions are like this? 
Oh, mate, I actually took some advice from you on a podcast last week. Um, you know, you've just got to stay attentive and, 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 you know, and keep watching what's happening before you. It's, um, as I said, it's pretty ugly out there, you know. It's, it's nice to be in some tricky conditions, but you've got to just stay aware of the changing nature of, you know, the rips and the holes and the banks. And so just getting the guys just to remain calm, stay off their legs and keep watch of what's happening in front of them, races before them, all the rips, all the, all the different um, events happening out there. You've just got to keep, keep your eyes on it and just take as much information as you can. Do the instructions change as you go through the rounds? The heat's obviously safety first, but if you're in the final and you're a shot at getting a medal, do you just send it? Yeah, yeah obviously, man. I, I think that... Um I think that's a tricky one, isn't it? You know, that's a, it's an age-old question. Are you going to are you going to try and play it safe and be there at the end, or are you going to uh, hail Mary? It? And everyone's got a different, um, you know, a different view on how that should work. But ultimately, as I said to the guys, it's up to them in the moment to make that decision. You are going or you're not, and it's nothing I can do about that at that point. You know, it's um, it's completely over to them. And yeah, everyone wants to see them go it, but sometimes you, you know, gritted gritted teeth. I love it. Well, good luck for the rest of the week, mate. Congratulations on everything you've done with Northcliffe this year. They've had a stellar year so far, and I'm sure it'll continue over the next couple of days. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Appreciate it, mate. Love it. Kev Morrison there, the Northcliffe coach. He's on fire at the moment. He's got a couple in this one that look like getting through. He's had a couple get through already today, and some heartbreak as well. Former world champion Corey Taylor out in the quarterfinal before this one. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Corey, one of the big casualties on that first quarterfinal that we did bring you earlier. Zach Morris running across the line, though. It looks as though there are no dramas for him or two of his North Club, uh, North Cliff club mates, rather, in Matt Bevilacqua and Joe Collins as well. Corey Fletcher starting to jog across the line for second place too. And we'll be interested to see where that battle for the top eight has ended up as well. Because, yeah, as Kev Morrison so eloquently explained, Courtney, it, it is just, you know, a bit of a lottery out there. You need to have the skills. You need to have the ability to put yourself in that position. But sometimes there's nothing you can do in that surf. Yeah, you've just got to really, again, draw it back to just thinking about yourself and looking after you and where you need to be. And we just see Ten and Lyndon, he might be, he might be saying good day to his little boy out there, which is really beautiful to see on screen. And he's just having a good time, isn't he? He always looks like he's enjoying himself. But the boys all coming in now. So Joe Collins there. So just really getting everyone through. But I just see the names coming on through. It is going to be a very hotly contested uh, semi-finals of the Ironman and a very very tough one to get through there's only 16 men that'll make it through and it's really not many is it yeah that's right so we do have six across the line as well with the top eight to go through so we will wait to see who we can stand up I think that might be some of our athletes warming down after their race that they have had so far here today it's important to get and fl flush the lactic acid yeah. out. here comes Will <laughs> Savage so he did deliver on your request, Courtney. He did deliver a strong swim and move up one place. So he will finish in seventh place. There is only one more to get. And it looks as though it might go to Zale Outram. We just want to make sure that there was no one in front of him. But it does look like he will round out the top eight in quarterfinal number three of the Open Ironman. Here to start day two of the Aussies. A high octane start as well. Some of the best athletes. Some of the fittest athletes in world ocean sports being pushed to their absolute limits in both the men's and women's areas. So we just have one more running across the line at the moment, but yeah, our top eight is clear cut, so it does look like Robert Whitaker just does miss out as they start to get ready for what does look to be the under-19 Ironman quarterfinals. But let's head down to Josh Minogue, who's standing by with our winner. I'm not with the winner, but I'm with a man who has survived and gone through the second round. I'm going to say the oldest man in the field and the only dad in that quarterfinal there, Tannen Linden. Well done. On to another semi. Mate, that was so much fun. Yeah, on to the next one. And, uh, yeah, just hopefully this surf sticks around and we can, yeah, keep the wave rolling. I wanted to have a chat with you because I didn't think anyone would be having more fun out there. When the waves are on, you're in the thick of it. How much do you love Maruchidor? Mate, Maruchidor is just one of those beaches where you just don't know what's going to happen. You've got rips, you've got banks, you've got waves. Like, it's just perfect conditions for surf life saving. Like, that's what we do. We, we're out there in the surf and we want to be challenged not only by the competitors, but by the ocean as well. And, you know, like today, it's testing. You burst onto the scene as a junior, won so many Australian championships, no Ironman titles, a couple of sort of minor places over the last couple of years. Are we turning back the clock this year? Because the surf's on, you're happy, you're healthy, you're in good form. I reckon this year you might be a red-hot chance of getting that Iron title. Yeah, mate. Well, um, actually, I was talking last night with my old coach, and he said, you know, 17 years since won that first one in the under-15. So, you know, to be back here still doing it 17 years later, I'm pretty stoked. And... As, as you said, I'm actually feeling really fit and really happy and just enjoying it at the moment. And, you know, to be able to do it in front of my little fella, that's just, 
that's everything to me. So, yeah, you never know what could happen. I'll go out there and have a crack. Does being a dad change things? Absolutely, absolutely. It, it just makes it so much more important just to, to get out there and absolutely put your all in because, you know, there is that little bit of sacrifice of time with him. But, you know, making the most of it and showing him, like, you know, anything's possible and, you know, to be fit, happy and healthy, that's all that I care about. A good iron man, but a better role model, that is for sure. Tanner Linder through to the semi-finals. Congratulations and good luck, mate. Cheers, Minna. Thank you, Josh, and thank you, Tan and Linden, one of the best athletes on the beach in surf and one of the best blokes as well. He can always have that smile on his face and he's always up for a chat too. Great to see him back racing and racing the way he is in conditions like these as well. We've seen our Open Ironman quarterfinals go around. All of those results are on livepeats.com, but we are now standing by for the under-19 Ironman semifinals. So they ran their quarters yesterday. We are now racing for a spot in Sunday's final and no doubt there are a few nervous faces standing on that start line as well because they have seen a little bit of carnage that has unfolded here today. In what are tricky conditions here at Maruchidor, we did know that it was going to be similar conditions to yesterday. The swell periods dropped a little bit which has made those waves maybe just a little bit smaller but there is still plenty going on in that ocean as well. So. This is semi-final number one of the under-19 male iron person as well. They are standing by for a start. In fact, it looks as though they may have split the start areas, and this could be quarterfinal number two. We, wait, we will look to try and get confirmation of that in just a moment. But, Courtney, we, we have seen the open iron man go around. Looks as though there's a few concerned faces, a few nervous faces on the, the looks of our juniors as well as they start to get ready for semi-final number one. Exactly right. So this is the start list for the first semi. Maguire Reed from Newport, Jet Green from Terrigal, Jackson Bond from Karwa, Mitchell Morris from Northcliffe, Jackson Sheedy from Marilla Barrick Point, Ty Worrell from Swansea Belmont, Connor Maggs from Newport, Henry Simpson from Alexandra Headland, Benedict Christensen from North Bondi, William Beth Jr. from Southport in Queensland. We have Tyron Evans from Midway in New Zealand, Sam Harris from Maruchidor, Ty Smith from Corumban, Jack Quick from Terrigal, Riley Brennan from Corumban and Darby Meyer from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. They are all battling it out for a place in the under-19 final that will be held on Sunday here at the Australian Championship. So they are just getting some final instructions. There may be a little bit of adjustment going on of the cans as well, but they are standing by for a start. It has already been a thrilling start to action here at day two of the Aussies. Our finals are now set in the open iron person, uh, the open iron woman events rather, down to the semis in the iron man. Really exciting racing to start, Court. Oh, it really was for everyone watching. It's um, it's just incredible, isn't it? I mean, we've been here feeling goosebumps, nerves, all the emotions going on, and it's only day two of the Australian yeah. titles. We've still got, I guess, you know, three and a half to go, so it's all happening. And as you said before, Sam, we've also got under 19 surf teams finals, open surf team finals. And then we finish off with a double ski and a single ski for under 17. So, a lot happening. Yeah, a lot happening. And I've really enjoyed some of the insights that we have had so far today as well from some of our athletes. Tiani Massey and Harriet Brown both spoke really well about what the key to success is in conditions like this. You need to put yourself in that position, have those skills and have that confidence that when your opportunity comes, you do need to make sure that you take it. However, at the same time, there's this, an acceptance that well, there is a little bit of luck involved as well. Yeah, definitely. We've just got to... I feel like you just need the surf gods on your side, really. You just want you just want that one wave and you want to really make... You want to execute it. So if you get given an opportunity out there, just execute it. And, yeah, just simply, we can talk from here. Just, you know, just get it done. <laughs> but as we look on screen there, we've just got a nervous away for the under-19 semi-final. It's definitely a really, really hot field, as you spoke about before. Obviously, Connor Mags, he was incredible last year. He won everything in the under-17s, and that went from swim, board, ski, eye. We know how good he is. We've seen him in the series. Darby Meyer as well, he's really, really good to serve that famous name, the Meyer. So he's definitely got his... His dad and you know uncle telling him you know a few few things to do out there absolutely but yeah if we look through it's a very 
I guess we've got a fair few New South Wales competitors as well, which is really, really great to see up in Queensland. But we'll see the man on the sand, and that is Josh. And it is Tyrone Evans out from New Zealand. Come to the Aussies. He's in that semi-final of the Ironman. Did you expect this sort of conditions coming out here, mate? Um, I raced here earlier last year, and it was kind of like this, but there's, there's no beaches really at home like this, so it's kind of out of my league, but I don't know. It's exciting to race in these different conditions. Big contingent from the Midway Club this year as well? Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, the Midway Club did pretty well in the New Zealand Nationals. So coming over here to race the Aussie boys, it's, it's pretty pretty awesome. Do you like mixing it with the with the boys here? Obviously, a couple of these guys in the Ironman series and that sort of thing. You're going to knock a few of them off? Yeah, I hope so, but I don't know. They're pretty quick, eh? I love it, mate. Well, good luck. Welcome to Australia, and we hope you do really well here at the Aussie titles with the rest of the Midway and the New Zealand crew. I know this is probably the most Kiwis that have ever come out for the, New, the Aussie titles. Yeah, no, nah, cheers. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very much, Josh. Yeah, you can tell a, a switched-on tyrant, but a reasonably nervous tyrant as well, just given what we are seeing unfold in the water as well. It looks as though they might just be swapping over a jet skip. Yes, there they are. There's, there's always something at the Aussies as well, caught that keeps <laughs> the competitors on their toes. So when they do get this sorted out, they will be back in the water as well. So, look, it's an interesting discussion point when you do look across this start list because we did mention that we do have two Nutri-Grain Ironmen in the field, Mitchell Morris and Connor Maggs. We're now at that age in the under-19s court where, you know, we do have some of these guys with big race experience, but it's a different thing to come back to your own age group and try and match it against guys your own age too because it does come with a little bit more pressure. Yeah, it certainly does. A lot of the others, you know, the, the guys in the field would be looking at those guys, but I'd love to hear Josh's thoughts, so we might go back to him. Yeah, I'm down here with one of, one of the boys into this final, into the semi-final a little bit of expectation on you here. Obviously, have run a lot of open racing throughout the year, mate. Coming back to the 19s, do you feel the pressure? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, a lot of under-19s are coming up through this, and they're, again, challenging. And it's always different racing from opens to 19s, and it's yeah, I find it a little bit more difficult and more, a lot more pressure on 19s, for sure. But it's no sort of half-assed age group, is it? you got your brother in there, Ethan Callahan, a couple of these guns, Connor Mags and that coming through. This is as good an age group as there's been for a very long time. Oh, yeah, 100%. Definitely heaps of people coming through. Connor, Riley, Heath, Jake, my brother, everyone coming through. It's pretty, yeah, pretty good age group. You guys are about to go. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you, Josh, and thank you, Mitch, for his time. Well, I guess that answers our question, Courtney. We were just having a chat about what it feels like for these guys to come back to the junior age category in order to line up against guys their own age as well. And, you know, Mitch quite open in saying that, you know, he, he does get nervous. It, 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 there is a lot more expectation when you do come back after achieving the results that he did on the podium this year in the Nutrigain Ironman series as well. And now he's entering the water for the semi-final of the under-19s. Yeah, I think for some of the guys, I definitely feel like they should be, you know, definitely in that gold medal contention. There's a couple of them that are in the series, which is, you know, the best in the world. And they're still only 17, 18 years old. And, but I think when it comes back to the Australian times, as we've seen before, we've seen some of the best girls and guys missing out. And, you know, for the Nutri-Grain series, there's only 20 people in the world who make it, men, 40 overall men and women together. So these boys here in the under-19s, I, I think they really need to just, you know, take that pressure off and go, OK, I'm racing, I'm here, let's just do what I always do. So it's, um, yeah, but I, I can totally understand why, why Mitch was saying that, absolutely. And I guess there's probably expectation, but... He's, um, he's so experienced, and I certainly, yeah, I certainly, I think we will definitely see him up in front. So they are just starting to get set for a start now as well in this first semi final. On the far left of screen, that is Maguire Reed. He's racing for Newport, but he's from South Australia. He's won multiple Ironman titles in South Australia, but in recent years has focused more on his kayaking. He's part of the Australian kayak team setup, and yesterday won the under 19 double ski with Bailey Clues as well. So a bit like Gemma Smith in. The earlier Open Ironwoman semi-final, expect him to load up his race and try and get away on that ski, which shouldn't be too far away from the start. Yeah. The check started with that flag up. He yes. likes what he's seeing. He's getting ready to go, but no doubt there'll be a few people trying to creep forward, which we are now seeing too when that water does wash across that bank. It does look as though the site closest to the screen does have a little bit more shallow water than maybe the guys on the other side as well, but look... In conditions like these, I'm sure it's all going to even out in the wash too when they start to make their way out. Which, 
could be any moment now. No, the starters looking to hold them just for a little bit longer. They are quite shallow there too, that water below their knees, which is a little bit unusual for a ski start, but that's why we see them walking further and further out as well, Courtney. <laughs> and that's why we love Marisha Dorp Beach. It's, it's forever changing, and we've even got a bit of backwash. As we see, we see actually at Scarborough and WA, we see this a lot, and you can just see that water going up that flicks up higher. If the boys can be on that backwash day, it is so fast. You absolutely steam into that first wave. So we'll wait and see and see if any of the boys, I certainly know, are Connor Mags and Mitch Morris, they'll certainly be looking to get onto that there. But it's just, as we've seen time and time again, you've got to have a good ski start and you've got to really set yourself up. But just mentioning the start before, I think it's really smart that he, he actually did have his took the pants off, put the swimmers on, because at the moment he's getting absolutely soaking wet, so I think that was very, yeah. very... As we can see at the moment, we can only see half of him. Well, the check start, he's had enough. He's, he's, the boys have crept well beyond the check start at the moment. I don't think he's too happy about that. But look, this is... Uh, you can see, Oh, and they are away now at the moment. At a time when there is backwash coming across too, Mitchell Morris on the red ski. We heard from him before the start of the race, choosing to bunny hop a long way across that bank. It is Morris in front at the moment. You could see the ski of Connor Mags to his right and also Maguire Reed to the left. Darby Meyer made a strong start in that rip. He's well down the beach as well, outside of the frame too at the moment. As the field starts to get hit, that is Meyer. He's going to go through that first one and over the top of the second one as Maguire Reed has to duck a wave on the near side of screen. That start line very strung out as they made that way to the bank, but now they're about to come back together as they hit that deeper water. Yeah, that was an interesting, wasn't it? I think it was really smart. As you said, Mitchell Morris, he was doing the bunny hopping. Sometimes that can just push you a little further, you know, up the front there. We see Connor Mags. We see all the guys um, that we were speaking about before certainly getting away really well. And I feel like this is definitely one of the races we've seen today that it looks pretty even. And everyone actually got, got out pretty unscathed. Yeah, that's right. So it's Morris in one, Meyer in two, Maguire Reed on the outside on that blue skis in three, Connor Mags in four. He has not as much racing this summer as he normally would, Connor Mags. He's had a little bit of time away at times as well as he's battled a bit of illness. But it's great to see him racing here today because we know what he's capable of winning all four individual events last year in the under-17s at the Aussies too. It does look as though it might be Jack Quick from Terrigal in five and then that pack is right there for those other positions as well as they look to get inside that top eight and into Sunday's under-19 Ironman final. Maguire Reed making a move around the outside as well. Wants to get into a bit of clean water on those runs. Here comes Connor Mag straight through the middle as well. Darby Meyer looking to cut back as well. So there is four wide at the moment. And some sets look as though they might be starting to build too, Courtney. Yeah, it was really interesting. I was watching there and I was like, are we watching the under-19s or opens? The yeah, boys are just doing... Move. Yeah, they can absolutely move so fast. And... We're seeing that, we're seeing all the athletes, and here we go, just a few of the boys coming down. We see Jack Quick, and also in the middle there, it might be Hen, or no, it could be potentially one of the Corumban boys, Riley Brennan, or Taj Smith, potentially out there. But here we see the Newport boys on screen at the moment, and they're just, yeah, they're really getting faster and faster. As they say, Mitch Morris is just come, going to come down a little bit late. We'll see, he, there he goes, he popped his nose up, did very, very well there, but I just can't believe how quick they are. Yeah, that was a really fast start too, and it goes to show the quality of this semi-final as well. No one wanting to leave anything to chance. The chase pack as well. Oh, we've just seen someone come off their ski as well. That might have been our man from Midway in New Zealand as well. We will wait to pick up those cats, but that is a real shame because there is five in front. There's now four on that second wave, nine in total, but only eight spots to go through to that final. Still plenty to play out in this race too. So at the moment... We do have Meyer in one, Morris in two, and more waves coming through for the back markers. What will this whitewash do? Oh, no, it's thrown our paddle sideways there as he looks to get back to the beach. Oh, and he's left his paddle and his ski as well. That's not quite the way you want to kick things off. But there is still a long way to go in this race in order for him to try and claw his way back. There certainly is. We've only seen one, one of the legs of three through now. They'll jump onto that board and we see Riley Brennan there. He's a phenomenal swimmer, so we'll certainly see him in the swim he'll probably actually take on the open swim as well so he'll be looking to have a big one there but again it's just that area that we saw on screen before it's it's so wishy-washy and very very strong and that's your danger zone when you're on this ski it's when there's hardly any water really really shallow and it'd be really great to see you. we'll grab a replay in a second now sam yeah so you can see these sets starting to come through as well these are our fit guys at the back that competitor from marilla jackson sheedy chose to throw his legs over the back and let that wave go but the big thing is, is that when you do commit to doing that, you want to try and have your boat speed still going 
so you can chase the back of the wave on the way back in. It's a really tricky thing to do because it's about getting as close as you can to that wave breaking without going down the face of it. There is a lot of water moving across that bank, so here, maybe more than other beaches, it is possible. We are going to see it a lot in our ski races later this afternoon. Guys who chose, choose to pull off that wave, just making sure that they try and get their way back in. Really interesting race unfolding so far. Let's head down to Josh Minogue on the sand. Yeah, for the first time today, we've seen a couple of the boys head the opposite direction for the rest of the field. The young lad from Terrigal and the, uh, the big fella from Warilla Barrick Point all decided to go north on the board. The entire rest of the field's gone down into that southern rip. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Both those boys were a fair way down. They were outside that top eight. So they've also obviously rolled the dice out there and decided to go the other way. I don't know if it's going to play out for either of them because those sets are just coming through at the moment. But you have a look Look at the front end of this race out there and some of the names there. We've spoken about them in the past, but I don't think a lot of the viewers at home understand. Darby Meyer, son of Josh, uh, nephew of Nathan Meyer, two of, I'd say, some of the greatest Ironmen in that late 90s, early 2000s. So the history's there. Connor Maggs, the Morris boys, obviously, with Zachy Morris and uh, Jake and Mitch. These are some of Generation Next, but they've been around the sport for so long. They've got so much experience. We'll see Ethan Callahan later on as well. His old man was a professional Ironman in the sport as well. So these guys aren't coming here for the first time. They would have been around the Aussie titles as juniors. They would have seen it. They would have understood what it takes. And I think that just adds a little advantage. And Courtney and I yesterday spoke about little brothers and sisters and the advantage they have. Well, having mum and dad or your uncle and auntie have be a champion of the sport obviously plays a massive role for these guys. Insights there as well, and now you can understand certainly why some of these athletes are so skilled and so comfortable in these conditions. It's Mitch Morris who has broken away from that field at the moment. He's strung out quite a sizable gap given where he went into that leg with uh, with uh, Chase Pack alongside of him as well. But he could be coming in on a wave of his own. That's Meyer starting to get a little bit of a lift on the way back in, but not to be on this wave. Interesting to see if a wave starts to come through, Corny, because what was a clear cut five? Well, it could all come back together. Yeah, absolutely. We're just seeing the weather change throughout the whole day. It looks like there's going to be a lot of rain coming in soon. So these boys are already, I guess, already get wet out in the water, but they might get even wetter now with the rain coming in. But as we see Mitchell Morris on screen, he's, and he's at North Plus, he trains with the open men as well. So he's just so experienced, even though he's only the age of 18 years old. He's had so much experience. Another man on screen there, Connor Mags as well. And it was really interesting what yeah Josh was saying. It's, it's so true. These boys, even though we're seeing them and they're 18 years old, They've been babies coming to the Aussies. You know, their parents have been bringing them, especially Darby Meyer. So he'll, um, I wonder if Darby actually has watched his dad and uncle racing, um, watched them, you know, try and pick up a few things, or he might be critiquing his, um, his dad and uncle out there. But on screen, here we are, Mitch and Morris doing very, very well. Yeah, that's right. And you could see brother Jake watching on just there. They also have around the second semi final of the under 19s in the area further down. Jake Morris through to that final. Along with Ethan Callahan, Riley Harlan, Taj Andrews, Campbell Asher, Jackson McCleary, Daniel Calibut and Fletcher Warren as well. That is a class field that has made their way back in. And a real battle starting to unfold now as well because it was five clear cut. Now they've come right back together heading into this final leg. So there is still 11 or 12 athletes within a realistic chance of booking their place into the final. And with those decisions that we have started to see the field do, everyone running further to the right now, but sub further than others, Courtney. Yeah, the, there has been that little hole, as we can see a little bit. We might be able to chat to Josh at some stage soon. But out on that side there, it's different to the girls' arena, which we saw earlier this morning. But over that other south side, you can just see the water movement going out. And if you can just jump in that little section, it'll just fly you out. So you can see a few boys on the south side and a few others here. They're going to use their legs. They're going to get up and, and wade, which is so hard in the last leg of an iron person. You can see all the running that's happening at the moment. Going into that last leg into the swim and having to wade, it's one of the, it's one of the most painful things you can possibly experience in our surf sports. And I know they're making it look really easy, but I can promise you all, all now on screen it's very, very tough. So Josh Minogue, what are your thoughts at the moment? 
It is tough, that is for sure. I'm on the beach with somebody who's riding this. He's got Benny Christensen in that. Olympian, Australian champion, all-round good bloke, Jimmy Walker. Jimmy, what are you thinking out there? Benny Christensen, he's in this one up to his eyeballs, isn't he? He is. He unfortunately missed the board yesterday, and he's the state champion on the board and paddled really, really well at our state championship. So we were backing him in. He was disappointed, went into that overnight, but he refocused, and he's come out, as you saw in the board, leading there right up the front. He's right in it. But it's a super long swim. It's a tricky swim. But we're very lucky. Australian champion Mark Williams, Wally Williams, gave him some tips before he went out there about diving to the bottom. And this is the difference between opens and 19s. They're good, but skill levels. And I'm hoping those few tips that he's got, he gets to the bottom, he holds his breath coming in, he gets through, he makes it through to Sunday, the big day. Super Sunday, as it always known is, and we're riding him home. But at the moment, you could offer me the best muffin with butter at the moment. I couldn't eat it. My guts are cheering in. I can only imagine, mate. And do you feel like that, obviously, coaching there at North Bondi and, and being involved for so long, do you feel that for everyone? Obviously, you want a bit of swell, you want to have a bit of fun, but it puts the pressure on there when you've done the work and you just want it to be nice and fair until we get through to those finals, don't you? Yeah, you do. It's, it, it is exciting. Yesterday uh, in the quarterfinal of the double ski, I got to paddle with my son, which was so good. And we got knocked off and, and that serve. And we got back on and I thought, uh, we're out of it. And I just saw skis and paddles everywhere. And I was like, let's go, Benny. And then we get through to the semi-final and race again. And that's what's good. I, I did see in the Iron Women, there was a few champs out in the skis and the board and Corey Fletcher's out in the board. Everyone might say, oh, it's bad, they're out. But what about the rise of the new person? The person who comes over the hill and thinks, I could win this, and they get through rounds. It builds more good people to come through. So it's frightening out there. It's hard in your mouth as a coach, but it's awesome. And we love surf when it's like this. We love it, mate. We love your enthusiasm. Good luck for this one. Hopefully he gets himself a slot in that final later on and you can go through it all again. Yeah, look forward to Sunday if he gets through. And great job, guys. It's really, really good. Love your work, Jimmy. Thanks for that, mate. Thank you, Joshy, and thank you, Jim Walker, the most passionate man on the beach as well. He's right what he was saying about it is heart and mouth stuff too. And Courtney, before we did go down and hear from Jimmy, we saw that there were different lines being taken, really different lines coming in towards that first swim can as well. We will wait to see how that did shake up this field in the first semi-final of the under-19 Ironman. That's Mitchell Morris on screen. He is a, a comfortable distance in front after what has been a really strong showing. But you can see how strung out that chase pack is at the moment. That is where our top eight currently sit. But I'm not sure how many of them are actually going to be going through because only eight to go through, we might have more than eight in there. The other thing that you can see, and I know you did mention it before, Court, that rain is really starting to hammer in on the horizon now as well. I hope it doesn't quite hit the beach because for all the supporters like Jimmy and for all of the commentary team like Josh who's down on the bench things could be getting pretty uncomfortable shortly yeah we might have to run an umbrella down for Josh he won't be down there but yeah you can just see the dark cloud coming over and it's not uh, Maruch you know we're used to seeing it all bright and happy and cheery but at the moment you can really see that dark cloud coming through but it's not going to worry these guys out ra- right now all the competitors um, next on the line they're just going to be focused on reading those waves looking what they're going to do best but Mitchell Morris he has done so well and from memory he um He's had a bit of a, t- uh, I guess, a, no, not a tough thing. That would be Jake, actually. We've got a Jake, um, Jake Morris, actually, getting second in, in that next gen to Ethan Callahan. And, and so he's, you know, really, really, I guess, for, for Jake, he really wants to send himself off. And here we go, talking about his um, his brother on screen now. I can't remember who's older or younger, obviously twins. but Mi- who, Mitch only, Mitch only <laughs> just, and he's used all first. of his age there to get that body yes. wave as well. Looking really strong. I'm not sure if he held it all the way back into the beach, but enough for him to pick up a broken whitewater as well. Now there's another wave starting to stand up as well. This is our chase pack at the moment. You can see Connor Mags. You also have Maguire Reed in there from Newport. Over on the right-hand side of that is Riley Brennan from Corumpin. Even further right and slightly back is Ben Christensen from North Bondi. So plenty of different lines coming back into the beach at the moment, and it will be interesting to see if there is a wave starting to stand up out the back because for our chase pack, there's nothing coming through at this stage. That's Mitch Morris. He's going to take out this first semi-final and book his place comfortably into Sunday's decider. But there is some nervous moments now, Courtney, for the guys that are trying to make their way in on a wave. 
Yeah, in this middle section, you do not want to muck around. You want to get going. Mitchell Morris, he is safe. He's booked his ticket. I think I saw as Macquarie Reed or also Connor Mags. They were both in there just trying to milk as, as much as they could. But certainly in the semi-final, if you can walk towards the end, that's always... Um, you always feel pretty good about that. But it might be Henry Simpson. We see Riley Brennan just trying to get down there. But this is the panic zone because you're not too sure how many heads are bobbing up and down because at the moment, the way the swell is... Heads are bobbing down in the water and you can't see people. So you've really got to not muck around. As you can see in the background there, the handlers, nervous the way Everyone's got their hands crossed and just look peering out and, and yelling to their competitors to come in as fast as they can. Well, it looks as though Sam Harris was flying across that bank from Maroochydore. We will wait to see exactly how many are through at the moment. That is Maguire Reed in two. It looks to be from Alexandra Headland, Harry Simpson in three, Connor Maggs in four. So they will be going through comfortably. Now the real race begins for those final few places. We will wait to see. It looks as though, yes, Riley Brenner from Corumban is in five. I think that is Sam Harris from Maruchidor in six. Ben Christensen from North Bondi is going to make that eight. So he did do very well to fight back like predicted by his coach. And this could be the final place inside the top eight. Jackson Bond from Karawa. But we will wait for those official results to come. Darby Meyer, who was in the top four throughout that ski leg and heading into that board, he may have missed the cut. Oh, yeah, Darby would be devastated after that. But we'll uh, we'll go to Josh Minogue on the beach and see who he's got for us. I've got a very tired Connor Mags here. Connor, through to that final, must be a bit of a relief. Yeah, it has been a bit of a relief. It's been a tough season for me. Found out I had glandular fever about a month and a half ago, so... Raced the whole way through and done about three and a half weeks training at Aussie, so a bit of a smaller program, but, um, you know, these 119 age groups are super tough, you know. Maguire and Bradley won the double CS today, and you got Mitch in the series, Jake could have been in the series, Ethan would won next gen, so it's a very competitive age group, and, you know, it's tough to make these finals. I was going to say, coming off so many gold medals, I think you won almost everything in that under-17 age group last year, is a little bit of a reset. I'm younger in these big boys there racing against me as well. Do you just temper the expectations ever so slightly? Oh, you know, you always have, like, really high expectations, and then you have your, your end goal, and then you have little goals along the way, and, you know, I got my end goal of, you know, winning under-19. I had at Aussies this year and a couple other open and under-19 team events, but... You know, it's just you've got to take one race at a time because in these conditions, anything can happen. So, you know, I took off a little goal of making the under-19 iron final. So, got the swim final, board final, and, you know, work up to these top goals. Well, good luck for the rest of the week, mate. Congratulations, and I hope the health comes back to you soon because a Connor Mags in fine form is something we all love to see. Thanks, mate. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, and congratulations to Connor. Yeah, it's good to see him with a smile on his face again and enjoying his racing as well after what he did say has been a tough summer too. So they are our iron races done here this morning. We have the final set for the open iron woman for the under-19 iron man as well. We're down to the semi-finals in the open iron man. We can start to see some of the board heats now heading out. And what we do believe to be the under-19 board race as well, we are going to go through these heats today and go all the way through to and including our semi-finals. So come the end of the day, we will have our board final set too. We will try and bring you a start list as soon as possible when we do know what heat is down in the water. But Courtney, it's been an exhilarating start in these iron races. They are quite they are quite long, these iron races, so it does allow you to try and get back into the race if something goes wrong. In these individual races like the board, there's no margin for error. Yeah, you're certainly right, Sam. Definitely in this board. It's very, very, um, yeah, it's very, very tricky and you cannot make a mistake because the board is definitely one of, and unlike the ski leg, it's the most cutthroat. It's short, it's sharp, and, and as we've seen so many times before, it's just been, oh, it's, it's been it, it's been a really um, emotional day. Uh, there's certainly, and at the moment on screen, we've actually got heat eight of the under-17 board race at the moment for the females. So when you talk about heat eight, Wow, the girls that get to that final um, of, you know, top 16, it's, it's incredibly difficult. So we'll see the girls out on now doing very, very well. Heat 8 of 13 as well. That's something that has been, you know, spoken about a lot on the bench over the last couple of days is just how big the numbers are in the under 17, uh, both boys and girls, men and women, age divisions as well. They had, I think, 10 heats of the Iron Woman yesterday, 13 of the board. It's great to see the numbers so big in this age category as well. 
even though they are getting absolutely worked at the moment yes. if they make their way across the bank. <laughs> they certainly are. I remember the girls on screen there. 15, 16 years old. They've only just actually come pretty much off a nipper board. So it's, um, yeah, it's really tough out there. But this experience for them, they're going to grow so much by coming to Maroochydore and, and taking on. So we can see a couple of the girls just on that yellow board popping through. And, and it's really, it'll be really interesting. We've got a couple of Maroochydore girls with Jay O'Prey and Bonnie Jarrett out there, the Mar two Maroochydore girls. So they'll be feeling really confident in their in their home, home beach at the moment that they train out every afternoon. And and certainly the athletes with this kind of surf, and we saw a couple of the New Zealand, uh, one of the New Zealand men, he was speaking, saying he's just never really been in this surf before. So the competitors that do train, whether it's on the Gold Coast or Sydney, um, obviously the Sunshine Coast as well, if you can get out and be in the surf as much as you can, you just you get those skills and you get to practice and you get to make mistakes and. And so certainly those competitors out the front, we, um, we see at the moment, we'll just have a little look. Yeah, it's be... Eleanor Shervington yes. from Avoca Beach and Jasmine Alexu from South Maruba. Great to see South Maruba represented here at the Aussies as well, a club with so much history. And now with, you know, a rising athlete in the sport as well in Jasmine, you can see a big set start to roll through, though. It has not missed these girls. The wind looks like it might have swung ever so slightly, and even at the top of the screen right there, rain is on yes. the way as well. I think this beach is about to become... Very unpleasant to be sitting sitting and spectating on, at least in the water, as you did make the mention before. They're getting wet anyway, so the rain doesn't matter too much. That's certainly right. That's it. You can't... Yeah, you go, that's the one thing about our sport. You're going to get wet, so, oh, uh, well, if the rain comes down, it's... um. But it's certainly with surf carnivals, even though how hot it is when you leave that morning when you're packing your bag, always pack your rain jacket, because I feel like it's not a surf carnival unless you get a little bit of this weather coming through. But the competitors at the moment, they are really getting... Wow, a bit of a beating at the moment, aren't they? We've only seen about maybe potentially a quarter or half the field out at the moment. The other girls are popping. And I tell you what, when you get swell like this, you wake up the next morning and you're trying to think sometimes, why are my thighs so sore? And that's from doing the popping yeah. constantly. Yeah, that's right. Too. That takes me back to the days of paddling aboard. <laughs> so it looks as though that might be Ava Crellin from Northcliffe out in front now at the moment as they make their way back in. All about just finishing inside the top eight through these rounds or... Potentially that number could be a little bit larger as well. We will try and bring you those cuts when we do know. But at this stage, it's just about getting around the cans cleanly and safely. Look, dare I say it, let's go check in on the weather with Josh Minogue. You're standing by on the beach. Josh, I hope you've got a raincoat. I'm not Tim Bailey, but I'm going to do my best weather report for you down here. It is the not-so-sunshine coast right now. The rain is coming. It's pushing in from the south. I don't know if you can see over my shoulder, but it is really starting to work its way in at the moment. I looked on the radar before. We're going to get a big squall over the next sort of half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and hopefully it washes through and we get a little bit more sunshine in the afternoon. But as you can see, it's starting to come for the sky, and it is not living up to its name, the Sunshine Coast. So grab your umbrella and your jacket and we'll buckle down here on the beach oh no you know what Courtney I actually feel guilty for Josh especially when his hair looks so great today as well it's Thank about you. to get soaked down on the beach Thank you. it's time to rug up we can hear Josh <laughs> have you got a raincoat down there Josh no raincoat nothing my hair is gone I had to make the most of it today before I lose it later in life so <laughs> I've had a few people comment on it down there and it's all about to go south, that's for sure. Well, look, at least we got some screen time for the hair this morning. You <laughs> go find yourself a raincoat or an umbrella and get ready because you can see on screen now it is starting to hammer down, although that is far from the mind of the girls that are in the water at the moment. Jasmine from South Maruba cracking a bit of a wave there, along with Ava Krellen out in front too. And it looks like Eleanor Shervington from Avoca Beach as well. So they will go through to the next round. 10 heats, uh, 13 heats total rather, so we think it might be a top eight progression for all of the girls that are currently racing in heat number eight of the under 17 board race, Courtney. Yeah, just 13 heats, it's a, it's a lot of board paddling, isn't it, once you get to that final, and I think for the spectators when they watch at the end of the week, when you're watching the finals, you look at the athletes that are on the line, they have done so many races, when you've seen that, could have done 20, 30, 40, 50 races by then, and it's um yeah it's certainly not short racing as well um the cans have had to obviously be set a little bit further with these conditions at maruchidor which the competitors are certainly ready for that this is the fittest i'll ever be of the whole season so we just see tiki coming through she's from chuga i know she definitely loves a big swell coming through and one of the maruchidor girls as well so it's um yeah it's all happening here day two before we get ready for our first final a little bit later on which will 
potentially be the under 19 surf teams a little bit in a few races to come. Courtney, we have spoken a little bit so far throughout the morning about pacing yourself through races, through programs. Now, I guess we have seen iron person semis and also cutthroat quarterfinals where they've had really no choice but to go. Once you get to a quarterfinal at the Aussies, you're putting your foot down a bit. What are you thinking in this kind of scenario? In fact, we are being told that Josh Minogue is standing by, so given that he is out braving the weather, we'll come back to that and head down to Josh now. <laughs> Talking about this scenario, I've got Jasmine here from South Maroubra. She's just qualified through that heat of the board race. How is it out there, Jas? It's really tricky out there. There were some really big walls of water coming through. Josh made it over the that set, and then everyone behind us got absolutely hammered. Tell us about that feeling when you get through and everybody else doesn't. You feel a little bit guilty, but there mightn't be anything better, is there? Yeah, it felt pretty good, to be honest. Oh, uh, yeah. That, I had to roll, like, three times in there, so it was hard work to get through, but... South Maroubra, we love getting there every year. The Ironman Series, obviously, and the, the club's something special down there. A big contingent up here uh, this year for the Aussie titles. Oh, uh, for the youth, there was, like, I'd say maybe 30 competitors. For the Opens, I think we have just over 10 maybe so yeah it's a bigger group than we usually have up on the rise well good luck for the next round of the board race and congratulations on getting through thank you thank you josh and congratulations jasmine through to the next round we are going to move through these under 17 board heats at the moment we're staying in this uh this pink uh, arena of racing so heat number 10 is our next heat on the line courtney i guess jasmine touched on it just then about making sure she got through that set and over the top because once that happened and the rest of the field got hit, it was a chance to relax. At what point, or are you at all, if you're racing, just starting to relax and try and save a little bit of energy out there today? Yeah, Jasmine spoke really well, didn't she? Just then, just saying how you've know, just got to really focus on each race as it comes, but Jasmine being from Maroubra, South Maroubra down in Sydney, uh, they get big swell. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that she... She really handled that really well and she looked really happy about it. But, yeah, exactly. It's, um, yeah, sometimes you can get a bit, I guess, um, you know, too concerned on the numbers and counting them. I think really when you start, you've just, yeah, got it. Just, just it's all about the simple things like the little one percenters, you know, the girls on screen at the moment for our next heat is, is getting that good start, getting that good slide, that first pop. It's forget how many get through and, and really start to, yeah, just go down and do the, you have that list of little things you need to do and, start with that checklist. It's a trap that you can fall into racing at the Aussies, isn't it? When you know that you have a big program, you think, okay, if this is the first round of a board, I'm going to try and save as much energy as possible. I guess either way, racing is supposed to hurt, and that's why yeah. we train all year for it. Definitely. The more you hurt in training, the less you'll hurt in racing. That's kind of one thing, a good mindset that you can have at training. But, yeah, absolutely. As we, we touched on before, all the athletes, they're so fit, and you know, anyone walking past, I just think, wow, look at... Look at all these athletes that are just these young kids down on the line, young men, female as well. And, and that's what's so, I guess, beautiful about our sport. Everyone is, is fit and healthy and have this real real aura about them, don't they? And, and I love that. And as Harriet also mentioned, as we just stopped for a start now, Harriet said, you know, you can always come back. You don't have to kind of go, hey, I'm never coming back to Aussies. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Harry in the future jumps in for a team or does a, a, does a board leg or something like that. It's, it's really wonderful. And, and touching on that, actually, Sam, you're going to be hitting the water a little bit later today. Well, you know, that's funny, actually, that you put the spotlight on me because I was about to say the same thing to you. You know, you're, spe you're speaking almost as if you want to be out yeah. there racing. Yeah, the single ski uh, in the open ski heat's coming up a little bit later today through to a semi-final. So I am watching all this with a little bit of interest today, um, particularly that big so. patch of rain. You've got your pen and your notes down there. <laughs> yeah, and plenty of lessons as well that I'm sure heat number 10 of the under-17 uh, female board race are going to show too. You know, we did see in that last heat, you simply can't hesitate. Yeah, there is surf, but you need to make sure that you get yourself to that window of opportunity that you did speak about so well in earlier in the open iron woman races as well because as you can see at the moment there is an opportunity for the field to get out the back and it's really important to take that chance when you get it like suede cole from morty alec is currently doing she looks to be our leader at the moment just one more way to get over the top of is she going to get over the top of that she will just ducking underneath but there are boards being rolled behind particularly from Brooke Pocock from Arungi Bay in New Zealand. She got tossed upside down just then. Yeah, wow, these girls. I think I feel like the set's a little bit smaller, potentially, 
as I just say that, one of the girls had to roll a big one. I won't be saying that again, but the first start, sorry, the, the heat before this was, you know, all the girls really had to roll, as we heard from Jasmine before. She had to she had to roll three to four or five times. So the girls, they look like they've gotten out pretty cleanly from now here. And, and it's just if you can get through these first rounds and just tap it off a little bit and not waste too much energy, you know, it, it's definitely some smart thing to do. Yeah, so a replay of this one at the moment. Our leader just getting underneath Sway, but the rest of the field getting absolutely thrown around by that wave, and that is what this Maruchidor bank and these conditions are offering today is a really heavy, explosive wave when it first breaks, but then after that it's losing a lot of power. So as easy as it is to say, it's all about just making sure you're not there when it breaks there, uh, as, that's, <laughs> as that saying goes. <laughs> Alexis Jane from Jan Juk currently leading at the moment. Great to see another club in Jan Juk as well represented here at the Aussies. So many clubs actually at the moment that we don't normally get to see throughout the whole year. So this is what the Aussies is all about and it's so great to see. It is, yeah, just saying Jan Juk. Wow, I remember doing it in interstate titles there. Oh, yeah. And the surf was, was massive. It was amazing. So Jan Juk will definitely be loving these conditions and, and certainly used to it. But it is incredible one of my actual nippers was, oh, i haven't seen my friend in a year because she was you know over thinking wa and so for a lot of people today they're, they're seeing their friends that they've made from when they're a very small you know small age to now and they see them once a year so it's a really um and that's what i love about the aussies yes you're competing and competing hard but the amount of friends that you make and, and the catch-ups and it's um it's it's an incredible week and I love that you can't kind of really walk more than 20 meters without saying hello to someone or catching up or giving a hug so it's just the best and it's something I think you know um, definitely looking back on just really make the most of it if you have a terrible race you know you can only look to your left or to your right and you'll see someone there who'll be definitely willing to give you a hug that you probably know so and and also representing your club as well and, and getting together and, and being a part of that so it's, um, yeah, the Aussies is just the absolute best, isn't it? Yeah, so well said, Courtney. Now, we're starting to see Heat 10 make their way back in at the moment to Swade Cole from Morty Alec, we've mentioned. Bethany Banforth from Mullaloo and Tara Kearns Flanagan from Cottesloe as well were all up towards that front too. But now the ocean's starting to go a little bit quiet with some sets building out the back. We will wait to see just how long it takes for these waves to get to the break zone, but there could be a second chance for our paddlers who are currently outside of that progression as well. Yeah, with board races, you don't want to be in sprint finish. I, I mean, anything can happen. It's just, it's, um, yeah, we're talking about being really cutthroat, and here we have our two competitors out in front. You've got to really get back and put all your weight to the back of that board so you can flick the nose up. And it's just that impact zone that's definitely the danger zone where you potentially could nose dive, go sideways. So these girls here... We're not too sure how many taking through, whether it's eight or a bit more cutthroat. Yeah, six. we will wait to see an official confirmation yeah. of that. Look, we'll assume eight for now, but uh, we will try and bring you that when we do get the chance in a moment. A little wave coming through for Morty Alec and Cottesloe as well, which does allow them the chance to relax too. So four are into the beach. We still have four more to come back in. So uh, it's all about just surviving the rounds at this point. Things might have gone wrong at the start of the race, whether that was having to roll some of those big sets that we saw or getting hit by waves, but it's all about just staying calm and trying to get through, getting the nose up, as these girls have done so well on this wave now. So this would make eight that will be crossing the line. Whether that's the cut or not, we will, we will remain to be seen. But job done at this point, Courtney. Yeah, they all look pretty relaxed there, don't they? It's so nice we can get one of your heats done and just really relax and you, again going back to that sprint finish you just don't want to want to go through that but I was actually talking to some of the officials yesterday and they showed me the technology where um, they can actually replay the sprint finishes and they have um, a line a highlighter line and you can know exactly who which competitor is coming first so if you know this competitor that they're not too sure about they can replay it and go back through it so it's very professional and and you know as a competitor out there that if there is a sprint finish that you are getting the correct result. So it's just wonderful how our sport is just moving above and beyond every single year. Which is so important as well, you know, to make sure, they always do the officials, and making sure we get those results right because, you know, a year of training can so often come down to the smallest of margins as well by the time that you do come across that line. So you're currently watching heat number 10 of the under-17 board race. We will be working through these board races before later on we have some finals in the surf teams and also the mixed double skis. But for now, let's go back to Josh on the beach. I'm down here with a couple of WA girls who've snuck through in that board race heat there. 
from Cottesloe and from Mullaloo over there. A long trip over for the West Australians, but you've come out in force. Yeah, it's good fun. Good to be in the swell. We don't have much of it back at home, so... I was, was going to say, when you got down here, did you think, oh, I'm not ready for this, or you fired up? Uh, oh, Fitness-wise, we're pretty ready, but it was good to get a few days beforehand just to get some skills. Yeah. Love it. Good luck for the Cot team in there. Mullaloo, big contingent out there for you guys. North of Perth, I think. Yeah, we are a bit further north than Cottesloe, but we've come from pretty much a lake in Mullaloo, so it's a bit different, but it's good to be out here in the swell. You did well in that one. A few big sets on the way out there. You survived? Yeah, I did. I was just glad I got through those first two waves that kind of swept everyone else back. But... Love it. Good luck for the rest of the championships. The West Australians are out in force, and they're on fire here in the 17 girls. Thank you very much, Josh. Now, we're going to leave the under-17 female area there and head straight back down to the men's because what you are seeing in the water right now is the final of the under-19 male surf team. So, we did mention that we were going to be having finals today. The decision has been made to run a straight final for these men rather than make them go through semi-finals. And here are our teams in the water. Sorrento, Newport A, Alexandra Headland, West Beach, Cooks Hill... Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Seacliff, Freshwater, Bulleye, Portsey, and Northcliff A. So, one club from each team, it does look like at the moment, and they are well into this race, Courtney. Like we did see in this same arena for the under-19 Ironman semi-finals, there were different decisions about whether you ran across the bank or jumped straight into that rip. We'll wait to see which of those does pay off best. Yeah, and with the swim teams as well, you can actually... So you get a draw across the whole field, but because there's four in each team, you can pick where you want to be. So usually the strongest swimmer, you're put on the worst side of the line, and then um, and then obviously your best... Yeah, sorry, your best and the worst, and then if you've got um, your swimmer that's a little bit... You know, not saying weaker, because obviously everyone's really good, but one of your athletes that might be... They don't like the running as much. Put them in the spot that's going to be the best. So it's, it's quite tactical when you're looking at where to line everyone up. And as we can see, the boys at the moment just stuck diving under. And this is one of our first, um, like, swims for the day, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And one of our first finals that we are seeing, you know, here of the day as well, if not the very first final on day two of the Aussies here at Maroochydore Beach, the under-19 swim team's final. We could pick up a cap from Cooks Hill. It did look like it might have been Alex Walker making his way out at the moment. We did see the Morris brothers in action in their Ironman semis. Northcliff towards the front of this field as well. There is so much depth and talent right across this age group, particularly in the Swinton. Yeah, I'm just reading some of the names at the moment. Northcliff A, have a listen to this. Riley Harland, Matthew Lowe, Jake Morris, Mitch Morris. So they're going to be very, very tough to beat. We look at Burley Headlands, Taj Andrew, Ethan Callahan, Jet Clayton, Fletcher Warren. Very, very tough as well. And then... Then we go to Newport as well, Luke Chafer, Anthony Doyle, Connor Mags and Noah Mags. So a few brothers in there, but very, very tough. And I think, yeah, across the field, there's some phenomenal swimmers when I was just reading out those names. Noah Mags coming up from the under-17s has certainly hold his own as well. But that might be a burly cap out, a uh, bull-eye rather, sorry, out in front at the moment. We have seen a bit of a resurgence in the racing at Bulleye as well. The club from Wollongong down there south of Sydney. Such a proud club that's produced so many champions as well. It's great to see them firing. Absolutely, yeah. They're, they're, we were talking about Orilla Barrett Point uh, yesterday and just that whole area. It's a beautiful place to live, isn't it, down the south coast there. and So many, so many talented athletes. And we saw Nicole, I was going to say Sheedy. Now Sim did so well on the Masters and she's doing some great things down there. But we can see a couple of the caps popping up. It looks like Portsy. They'll definitely love the big swell. They're all together in there, but it's, um, it's yeah, looking like the teams I mentioned of Northcliffe and Burley and also Newport are certainly right up the front there. And that field's a little bit more strung out than I thought we'd see, Courtney. I, I guess it's been broken up by the waves in the bank, right? Very much so. You usually don't see the field kind of stretched over that whole string line, but because we do have the swell and people are taking different lines out, that's when you really see this fight. For anyone watching, this is our first final for the day, the Under-19 Surf Teams final. It is a straight-out final. I'm sure the boys will be happy about that because they do a lot of racing. And out in front, we actually see it looks like it would be Newport at the moment. It would be either Connor Mags, could be Noah Mags out in front. I think that actually might be the cap of Bulleye out in front at the moment that we did mention. A uh, couple of really strong swimmers, a proud club as well. In fact, 
We'll have to wait and hear from our beach correspondent. I think he could have even been a bull at one point in time with the rest of his family as well. But it is going to be all determined by this wave that is starting to come through now as well. Not this one. There might be some sets starting to build. If you can crack a body wave and hold it to the beach, you will go a long way to determining your position. That wave is getting bigger and bigger, and it is going to pick up our swimmers. So we will see how many go down and how oh. many can hold it. It looks as though we had bodies on top of each other, water flying everywhere, and at the moment, none of them were able to hold it, although a few brought it a long way back to the beach, including Cook Seal, who, if he does turn around, could get this little lift alongside Northcliffe right now. This could be a big wave in the context of this race as well. Only Cooks Hill got down that little short arm and more waves out the back too. Some really strong body surfing. We will wait and see before they stand up, but it did look like that could be one of the walkers as well in the water there at the moment. So Cooks Hill, the club from Newcastle, it looks as though they will stand up and come across the line to take position number one, but that is not where this race is won, Courtney. It's all about what's happening on screen at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. That was, I have to agree with you, beautiful body surfing for the young gentleman on screen at the moment at Cooks Hill there, a lovely place to live. And, and behind there, he'll get the top point. So you just so the way this relay works is you're not actually cheering. Well, you're cheering each other on in your mind, but as we can see, Cooks Hill coming in there. Might be Ethan Callahan or Darby Meyer coming in. We've got Northcliffe there and the Burley. Oh, Burley are looking pretty good at the moment, but also, as you said, Bulleye have really come up the front there too. So at the moment, as we look on screen, you need all four competitors in and they will get the highest points. We did just see that there was someone who actually came across the line before Cooks Hill as well. We only caught a glimpse of their body as they flashed past. So we're not exactly sure which club that was that did cross for the first position. So that will make things really interesting. You can see now everyone's starting to look around and do a bit of head counting, yes. try and figure out where they are, where their club mates are because it could go a long way to determining the finish of this race. Every single place counts. It's all about running across that bank and trying to get in as well. A couple more caps now starting to come across the line. We do have Newport about to run up the beach as well. I think that might be Portsea there too, Sunshine Beach. So it always comes down to a bit of a mathematical equation, Courtney. You start counting heads and numbers and trying to do it yourself when you're standing there on the finish line. But... At the moment, it is going to be really close between some of those clubs that we saw earlier. Burley Heads, Northcliffe as well, were right towards the front. And it will be interesting to see how Cooks Hill can compete as well after they had a few towards that top ten as well. Yeah, you can just see that some of the boys just throwing the bodies, their bodies over the line because at the end of the day, I've seen so many times that with, with these finals for the surf teams, went competitive uh, sorry teams winning by one point losing by one point so it's just it's it comes down it's so so tight as we can see as we can see the competitors on screen at the moment it is just looking it is going to be really tricky and i'd say we won't know that result for another couple of minutes as the officials have to bring in yeah their, their mathematical skills at the moment yeah that's right the calculators will be coming out in just a moment we have a couple of competitors from uh this bull on the bottom of the screen we'll just try and pick that cap up in the middle so we will try and wait to see that result. We will bring you that result as soon as we have it. Josh Minogue standing by. Josh, you're pretty good with numbers. Can you figure it out for us? Oh, my maths isn't that good. Normally I'm one plus one and two plus two, but I do have the first man across the line, Riley Harlan, part of the Northcliffe crew, mate. Great swim. Obviously put your team in the best possible position. Yeah, it was a good swim. Probably sitting around third around the can. Then that big wave came and I just, just wanted to hold as long as I could. Got... It put me to the bottom, but then I just put a couple of hard strokes in and then got a little one at the end there and went up by myself, which is good. The, uh, the argument on the beach, you went over the top of me, I went over the top of you on that wave. It really cleaned this feel up, didn't it? Yeah, surf race, well, surf team, so it's probably the, the hardest swim with just how many people there are on it. And it's obviously for your team, so everyone's putting a bit more effort in and, you know, not letting anyone get anything on them. My rubbish calculations, I think Burley and yourself very, very close. Do you think you got it? Oh, well, yeah, obviously I'll say yes, but it'll be close. Probably only a couple of points in it, so hopefully we get the win. It'll be good. We might jump down in here and have a chat with a couple of Burley boys. Thanks, Riley. We'll jump in here first to the Burley boys across the line. We think it's come down to either yourselves or Northcliffe. Have you done the maths? Uh, no, nah, I'm not very good, but, um, yeah, it's going to be so close. Like, every point counts in this, and you can even, like, tell, like, all the Burley boys shooting tires across the line at the end there. Just means a lot to us, and take it back two years, and I raced up as a 17. Now you got Noel Max and the Newport team racing up. It's so special, and it's such a hard field. 
Tell us about going around the cans. Obviously, it's a bit of UFC moves through there. There's not much space. The boys are on top of each other. How tough is it? Yeah, well, we thought we were racing the string of four as well, but making that 90 degree turn makes it so much more difficult with like 40 people going, or 44 people going around the cans. So, yeah, we'll be close, but it'll be good. Good luck. We, uh, we're doing the maths as we speak. Hopefully, for your sake, you get it. I'm sure the other teams feel differently. Yeah, we'll go really high if we do. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, we will bring those results to everyone watching as soon as we do get them. The final of the under-19 surf teams race, Northcliff and Burley, very, very close there. We cannot call that race at the moment, even as we do get our mathematics specialist, Josh Minogue, on the calculations as well. This is semi-final number one of the Open Surf teams. We do have two semis, and we will bring you that start list in a moment. But first, we say goodbye to Courtney Hancock after the morning shift. And welcome Jenny Parry to commentary today. Jen, good morning. How are oh, you? Hello, Sam. I've missed you. And it looks like I've come in at a really, really good time of the day. I saw Courtney pop up and I was like, I'm going to jump in for 20 minutes. I want to watch some surf races. I want to watch some surf teams. And you've also done a good job getting out of the weather as well, as it looks as though <laughs> it starts to sweep across Stri the Ruchidor Beach too. So those results for the under-19 swim teams final, we will bring you in just a moment. And just as Court and I were suspecting, we did have someone get across the line before Charlie Walker from Cooks Hill as well. Now, this is the start of what we did see in the first semi-final earlier. Jen, some interesting decisions that we're starting to see. Oh, sorry, that was under-19. Some interesting mm -hmm. decisions that we are getting in terms of people splitting their lines and a big body wave at the finish. You could see Riley Harlan on the right-hand side of screen. He held that one all the way through. Here comes Charlie Walker from Cooks Hill. There was not much between it, as it always is the case in the swim teams comes down to every single position. I know. We always get so excited when we're like, there's Harlan, there's Walker. But then you're like, where are the other three people in yes. their team? Because as often happens in a surf team, you might have what I very respectfully call a non-swimmer in your team. So mm. someone who's not a specialist, someone who's making up the numbers. And I actually had a family dinner at Maruchidor a few nights ago with my good friend Magella Daniels. And she, and she was telling the story of... And she's a ski paddler. She's like, remember when I had to do that surf teams at state? So I guarantee you there will be <laughs> ski paddlers. There will be board paddlers. There will be people who are in the wrong place at the wrong time, sitting under the tent, and now have been drafted into one of the toughest races. You never want to be at the red and yellow can at a surf teams. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, I've got a few of those burned into my memory as yeah. well, not for the right reasons. But this is semi-final number one of the open male surf teams now hitting the water as well. Mermaid Beach A, Newport A, City of Perth, Surface Paradise B, Northcliff B, Cronulla, Northcliff C, Surface Paradise A, Seacliff and Northcliff A. It is classed right across the board. And just as we did predict, some really interesting lines being taken there as well. That tide has dropped out a fair way now that all competitors are running across the bank. But they did look to run in different directions. If you head left, you're going to run that a little bit further out to sea. And if you run right, you are going to get into the rip. It doesn't look as though there is much splitting those two lines at the moment. Absolutely. And this is also what I love about surf teams. It can be quite a strategic race sometimes, even before the race starts. So you have four people in each team and they line you up and they space you out evenly. So often it's, OK, do we put one of our weaker swimmers on the better end of the line to be able to take advantage of the conditions or do we front end load it? And if I've got Courtney Hancock in my team, I'm putting her in the best possible position for a win. So really love seeing the decisions that are made here. And I love it when you see a really clear split in the decision making here. And the most important thing is once you you've made that decision, you've got to go for it, you've got to back yourself, do not change horses mid-race. Yeah, that's right, and you often do see that happen as well. Jenny, we've been treated to some really exciting racing so far today. We're down to our final in the Open Iron Woman race, we're up to the semis in the Open Iron Man, as well as both the juniors serving up some really exciting iron races as well. What are you seeing in the conditions for swimmers today? Because mm -hmm. although there are sets coming through, that wind is yet to really cause some havoc out the back, right? Yeah, absolutely. And this is what we see at Maruchido, you know, day on day. And I think of, you know, the uh, the crew from Alex who've been coming down to train on in these conditions, they would know it just gets rough. Every single afternoon, the wind gets up, it gets choppy. So for some of our more specialist pool swimmers, they're going to really struggle to get into that beautiful rhythm that really gives them the great results. If you've got maybe a bit of a choppier stroke, if you can deal with a bit of water in the face, if you're a bit more resilient, um, that's where these are. Uh, competitors are really going to shine so I think this is where we may see some non-specialist swimmers maybe even some of our iron men let's face it Shannon Eckstein one of the greatest surf racers of every of all time because he got nine Aussie gold medals in the surf teams that is 
phenomenal. Absolutely ridiculous. And you wouldn't think of Shannon as a surf swimmer because he is one of the best Ironmen of all time. But as a surf swimmer, he could match it with the best. And that's where I love the unexpected stories that come through here. Remembering, it's all about where is your fourth place swimmer. Well, you mentioned how messy it generally gets at this beach. Something that caught my eye just then. All of the field having to cut a long way back towards that red and yellow can as well because... Yeah, it does look as though there is a fair bit of water moving too. There was one unnamed double ski crew who I, I'm not going not gonna to name. who missed the can yesterday in the double ski. And, no and, suspects at and, this stage. And they're the ones who are out of the water and, and get a good view of the can all the way in. So it just goes to show how much water there is out there at the moment. It looks as though that might be Jason S from Cronulla. We speak about swimmers who do love these choppy conditions. Absolutely. That man is absolutely licking his lips at the moment. I do love seeing a Cronulla cap out the front and uh, also there's two Surfers Paradise teams in the mix here so this is where it gets interesting. It's not just about where your swimmer finishes but are they in the A-team? Are they in the Killer Bees as well? This is where it gets interesting on the line and makes it a little bit tough for our judges as well because we can see a few Surfers Paradise in that top few there. I think we've got a Northcliffe in the mix but again there's uh, a few Northcliffe teams in the mix here as well. I think we've got the A's, the C's, yeah, and then the B's are in the next one. So here we go. We're coming into the wave zone. I'd say that wave behind is actually going to pick up a few of our competitors, and we know we've got some quality surf swimmers in here as well, the boys who do have the skills. So expecting a few to uh, mix it up a little bit. And the crazy part is this is a heat, a yeah. heat for surf teams. That also always tells me that we've got some great numbers if we're doing heats for surf teams. Jay Furness on the backstroke turns around. He's going to get this one through. He's perfectly positioned. However, approximately 10 other athletes on the wave. This is where it gets interesting. It's going to be a run up the beach and this is where I'm so happy not to be a finished judge with an iPad on the line. That's right. So they survived the drop of that wave and the initial break but they do have to get through the gutter as well. I think we did spy a sky blue cap starting to come through too. It could have been just a flash of colour from Cronulla too. Yeah, it is Jay Finesse. We did mention him earlier. He did cut back around that green and yellow can. He came a little bit further onto that bank and that did bring him all the way through now as well as there are plenty of waves standing up. So this field really being shaken up at the moment. Not a lot of urgency from the guys at the front. That's showing a lot of trust in your teammates to know that they would be in a good position too. But there are caps coming across the line from everywhere. And you did mention it earlier, we have two Surfers Paradise teams in here. We have two Northcliff teams in here as well. Three Northcliff teams, rather, A, B and C. So it certainly doesn't make it easy for the judges. Yeah, there we go. Sloman, Armstrong in the mix there. A few of our Newport crew bringing it home. So this is where it gets interesting. Mermaid Beach team A is in the mix as well. Matthew Gilling, David Miller, Jack Walton and George Wenman. City of Perth in the mix as well. They've had some incredible surf teams uh, back in the day. So let's see if they've got enough points on the board here to get the crew through to the next round. And this is where I love seeing some of our Iron Man in the mix, some of our board paddlers. I think is that Corey Taylor just on the end there as well, current World Iron Man champion. And this is what it means to be at Aussies. This is what it means to uh, say, yep, I've got surf teams on Thursday. This is what we're doing. Are we doing a heat as well? Fantastic. Yeah, that's <laughs> more races. Exactly right. Uh, you can see, geez, some big waiting coming through that gutter. Every place is so important. Jen, you mentioned Nick Sloman there before. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be seeing representing Australia at the Olympics later this year. Isn't it so great to see our Olympians back here mm -hmm. at Aussies? It's something that I know particularly Nick Sloman and, and Bailey Armstrong, your swimmer in Northcliffe as well, although they spend most of their time and focus on the open water swimming, they love coming to Aussies and getting the chance to catch up and race with everyone. Josh Minogi standing by on the beach. Josh, down to you. I've, uh, I've got it primitive result for that under-19 final. It's ended up a draw between Northcliffe and Burley Heads Mowbray Park. They both ended up on 31. I think Northcliffe, because they had the first team home, might get it, but we're leaving it to the judges. They're going to recount it. So that's how close it was. Both teams ended up on 31 points, and it's going to come down to basically one spot of their fourth swimmer across the line. In this open semi-final, Jay Finesse, the Cronulla Club, mate, big sets coming through out there. Did you get a nice little wave? Yeah, I did get a nice little wave. Um, it was pretty tricky out there. Um, coming in, you just got to pick your, your moment and your time coming in and keep away from that little rip. And uh, lucky I did that. And uh, yeah, I just came away with a wave at the end and got it all the way through. Former Australian board race champion, but getting it done here in the swim, mate. Is, it a, is that what, the way it is in these team events? You fill in the gaps where you have to? Yeah, I'm a bit more buoyant now. So I think I've given the, um, the board paddling up and uh, 
swim and ski now. It is for me, Josh. I love it, mate. Congratulations. Great swim there. Cronulla right on the edge here of getting through. It looks like Northcliffe 100%. They'll get through. So will Surface Paradise. They were absolutely on fire there. So maybe the favourite for the final along with Northcliffe have just gone round in that one. Josh, we'll just stay with you for a moment. You delivered us a result about that under-19 surf team's final. Over your shoulder, we can see so many nervous faces. What's it like down on the beach in a moment like this where everyone's standing by? Yeah, I think the boys were doing their own calculations. It was back and forward. Nobody could really figure out what that happened. And it was because they both ended up on 31 points. The coaches are there. There's team managers with the calculators out. It's a very hard race to pick. A lot of nerves, a bit of banter as well. These 19 boys, they talk more smack than I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. I did this, you did that, you came down on the top. And I don't know if any of it's true, to be completely honest. But they're having a blast down here. That 19 age group, very good as well. Some top-level men, And that's generation next so it's good to see them having some fun down here and got a little bit more serious in the opens but the 19s are on fire at the moment yeah thank you very much josh we'll come back to you a little bit later as no doubt we do get those results official and try and bring you an interview from that under 19 surf team's final looking back up towards the women's arena this looks to be another heat of the now open board race as well but those surf teams starting to fire through jen we thought it was going to be close between Northcliffe and burley in that under 19s a tie on points. That's mm -hmm. remarkable. That is, uh, it's fairly rare, I want to say, uh, but this is where we go back to the rule book. We check check the rule as well. It's all about where those uh, finishes were. And uh, again, great to see two Queensland clubs in the mix. It's always very hotly contested, but really keen to see who gets through for that uh, open event as well. And I love that it's, you know, Thursday morning, more Aussie gold medals being handed out. They are rare, they are precious, and uh, we're about to hand out a few more. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we are standing by for some more results on that. The officials also now trying to get through calculating those open surf team's results as well. They'd be standing there thinking, oh, gee, the calculator's about to get a good workout. Mm -hmm. So too the Life Heats app as well. But, Jenny, really tight racing, really important racing as well, because one thing that we've spoken about with these conditions today and yesterday as well here at Maroochydore Beach on the Sunshine Coast is that although... The instinct is to try and take things a little bit easier in heats of the board, as we saw there on screen, also the semi-final of this surf teams. You really can't because one wave at the end is going to throw everything upside down. One wave at the end and potentially one wave in the beginning. We saw actually yeah. some casualties early yesterday and, you know, we always know that we're going to get great stories out of Aussies. Unfortunately, we're also going to get some really hard luck stories as well. And to see some of those early knockouts that no one was expecting, that's a tough way to start your Aussies. But this is where, for those athletes who maybe haven't had the best of luck, this is where they'll rest, regroup, recover. They'll, they'll gather their teammates around them because... Thursday morning, you've got surf teams, you've got another board relay heat. You know, this is all happening and this is what Aussies is about. The highs are high, the lows are low. This is what we're here for, though. I absolutely love it. Well, there needs to be that acceptance, doesn't it, that, you know, things may not go your way, but you can't do anything about it and you've got to dust yourself back off and, and, and race again. Jim Walker spoke really well about that this morning, saying, yes, it's very hard when some of our big-name athletes get knocked early and there are those casualties, but... What about those who get through an extra round than they might have thought? And, and that's what this Aussie is, is all about as well. It's a celebration of clubs across the country and it's about everyone getting in there and just giving it their absolute best. And there are plenty of those stories too, you know, people making it those rounds further. Jay Finesse joking about his swimming now, but he's still at the front of races as well. And Cronulla could be in a swim team's final in the Opens that, you know, a few years ago they didn't have many competitors at all in the Opens. So it's so great to have that coming through. Yep, absolutely. So it is tough. And actually, I had a conversation as I was uh, getting myself a bacon and egg roll from the Richardor kiosk this morning, and people were celebrating, yeah, I actually made an Aussie final. I'm in the open ski. Like, these are the great stories that we want to know about. And if you've got a great story, make sure you include us in the conversation as well. Hashtag Aussies 2024. I have been loving the photos that have been shared each night and those stories of, I made a semi, we got knocked out, we got an extra place. But... I tell you what, it is one of the best places to uh, run an event as well. We've got our entire village around us as well with the Sunshine Coast Council and the Visit Sunshine Coast. Yeah, that's right. The Sunshine Coast welcomes all competitors, spectators and visitors for the Aussies. Stay and explore the pristine beaches or refresh and relax in the breathtaking Sunshine Coast hinterland. Discover the coast while you're here. Check out visitsunshinecoast.com. And we are getting underway now in heat five of the open female board race. One of our paddlers choosing to run down the beach as well. So more and more of these decisions are starting to come on show too in what are tricky conditions here at the Aussies. 
And keep your eye on uh, the uh, girl at the top of your screen, the uh, navy blue cap with the bright pink board. That is Brody Trinker from Southport in Queensland, one of the fastest board paddlers going around. She's uh, had such an incredible last few seasons. We've seen her at the state championships. We've seen her at the uh, Super Surf Teams League for the uh, Makos in there as well. I know she's got a brand new board for this Aussies as well, so expecting her to do some wonderful things. But, of course, we cannot have a board race, and I could not go past Lizzie Wellborn as well from Newport. She's got her teammates, Annalise Kibble, in the mix as well. Grace Harris is there from Alexandra Headland, Electra Outram from Sunshine Beach. Now we talk about that there are no easy heats, there are no easy semis or finals at Aussies, but considering we've got seven heats in total, this seems like a rough matchup already. Yeah, yeah, really cutthroat and that is just the standard of racing that we are seeing here in the Open Women's uh, Arena as well. We singled out Brodie Trinker and Lizzie Wellborn as well, two athletes who did unfortunately lose their craft this morning in the Open Iron Women semi-finals. And that really speaks to what we were discussing, that you just need to dust yourself off and get back out there as well because there is another race coming up very quickly and you need to make sure that you are firing and ready to go too. So the right-hand side of the line, they snuck out through some, some really clean water. On the left, they are rolling waves. That is Wellborn. Trinket is down there as well. Those two are two of the best board paddlers in the country and right now they have their work cut out for them to make it through this heat. Yeah, that is really, really rough to start. And again, I think Brody Trinker, if anyone's going to recover, it's going to be her, Lizzie Wellborn, in the bright pink togs on screen at the moment. And just to really raise the level of difficulty, Harriet Brown's in this heat yeah. as well. Not only uh, one of Lizzie's friends, her business partner as well, and Harriet highly credentialed board paddler and she's had a real resurgence at the end of this season she had a really great uh, Queensland championships and you know we talk about this maybe her last really big Aussies or her last big race as a professional iron woman across the season so I think that there could be something uh, wonderful looming for Harriet I know the beach would not be uh, disappointed to see her get some uh, great results and uh, take a few big W's uh, in one of her last big seasons. And she seems like she's in such a great headspace as well. She spoke mm -hmm. to Josh after winning her Iron Woman semi-final today and said, yeah, there's a certain element of luck involved. You need to have the skills mm -hmm. as well, but you also just need to be aware that things may or may not go your way. One thing that's caught my eye throughout the morning is that, again, we could see our competitors getting swept south of the turning can. There is a lot of water moving right out the back as well. So, as we keep an eye on that chase from Trinker and Wellborn as they look to come back onto the pack, that may give them a bit of a boost as well. Because at the moment, they do have work to do to try and make it through. We're not sure of the exact progressions at the moment, but is cutthroat racing here today. Absolutely. We generally assume eight to go through. And uh, Grace Harris from Alexandra Headland, the pink board that she's in, the black and gold quartered cap at the moment. She's in a fantastic position. Le Electra Outram just behind her and Harriet Brown, who we were speaking about just earlier, in the mix as well. And I love these uh, aerial shots in the deeper water because you can see the uh, distance between, between the swells out here. And uh, they, they've got some size to them. Yeah, that's exactly right. So... We can see Lizzie Wellborn at the top of the screen. She's coming around that third turning can at the moment. She's starting to close that gap too. We will be watching with interest to see how many positions she can pick up as she makes her way back in because waves are now starting to stand up. That's Outram out in front. Harriet Brown getting a nice little lift just there with Annalise Kibble behind her as well. And they have had their head down and paddling all the way to the break because... They know exactly what's on the line here. Yeah, I want to say that uh, Lizzie Wellborn at the moment, probably within that top eight, if we assume that that is how many people who are coming through, she's doing all right at the moment, but Brody Trinker needs a really big finish. And, you know, if it comes down to a sprint finish, Brody Trinker has some speed across the sand. But this is not the way you want to be progressing through the heats knowing that it's Thursday morning, knowing that you've got quite a few big races left to go as Annalise Kibble just is going to miss that one here. But... Shout out to Electra Outram. What a season she has had as well, uh, making a, a bit of a comeback into the Nutrigrain Iron Woman series. And it, and it feels bizarre talking about a comeback for someone of her very tender age, but wonderful to see her doing incredible things. And there we go. Nearly a late takeoff, but one, two, three on a wave and no one on the one behind. Yeah, that's right. And that wave behind might double up as well. So that is a nice run all the way into the beach for our three leaders. They are our top three and they come back together getting ready for a nice walk up the beach as well. But... It will be very interesting to note who is out the back because that would be a huge story if, oh, as one of our oh paddlers no, just goes Grace. in for a little swim at the moment, but thankfully for her, she is still in a comfortable position. If Brody Trinker and Lizzie Wellborn are two of the favourites to take out this entire race come Sunday, mm. if they were to miss, it would be a big story. So we'll be watching with interest. We do believe at the moment that it might be eight through. We are 
Assuming eight through, we will try and bring you confirmation on that as soon as we can. But for now, we cast our eye out the back. I think we are going to see a sprint finish up the sand here, Jan. It is going to be very tight. So one, two, and three are through. I want to say Sophie Boyd from Coogeon Headland, she is going to uh, get there as well. Remembering that all of the uh, the draws and the results from this weekend's, uh, this carnival's uh, competition is at uh, livehates.com. And I think we are lining up again another heat here. We can see... Uh, Wow, wait, the officials wasting no time at all and multiple arenas running for the open women's board here. So we can see the girls on screen heading back out now. This is where it gets interesting. That's Burley Heads Mowbray Park, the uh, black cap. And I love these shots. It shows you that the girls have been hit by a little bit of water when the field is this spread out, only maybe, what, a minute into the race? Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Now, we are starting to see results come through from heat number five that we did cut away from at the end. And although we aren't certain of the progressions, it was Outram in one, Brown in two, Grace Harris in third, Sophie Boyd from Coogeon in four, Annalise Kibble from Newport in five, Lizzie Wellborn from Newport in six. She will progress. Olive Pierce from Burley Heads Mowbray Park was seventh. Brody Trinker from Southport in eighth place. And that is all that we have scanned on liveheats.com at the moment. So I think we could assume that, that that would be the top eight to progress. Although we have just seen eighth place checked back out again from Trinker. So I think they are going to the video. So eighth place yet to be determined in heat number five. We are currently on screen with what we believe might be heat number seven. Or heat, heat number seven is currently on screen. At the moment, they have split the odds and evens. Heat's numbers as they make their way out to that first turning camp. Ah, there you go. I was in the uh, wrong arena here. I thought we were a little <laughs> bit further down, but I think I did see a sneak of Maddie Spencer just earlier from uh, the Newport Club. So we can see the crew coming through. There we go. That is uh, Alicia Fay from Manly in front at the moment doing a fantastic job there. And I think the girls will be feeling a fair bit of relief as they come through, knowing that they're out cleanly, knowing that, let's face it, if you've got to Aussies, if you're in this position, everyone's got the board speed out the back and the uh, stamina to make it through the course but it's all about those waves and putting yourself in the best possible position as we come through here and um, looking at that, that previous race again Brody Trinker is back in eighth position uh, Brody you're not doing my nerves any good up here in the booth but we're hoping that she's through and that would mean that Charlie Burns is in nine and Jazz Shipway car from Trigg just behind there so here we have Maddie Spencer on screen doing a fantastic job a wonderful way to open uh, her board race campaign here we've also got Lily O'Sullivan from Burley Heads Mowbray Park in the mix that is the uh, black cap there with the green and gold stripes yeah, so a really tight result in that previous heat. I think there would have been a lot of girls on the beach looking out to sea and wondering, mm. gee, you know, we can't afford to be in a similar position. That would have been a huge story, but Brody Trinker and Lizzie Wellborn both recovering to progress. Now, that does really make it clear why some of those athletes choose to, chose to run down the beach, rather, on that start line and get into that rip. So it will be interesting to see how many more follow that. As it looks as though... The sun comes back out on the I Sunshine know. Coast here after that rain squall came through a little bit earlier today. Maddie Spencer at the moment from Newport, out in front. Yep, great to see a few sea, cl sea cliff caps in the mix here as well. That is the uh, plain black, all black cap. Katie Nat, Katie Nat and Anika Kidd, two of the absolute superstars of uh, South Australian life saving. And speaking of superstars, Maddie Spencer doing everything to get down that wave there. And that is how you want to come through in a heat, nice and cruisy. Pick your line. No one's going to get in your way from here. But again, we see it is so tricky. A lot of water moving around and side to side down there as well, which is why we saw Grace Harris have that little, uh, that little stumble earlier. It's really tough out there. Yeah, that's right. Such an experienced campaigner, Maddie Spencer. It's great to see her once again representing a look at this wave that's starting to come through that is a bomb that he's going to bring our next three paddlers through. All of them have held it as well. Lily O'Sullivan getting a little double up to bring her back alongside Maddie Spencer as well. So a nice calm jog up the beach for them to take out what is heat number seven of the open female board. Later today, we will be going right through to the semi-finals. We will get those done ahead of Sunday's final as well. So things starting to move through the program here at the Aussies to start off day two, Jan. Absolutely. Thursday is very much the grind day. While we are ha handing out a, uh, a few gold medals, it is all about 
the heats, the quarters, the semis, getting through to those, really starting to say, can I be there on Sunday? Can I get through? And uh, thinking about the girls coming down those incredible waves earlier. If you're not following Surf Life Save Australia on Instagram, highly recommended. They had some incredible shots that were shared yesterday, including this absolute blinder of Claudia Rose Slaven from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. It was uh, from a sequence of Im in Im images that one of our South Australian photographers, uh, Danian Hards, took. Um, he, I know he does a lot of work with Surf Life Saving South Australia, and I have seen that picture of Claudia Rose Slaven uh, on this bright red board, fully airborne. It's been shared over so many different accounts and things like that, and wonderful to uh, have Danian Hards of uh, South Australia working with Surf Life Saving Australia and all the media crews to bring us these incredible images from the championships. It's one of the greatest surf sport shots I think I've ever seen. It's so good. It, it, it completely blew my mind. If you haven't seen it, head to at SLSA on Instagram as well, Surf Life Saving Australia, and check that out. And that is where you can stay up to date with everything that's happening here at the Aussies as well. So those heats now starting to move through. We are going to see some junior uh, female racing as well in the board heats before we get back into the quarterfinals for all of those athletes as well. They are going through to the semis today. We will have uh, finals coming up shortly in the open surf teams as well. We did see some of those semis going around at the moment, but for the first time today, we say good morning to Christy, who's down on the bench. Good morning, guys. Yes, thank you. I'm down here with Lily from Burley Heads. Not even really puffing. Um, obviously, the goal is just to make it through safely through these early qualifiers. You've done that? Yeah, look, it's really tricky conditions out there today. We've got the shallow bank, the rips pulling lots of different ways. So, um, yeah, the key is to just get in and out without getting hit, really. But, yeah, I managed to do that. Has it smoothed off, smoothed off a little bit now that we've had that um, rain sprawl pass through, the sunshine's back out, or is it much the same conditions as it has been all day? Um, it's pretty much the same conditions as it has been all day. The tide's dropped a bit now, so there is a lot more water pulling off that bank, which makes it more tricky knowing where to go in and out. But, um, yeah, hopefully throughout the day it'll start to come back in and, yeah, ease up the conditions a bit. We've seen you have some great races already over the, the first couple of days of the program. You're a really strong board paddler. Is that something you've been working on this summer? Um, I like to think that I've been working on all three of my legs. Um, I don't think I have a real weakness at the moment, but, yeah, kind of just working all three of them and, yeah, getting them up to speed. Well, we wish you all the best as you progress through the rounds and hopefully into the finals. Thank you. Oh, and a great yep. chat down. Oh, sorry, Sam, we interrupted. I just get excited when Christy's chatting to uh, incredible incredible competitors like uh, Lily O'Sullivan, and great to see her and the Burley Heads Mowbray Park crew making the most of the conditions down here as we get these gorgeous shots across the beach here and uh, on the walk down this morning. We've got boats in action. Alexandra Headlands is busy as well as we've got the results there of the open female board race. Great to see Lily O'Sullivan, who we just spoke to, getting through nice and easily. Maddie Spencer, Courtney Bryant from Noosa, Bernadette Hughes from North Bondi, Alicia Fay from Manly, Katie Natt of Seacliff, Abby Tolano and Jade Slee. We're assuming the top eight through at this stage, but uh, tough racing all around. And uh, a big shout out to our ladies who are working their way through these conditions. The, and the conditions are changing a fair bit as well, Jen. Even from what we've seen so far today, that drone shot really tells the story. That tide is starting to drop out. It's exposing that sandbank. And also plenty of those rips along the beach as well, which is one thing that these men on screen are certainly looking out for. This is the Open Men's Surf Team Final. We did see those two semi-finals go around today as well. So important as well. Just making sure you get into that final. But now that they have had a rest, they are lining up and they're ready to go as they get ready. I'd also like to say welcome to Josh Minogue who braved the weather this morning. He braved the elements and the rain but now he's in the calm of the commentary booth. I oh, know it's good to get out that's for sure and uh, it was a great morning down there so far. We've really had a blast on the beach here at Maroochydore and I'm loving it so far. Great racing. Uh, a little bit of drama early on in those iron semi-finals, the iron quarterfinals for the boys and the girls there. Good, good 19 surf teams earlier on and now we're going to throw the open boys in there they were pretty relaxed in those semis i saw them crossing the line there they weren't too fast i think a lot of the teams knew exactly what they were what they were doing whether they'd get through but it ended up very very close in that under 19 men's equal points i think northcliffe got the nod in the end because they had the first four of their competitors across the line before burley did in the end it was a sprint up the beach 14th and 15th place that was the difference in the end so Northcliffe, Burley, and then Newport grabbed the bronze in that one. So 19s is run and done. It's time for the Opens. We've seen the two 
semi-finals go around for the open surf teams and the start list looks a little bit like this. Wanda, Team A, Manly A, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park A, Cronulla, Northcliffe B, Surfers Paradise A, North Bondi A, Corumban A, Northcliffe A and Newport A as well. This is going to be an exciting race. There is so much going on out in the water as well. The athletes are standing by, so too is Christy who's down on the sand. Yeah, I'm down here with Jay Finesse and I've um, been given the hot tip. You were first out in the semis. A little bit more pressure, obviously, your team wanting you to um, back that up now. We've come finals time. Yeah, I've set the um, bar bar up pretty high there. So we'll see how we go. We've got to swap the positions out on the, around on the line and um, I'll try and replicate that again and, and get across that bank. But we've got some pretty red hot swimmers, so we'll see how we go. Who have you got joining you in your team? Uh, we've got Nathan Ford, Tim Ford and um, William Bannister. So we've got some uh, all right, swimmers and then, uh, yeah, see how we go. It is a really hot field. Um, what are the tactics going in, just working together or, as you mentioned, mixing those positions up on the start line? Um, yeah, I think we need to really, like, our, our strategy is kind of putting the, the weakest swimmers in that bank where, where the leaders led out the last race and then um, the strongest swimmers in the tougher positions. So we'll see how we go and give it a crack. I'll let you go and get ready. All the best of luck. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. And best of luck to Jay Finesse as well, who is getting ready to race this Open Surf Team's final. So a few nervous faces. And you can see some of those decisions are yet to be made, Josh, about where those athletes are going to line up. The coaches are having some of those discussions at the moment. Yeah, you can see at the bottom of the screen there, that's Michael King for, with the Burley Heads Mowbray Park crew. He's barking orders at the boys, go this way, get on the line there. Interestingly, Northcliffe, they've really had a stranglehold on this event. I think they've won basically eight or nine of the last 10 or 12 uh, here at the Australian Championships. But I got told by Phil McGibbon on the beach, they're not the greatest club of all time. Manly has the most wins of all time in this event. A lot back in the 50s, the 60s around then, and plenty in the 90s as well. They had a real red-hot crew there. So the Manly club are ones to watch. Surface Paradise got the silver last year. Burley Heads Mowbray Park got the bronze. I'd expect those three. You add Newport in there as well. Wanda were the New South Wales champions, so watch for Wanda. They've got a good young team. Probably no superstars that stand out, but they got first, second and third in the surf race at the New South Wales Championships as well. So a couple of teams that really could mix it up here with the big boys, but Northcliffe, they've got to be the favourites. Well, you mentioned Wanda. They will be liking these conditions. And Northcliffe, this is what I want to ask you, Josh. We do see Nick Sloman about Bailey Armstrong among the field today, the two best surf swimmers in the country. There's yeah. no doubting that. But what does this long run across the bank do to their race and also the race uh, for the rest of the team? I think it depends on who you are. And like we heard from before, you put different guys on different spots of the line. Nicky Sloman, he was a, a bit of an Iron Man as a junior coming through. So he's not too bad across the sand. Bailey Armstrong looks like a baby giraffe struggling <laughs> to get up uh, after it's just been born. So you put him in the spot where he's going to go straight to the water, get in that deep water, get swimming. And... This is an absolutely stacked lineup here. We saw one of the Brennan boys there, Joey Collins, the yellow cap. That is Charlie Brooks. The man there in the red togs, a two-time Olympian and open water swimmer, Jared Port there. So he went to the London Olympics and the Rio Olympics as well, 1,500 open water swimming. So there is an absolute stacked line of swimmers here. That is Connor Maggs, one of the best young up-and-coming surf swimmers in the entire sport. The Northcliffe team, they've got a couple in this final. They'll be very, very good out in front at the moment. And you can't count out your Corumban and that sort of, those sort of sides. They're, they're good enough to be close. And if they can get a wave, maybe their weaker swimmers can punch through and get an, a 15th or a 14th. That might be enough if you've got a couple at the top end. Yeah, that's right. There is so much to play out on the way back in from the Cairns with this wave zone. And plenty of interested onlookers as well trying to figure out exactly what line We'll be taking because we did see the, the team split as they ran across the bank in those earlier semis as well and the under-19s final. Some athletes choosing to run a long way north. That sweep is moving water out near the cans as well. So those who can avoid swimming back onto the can where possible are certainly hoping for that. Nick Sloman, he was standing at the back of the camera shot just then. It looks as though North Cliff are putting him the furthest to the south on the start line as well and allowing him just to find a bit of water to swim in. Yeah, that's exactly right. You've got to play to your strength there. And when you've got the likes of Joey Collins as well, who's so quick across the bank, you put the boys who can run on the bank, you put the boys who can swim in the rip and you hope it plays out. And sometimes 
it'll be funny, like, you might put your best swimmer in the worst possible spot because that allows your weaker swimmers an easier run out. So if you see a Nick Sloman coming around the cans in a ninth or a tenth or a twelfth, you know he's had to work to get there, and that's the best thing for the team without a shadow of a doubt. Little Nate Steiner there, um, sorry, Noah Steiner there, he is one to watch as well, and big Benny Carberry. He <laughs> won't be worried about the push and shove around the cans. There is not a bloke who would do better in that little fight they get into as you turn that first can than Benny Carberry. Have a look at him there. He's a big lad. Used to play front row for the Burley Bears in the Queensland Cup. He had a couple of seasons there. His old man was a very, very good footballer in the, well, it wasn't the NRL at the time, but at that level, the Sydney comp. So he doesn't mind a wrestle either. He's a, <laughs> he's a bit of an amateur UFC fan, so don't get too close to Big Benny as you go around. And this is an absolutely stacked final. It's not an event that the boys, I don't think they love to do it, but when it gets to the Aussie titles in the final, they all put their hand up because they know they're a shot. That's exactly right. I think one thing is for certain, if, if I was standing on that start line, one line that I would be taking is the opposite direction to Benny Carver if they make their way into the water as well. 100%. So we are not far away from a start here in the Open Men's Swim Team's final, the Championship of Australia. The positions are set, the final briefing is being given, and now the starter is walking towards the back of the line as well. A few nervous looks from side to side. You can see Kendrick Louie put, putting his head out to get a bit of a lay of the land as well. Probably the most experienced swimmer that we're seeing in the field here today as well. But a big run is ahead of him at the moment those feet now starting to dig into the start line. Yeah, they're set. They look ready to go, and all bets are off at this point. You know you've got to get yourself out to the can. You've got to help your teammates if you can and try and stop everybody else. A little false start there. I don't know who it was, and I don't think they'll find out. They'll bring them back to the line, but the nerves really ramp up when we get to these finals. The Surf Team's Championship of Australia, and we are in for an absolute show off and away and the boys finally got off clean a little bit of, of a struggle there from Burley Heads Mowbray Park at the back I think he really struggled to get along Willie Savage there and have a look in the centre is that Joey Collins who's being shot out of a gun there in the middle Ben Carberry goes after him and you can see a couple of boys really struggling at the back here and battling across that bank and if you've got the ability to get the knees up get the hips going and get those legs out of the water it is such an advantage when conditions are like they are well I think that might have been and Zach Morris, who did make that decision to just run as hard as he could through the gutter. If he tripped and fell in a pothole, so be it, but it worked out for him. That was a huge advantage with Ben Carberry not far behind him. There was plenty of jostling after that gun did fire. A few guys stopping and pulling to the back of the pack. They did get squeezed out, but that is not what you want to be at the moment in a surf race like this when there are so many bodies coming towards those cans. And just like that, Zach Morris is already out the back. He's currently leading this field ahead of Ben Carberry in the centre of frame. Yeah, I think Noah Steiner hot on his heels as well. Maybe Hayden Cotter there, 14 for Manly. So a couple of light blue caps there. That's Wanda and Manly in third and fourth and as we said Zachy Morris on fire at the moment he is very quick off the beach probably doesn't have the back end that some of these swimmers will have and you'll expect to see your Slomans and your Bailey Armstrongs really work into this one but it's Northcliffe out in front Burley Heads Mowbray Park Manly in third Wander in fourth and then Corumban there the Brennan boys are very very good swimmers expect for them to be in the mix especially when there's a wave on as well uh, one of the Brennan boys Callum he got a win at the Queensland Championships in the individual surf race so these boys can absolutely fly at the moment. We see Newport in there, and it's just arms and legs on top of each other. If you can't make space, you take space. And if you, your hand or your leg ends up on top of somebody, you just put it in the water and pull as hard as you can. And they are the well, the unwritten rules of surf racing out here. And have a look at them going into that well, first we are, we are about to see that right now. Bodies coming on top of each other at that red and yellow can. A lot of the field getting swept further to the south of the can, and that is the painful result of it because there is nowhere to move as they make their way around. Josh, that is brutal. And the tough part I'm seeing here is the caps start to filter through. There's no sort of one team that's done really well. You see a couple of Burley and Northcliffe at the front, a few of them well at the back of the pack. A Newport cap there is not where you want to be. Cronulla right on the tail and will need a wave if he's going to get back into it. There's Manly as well. They've got one at the very front, one at the very back, and that's what makes this surf team so difficult is you've got to have four guys who can find themselves at the front of the surf race in that top 15. Well, we're starting to see the field make its way back in. They've swam around the string of nine rather than the four black and whites as well. 
and this being a slightly shorter surf race than we might normally see, it hasn't given those open water specialists time to hit the front as well. It is still our iron swimmers leading at the moment. We can start to see Nick Sloman and Bailey Armstrong from Northcliffe coming up the inside, but it, one wave could change his whole race. Yeah, they're in the centre. They're really starting to wind up, and I think they're going to hit almost the lead just as they get into this wave zone, but it might be too little, too late. A wave's on. Our leaders are definitely going to get down it. Will they? No. It just fills up there for both Benny Carberry and Zach Morris. You can see a couple of the North Newport boys starting to really go to work. There's Nick Sloman and Bailey Armstrong in the background starting to grind into this one. So our lead pack, you'd have to think three of the Northcliffe team there in that. At the moment Burley sitting pretty as well. They've got a couple in that next group. Wanda there very desperate. Manly one at the front and one in last place. They're going to need a wave if they're going to be in the mix. But here we go. There's a wave on for the boys. And a wave standing up for the first time on the way back in. So we do have a few swimmers that were a little bit further back getting picked up. There was a second Wanda cap there in the mix. Benny Carberry did a really good job of holding that. But that does look to be Hayden Cotter from Manly who is out in front milking that wave for every Everything he could and now the mad scramble across the bank as well as what might be looming behind as well because there is an opportunity for teams to come through. Two from Newport on waves behind. Hayden Cotter thought he had a win there, but he's just been eaten up by that wave. A couple of Northcliffe caps on it as well, so there's Corumban in there. Hayden Cotter, a former Australian su swim team member. They get up and here we go, the charge across. Maybe Zachy Morris on the side there, closest to us. Ben Carberry, he takes a fall as well. That might cost the Burley team. Zach Morris from gun to finish lines led the whole way round, but the race isn't over. We start to count the Northcliffe caps, and there's four or five across the line at the moment, but there's two Northcliffe teams, so maybe a couple of those guys, and I think the second of the Northcliffe boys across the line, he's in the B team as well. Joey Collins gets in there. There's Kendrick Louie across the line. Here comes Surface Paradise with Finn Askew, Ali Day as well. Surfers will go close to a minor medal because they had a lot up in that top end, but it might be too little too late for these boys. They're all sitting in the top 20. I don't know if it's enough. If I had to put my money on it at the moment, I would say, oh, Jack O'Borg, all the way to the finish line. I love that. If I had to put my money on it at the moment, I'd say Northcliffe, but only just. I don't want to go early, but when that first pack came across the line, the only swimmer missing from Northcliffe's A team was Joe Collins, who we did see cross from that aerial drone shot in about 12th place as well. So this will be interesting to see exactly where they land, though, because as we mentioned, we've got a lot of Northcliffe teams in there just making sure we do know which uh, swimmer is in which team. Yeah, and you start to see the sort of stragglers at the back and you see a Wanda competitor or you see a Newport competitor, and realistically, that takes them out of the overall calculations. If you've got a, a 30 or a 40 in there, you're almost done because Northcliffe, I think, had everybody inside that top 10 or 12. So... You might be telling another one up for the Northcliffe Club here. They won the under-19s on a count back. We will have to see down on the beach. Do you know who's going to win this one? Because up here in the box, we have no idea at all, Christy. Josh, we haven't heard anything official yet, but Zach reckons, reckons you've got it. Um, well, four across the line on the front line and um, your top six not too far away as well. So unofficially, but um, how was that race? You led it from start to finish. Yeah, I'm lucky I've got probably the longest legs in the field, so I just held my feet on that first little gutter bit and then waited out pretty much to the back of the break. And I had my gap then, I think calves on my feet, so we just went around then, yeah, the wave came in and got up on the bank again and ran across, so yeah. And that, that's two of our B team in the front line too, so yeah, it's me, Nick, uh, Bailey and Joe, so that's the A team, so hopefully we get there. Yeah, there was plenty of Northcliffe across the line. We were counting heads too, not quite too sure, A and B teams. But um, I think you've got the majority um, up the pointy end. What were your thoughts coming down that way? Did you know you had Northcliffe caps around you? Uh, I knew that we had, uh, I know Sloman and Ruben were there and Bailey because they were hunting us down because it died towards the back end. But yeah, on that wave, we got the first one. I think Hayden was there too, and it kind of died off a little bit. But then, yeah, when we stood up and I looked around and saw us boys there, and I was like, oh, surely we got this. And how special are the team events? I know we've got some individual finals coming up on Sunday. We talk about those, but um, these team event gold medals are pretty special, aren't they? Yeah, I, I always say teams is the most important. Um, I know my best racing is in team events. So, yeah, that's the team event means everything 
to me, and I'm sure it does to most of these boys. But yeah, a good a win in the team events a lot better than the individual. And we could see that with the ferocity that everyone ran into the water and out of the water wanting um, wanting medals for this open male surf teams. We will have to wait for the official results, but um, congratulations on um, taking out the win and hopefully doing enough for your team. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Christy. Yeah, we are standing by for official results, but we can pencil in Northcliffe for another win in the Open Men's Surf Teams after what was a fast and it was a furious race as well. Yeah, it was all off this start. Have a look at him go. Put Zach Morris in the beach sprint. Don't worry about the water events because I haven't seen anyone go off the line like that in a long, long time. He said he's got the longest legs, but I think there's a few boys that rival him but just didn't <laughs> have that ability, that is for sure. And Basically, it came down to the start. If you're in that top six or eight around that first turning can, you're finished in that top six or eight. We can see them coming around here. and This is the hardest part of a surf team's event. You've been there before, Sam, yourself. and It's an absolute rolling mall around here as eight, ten guys try and go around the one can there. You can see it's been pretty tame, but the further back you get, the more desperate the boys get as well. Well, thankfully for me, Josh, I'm not normally up in the front pack and painting <laughs> for positions when I did used to race surf team events, but... They did a really good job, and that was the reward for going out in the way that they did, was that they got the first opportunity at the wave zone and all of that pack making a wave back into the beach as well. There was a final sprint towards the line. Hayden Cotter did look like he had it for a bit before that stumble. Zach Morris coming up across the line, and now the nervous weight, not so much. Perhaps for the gold, we do feel pretty confident about Northcliffe, but certainly those mitre medals are really anyone's guess. Yeah, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Northcliffe B as well. You'd have to think maybe the B team's a shot in there. Wander will be a chance in the mix. So will Manly and Newport as well. Surface Paradise, not far from the mark. I've basically just listed every single team in the event, but we <laughs> wait and see who ends up on top step of the podium. And it's a special one. I've I've had a few of uh, I've had a few of these in the past. They're hard to get, and when you do get one, you should definitely cherish it. All right, we will bring you that result after a short break here at day two of the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. You'll find sunshine makes the sea sparkle, the skies pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger. Moments longer, hearts beat fast, and time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment, for real. So a flying start to day two here at the Aussies at Maroochydore Beach on the Sunshine Coast. The surf is once again challenging the fittest athletes in ocean sports. And the medals are starting to be won as well. We're standing by for the official result in the Open Men's Surf Team's final, though Northcliffe certainly had one foot on the top step of the podium as well. In just a moment, we are going to be starting to get in to, in the, into the business end of the Open Men's and Under-19s Men board races. Four quarterfinals were followed by the two semi-finals as well. They are racing for a start on Sunday, and that is what it's all about, Josh. Yeah, for the rest of the afternoon, there is a lot of those individual events, heats, quarters, and semis on the men's side of things. We've got the board, we've got the board races coming up on the men's side. On the women's side, a couple of board races, into the surf races, back to some more... Uh, board racing and then some more surf racing with double skis to finish the day that'll be good to watch something i know you're a massive fan from on the men's side of things we'll see sam himself go around in the ski races to wrap up the day this is a highlights package of the under 19 men's surf teams final it happened not too long ago and very similar to the one we just saw there a couple of the boys who got off the beach very very fast there connor mags and a few of the newport boys really flew then this wave out the back it absolutely exploded the and field. wasn't it one of the waves of the day too bodies flying down so everyone doing a really good job too of surviving that initial blast when that wave did first break but no one holding it all the way into the beach, but it's about giving yourself the best position or the best chance, rather, to catch that next one all the way. And that was Charlie Walker running up the beach. We thought he might have been first across the line until we saw the flash of the Northcliffe Cup once again. Yeah. Gee, they're so strong in these events too, John. Yeah, Riley Harlan, he was just a little bit better through that gutter, that is for sure. And he did a really good job of sort of picking the line on the way home. And then once they crossed the line, the chat from the boys was unbelievable. You did this, I did that, you landed on me, I was leading around the camp. 
cans and all that stuff down there. And that's the best part of a surf carnival there. Everybody saw the race a little bit differently, but Northcliffe got the job done. And they might have gone back to back here because have a look out in front. Zachy Morris, we spoke about him before. The charge of the light brigade through that inside break. It's a tough event. 40 men absolutely flying. You don't want to throw around hyperbole, but I think that is one of the most remarkable crossings of a bank I think I've ever seen. That <laughs> was good. extraordinary. And it's hard to do because you, you make one mistake, you clip yourself, and bang, you're over, and everybody runs straight past you. So it's a big risk, big reward move. And Zach Morris only knows one way, straight forward at full stick, and that's what he did there. And it may well have won his club another gold medal here at the Australian Surf Lifesaving Championships. Hayden Cotter there on screen. He thought he might have got away and had a run up the beach on his own, but it wasn't quite to be. So we do wait for those official confirmations as our board paddlers stand by. They are certainly starting to feel the nerves now because after a year of training, it has all come down to this next hour of competition. Four quarterfinals of both the Opens and 19s and then the two semifinals to book themselves a place on the final day here at the Aussies. And we've heard you talk about it earlier today, the upsets already. The best board paddler in the sport, without a shadow of a doubt, Corey Fletcher, went out in heat one of day one yesterday, gone, and he was visibly upset. You know how hard it is for a guy like that who's done everything right all season, but that's what makes him so special. Yeah, that's exactly right. So they're standing by now. We are seeing quarterfinal number one. Prepare for a start. I'll run through the start list now. From Surfers Paradise, Max Beattie, Joel Piper from Maruchidor, Connor Cook from Alex Headland, Kobe Schultz from Northcliffe, Blake Allsoft from Sorrento in WA, Zane Hadley, Sunshine Beach, Justin McMullen from Redhead, Daniel Collins from Redhead, Nathan McKenzie from Byron Bay, Finn Askew, Surfers Paradise, Noah Steiner from Wanda, Charlie Brooks from Newport, Isaac Costello from Redhead, Miller McQuilty Brown from Northcliffe, and Patrick Ely from Sorrento in Western Australia. All I want to talk before you go is the Redhead boys down there. Dan Collins, Justin McMullen. Obviously, just, Justin in the past has got himself a, a, uh, a bronze medal in this race. They're very good. Dan Collins, not a noted board paddler, but can go in the final if he really has a couple of good rounds. Yeah, that's right. And Isaac Costello there too. He's focused on coaching a lot the last few years, but you know what? He's certainly a chance of finding his way into this board final today. So quick off the start, Cosy, and particularly across the bank. Both him and Justin will be looking for that. Look, Justin McMullen, he's certainly proven himself to be one of the form back board paddlers in the country at the moment. He's looking fit. He's probably the fittest that he's been in a few years since he did claim a bronze on this very beach too, actually, Josh. But... Once you get to the quarterfinals here in the Opens at the Aussies, any of these athletes are good enough to make that final. It's the same that we're going to see in the ski races later this afternoon. So it's all about mistake-free racing from now. Yeah, and I think he, maybe Justin's found a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of balance in his life, a little bit of love here and there along the way as well. So the big fella, I'm sure he's doing a great job down there, and I'm interested to see how he goes. That is for sure. Maruchidor boys... Uh, Jolly Piper, Ollie Monaghan, and there is Max Beatty alongside him as well. So I'll take a look at the start list here. Max Beatty from Service Paradise having a good week after a tough year. He's on the comeback trail. Jolly Piper from the home club. Connor Cook from Alex. Kobe Schultz from Northcliffe. Allsop, Hadley from Sunshine Beach. McMullen, Collins, the two redhead boys we spoke about before. Nath McKenzie from Byron Bay. He is one to watch. Formerly of Lennox, now at the Byron Bay Club. Finney Askew, we know how good he is. We've spoken about him a thousand times. Noah Steiner, in my opinion, the best young up-and-coming Ironman who hasn't broken into the big time yet. Watch for him. Charlie Brooks has gone very close in the board race in the past. Isaac Costello is another one of those redhead boys there. Their board relay is going to be very, very good. McQuitty Brown from Northcliffe and Pat L.A. We saw him in the ski race and the double skis yesterday from Sorrento. Eight through in the men's board quarterfinals here. And they're about to go. We say goodbye to Sam Jordan. We say hello to Jenny Parry again. Jenny, welcome back to the booth. Board racing time. And as Sam said, it starts to get a little serious. It starts to get very competitive. And I think, to be honest, from this point onwards, not only can any one of these men make the final, but you give them the right line and a little bit of luck, anyone in the quarters could probably win a medal in that final come Oh, Sunday absolutely. Afternoon. I love it when we run through the list and you're like, are we at finals already? Yeah. No, no, this is just the quarters. And we, when we look at who we've said goodbye to already, that really shows not only the quality and the strength of the field, but how much the conditions are really coming into it. And, and we know that you've got to make your own luck. We know that you've got to do the work. But unfortunately, sometimes wrong place, wrong times. The stakes are so high at an Australian Championship. I mean, we've already done round one and round two 
of the board races just to get to the to this place and uh very excited to see how the crew goes from here because we have got a quality just heat number one lining up and he said uh, Max Beattie earlier a bit on the comeback trial I challenge that I mean he's had a few well, leaner years yeah. but great to see him back in the mix and yeah. loving what he's doing comeback trials are an interesting term I think he had a couple of years where he maybe took the foot off the accelerator obviously we've seen him on the podium at the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman series had a couple of injuries didn't battle along but I think he struggled to get fit and then when he did get fit he was a bit unlucky and got injured again so lean years is a perfect example there but he's definitely sort of this is how he's having a good Aussie titles that was probably more the line for Maxi Beattie and we'll take a look at the moment at the uh, the break at the moment you can see how tough that is down there huge rips on that left hand side and a big hole in the center a sandbank on the right hand side you know this beach better than anyone Jenny <laughs> Parry it is a shambles at the moment the boys are off and away if you can pick a line you're better than most oh absolutely I think shambles is the uh, the right and the correct technical term at the moment I actually ducked down to the beach to watch that open surf teams and just the decisions that were people people were making, Nick Sloman from one end of the field to the other, and obviously the boards are a little bit quicker. We can see the speed as they jump on here, but I think it's just a lot of, I've got a plan, I'm hoping for the best, I'm going to go, and again, real advantage if you're in the second, third, or fourth quarter final because yep. you get to see how those decisions pan out in uh, quarter final number one as redhead. Massive start here. Yeah, three in this one. Isaac Costello, the head coach there. Justin McMullen, he's an assistant coach in there at Redhead as well. And Dan Collins, without a doubt, their best competitor at the moment. So the Redhead board relay, watch for them later on in the championships. But at the moment, Isaac Costello absolutely flying out. Oh. Ducks underneath one. Big swell coming through. He's a lay down paddler. So, oh no, he's up. Sorry, that's McMullen. So he goes up and over. I thought it was Isaac Costello getting around there. But he's absolutely flown off the beach and got out like he was shot out of a gun there and maybe that left hand side seems to be the better of it and have a look at how fast he has gone Cozzy there doing a great job and the boys are on fire from Redhead we gave him a wrap at the start and I'm glad that they've delivered and maybe LA from the Sorrento clubs got out reasonably well in second place as well McQuitty Brown doing a good job and Noah Steiner just inside him so definitely that bottom end of the line has got off to an absolute flyer. Yeah, and I guess you've got to have that speed off the start. And we've seen the difference as, uh, that it has made here as we see Red, uh, Redhead make their way through the field here. They'll position well. Everybody wants that inside line. If you're wondering why they're really jamming each other on the can, if you can get your nose in on that right-hand side, if you can get the inside line, it means that you have... You can set the course, you get to uh, push everyone else a little bit wider and you can see those boys out in front. You'd be feeling good if you're in that top sort of six at the moment. We've got two out in front, a pack of four. You know you're sitting well, eight through to the next round. However, how messy those waves are trying to pick a line on the way in. You've really just got to back yourself the whole way. Yeah, absolutely there. It's really, really tough for these guys and you're spot on. you just got to back yourself on the way home, 100% without a shadow of a doubt. McMullen. LA there, McQuitty Brown in there, Noah Steiner, Charlie Brooks, another one of those guys who I think can win the board race if he has a good, a bit of a luck. He, he's one of the best board paddlers in the sport without a shadow of a doubt. He's just struggled with that luck the last couple of years at the Australian Championships. He's come oh so close so many times. The boys go around the cans here. We can see McKenzie from, Bur uh, from Byron Bay sneaks inside. Max Beatty there, Finn Askew doing it tough and Dan Collins right on the edge trying to get himself into it. So McMullen leads him around from LA and Costello not too far behind as well Redhead on fire Sam will be a very happy man as he heads down to the beach a little bit later on when the Newcastle club does well and they're one of those clubs that like Maruchidor, mm -hmm. if you start there, you finish there, you never leave, and they are thick and fast, the blue and yellow of the redhead cap. They love being a part of the club. They love sticking it out down there in New South Wales. They're bringing on that next generation, the Lani Wallers and the likes of them, and they're, they're loved around the beach as well. Absolutely. I actually saw uh, Alana Dimmick, one of their junior girls who won the 14 board race over the weekend. And she was down here yesterday handling for some of the older girls. And you could just, I, I mean, I was just disappointed she wasn't still wearing her medal because <laughs> I 100% would not have taken that oh, off. That's it. But just that, you know, she's, she's like, yeah, I want to be down here. I want to be handling. I'm ferrying water bottles. And, and you're like, yeah, that's a special club to be a part of. And here come the waves. Can any of these runners turn into something special? Because it is going to be tight to make this top eight when we look at the pack that is chasing behind. 
Brooks just takes a little look behind Buddy. There is nothing coming. You've got to go. And LA's really gone to work here from Sorrento, the man from WA. We know they're going to be fit as fiddles when they come over from West Australia because they don't get the huge swells up there on the beaches. He's got to push for this one because that will give him a nice little ride through to the next round. And you don't want to be the likes of Steiner, Finn Askew, Brooks behind as well because they're going to come down and I think there's a little wave coming through behind that'll pick a bunch of them up. So the man in front, oh no, one or two have just fallen off. Brooks, Finney, Askew, a couple of those boys there. Steiner gets down it. So does McMullen. No dramas at all. So the pressure's off the top three. We're chasing five more. And the man from WA, he was good on the skis yesterday. He was on the back of that double ski with Boothy there. And he did a great job. And you can see how many little waves are pushing the guys left, right, and all over the place. So there's three on waves at the moment. That was the chase for the top eight behind. But this man will have no dramas at all and book himself a spot in the semifinal. Yeah, I actually got to have a little chat to him after one of the qualifying rounds of the double ski yesterday. And again, he was down there with Boothy. They were having a great time. They, they were very very clear on like, we're not getting ahead of ourselves. It's only the Wednesday of Aussies. But he's really in form if you think of that double ski. And this is the run that is on. I think the uh, top eight is going to be decided within here. Joel Piper from Ruchidor, he's not looking good. He may miss out here. The boys are up. They're off again. Dan Collins takes a stumble. Come on, boys. Go, go, go. Costello there. Piper comes back into it. There's always been a few across in there tight on the thing. Oh, Joel Piper having a big old sook and salt. That's board racing. That's what it's all about. They throw the hands in the air when they get tight on the line, but the boys were always going to do that there. That was probably the race for eighth place I there. Think I don't was. know how many of those boys got through. Jolly Piper there, the big fella, he was really blowing up, but that's what happens. You take that straight line to that flag there, make it harder for the guys outside it and really struggle to get through. We had L.A. Steiner, Max Beattie, Justin McMullen. Those top four boys were through, no dramas. Finn Askew, they were all down the other end. We didn't see them cross the line. I think Piper might have snuck through regardless there. I think we were taking three out of that top four as they go across the line. So I think you'll get another shot in the next round. And you want to hope so. He was so close to getting through. Nathan McKenzie might be the unlucky one from Byron who's missed out there in ninth place. But that's how brutal this racing is. Only eight through to the next round will give us two semifinals of 16 and we'll end up with a final of 16 later on. Down on the beach, Christy Munro, who have you got for us? I'm down here with our winner of that quarter, Pat. Um, easy win. You got the bank on the way out? Yeah, I was pretty lucky. I got the, uh, the good side in the rip, so I got out nice and clean. Good start, but also smart racing. It's so tricky on the way in here. Bank on the way out. How did you um, determine or negotiate that real rough water that um, we're facing right before the finish line here? Yeah, so sort of I went out in the rip and um, coming in, I just tried to avoid it, get on the bank. A bit better water and can, can sort of run there and... And yeah, paid off, so. I know you just wanted to get one job done at a time. You've done that through to the semis. All the best. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, fantastic work, Christy, and thanks so much, Pat, having a little chat and confirming we were wondering who was going to be in those last few spots there. Yeah, and I have to give a big shout-out to Patty as well. I think it's Ely, his last name there, so I was getting that one wrong. Not the first time, and hopefully it is the last time, but we got Steiner, Beatty, McMorland, Askew, and it was Collins, Costello, and Jolly Piper just snuck through there. Unfortunately, Byron Bay's Nathan McKenzie goes out on that one. That four-way sprint, three in. Jolly, he can settle, settle down, relax, he's through to the next one, but it means that much to these athletes, and hey, I'm not blaming him either, I would have done the exact same thing down there, but that is racing, and they say rubbing's racing when you get tight on the line, <laughs> no dramas at all, but good to see him through to the next round, no dramas there for the boys, that was quarterfinal number one, it's now quarterfinal number three in this area. Another one of the Marucci boys, Ollie Monaghan, Nick Middleton from the Wanda Club, Kai Taylor from Burleyheads Mowbray Park, Corey Taylor, Zach Morris, Wes Gould from Northcliffe head over the page there as well. We've got Paddy O'Brien from Warrnambool, Jaden Murphy, the I think he's the Kiwi champion, Jet Green, Jack Baker, Callum Sutton, Tom, Thomas Clothier, Merchant and Hendy from Surface Paradise and Sam Cummins from Terrigal as well. The glide early, Jenny Parry, across that inside section is the key. Zachy Morris looks like he's got off to a fly. You've got to glide the board, stand up at the right time and get going. And it's one of those things that when you see it done well, it looks effortless. It it's looks simple. beautiful. And then you could try and execute yourself and you realise just how tough that is. And to do it at the speed 
that the, that these boys are doing it at is really impressive. And uh, Zach Morris, you mentioned, so good in those surf teams just earlier. The boys really being put through their paces. But we say Thursday's moving day. Thursday is grind day. It's all about the uh, round one, the round two, the quarters, maybe a semi as well. And this is where we're at. Uh, we've got Corey Taylor, Zach Morris, Wes Gould all in the mix here from Northcliffe. And uh, good luck telling your four Terrigal teams apart oh, as well. Oh, a big apology up front from the Terrigal guys. I'll do my best in there. I struggled with the Redhead boys last one as well. Zachy Morris off and flying, but maybe in the centre there. I don't know. Absolutely off to a cracker there. Burley Heads Mowbray Park. Or is it Thomas Clothier? Sorry, from the North Bondi Club there. So he has been shot out of a gun. TJ Henny, you know if you've beaten TJ and Zach Morris off the beach, you are absolutely flying. We've had a couple of good efforts from the North Bondi boys earlier today. We saw Benny Christensen in that under-19s as well. But on the inside, Ollie Monaghan copping an absolute beating on the back half. But these boys out in front, Clothier, has done a great job. He snuck through there, but he was flying off the beach. He just went lay down all the mm -hmm. way through that break, and that was the right move there. TJ Hendy's hot on his heels and Zachy Morris in there as well. And these three, you can see the gap back to sort of five, six, seven, and eight. They've got off to a flyer, and I think they've set themselves up for a great race here while the rest of the field is getting absolutely hammered on the inside. Wes Gould getting an absolute beat down there from the Northcliffe Club. Absolutely. It looks like they may have actually already sorted themselves into a top eight, bottom eight at the moment, but really impressed with the work of Clothier from uh, North Bondi there. And as you say, it's just about skimming across the water in that start. It's keeping your speed up. Also, paddling really well at the moment. I think TJ Henney very happy to tuck in on the wash, just take a beat at the moment. You can see the boys like those swim teams. They're back across the ocean here as well, just having to uh, make up that distance. Well, another guy we spoke about, Max Beattie, who's probably had 12 or 18 months where life gets in the road, he's, he's got a kid, he's got other things going on, and they're not the there's not the months that he sort of would have wanted as an Ironman who's used to being at the top end racing for Australian championships when you're sort of finishing 12s, 15s, 17s getting knocked out in the semis for a guy like TJ Henney it must have been tough but you can see the last sort of six months he's just gotten better and better every time he's gone around he's got fitter and fitter you look at him and you go oh that's a guy who's on the improve and you get to the Australian championships and all of a sudden it's oh, I'm in the front end of quarterfinals as opposed to getting knocked out early on so it's good to see him back as well and that's what happens. It comes in ebbs and flows. Some of the top end guys, we don't sort of see it because they're just there every single year. But for those guys who are your next sort of level there that are used to finishing third through eighth, maybe some years they're eighth, ninth, tenth. Some years they're one, two, three. And that's what we've seen from TJ Handy. And it's good when he's back, that's for sure, because when he's in form, he is as good as anybody in the sport without a shadow of a doubt. He goes to the lead at the moment. And another thing we know about TJ Handy. Nobody runs the ocean better than he does. If he can, if there's a runner in there, he can find it and have a look at him cutting all the way down, running all the way back. He's doing a fantastic job at the moment and really just making the most out of every single one of these runners. Absolutely. Great to see TJ back. And uh, when I think of surf conditions like we have at the moment where it is a little bit messy, where it is a little bit unpredictable, TJ Handy is one of the people that you back any day of the week the same way that, you know, if there's a wave on, I'm backing Kai Kinsella in a surf race as well. But yep. TJ looks like he's just enjoying the racing out there at the moment a little wave picking up this might bring two or three through i think uh, tj unfortunately in the wrong position there he's just in a little bit of dead water but you can see again here's the experience takes a left hand turn sees where the waves are sees where the bank is and says well i know where i need to be i'm still in the top eight i'll make myself some luck over here and again that dead water so brutal when you've been paddling for a, a solid three yeah. or four minutes already. And you've had to paddle the whole way in. These boys would have expected a, oh, I'm going to get away from the back, ride it all the oh, way yeah. to the beach, but not this quarter final. I don't know why, but the ocean's just gone flat for the second. TJ Handy having to work very hard, and for the kids at home, you can have a look at his skills there. He's got long arms as well. I think that's the key to good board paddling. If you can get your arms deep down in the water, there's been a couple of guys over the years, I guess you yeah, Maddie Pools is the one that I think about. Mm -hmm. has the longest arms, big old gorilla arms that drag along the ground there and it makes for a very, very good port paddler. You don't need them, but it helps. And TJ Hendy, he's got that reach there, that is for sure. Maybe Ver, uh, Merchant in there as well. Wave out the back for a couple of the back markers here and maybe that'll push them up into the top eight. Remember, we're chasing a top eight for the final. This man will walk across the line there. No dramas at all. Welcome back. TJ Handy, he is on fire at the moment. First in there, couple of those Terrigal boys in the mix as well. Doing the numbers. Counting numbers, <laughs> we can see that there. From Warrnambool at the top there, Paddy O'Brien, he was first up. They're all going to go. The big fella from North Bondi across, no dramas at all. Merchant, the other one of the surf, Surface Paradise boys. 
Warrnambool, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Terrigal and Terrigal. O'Brien, he's up and absolutely flying. Kai Taylor just alongside him. I think those two will get through. I don't know about the Terrigal boys. It's going to be very, very tight. Yeah, great finish there from Paddy O'Brien of Warrnambool. Great to see that cap mixing it with the best here in the uh, quarterfinals for the open boards. And uh, again, it's still racing on the line. It's lunges on the line because you never know. There might have been a sneaky DQ ahead of me. And unfortunately, I think that we might be saying goodbye to someone like Corey Taylor oh, right now. Corey Taylor should pack up his gear, go up, go and sit down at a cafe and relax for a while because he is having an absolute shocker. Corey Taylor is one of the best competitors in the sport by a country mile, but he's been knocked out of the Ironman and the board race this morning. I'm sorry, Corey Taylor. You need to have a day off, brother. It couldn't be worse for you. But Christy Munro down on the beach with our winner, a bloke who is having a great day. Thanks, Josh. Yes, I'm down here with TJ. Is having a great day. Um, I saw you on the start line having a chat to Dad, Trev. Did he pass on any words of advice out there? No, nah, not these days. He just sort of lets me know. Uh, I know my process. Um, so he's just asking if I'm all good, pretty much, yeah. Just being a dad, I love that. Um, you got off to an amazing start. I saw you looking around for some help on the way in, but nothing came. Um, you made the most out of those little runners. Are these your conditions out there? Um, I think, you know, it's one of those days where you just follow your process, you stick to your lines and stuff, and I'm sort of not afraid to do the work at the moment. I'm in a really good headspace, so um, I'm not too worried about the result. I'm just going for it, and, you know, if a wave comes, it comes, but I'm um, just sticking, getting my heart rate up high and enjoying the racing. You certainly look like you're in great form for this end of the season. For the nippers who might be watching at home, what advice would you give to them if they're wanting to be a national class board paddler? Um, I definitely learn how to do some 360s. That's the first thing you've got to do. Um, I think it's important to uh, have those surf skills so that you are varying in all the conditions. You can go out there and win at Perth or North Kira or here at Maroochydore. Um, I honestly think um, while you're young, get good at board starts and 360s and have fun. You heard it here. Have a lot of fun. You'll become a champion. All the best as you progress through. Yeah, appreciate it. It's um, an awesome carnival and everyone's doing great. Oh, thanks so much, Chrissy. Thanks so much, TJ. Uh, Josh, how are your 360s going terrible, these days? Terrible, but I was a terrible board paddler, so <laughs> that might be what I was getting wrong. I kept trying to get on the river and paddle hard, and I wasn't doing enough frios. <laughs> Good advice. I think it, I it, it sounds silly from TJ, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Like, if you can get this board skills up, you've got the ability to whip it around, get a quick start, then that goes a long way towards being a great board paddler. From the open men's quarters to the under-19 men's semi-finals, the boys are on the line, and these ones are very, very serious. We take a look on the line here. We can go through the start list. Jules Friedenay from City of Perth. McCleary from Maroubra. Warren from Burley. Green from Terrigal. Gaddis from Cronulla. Brennan from Kurum and Cook from Redhead. Darby Meyer, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park. Morris, Jake Morris, that is, and Jake Walker from Northcliffe and North Bondi, respectively. Ethan Callahan from BHMP, Ashton Walters from Terrigal, Mitch Morris from Northcliffe, Sloan from Karawa, Doyle from Newport, and French from Tugan. The far side has got off to an absolute flyer. I think that deeper water has played a big, big role in those boys going very, very quickly. And Warren on this side, just battling to get that board speed up. So is the man from Cronulla Gattas there. And we can see they're just fighting with it ever so slightly. But that other end, there's a lot of board speed there. Taj Sloan, Mitch Morris, Jake French as well. Those boys will be absolutely flying at the moment. That is Mitch Morris, who's gone out and led, and Taj Sloan hot on his heels. Oh, wowie. And that's where you can really... I was actually having a few more chats on the beach as I was legging it back up this way. And uh, something... I can't wait to watch board rescues in uh, a little later in the program because the conditions change across the 20 metres or so of the start line. Again, we know you've got to make your own, your own luck, but, man, it helps if you get that lucky position on the line. Yeah, that's it. And it's it's tough at Maroochydore because the banks aren't that wide and the rips aren't that wide either. They're, they're sort of enough to get six or eight competitors in there. And then you've got to split the field between the rip and the bank. And Mitchie Morris on the front of this one doing a fantastic job. Tar Sloan underrated as an athlete. We saw him get that third place at the Hayden Kenny Classic in the board race in the open competition. They're mixing it with the best in the business. And we're kind of used to probably seeing those uh, those Morris boys, Ethan Callahan, doing the same thing. But I think Tar Sloan, you put him in that group as well. An under-19 competitor who, if he just did the open board race, he'd probably be in the final as well. So under the tutelage of Guy Andrews there at the Karawa Club and 
just hot on their heels as well. I think Jakey French from the Tugan Club, they're another one of those clubs that a rich history in surf sports Tugan. We remember the glory days, your Kenny Wallace's, your Kai Hurst, your Huey Doherty's back in Sam Hamilton as well. I could list a thousand. Tim Peach was there for a while. I could list a thousand of those male competitors who are fantastic out of the Tugan Club and they continue to produce board paddlers, iron men and good, good competitors throughout the year. So a big shout out to the Tugan boys doing a great job and they're sitting in third place around the can there, a little push and shove. Jakey Morris has moved up into third place, so you can tell the Morris boys apart. Mitch is on red, Jake's on green, that's the easiest way for me. French goes round there as well, and so does Anthony Doyle from the Newport Club, and then a lot of push and shove in there. Darby Meyer around, and so does, I just didn't pick who that was well, and Ethan Callahan there on the tail just inside the top eight. Yeah, just in that top eight, Jackson McCleary, McCleary coming through from Maroubra, and another of our Terrigal crew coming through. This is going to be really, really tough. Once they turn into that wave zone as Cronulla comes through as well and I know I'm a broken record when I say this but man having the drone cameras out here has yeah, absolutely changed the game we've never had this level of detail or this inside knowledge of what happens out and around the cans seeing the uh, decision seeing the cap seeing the colors being able to differentiate our different athletes out here and you can see the boys out in front that is uh, Morris and Taj Sloan out there really starting to oh. work those waves I think someone oh he just didn't get down there unfortunately Morris worked hard was not rewarded however in a nice position now to pick up some of these next runs coming through top eight to go through semi-final often more nerves in a semi than the actual final yeah. you've got to get there yeah you spot on there i think maybe blake cook and mccleary from maroubra and redhead they're the ones sitting right on the bubble at the moment maybe seven and eight with a couple behind them that i would have thought would be close to getting in the final so those boys are gonna have to really fight on the way home have a look at ethan callahan go he's the man on the right hand side of screen now he would have been eighth around the cans but mm. he's worked his way up into fourth. Here comes Taj Sloan, finds a runner, turns it into a wave. Great skill from the big fella. Morris will get it as well. So first two around the cans, first two shot it away. They'll be first two across the line. And all's fair in love and board racing, and these two deserve that result, that is for sure. But fighting it out for the next six spots, that is what's going to be super interesting. They're going to have to work across this little hole at the moment. Sloan gets down it. You can see how, how straight his back is there. Great technique, really flat back, good rotation and extension from the hips. We love it there. They just have a little laugh and a giggle across the line. But things are going to get very serious behind them. Oh, this is what we want to see. There's, so there is Ethan Callahan on the far left hand, left hand side of the field there on that wave he has put in a monster paddle I was a little nervous for him early on in the race but I should not be nervous I should trust in the skills and the incredible season that he has had I think we've got the uh, I think that could be Maya from Burley Heads Mowbray Park on the uh, wave as well Anthony Doyle in the mix so this could be top five that we're seeing on screen another three to qualify through only eight semi-final for the 19 men's in the board Gee, we're getting through some good racing on Thursday morning. Yeah, those three are home and hosed. I think we're only going to take a couple from this next group behind it. So Ethan Callahan, Tommy Doyle there, the big fellas up across the line. No problems for these three men. The next one, we're on a bit of a sprint finish there. One's just come off that wave. So we've got five across the line. And here we go, just behind Morris there. The run up the beach. Maybe McCleary gets through. I think he will survive as well. So does Blake Cook. It might just be one from the next wave. I do not know. We might end up saying goodbye to French. He was close around the cans. The mm. judges are going to have to do the, the calculations, but we're definitely going to say goodbye to the rest of these boys as well. But French, he was very, very well positioned on the way out and just couldn't find anything on the way home. Maybe a bit of the commentator's curse. I'm sure the Tugan boys will be blowing up at me. Uh, for that one there, but we wait and see and once they get up and into there, it was Callahan in four Derby Meyer up in five I think McCleary got across in six or seven and we might have to say goodbye to the rest of the boys. We might and we see these uh, fantastic waves that the boys really really worked hard for, you can see the speed, you can see the effort and that is rewarded pulling down this big one and uh, off camera we actually completed semi-final number two and a huge congratulations to the qualifiers there, Maguire Reed off that big double ski yesterday he and Connor Maggs were one and two Oliver Sharp from Kudjan, Taj Andrews from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Lucas Berwick from Corumban, Matthew Lee from Corumban, Bailey Clues and Riley Harland. That was your top eight from semi-final two. We're just waiting to see who will be joining them in the semi-final from the uh, 19 boards, but it looks like we've got the ladies back in action already. This is the open women. Yeah, quarterfinals here come in the water at the moment. We can see Electra Outram and Tiani Massey there absolutely flying out at the moment. So these two girls absolutely on fire. I think this is quarterfinal number four so far. Have a look at Tiani Massey. Isn't she having a day out? Absolutely flying. 
and I have a look. My well, one of my favourites, and I think she's underrated as a board paddle. Brody Trinker absolutely flies under the tutelage of Pierce Leonard down there, and Trinker can absolutely go on a board, and she has that pure board speed that. I don't think you can teach. Some people just have it and other people don't. And it's very hard to get if you don't have it. Tiani Massey has it. Brody Trinker has it. It's that pure like explosiveness off the beach that you can teach the skills, you can teach the fitness, but sometimes just pure speed is something you're born with or you're not. And these girls have it. And have a look at Massey go. And Jen, tell me, do you think she's she's benefiting from obviously that home stretch of sand? And sometimes home beach advantage can be blown up and over talk because the conditions are so different every day but I think nobody's more at home than Tiani Massey she loves it here she literally grew up on this stretch of sand and I think she's just benefiting from being so comfortable absolutely there's nothing like a home Aussies or even a carnival that you get to drive with we've had a few chats about that uh, with some other locals just uh, you know where the shops are you know where the bathrooms are everything's that little bit easier it makes your racing easier as well but if I think of uh, you know people who love racing at their home beach I think of Tiani Massey at that Murphy Holmes Marucci classic part of the summer of surf season in terms of rising to an occasion she had all the pressure on her in a really really tough field sprint finish at the end she made it work she got the big money. She got the big win. Gave one of the best interviews ever afterwards as well. Just talking about how much it meant to her coming through here from a green caps nipper now to be one of the top iron women in the country and to uh, welcome everyone now to Maroochydore Beach, one of the many hosts for this year's uh, Australian Championships. I'm expecting her just to really continue to enjoy what she's doing and I love that she's known for these trademark sucks because that is paying off and we are seeing it right now. Yeah, she's absolutely gone ballistic out in front of Electra Outram chasing it there just after I gave Brody Trinker a massive rap, she got absolutely hammered. So, a big apology to Brody Trinker for that one. This is an interesting quarter final. Mm. The four Manly girls in there, very, very good. We can see Massey go around, Electra out from hot on her heels as well. A couple others that are interesting Dom Stitt in there, great board paddler, Lily O'Sullivan, world youth board champion a couple of years ago, Nicole Sims used to go by the name of Nicole Sheedy. She was in the Iron Woman series for a long time. Now has a family, kids, married to Ashton Sims, the former footballer down there, and coaching at Warilla Barrick Point. So she's doing a fantastic job. She didn't know if she was going to have a raise. She thought, oh, I'll have a roll if there's some waves. There's certainly waves. So she's in the quarterfinals there. Jordan White, little sister of Hayden White, she won just about anything at the Masters the other day. Beach flags, I think she got a third in the sprint as well. So <laughs> big shout out to Jordan Nugget White. We love to see it. And Tiani Massey is in the lead on the way home. So this is an interesting one. A lot of these girls haven't seen for a few years or they've been floating around and they're really sort of mixing it with the big guns and there is no bigger gun in the sport at the moment than Tiani Massey. She is on fire at the moment, working her way on the way home and she must be feeling comfortable out in front. This is Electra Outram chasing hard. Lily O'Sullivan not too far behind her as well and I think maybe just behind there is that Ella Garrett working her way into it as well. So here comes on the far right-hand side, it's Lily O'Sullivan doing a fantastic job to work her way back into it. And I think Massey's sort of, she's put the brakes on at this point. Yeah, well, because she knows that this is the way that's coming through. It may actually uh, fatten up too too quickly there for her to jump on that one. And that was Ella Gallop, Garrett from Ella Manly Garrett. a little further behind. We saw her in the Super Surf Teams League. Had one of the best ever finishes. This is when they had the uh, mixed relays. Yep. And it was her and uh, one of the gents racing up the beach. And she got him on the line. Oh, uh, she it. put her body on the line. She was a crumb sausage afterwards. It was absolutely worth it. And I think um, she'd be reveling out there in the conditions with teammates Sophie Walters, Georgia Singleton and Alicia Fay all in this uh, quarterfinal number four. And again, top eight to go through Tiani Massey on screen at the moment. Looking very, very comfortable. However, cast your eyes back. Top four look good, I want to say, at the moment. But that, uh, they, those final qualifying spots for the semi, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, and a couple of the girls there. Gracie Otto had a lot of work to do on the way out. Brody Trinker did as well. Gracie Otto, the Open Iron mm. Woman final later on. That Kellogg's New Australian Iron Woman series. She's got to get herself back into it. Brody Trinker got a medal in the board race uh, just a couple of seasons ago. Second at the Queensland Championships in the board race as well. So gave her a massive rap. She's got to get a little bit of a wriggle on at the moment. Outram's down one. Lily O'Sullivan is as well. They're not the issue. That's your top second, third and fourth in that one. Five and six on the wave behind. It's seven, eight, nine and ten that have all yet to get a wave out the back. That It's going to be interesting. But... She's in a rich purple patch of form, that is for sure. Tiani Massey, she cannot lose at this point and is absolutely on fire. And I don't want to say has she peaked too early, but I don't think there's anyone on the beach who looks as good a form as Tiani Massey at the moment. 
Lana Rogers had a bit of trouble early mm -hmm. on in that Iron Woman. George, uh, Georgia Miller, probably in a similar vein, has looked untouchable. Harriet Brown looked very good as well. So, to be honest, in that open women's section, the ski paddlers, there was a bit of a, well, all the favourites basically went out in that ski race. But it's those sort of four Iron Women, they're in the best form, and I think they could win any single one of those races this weekend. Swim, board, ski, iron, you name it. If they're in it, they're a shot of winning it. Yeah, super excited for those big Sunday finals. I keep having to remember, no, we're giving out gold medals today at we Aussies. Are. We do think about, though, how special that Sunday's Aussies final package is. And uh, if you're enjoying the uh, Facebook live stream, we're loving having you here. Also on Sunday, we'll be on SBS, their main channel as well. So lots of ways to get involved and be part of the Aussies as we look to see Bernadette Hughes from North Bondi on screen at the moment. The top four are in Tiani, Electra, Lillian, Ella, one, two, three, four. I'd say this could be five, Ooh. six, and seven. I just I just saw Brody oh, Trinka sneak across as well. So this might be the race for eight. Lucy Stroud there. I don't know if she's gotten through. There is Sheeds uh, crossing the line. I mean Nicole Sims. Got to use the correct <laughs> name. Neuris Sheeds a long time ago, but did a fantastic job there, but has missed out. Alicia Fay was the last one to sneak in with Georgia Singleton and Dom Stitt. So there is Jordan White. We say goodbye to her for another year in terms of the board race, but I'm sure she'll be back next year racing under that distinctive Warilla Barrack Point cap. Absolutely, and I love that was, there were so many uh, men and women arriving at the beach for Aussies and saying, if there's a wave on, I might go. I might give it a whirl. Gemma Smith decided to do the Open Iron Women. I mean, I wish I had the uh, muscle memory and the fitness to be like, I might do the Open Iron at Aussies. And she almost made the final. She just missed out by one or two in the end there. Gracie Otto gone as well, but she'll be in the final individual race of the weekend, so it doesn't matter all that much. Let's take a look at the highlights. And Tiani Massey's skill through the break, her aggression... That was the difference in the end. Yeah, really saying, I don't want to be in that right in, in that uh, run up the beach. I want to be up there early. So she is saying, give me this one. And uh, just having a look at some of the other quarterfinals, uh, qualifying for the semi-final, we've had Annalise Kibble, Jordan Mercer, Emma Woods, Gemma Smith-Welsh, Gemma Smith again, yep. uh, Grace Harris, Ashley Booker and Eliza Giles from uh, Avoca. Liv Corrin is through, Lizzie Wellborn, Kirsty Hardstaff, Elizabeth Shearer, Jasmine Fillingham. Maddie Spencer, Freya Wilson and Lucy Derbyshire are all through. And heat number three, quarterfinal number three, is yet to run. So quality field as you'd expect. However, we're back with the big boys. Yeah, semi-final racing takes Yee precedence here. And it is the first semi-final of the Open Men's Board Race. 16 will go in. Eight will get a spot in the big show on Sunday afternoon. Patrick Ellie is back. Nick Stoddard from Swansea Belmont. Adam Palmer there from Maroochydore. He's on the comeback trail as well. Sean Riley from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. Park. We saw how good TJ Handy was. Tom Clothier, he went out very quick off the beach. Expect the big fella from North Bondi to get going. Sam Cummins, one of the, uh, the Terrigal boys who survived. Miller from Burley Heads, Mowbray Park. The man on the back standing behind the field with the orange board. Braden, the Razor Casamento. They're off and away. Murphy from Swansea. Tex Dixon, the defending champion from Surface Paradise. Jackson Borg from Newport. Noah Stein, a big papa pump from Wanda. Have a look at Zach Morris, Matt Bevel, a former champion, and Archie Vernon as well. And the man from Sorrento has decided to go his own way. He's gone pure bank down at the bottom here, and it seems to be paying off at the moment. The rest of the field just getting clipped. It looked like the bottom side was a little bit better. One's gone a long, long, long way to the south. One's gone to the north, but I reckon the middle's the plan, and that's the defending board race champion. Tex Dixon, he won it in the absolute flat last year in Perth. Can he get it done in the surf? He hasn't had the season he wanted, but it doesn't matter. You've only got to win the last one of the season to be the Australian champion. They all sit up and stop, and they're met by a huge wall of white water. Oh, Tech Six, and that was one of the races of the championships over in Perth. And have a look at the speed. The boys know another one is coming. They've got to get up and through. I think that was uh, TJ Hendy from Surfers Paradise just ducked his head under, as did... Uh, I'll tell you what, Tex Dixon has moved back a little bit now. That looks to be uh, Nick, Nick Stoddart. Stoddart. Yeah, absolutely gone flying. Maybe Kurt Murphy. So two of the surface, uh, sorry, Swansea Belmont boys side by side there. Have a look at them both. Lay down at the moment. A big lay down contingent from Swansea Belmont there. Obviously, Nick's old man. He shapes boards. He knows them very, very well. So the two lay down paddlers. 
It's a bit of a dark art lay down board paddling, but if you fit and you can get that thing up and moving, it is very, very fast. And there'd always been a knock on it for a long, long time that it wasn't good in the big surf, but they're proving that wrong here. So they're out in front one and two. Bevel Aqua working into it. And on the far side, Sean Riley from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. He went the far south line into the rip. I don't know if it's paid off, but he's still in the hunt at the moment and he's done a good, good job to get back in the group. As Tex Dixon really goes to work on the inside here, Tex, that Australian champion, he's on the uh, orange and white banded board there. I love that the boys are still four wide at the moment. No one is giving an inch here. Unfortunately, Swansea Belmont, if they don't get a wriggle on, they are going to be crunched here by Bevel Aqua and Tex Dixon. We have got a clear top eight, but this is anyone's race. This is one of... I would say this is one of the toughest races of the day. Of the day. the semi-final for the open men's board race. Yes, we've said goodbye to a few people already. This is quality. And as we suspected, Swansea getting crunched. Oh, Absolute. second Northcliffe just getting in the mix there. And uh, this is tough racing. A few boys that we're going to say goodbye to very soon. Yeah, an absolute jam on the cans. That's for sure. Bevel Acker and Dixon led around there. Oh, a little miss there from oh, no. Riley. I thought he'd gone around there. Jackson Borg getting in. Clothia and Ilay who'd gone the wide line as well. Sam Cummins there. They're not out out of it at the moment. You're spot on, Jen. If you can be in the semi-finals of the board race, the board final isn't that much harder. Every single one of these men are a shot and we're taking a look at a couple of former champions or the defending champion and a former champion side by side on the way home. Zach Morris not too far behind there as well. Nick Stoddard and Kurt Murphy just behind them, the lay down paddlers. Watch for Braden the Razor Casamento from Alexandra Headland. He'll go like the absolute clappers across the sand. There's a wave on here starting to build up. Noah Stoddard Stein is in it as well. He's in that cap on the white and blue board. Oh, just gets a little wonky on that wave. Bevel Aqua goes. So does Dixon, but neither of them will get it. It gives them a lead, but gets them closer to that bank. And all of a sudden, the lay down paddle is starting to work back into it. Here comes Murphy. Here comes Stoddard. Stein is not there, as not too far away as well. Matt Bevel Aqua sits up, looks around and decides, now or never, I've got to go for this little runner. Well, he's got to go because uh, one or two waves behind, that's where it's getting real. And you could see... Uh, Tex Dixon, he worked so hard to get, um, try to get over that runner. You could see how gassed he was at the end as well, taking in the big breaths. He was disappointed not to get it as Bevel Aqua looks behind again. The boys just need to go. They need a wave. They need something special because here comes Swansea Belmont. There is 50 metres north to south for these boys right now. Yeah, you get down this first wave. You booked yourself in the final. Tex Dixon going, going, going. Get there, get there, get there. No, oh. he falls off the back. Oh, he's still no. on the top and riding it. That's what makes these races so hard. The course uh, the, the field's so close together. One wave will pick up the entire field. You'll end up in a 16-way sprint up the beach. We've got four on a wave now at the moment. Tex Dixon looks very comfortable. The two Swansea Belmont boys, no dramas at all. Noah Steiner in there. Bevel Aqua just out of shot as well. Steiner's got to go. Casamento and Morris there. They're on top of each other. So that might be five or six on that front wave. Steiner did get down at four, seven on that front wave. So we're going to take one for the next one. If you think this sprint up the beach is going to be tough. The next one is going to be all guns blazing. Steiner there, Stoddart as well, Zach Morris, the Razor Casamento will get in. Our top seven across the line. Congratulations, boys. You're in the final board race of the year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next one's where it's at. That next one, here we go. Oh, up the beach. Surface Paradise. What about that one? I think we'll say goodbye to Adam Palmer. But Varchi Vernon might be the last one we get into that final there. Adam Palmer's missed out by one on his home stretch of sand. Jackson Borg well and truly gone there. It is so tough up here in racing, but I think we got Archie in, and I think we say goodbye to Adam Palmer. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately for Palmer, you talk about comeback trails. He was on one. Unfortunately, he is going to bow out here in the semi-final. What a finish, though. Archie Vernon sneaking through. He would have been nervous out the back there. He saw one go. He saw two. There were seven on the wave. They're cantering up the beach. He knows he's got to go. Big, tall, lanky boy, ex-Victorian. Saw him having dinner at the um, Richardor Surf Club the other Perfect. night. Love it. Tell you what, those uh, chicken schnitties are making the difference here. Great to see him in a big race to make an open board final. It's a huge result. Christy, you're down on the beach. Thanks, Jen. Yes, down on the beach here with Tex. Not quite sure where you came across the line. You all sort of crossed together there, but you certainly did all the work. You're the reigning champ. Does that put a little bit more pressure on? Yeah, obviously going to the Aussies this year, um, put a bit more of um, a target on my back. And I think at the start of the week, my goal was just to be in that final again because... With these conditions out here, anything can happen. And um, after a couple, like a stressful quarter, and just getting that over is such a big relief for the rest of the carnival after being now making the board in the iron semi. So I'm stoked for that, yeah. 
you can relax a little bit now um, until Sunday when you can rethink the board race. We were talking semis are sometimes considered just as hard as a final, so maybe not much more different um, in terms of your preparation for a final. Yeah, 100%. Semis is probably harder, to be honest. Um, there's 16 guys in two races who are really busting their balls to get to the line for the final. And, um, yeah, it's a, and it's one of those days where it can be anyone and all it takes is something just like that to go wrong and your day's over, unfortunately. Well, you've done enough. You've, um, you've got yourself a spot, so well done and um, we wish you all the best come finals. Thanks. Yeah, the defending champion there, he is one to watch without a shadow of a doubt. He got it done in the flat, and he can obviously get it done in the surf as well. That's him on the front. Bevel Aqua just getting the squeeze there. Probably a little bit of inexperience from those Swansea boys letting the two come up and around, and then the experience of Bevel Aqua and Tex Dixon there to go to the front as you get to the cans. But no dramas at all. We'll run you through the results of that one. So we had... Obviously, Dixon, Bevilacqua, Zach Morris, Braden Casamento, who got a bronze last year. He's back in the final. Noah Steiner, Kurt Murphy, Nick Studdard, and Archie Vernon. That's the eight from semi number one. Semi number two was run in the other area. Obviously, you can pick up all the results from live heats. And we've got Charlie Verko, Justin McMullen, Odin Parrish, Lockie Merchant from Service Paradise. Great paddle from him. The two North Cronulla boys, and maybe my two favourite in the entire thing, Will Budd and Cruz McKee. Expect big things from Will Budd. Silver last year, he needs a win here. Jolly Piper, after just getting through the quarter, he's just got through the semi as well into the final. And Dan Collins, maybe the nicest man on the beach, noted swimmer, he's into the board final as well. So when you can do it all, you can do it all. That is our 16 for Sunday. It's time to go to the semi-finals of the open women's board race. If those ones were good, these ones will be better. Yeah, do love this. The semi-finals up. Jasmine Fillingen leads us off. Kirsty Hardstaff from Burley Heads. Emma Woods, Alicia Fay, Geordie Mercer is back. Freya Wilson from Sunshine. Dom Snit. We've got Bedler Williams from Northcliffe. Lucy Derbyshire from Surfers. And great to see Carla Papik in the mix. She was in the Irons yesterday looking great on the ski. Courtney Bryant, her teammate here. Gemma smith Wells from Sunshine. Grace Harris. Gemma Smith decides, yeah, I'm going to do a board race as well. And now I'm in the semi-final. Tiani Massey is back as well. Look out for that trademark. Very, very quick start. She is on the far bottom of your field here. We've got her with uh, Annalise Kibble, I think that could be as well. No, that's Piper Harrison. Piper Harrison, yeah. Gemma, Tiani, Piper, 14, 15, 16 on the right. And Tiani Massey loves a fast start, loves these messy conditions. It looks like it's getting a little bit grey and a little bit dreary down there. Yeah, she's gone like she's been shot out of a gun again there. There's Piper Harrison just there. Gemma Smith on the pink board. Carla Papak, the red board there. The blue and pink, you can just see that water starting to wash out. Emma Woods going the opposite direction. She just tried to run a line in between a couple of waves there, but this is where it's at at the moment. Massey in one, Papak in two, Harrison and Smith three and four on the left-hand side. But what tends to happen is you get a suck out early on on that first part, and then as you get to the bank, the other side sort of comes across as well, and you can see it there. This end is where it's at at the moment. Up and over, Courtney Bryant on the purple, struggling to get around. These are our leaders. Massey over. Papak through. Piper Harrison as well. Just behind them. There is Grace Harris, the former Victorian, now at the Alexandra Headland Club. Courtney Bryan as well. There's so much water movement out there. It's all over the place. This rip is really churning. I'm always really impressed, though, for any of our athletes who decide to stay up on their knees when they're heading out through those conditions. You talked earlier about keep the board speed up, just skim across the water, and lying down gives you that extra stability, brings the centre of gravity down. Anyone who's staying on their knees, geez louise, they are backing the themselves through those tough conditions. But when you look at these girls, they're the best board paddlers in the world. Tiani Massey, third in the uh, in the Summer Surf Series. She got third of the Australian titles last year. If she can't stay on her knees here, nobody can. Yeah. So you'd expect it from some of these top girls. You're spot on. You're 17s, you're, you're juniors there. When they start to go through, I always think to myself, oh, I don't know if that's the right <laughs> plan. Safety first, safety first. But when it's the best in the business like these women are, and they've got better skills than a lot of the guys do out there, Tiani Massey, you put her in a big wave. She's small in stature, big in heart. She can get it done, that is for sure. She leads out at the moment. Piper Harrison in there in second place. Gemma Smith maybe doing a really good job. Sorry, Gemma Smith in second. Piper Harrison back in third and fourth. Carla Papak in there as well. As they start to really get going, Courtney Bryant not too far away. Geordie Mercer getting it done. And I think Gemma Smith Welsh there on the blue board, the red, white, and yellow. Uh, sorry, the red, yellow, and black cap of Sunshine Beach. She might be hard on. On that top eight at the moment. She has been the most improved Iron Woman in the entire sport this year without a shadow of a doubt. I've said it about a few people a few times, but Gemma Smith-Welsh went from a 
let's say a sixth or seventh rated in her age group in the under 19s, so get some medals here and there. A good young Iron Woman to be in the Nutrigrain Iron Woman series, getting medals at the Shannon Next Iron Ironman Classic, medals at the state titles in Queensland. She is a star of the future. She was caught up in what I think is one of the best age groups in the sport, and now is she is absolutely shining. Back with Wes Berg at Sunshine Beach, and she is on fire at the moment. Let's hope she gets herself into that final tomorrow. Tiani Massey leads round from someone I think you have a bit of a crush on, and so do I. Gemma Smith there. She can do anything. I adore her so much. The uh, current uh, uh, champion lifesaver champion as well. She took out about her 15th or so title earlier in the week. The girls, yes, they feel the waves come beneath them. They feel a nice little runner there. And how good is it to see three Noosa Heads competitors in the top half of this semi-final? Yeah, you're spot on there. Carla Papak there on the left-hand side doing a great job as Massey gets a run. Two Alex Caps starting to come into the background as well. That's Grace Harrison, Emma Woods. That's Piper Harrison up on the knees. Gemma Smith just in front of her as well. So that's your top six at the moment. Then Courtney Bryan in seven, Jordan Mercer in eight, Gemma Smith-Welsh just on the outside in nine and really has to get going if she wants to get into this one. Along with Bella Williams from Northcliffe, Dom Stitt out the back. There's a wave on. So these girls who are outside the top eight at the moment really have to get going because I think this one will pick up the first half of the field. And if you're not on it, you may not be in the final at the moment, but it's just filled up on everyone. Tiani Massey puts the power down, tries to get down, it falls off. And what about the rating from her? Unbelievable. Oh, this is where we saw Tech Six and really put in some big ones in the uh, men's semi final. But this is what we want. It gets a little bit shallower. We've got four on the right, one, five, six on the one behind. Okay, two left to pick through here. Looks like we're going to pick up some of the ladies as they come through. But this is where it gets tough. Uh, that looks to be uh, Alexandra Headlands. And oh my gosh, we're going to have maybe three on the wave behind. This is where it gets, this is where we get nervous. This is where it comes up oh. to the uh, run up the beach. Courtney Bryant, Jordan Mercer, Gemma Smith-Welsh on that next wave. These girls are through. They're home and host. We have no dramas at all. So we got five on the first one. One, oh, that's Emma Woods there sitting on the next one there. So we might take two from that next wave to get through. So this is where it's going to get interesting. No stress at all. Grace Harris gets through. Carla Papak gets through. Piper Harrison will sneak through, no drama. So will Gemma Smith, so will Tiani Massey, and so will Emma Woods. No problems at all. The sprint is going to be on. They had to go across there, and it looks like Courtney Bryant has got the jump on the rest of the girls. So Courtney Bryant have, might have booked herself a spot in the final. Jordan Mercer might be right on the edge. I don't know if she's in or out. We'll do the maths. We say goodbye to Gemma Smith-Welsh, and the commentators curse strikes again. She did such a good job out there. She was in the hunt, but that wave just died out for Tough for the Noosa girls, side by side. Maybe one got in and one missed out. I do not know, but we'll wait till they do the numbers there. It's going to be very, very tight. Yeah, the cuts are always brutal here in the uh, semi-finals. The girls doing an incredible job. And uh, interesting that you're saying she was in one of the toughest age groups going around. And while we say, oh, that's really, really tough, it's probably also one of the, the best, best things, things that you can yeah. actually ever get. Like if you can shine in that age group, if you can uh, continue to perform in that age group, if you want to stick with it and get some great results, Welcome to Opens. That's like it. That is the best training ground as we see the uh, girls lining up from the other semi as well. But Christy, you were down on the beach. Thanks, Jen. Down here with Grace Harris from Alexandra Headlands, um, board paddling superstar. Your season's been so strong on the board. Yeah, I've um, struggled the past few years my board growing up. Um, from Victoria, it was my strength. And going into Opens, I kind of struggled to find my way. But I'm happy that I've kind of started to find my way again. And... Yeah, really happy to book my ticket into the final on Sunday. Aussie final, I reckon you can say you've made it now. Um, open Aussie board final, also through to the ski final, so a bit of a craft specialist. What are you hoping conditions-wise come Sunday? Uh, conditions-wise, um, yeah, I don't really mind. Usually I'm a flat person, but last year, you know, it didn't go my way, and it seems to go my way waves this week, so, you know, I'm happy with whatever we get. I like that attitude. Just take it. Whatever, whatever's there on the day, you'll just attack it. Well, all the very best of luck. Two Aussie finals. Um, we wish you well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think she's not giving herself enough, of, enough credit. She's a very, very good board paddler. I think she's had a bronze in the board race before at the Aussie title. So if she's not a good board paddler, I am not here. That is for sure. We'll take a look at the highlights of that. The other uh, semi-final is about to go as well. That one is absolutely stacked in there. But we had Grace Harris, Papak. Piper Harrison, Gemma Smith, Tiani Massey, Emma Woods, Courtney Bryant and Jordan Mercer got through. So we're looking two out of three on that wave. It just filled up for the girls there. You can see it in the corner of the shot. Both the Noosa girls worked hard to get over the top of that one. They got themselves in and 
What about that? Three Noosa girls in that final from that semi alone. Geordie Mercer, Courtney Bryant, Carla Papak. They'll be a good board relay when we get to board relay time of the competition. We say goodbye to a couple of real big guns in this one. Gemma Smith, Welsh. Bella Williams, Kirsty Hardstaff, Lucy Derbyshire, Dom Smith. That was that semi-final alone. So that's very, very brutal. And from the open women, we go now to the under-17 women. I think they're up next. And we talk about good age groups. I think that age group that Gemma Smith-Welsh was in when you name the likes of Lily O'Sullivan, Lily Fanati, Charlotte Cross, uh, Gracie Otto there, a few of those other girls, Abby Tolano, um, Gemma Smith-Welsh. That's the best age group we've seen in a long, long time. This under-17 girls age group, it might shape up to be just as good. Ruby Mean, I've got to add Ruby Mean in that age group as well. It might shape up to be just as good when you start to list off some of the girls. And we've already had some casualties in this 17 girls board race. I think we're going to see some more in this one. Oh, it is just casualties across the field. I want to say this is going to be semi-final number two. Just trying to grab some caps here. That's Britt Ackley from Maruchidor just on screen at the moment next door to Millie Derbyshire from Surfers Paradise. So again, we talk about the nerves, the semi-finals. It's so tough because you're so close to an Aussie final. You're so close to just going, anything can happen in a final. Here I am. And I love that uh, we really do celebrate our athletes. It's just, just qualifying for a final is something to be celebrated. And you really should remember that's uh, memorable. Yeah, yeah. And if you're watching it at home, you think, oh, well, they didn't miss the final. They didn't get there. It is no, so no. difficult. Yeah, until you've been there and you understand how many rounds you have to go through to get yourself into the final. It is so tough. Let's take a look at the start list. Semi-final number two of the 17th female board race, Sienna Bush. Luca Piva from North Burley. The North Burley girls on fire at the moment. Wrong Smith from Manly. Cock from Trig Island. Michaela Price from Noosa Heads. She'll go well if the last one is anything to go by from Noosa. Jones from Bulleye. Elliot from Redhead. Watch for her. Pippi Depanya, maybe the most rated of all these 17 girls there. Isabella Tate. Great coach there, and Scotty McCartney from the Cudgeon Head. She can paddle, that is for sure. Millie Peterson, uh, golden ticket winner at the Summer Surf from Alexandra Headland. Green from Terrigal, Mead from Allura, Dottie from Trig Island. Bamford, I spoke to her earlier from Mullaloo, loving it out here. Millie Derbyshire out there, famous name in surf sports. And Britt Ackley, very, very good. She was the under-17 board race champion in the Summer of Surf Series this year. So we've got first and third from that series side by side. Ackley and Derbyshire expect that end of the field. They're in the rip as well. They'll go out very, very fast. And here we can see the uh, girls just getting their uh, briefings from the officials. You'll see that they have a bit of a huddle before every single race at a surf carnival. This is really important and part of our safety procedures. The girls, uh, they'll hear the course. This is where we try and negotiate. Can we just go around the first set of cans? No, it's as poor surf, surf, surf sports competition manual. And the girls <laughs> just getting the... Uh, often we'll draw the course in the sand yeah. as well if we want to really uh, confirm it. It's I... the only way. <laughs> For girls, it's not too bad. The girls leave Listen, they understand for boys, you need pictures and I do here, I go there, especially the 17s because they don't listen. Learners. Very yep. visual, that is for sure. And they still get it wrong sometimes, but I haven't given the boys much of a rap the last <laughs> couple of days, but it's the experience down there. They don't listen and they like to go their own way. The girls are on the line, eight through to the final here, off and away. Pippi Depanya has decided to go around the back, join Britt Ackley and Millie Derbyshire on that side. A couple of the North Burley girls have done the same thing there. You want to be on this end, don't you? That's where the water's really rushing out. And I love that Pepe Tapania is backing her speed as well. She's saying I'm willing to run a little bit further, I'm willing to paddle a little bit further. If it means that I get this good spot that I want on the line, I'm leaving nothing to chance in a semi-final. And at the end of the day, you're only one board length behind and you're in the rip and running out. So you might lose five or six board lengths if you just go straight in. What's one board length if you take the right line out there? And at the moment, they're absolutely flying. And these are a lot of the big guns at the moment. It really is. Tate there from the Kujin club white cat with the uh, blue star on the far side there she leads them out a very good board paddling club where lily o'sullivan started scotty mccartney he's been close in the board races for a long long time there's a couple of other old boys that would love a shout out but i won't give it to them there <laughs> they're watching on at home a brit ackley there she's been the best board paddler in a very good age group all year long and millie derbyshire when you've seen Lucy Derbyshire do what she has done for the last couple of years as well, it's no surprise that Millie's up in the top few. Third overall in that Summer Surf Series, in their second at the state titles behind Zoe Woods. And we've got second from Queensland Championships and first from New South Wales Championships, Pippi Tapania in this one. So they're very, very good girls. But someone snuck through there. I think it's that Trig Island cock from Trig mm -hmm. Island there is absolutely flown out. Snuck through there and she's off to a flyer. Oh, she's looking really calm and confident out there as well. Just like lying down, taking a moment 
moment saying, yeah, I'm in a semi-final. I'm in a good position. She's going to line up that can perfectly. And uh, that's one of the benefits about being in the lead as well. We saw it really uh, obviously in some of the open men's earlier. If you're in the lead, you can kind of control the pace, the race, the, control the pace of the race a little bit there. You get to uh, pick that good line, block the people behind you, get the inside run and uh, she's doing this beautifully Millie Crock from Trig Island what a start and she's going fantastically the West Australians on fire obviously and we we spoke about that right hand side but it really was the left that shot through and they were on fire and you don't see that sort of thing much with the, the younger she girls is. she's just very cruisy <laughs> cru ticking along not looking around not worried but you see it more with the open boys they're the ones yes. that'll get off to a fast and maybe some of them haven't done the work they'll just plant the brakes as you go around that first can let them jam up behind and then sprint away and normally it's a couple of guys who haven't really done the work not fit as they should be 17 girls they're fit as fiddles they're absolute animals out there they love it and they're not worried they're just going to keep on going so she is on fire at the moment out in front really pushing hard at the moment no dramas at all for these girls just rolling along maybe uh, maybe Dottie as well doing a great job around there and a couple of these girls jam up around the cans they turn and start to go for home as a big rain squall comes through and no problems at all for these girls as they push and start to work their way back to the beach. And for Millie Cock, there's nothing better being the first to go around the can and you get the luxury of a little look behind as well and say, I know I'm in a good position. I know I had a great start. No one was tapping the back of my board. I didn't hear any heavy breathing back there as well. And she has a nice little lead now. You can see she's just about to come around that final pink can here. When we say that we're in the pink arena, pink flags on the beach, pink cans out the back. And Millie Cock is in the absolute box seat at the moment to get a lovely little line home she can choose wherever she wants to go in the ocean right now she just needs to stay out of drama maybe pick up this little runner that is uh, building oh, get behind this, her get right this, now get this no doesn't get down it there's a little lump on the ocean here and there and that makes things very difficult if you don't get that right angle coming home for the waves it makes it very hard just behind tully elliott from the redhead club she's worked her way into this one fantastically oh there goes pippi de Pania in the background goes flying into shot a long long run down that side she's trying to find that bank on the way back Back and just really working into it at the moment. You can see how high the rating is, and I don't think Cox got up on her knees at any point throughout this race. Down on her stomach, just gone to work the entire way around. Keep the rating up, keep ticking along, and it's been damn effective out there, that is for sure. Tapania will get the wave behind. Will our leader pick that one up? No, neither. It's just filled up on them there. Very, very tough for all concerned, but I think hopefully she gets this one. Oh, you've got to think she's down this one. And I love just how calm and cool and collected she has looked throughout this entire race. Pippi Tapania battling in the background there. But Millie, Millie got caught from Trig very focused, yep. very confident. She knows that she's just about, what, 20 metres away now from, or 30 metres, I should say, from a spot in the Australian final. Millie Cock, what a race. And isn't it wonderful when we get these wonderful races and you get to give them some screen time, you get to celebrate it. You know the club's watching back home as well. Loving this for uh, Trig Island and for Millie Cock. Yeah, fantastic performance all around. The race will be on, though. We're chasing the top eight. Winning a semi-final is great, but you don't get anything for doing it. And there's a couple of guys who are notorious semi-final winners over the years and can't manage to get it done in the finals. Jeremy Cotter was the one I think of. You look at him in the semi-finals over the years, you think he's going to win this thing by a country mile. <laughs> and for whatever reason, he just couldn't get it done. That is for sure. But two across there, a couple more. Michaela Price from the Noosa Heads Club on the right-hand side. Tully Elliott in the centre there and Millie Derbyshire. So that is five across the line. No dramas at all for those three. And here we go. We're chasing three more here. Have a look at Britt Ackley go up the beach. No dramas. A couple of the girls from the North Burley Club there. That might be Luca Pitha there across the line. And maybe, just maybe, one of the Alexandra Headland girls, Millie Peterson, gets across. So we say goodbye to Isabella Tate and a few other of these girls who I would have expected to be in that final as well. Jones from Bulleye. Tough, 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 but Millie Cock got it done and didn't she make it look easy? Didn't she make it look comfortable? It was a bit of chaos behind her, but she was just out for a nice Sunday she paddle. She was fine as we see Michaela Mead from uh, Allura come through. Unfortunately, Michaela will bow out here in the semi final, but great to see. Uh, that crew come through. That was heat number two, semi-final number two, we should say, for the under-17 female board race. Heat one is on the line at the moment. That is upcoming. But, Christy, you're down on the beach. Thanks, Jen. I've got Millie here from Trig Island, semi-final winner. So you've got yourself a spot in the final. All smiles. Yeah, it feels pretty good to have a spot in the finals. That was all I wanted, was just to make a final at Aussies. So I feel pretty good. 
We hear a lot about it, don't we? Just how special it is to get a spot in the finals. And we've seen a lot of big names and a lot of uh, heartbreak stories of people not getting through. So you've done that job. Have you got a big crew over here with you um, for the Aussies? Yeah, Trig actually has quite a big crew that came over of Masters, Youth and Opens. So it's quite nice to have a big group to celebrate with. <laughs> And you've handled these conditions beautifully. Are these your conditions? Are you hoping for something similar come finals day? No, I'm really used to flat paddling, so these waves are like nothing I've been in before. So I just snuck over a few, which is quite lucky. <laughs> but yeah, it's very different to Trig. And have you got a shout out for um, coaches at home? Yeah, shout out to Mozzie um, and also to Graham, my swim coach. Thanks. All the best of luck come, come the finals. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Mozzie, Andrew Moselle, one of the best in the business, former Ironman himself. I think he's got a bunch of gold medals at the Australian Championships. I think they won a ski relay a couple of years back. But Trigger Island, a great club. They do a fantastic job there. Ski paddlers making their way in at the moment. We're not too far away from the opening round of the Open Men and Under-19 Men's Ski Race. I think those guys are just going for a warm-up because we weren't allowed to have a ski warm-up this morning. So... We're having a little paddle out there because these conditions are so big, safety reasons. We've given the guys a warm-up, the opportunity to get out there and have a float. The, in the men's arena this afternoon, Jen, we've got 19 single ski, open single ski, back to back to back, all the way through semis. We're going to get ourselves some finals uh, locked in. In the women's side of things, we've had board races all morning, semi-finals of obviously the 17th. We're going to go into some surf racing. And then down here, depending on what happens in that girls' arena, we're supposed to have the 17 girls ski. Don't know if they're going to have that. They'll wait till the smallest part of the weekend to run that one. But mixed double ski racing will go at the end of the men's ski racing there. That is the one I'm looking forward to. We had men's double skis earlier on, the mixed double. It's one of those events, you talk about equal rights and, and give women, women a go and all that sort of thing. The women decide the women of their mixed double ski. If you've got a good chick on the back, you can win that thing, and it's so important. Gemma Smith, you've got the likes of Danny McKenzie. Every year, the boys are so desperate to get a good girl on the back <laughs> because that gives you a shot at the title there. The boys don't matter. You can put anyone on the likes with Danny McKenzie and Gemma Smith, and they're the ones who decide this one. I cannot wait to see it get it run and done later this afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be a big afternoon here. I love that. That we open that we finish with those uh, gold medal races on Wednesday Arvo Thursday Arvo is the same and then we're actually going to take a little break after the uh, ocean events today then we're jumping in the car we're heading to Malulabai oh, we will it. be bringing you now. the this beach sprint right. events on the live stream from I think about 5 30 or so my roster says this yeah. afternoon and if you are at Marichidor if you're at Malulabai hashtag Aussies 2024 uh, Wayne's been doing a great job on the uh, daily conditions report yeah, telling good. us what to expect which is uh Anything. And everything. It's unbelievable down here at Marichidor. But jump on, get involved, be become part of the conversation. And if you ever get the opportunity, you're watching the live stream at home, head up to the Sunshine Coast and come up here and experience everything we've got to offer. A big shout out to Tourism Sunshine Coast and the Sunshine Coast Council for making this possible. Tourism and Events Queensland. Honestly, they help us make this event what it is every single year. I spoke with Christy yesterday. You are a local, but you're living in Brisbane at the yeah. moment. You love getting back here. From the hinterland, the Glasshouse Mountains, the uh, the villages of the hinterland, they call them, Mullaney, Montville, all of those beautiful places, yeah, Dina as well. They are some of the hidden gems of the Sunshine Coast. And then obviously you've got your Malula Bar, your Maruchidor, that is the hub, that's where it's all happening down there. You can get out on the water as well and experience everything the coast has to offer. Get up here, get involved, because it is a one-of-a-kind place. Absolutely. When you uh, talk about the hinterland, as a uh, lady of a certain age, I have been to so many weddings in the Sunshine okay, Coast, Hinterland, Mullaney, Montville, all those different places. There's uh, something for everyone here on the sunny coast. And I love that we've been treated to such incredible vision over the past few days. I feel like we could put together our own tourism video for the Sunshine Coast just based on the past few days of racing here at Maruchidor, Alex and uh, Malula Bar. Yeah, that's it. And I said a couple of times as well, don't just come to the central parts. Get down to Caloundra. It's beautiful. It doesn't look like that at the moment. The sand's changed just a little bit down there, but it's worth heading down and having a visit at there. And obviously, beautiful Noosa definitely doesn't look like that at the moment. <laughs> beautiful Noosa up in the north. There's a couple of hidden gems along the way as well. Coolum, unbelievable. I love to get up to that part of the world, Perigian as well. There's a Great couple, bakery. I was going to say a wonderful pub as well. 
I love it. We got, as we spoke about before, mixed double coming up later on today. One of the only events in surf sports where men and women race together. We had the men's doubles yesterday afternoon. Jen, you were down on the beach. These were special. And we start with the open men and it was an emotional victory for a bunch of reasons and a big shout out to the families of both uh, of Lockie Tame and Pete Mitchell as well. They're going through a hard time. This one meant just a little bit more and I caught Lockie and Pete afterwards. They'd been up and had maybe four or five schooners <laughs> afterwards. They had to stop themselves from having a hundred because it means so much. The families were watching on at home Enjoy your bike. and it was a big one for the Burley boys. Yeah, this was a special race. I'm actually really glad that we get to see, I get to see it now from this view. It's so, so wonderful. There were so many uh, clubs that were in it early, um, and it was great to see. I know North Burley, they are uh, spoilers. They're yeah. going to be up there very, very soon. It was such a great race between some incredible clubs, and I think what always strikes me when I head down to the double skis, the speed off the line, and yeah. then the way they just seem to accelerate again and again and again throughout the race. And I think the... Everyone would agree, and including the winners, that North Burley were the best team on the day, but that's not what surf racing is about. They might have been the fastest, but you have to get it done in the final, and Burley Heads Mowbray Park, or Slash Evoker as we like to call them, they had the right run to the line, and that is what it takes at the end of the day. You can see North Burley go to the lead there, and I felt sorry for Alexandra Headland to yes. Newport as well. They were so close, and probably both of them deserved a medal. They fell out in that last little <laughs> stage there. They didn't get the run of the line. But Jet Kenny, Jamo Porter, and Mitch Trim and Jonesy as well, they probably deserved to be on the podium there. They were the four best teams going around. And Lockie Tame said to me at this point he thought it was over because you give that North Burley team a chance to run a mile. And he said for a long time he hadn't fought in races because he's won so much, he's done so much. When you're an Olympic bronze medalist, it gets hard to get up for everyday races. But he said, at this point, I decided, nah, if this is my last one or one of the last ones, I'm going to make every single one count. And you can see him. They just put the accelerator down here. Look at him go. He starts to wind up at the moment, gets this runner, and this is where the race changes. Because North Burley, they end up in a bit of a hole. Burley Heads and Newport really start to wind up and get going there. They start to push and push, and they got themselves back into it. And somehow, I do not know, they pulled this one out of the fire because North Burley deserved it, but Burley Heads Mowbray Park got it done. Oh, absolutely. I would have put my house on uh, North Burley to take the win where we were about five or ten seconds ago. And this is the uh, this is the wave that made the difference. And this is where you can see North Burley have done every single thing right in the race so far. They have uh, they've done what they needed to do. And then you can see Burley Heads Mowbray Park. They had the momentum. They had that glimmer of hope. And when you've got Lockie Tame on the front saying, we're about to go in a second... You go. And I think Bur North Burley went a little bit early. You can see they went really hard. Burley's just started their run now. So North Burley got out in front of the wave and started to come back towards it. Burley left their run absolutely perfectly and have gone off to an absolute flight. Oh. Timed it to perfection across the line there and the big celebration. They're cheering in Avoca, but what a start to their career at Burley Heads and Mowbray Park. They certainly deserve that one because it was very, very special from those boys. And they've had quite the time over the last couple of months. Tough time for their families there, a few health issues in the family and what a way to celebrate and what an achievement there and they I think they had to stop themselves from having a thousand beers last night. I caught them on the way out of the festival <laughs> zone there. The Your Mates Brewery guys were there serving beers and they said, no, nah, we've got ski racing tomorrow. We've got to get back into it. But I would have loved if they just kept celebrating. And you see it, hugs and high fives all around and Lockie Tame, he got so emotional yesterday with you having a chat, Jenny, and I said to him afterwards, I said, I was struggling not to have a tear up in the commentary booth here because I know how much it means to him. Yeah, absolutely. I could see him start to get a little glassy-eyed and I was like, mate, if you go, I'm going to go as well. And then this interview is just a shambles after that. But, you know, we love seeing how much an Aussie gold medal means and we talk about everyone's different, but everyone is special as yeah. well. And, you're, and I said to him as well as I saw Lockie, I said, you're lucky it was Jen, Jen there and not me because I would have stuck the microphone in your face and kept asking questions because you love to see it. You don't see the emotion for these guys. Like, he's an Olympic bronze medalist. The two boys on the boat there both stood, uh, the front of both those boats have stood on the podium at the Olympics and it does not get any harder than win a kayaking medal at the Olympic Games. And you can see the drive to the line, but you want to see him crack. You want to see how much it means to them there. And... I said, Lockie, you're very, very lucky, mate, because I would have got there. Across the line there, very tight on the edge there. Maybe Alexandra Hedlund, I think, got it done there, in, if my memory serves them correct. So Jet and Jamo, they deserve it. They'll win one one day, but they've come very, very close. And you can see there the Robbie Miles. That's what it's called. It's when you throw your paddle, throw the legs out and ride it to the beach there. High fives, but I know deep down that one 
He's won so many, but that one means just a little bit more to the big fella there. And Pete Mitchell, we love it. And have a look at this. A little bit of controversy from this start. So if you look at it now, a couple of teams in the centre turned around. A few guys on the beach, when the gun went, they were blowing a few whistles and going, get, get up, 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 up. We saw a couple of teams stop. And these 19 boys, they'll learn for that. You never stop. Unless the jet ski cuts across in front of you, you never stop. And it didn't give Newport the jump, but Newport definitely got the best of the start there. And there was a few clubs that were blowing up afterwards. But that's racing, and there's so much noise on the beach. Commentary going, music going, teams supporting their other guys. you just got to paddle until they force you to stop if there is a false start. And that's what our leaders didn't do. They went at like absolute animals there, the Newport boys. Northcliffe pushed them all the way around, but I think... The Newport under-19 ski paddlers, that's the third year in the row they've mm -hmm. won it. They've been a class above. Yeah, they've really wanted this one. And you can tell where uh, clubs are really targeting certain events or they know they've got a good combo together. They know they've got a good double ski, a good board relay, a chance in a beach, uh, beach relay or something like that. And uh, the boys just executed perfectly. This one meant a lot to the club. I, I even saw Lizzie Wellborn down there. People were coming from different arenas. And yes, there was a little bit of drama on the start. But, you know, that's an Aussie final. Like, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be at Aussies if there wasn't some early drama on a Wednesday afternoon just to create the, uh, the chat. And that's what I said to a couple of the guys. They said, oh, there was whistles blowing. And I said, it happens every single year. Yes. And, and, that, and it's support and it's guys cheering. And you hear a noise and the big gap this team had. But that's what's happened. And there's always, like you said, some drama. And the reason I think the rest of the clubbies love these boys is because they're wild men. If you're going <laughs> to jump into a double ski, there's something a little loose about you out there. You've got to get in and fight around the cans. When the surf's this big, you're willing to jump in a double and, well, sort of put it all on the line. You know that there's plenty of fun being had afterwards. If you can win one, they're very, very special. You can see the jam around the cans. Karua, they were very upset afterwards. So were Maruchidor and a couple of the other clubs. Northcliffe got into it and they were a genuine shot here, but it was all... All out in front, the Newport boys, Bailey Clues and Harrison Reed, both kayakers. Mm -hmm. Harrison Reed, um, obviously out of the uh, the uh, South Australian sort of region, made his way up to the Newport club now. Bailey Clues as well. I think he's in that junior yep. Australia kayaking set up there. Clues family, very talented there. Big raps on the entire family then. But have a look out in front, and it must have felt good for them. I caught them afterwards as well, and they were absolutely loving it because they gave me the claim of the day. Pure Robbie Miles, that's what it's called. I'm naming it now. It's where you throw your paddle before the finish line and you risk it all as you get across. And that's what the Newport boys did. And that sprint for second and third might have been the best of the day in this one. Oh, this is hectic. And you talked earlier about, you know, North Burley maybe went a little bit early on their run to the line. Not that I would ever tell Murray Stewart how <laughs> to, do to do anything yeah, ski paddling related. But this is where you can see those good decisions. And, you know, having that team captain in the boat calling, we're going now, we're yeah. putting in five big ones. And have a look at the speed here. I love it when you can actually see uh, some of these uh, crews paddle away from the wave because they cannot wait. They are going and that uh, that uh, far green flag there or the near one to us, that really got to work out yesterday. It was hugs all round. Yeah. Newport was loving this. Everyone was down there. It was, a, it was a big afternoon and a really lovely way to celebrate what had been a massive day on the beach. It was about 4.30pm by now. The boys had been down there since 8. Massive first day. Aussie is a, is a marathon not a sprint and to start day one like that Woo, a big one in the books. Yeah, we got a big, big eight hours worth of racing, that's for sure. We missed a couple of those events that were supposed to go around in a few areas, so made life very, very difficult. And after a big day of oh, what I would say would be stressful racing for those yeah. guys, especially trying to qualify, trying to get through, they went back to back to back in those double skis. And you're spot on. It was a marathon, not a sprint. We can see a couple of the girls starting to get themselves ready. I think surf race is up next. This one looks like maybe under 19 girls surf race. Not too far away, but we'll wait and see that one. And if those double skis were good, these surf races, you find yourself a wave and you're in this one up to your eyeballs. We're no finals today, the surf races. I think just some set quarters and semi-finals. They'll be trying to get themselves through to the final, which will be run on Sunday. And that's all this, these first two days are about. Get yourself through rounds. Eighth is enough. Sixteenth is enough. If they're taking ten, jump in that top ten. Mm -hmm. And the rain is really starting to pour down there as well. Yeah, so if you're wondering where is the drone, the drone is probably in a nice little safe area the at the beach. moment. We need to uh, keep that safe there. So this is heat number two, semi-final number two, I should say, actually, for the uh, 19 female surf race. And... Uh, we mentioned earlier we are going to the uh, beach track a little later today. We've created a monster. We've gone too soon, Josh. I've already got uh, Todd McSwan on the uh, oh, on the line Toddy. here saying sprints tonight. You 
wet track, fast track. Who could possibly be more pumped about seeing Chloe Maddox Power, the Stool Gift winner, in a stacked field of over 130 starters in the male and female opens? Let's go from Swanee. So if you want a hype man in your corner, he loves it. five stars to yeah, Tom yeah. Swan from Marucci Door. Yeah, he loves it there. The coach there at Marucci there in the mix. And Malulabar Beach at mm. night under lights, beach competition. It doesn't get any better. Maybe Scarborough at night under lights. Like the flags in the pits in the it. amphitheater. That's about as good as it gets. I remember 2016, oh, no. Simon Harris uh, down there winning that one. That's as good as a, a beach event as I've ever seen down there. And I loved it. I can't wait to get back there on Saturday afternoon for the beach flags. The sprints are on this afternoon, and it's what it is all about. Wet track, you're not wrong there. And with this southerly blowing, they'll be going into a headwind, so maybe a little slower than we're used to down there, but I'm sure they will be in the mix. The girls are on the line, semi-final number two. A couple of these girls, very, very good. We just spoke about Harrison Reed, Zali Reed from Newport. That is the sister there of Harrison going around as well. We've got McCarty, Dennis, Pilkington, Reed, Zabo from Kujitara, Shotter, watch for her, Corbett from Southport, Gates from Terrigal, Beaumont from Brighton, Georgia Askew and Nikita Nizan-Seren from Northcliffe, Jenny Hughes from North Bondi, Jada Kempton, Taryn Elliott, Jasmine Graham, Sam Brigden, Lola gibbs Bill. she is one to watch there from the Noosa Club. Uh, Zeitz from Southport, Paulie, Jasmine Raywood won just about everything at the Aussie titles last year. So watch for her in this surf race. She will certainly be one to watch. Charlie McDonald, Emma McDonald, Stark Fleming, Chelsea Jones, another very, very good swimmer, formerly of Bulleye, now at the Crumman Club. Etherington from Mermaid Beach, Scott from Manly, Newton from Northcliffe. I was told to watch out for Darren Newton, very good, and Tara Shotter as well. Eva Parrish from Southport, Ellie Morgan from Brighton, Copsy, the local girl from Maroochydore, Kimberly Doyle, a good swimmer. Lani Waller is the New South Wales under-19 surf race champion. I think she is. Yes, she is there. And Dakota Luke. So we've got the New South Wales champion and the Queensland champion in this one there, and Jasmine Raywood and Lani Waller. Watch for her. Last year it was Fenella gibbs Beal who won this surf race. Lily O'Sullivan in second. Sarah Locke, who is back in this didn't have the Iron Woman she wanted in the other 90s, but Sarah Locke, she'll be a shot in this one. And she, to be honest, she might be a shot in the open Iron Woman as well. Yeah, very excited to see some of those under 19 girls really mixing it with the best. And uh, New South Wales state champs was really, you know, Lana getting the double there as well. But closest to camera, that is Dakota Luke from Dickey Beach. We got some fantastic footage of her yesterday in her Iron Heat. She yeah. had the most beautiful start. She's incredible on a ski. And we can see uh, Rhiannon Copsey from Maruchidor just going a little wide there as well. A few of those girls who were further down on the beach deciding, no, I need to go south. I need to be in the rip. This is how my race plan is going to come through. But for the girls out the front, I can already see, uh, I think that is uh, Chelsea Jones in the Corumban cap, the green and white quarter. She's probably on the top of screen at the moment, up on the left there. So much messy water. It is so hard to get a good stroke in when you're constantly having to look forward, look up, you're getting a bit of white water, you're getting some side chop, and you're in there with about 40 other ladies trying to find the red and yellow can. Yeah, very, very difficult. That is for sure. I always thought doing a surf race and you've mm. done more and you probably know more about them than I do Jenny is head down to the back of the break give yourself everything you've got then have a look around see where some guys are because if you're jumping on the feet through the break you, you're just not giving yourself the right advantage to be completely honest so head down through the break everything you've got then have a look around maybe find some feet get that sucker around the cans and then go to work on the way home when you pick your line it doesn't always work especially when it's big and moving like this but that's the general plan for these swimmers the girls are off and away at the moment. It is Jones out in front from the Corumban Club, formerly of Bulleye on the south coast of New South Wales, down there. But I think she went to Corumban for a bit of that pool rescue sort of thing there. Big involvement in pool rescue up there, both at Corumban and for Chelsea Jones. She's one of the best in the business. Yeah, it's really great to see uh, Chelsea racing this weekend. It's such a busy time of year for our swimmers, for our uh, I want to say our pool swimmers, but also for the uh, the guys who are doing athletics as well. It's just a, a, There's only so many weekends in a sporting year of the calendar that you can make happen and when Aussie goes Aussies goes for nine days all up it's tough to get everyone racing at Aussies because there are so many competing priorities so to see people like Chelsea here to see Nick Sloman in the mix as well it's really exciting that people are 
prioritising Aussies because they know how special it is and they want to be part of it. That's exactly right. We've obviously got our Olympians in the kayaking, we've got our Olympians mm-hmm. in the swimming, yes. Chloe Mannix Power and the runners, Bree Masters and those girls that are that are sort of are trying to get to Paris. I know I think they had the first round of the uh, Paris Athletics selection in the last couple of days. Unfortunately, Bree Masters and maybe the 4x1 girls didn't get themselves a slot. Hopefully, I'm not two across the athletics qualifications but hopefully there's still a shot there because they're very very good I know they've uh, they got their Commonwealth Games bronze medal given to them mm-hmm. after a couple of the uh, the girls are on the juicy stuff there from a couple of other countries that's for sure so good to see them get that but it's always good to see our Olympians our, our other sports athletes mm-hmm. come back and it really is the sport they love it's the sport they started at Yolani Pallister she started at surf sports she went away Brie Masters she started at surf sports she went away that's what we love to see and that's what we love to get and at this at the moment maybe yeah still Jones out in front doing a fantastic job as she leads round first and second have really broken away from the rest of the field at the moment and I love seeing it. I don't know. I thought we were going to see Lani Pallister in the open surf race later on, but with that Australian Swimming Championships, I don't know if she can duck away for a surf race here or there or maybe even a tap in the relay late in the, da- oh, in the competition. It would be good to see. Obviously, none of the kayakers here. They're headed off to Europe soon, and, and they've got bigger priorities in the big scheme of things, and that's just the way of the world, and we hope to see them back here next year. Courtney Hancock is on the beach for the first time. Courtney Hancock, what have you got for us? Hey guys, yes, the weather is still a little bit of rain, but I'm down here with Liv Edwards, and you're from Terrible Surf Club, and so you're up for the under-17 surf swim coming up. Yeah, pretty excited. The conditions are a bit messy, but it's been super fun out there these past few days, so I'm pretty keen, yeah. And I can see you've got your crew, your entourage behind you there with the girls. What's your favourite thing about the Aussies? Definitely the team events with the Terry girls. Um, We have heaps of fun. And I reckon we we go pretty well in the team events. So, yeah, we've got the board relay final tomorrow, which we're super keen about. And then I think it's after the swim and the skate, just all team events from there. So, yeah, pretty excited. Well, Liv, I love the energy and I love the confidence. But for everyone watching on the live stream, can you just tell us how difficult and challenging is the surf conditions out there? Yeah, it's super difficult. There's heaps of movement out there. so And it's pretty inconsistent, like, along... Um, the beach so there might be like a wave on the left and then nothing on the right and then so yeah it's it's a lot of luck out there you need luck and you need skill definitely but it's still heaps of fun so yeah thank you so much Liv good luck to yourself and also the terrible crew and there you have it guys we're here on the beach and still plenty of action thank you bye Courtney Hancock, there is only one way we will refer to Terrigal from now on, and that is the Terry Girls, because that is the best line I've heard in a long time. I love that. How is it 2024, and I'm only just hearing about this term right now? I I was thinking the girls of Northcliff, the gone was good, but the Terry Girls... Oh, chef's kiss. Unbelievable. I love that work there from those girls. And it's a great club. It's got a long history of some unbelievable competitors over the years. And a couple of those, like, I think of the girls especially, and Amanda Hay back in the day, these girls just dominated this. And you knew if there was a terrible board relay or a terrible Taplin relay on the line, they'd go very, very close. As Jones picks up a wave out in front. The last couple of years, maybe not so much the open girls, but you get plenty in those junior age groups coming through. And... That sort of central coast of New South Wales, Terrigal Wombrel in there, they're very, very strong. And I know they've got some good older role models in there. A couple of guys and girls, your, your Paul Lamont, Hayden Smith in there, that are very good Masters competitors. And the future's bright for the Terrigal Club, and we love to see it. Absolutely. And if you, as we watch uh, Chelsea Jones just romp this one in, loving that. She got a nice little wave. The uh, Corumban crew, the Vikings, they'll be happy for her as she comes through the line. But if you are down here at Aussies at Maroochydore, make sure you head through that festival zone. And as you do the walk um, across the the different uh, different arenas down here. You'll actually see a few QR codes and a few little stories that you can click into. And one of those is actually Amanda White from Terrigal. Oh, that's she was uh, yep. an Open Surf Race champion. I think she actually won two. Um, I think she went back to back as well, which was even more. One is tough. Oh, two is difficult to go back impossible. to back as well. Yeah. It was just incredible. And uh, it was a, a lovely nostalgic blast from the past to see Amanda White in her trademark blue cap you know, having a nice little wave through yeah. there. So I gave a little mental nod to be like, yeah, I remember her. She's uh, She wiped the floor with me in a few surf races. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. A hundred percent. And she did a fantastic... She was a great yes. competitor as well. There was a There's a rich history down there as Jasmine Raywood crosses the line. Very, very easy work for a couple of these girls at the top end. Kimberly Doyle sneaks in there as well. There's Lani Waller across. We'll be chasing our top 16 and mm-hmm. we start to do the maths. This is where things start to get very interesting. And I've loved those 
those uh, Aussies installations there. You hit the QR code, you can hear the story of, of those athletes. There's some, a couple of the guys from Thrall mm-hmm. there in the past. Dino Mercer, a big shout-out yes. to the Mercer family. Obviously, Geordie's still going around, but um, Dean lives, yeah, lives on in our hearts, that's for sure. And to be able to watch his story, and I think... Maybe the most iconic Aussies win of all time, his Ironman. Cam Cole would be a tight yep. second place, but love only it. just. And i got mixed feelings about both of them because I love both those guys. But Dino's against Trevor Hendy was something special. Cam Cole's was as well. But you click on the QR code and you get the smallest man in the sport beating the biggest man in the sport there. So it's very special. If you're on the beach, jump on there, grab those. I'm sure you can go to the uh, SLSBA pages and there'll be plenty of those as well there as well. Big shout out to everybody watching on at home in the live stream as well because that was the under-19 girls semi-final of the surf race. Semi-finals day, to be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Most of these individual events, most of these semi-finals, and Courtney Hancock is on the beach. You've just taken out the surf swim. It's just, it's just all about getting in there, isn't it? Yeah, no, I wasn't here yesterday. I was down at the National Swimming Champs, but I came up this morning to, like, have a good crack, which I don't really like the waves that much, but I knew that, like... Once you got out, like, through to that clean water, I knew I'd be right. But it is such, like, tricky conditions and, like, tricky to read before the race as well. So you're telling us you've gone for the Australian titles for the pool swimming yesterday in the pool, and now you're here for the Australian surf titles. Well, yeah, I love surf racing. I've mainly been focusing on pool stuff, like, for the past six months. But, like, when I knew it was just up the road, I was like, you know what, I'm going to come up and, like, get myself in the spot for Sunday's final. Absolutely. And you just said you're not too much of a fan of the waves, but you hear you've come in first, so you must you must not be too bad with the waves. Yeah, in the warm-up I went out just to suss out and remember how to body surf and catch on to some of those broken waves, which luckily paid out for me this morning. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck with both in the pool and in the surf. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Josh, how good is that? We're just talking about it. She gives us the most beautiful segue through of like, yeah, I was just at that event. And I love that commitment when people just say, I just want to be a part of it. I want to be racing on Sunday. If there's a chance that I could get there, why wouldn't I do the drive? I love it. And there's actually a bit of a rich history in in terms of that. Like the likes of Kai Hurst, the likes of Mal Allen over the years on the guys' side of things, Lani Pallister now, and obviously Chelsea Jones on the female side of things that... Going in between the two, you look at the program and you go, okay, the 400 freestyle is the first day, the surf race is on the second day, I'll sneak back to the Gold Coast, get the 200 done on the fifth day, and maybe I'll be there for the final on Sunday. It's just back to back to back, and Chelsea Jones can mix it with those girls in the pool and obviously gets it done here as well. And big shout-out to everybody maybe watching the live stream in between heats and finals down there at the (laughs) Australian Swimming Championships as well. The fact that we can't line it up and get everyone to everything, it's tough out there. We understand that one, but hopefully in the future. And there's some famous stories as well, and I don't want to go into into the good old days, but it was a rumour. I've had it denied by Mal, but I like to think it was real. Mal Allen doing uh, 4100s on the 110 on the Saturday morning and then going in the surf race in on the Sunday afternoon and almost getting the job done there. He was headed off to the Olympics that year in 96, so... Maruba's finest, Mal Allen there. And that's what happens sometimes. He knew he had the Australian Championships coming up. He knew he had to get the work done. So Saturday morning session, come to the beach, get yourself through to the final and back it up the next day. Mal reckons it doesn't happen. I reckon it did. I love to see that sort of thing. But you hear those stories of guys going to the pool. Lani Pallister's has done mm-hmm. it over the last couple of years. Get the session done, go to the beach, get yourself through, go back, rest and recover, come back for the final later. Yeah, I think uh, my equivalent of that, and again, when I say my equivalent, I'm telling you a story about someone else that I'm <laughs> <laughs> Share third hand. Lani Pallister made the uh, the team for the last World Championships, and she came in a little bit late to uh, to arrive into Italy. And so I was already over there. We have like a team liaison person. Yeah. She was absolutely superstar. So I head out uh, with our with our team handler to the airport, pick up Lani. She's just you know fresh off the flight. We drive directly to, to the, the swimming pool. pool. Yeah. She does like three k immediately before she even meets the team, 100%. gets back to the accommodation. And that was part of the, the deal of getting her onto that team and she into that event. And again, this is why it was so fantastic. It's like, well, if this is what I want to do, this is what I need to do. Yep. And there we were. And oh my gosh, waves yeah. on offer. Josh, tell me what we saw earlier yeah, today. Yeah, that, this is the 19 and open highlights of the surf teams earlier today. I think this is the under-19 final there. Burley and Northcliffe in the end, side by side. And these waves played a massive role. Riley Harland got there ahead of, uh, I think, Alex Walker there mm-hmm. from the Cooks Hill Club. And in the end, this was a great one. 
Northcliffe, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park both finished on 31 points. So Riley Harland, obviously first across the line, gets one. Walker gets two. You can see the boys jogging up. That's three, four, five, six as you go across. In the end, it was the one spot between the last finisher of Burley Heads, Mowbray Park and the last finisher from Northcliffe there. They were 14 and 15. If that had been reversed around, Burley Heads, Mowbray Park would have got the win. But as it finished it, they equal on points and the count back was Northcliffe got the job done. Then Northcliffe managed to go back to back here in the Open Men's Surf Team's final. Zach Morris had a lot to do with that. He got out on front very early on. We spoke about his run across the, the bank there on the inside. We can see a couple of boys really struggling, but when you've got those long legs, that's Bailey Armstrong in the middle there. Can swim, can't run, but that's okay. He's super talented in the water. And we take a look at them there, go around the cans. But Northcliffe got it done again. So 19 winner, open winners. This is how Northcliffe wins the overall point score. They manage to just pick up points in every single race. You get five, you get six, you get three. You just got to score something in everything. And that's how you win the overall point score. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And some great shots on the way through. I went down to the beach to watch this event. And it was hectic. Like the speed around the cans. But Zach Morris, his start was absolutely incredible. As you see Ruben Rees from Northcliffe there. He's actually in their B team. So if Ruben Rees, the current yeah. Australian belt champion and the Queensland champion, yes. could not make the Northcliffe A swim team. And uh, in the in the lead up to Aussies, you know, you and I and the other commentators, we're doing a lot of prep. We're doing a lot of study. We're going through our archives. And uh, a fun fact that I found out from the uh, surf teams racing, Shannon Eckstein, mm. nine Aussie gold medals from surf teams alone. Don't bring up bad things. How Don't bring in, up bad things. Like, I, you know, couldn't, like, I know, had to double check. I was like, that can't be right. Do you know why I know it's right? Because I think I have seven <laughs> silver medals or yes. six silver medals, five and a bronze or something. So, yeah, that makes complete sense because I think Northcliffe dominated for basically a year, a decade of that yeah. surf teams event. I think when you have the likes of Shannon Eckstein, Pierce Leonard, uh, for a little while Nathan Smith, Kane Eckstein in there as well, you add in uh, uh, Bailey Armstrong, Nick Sloman on the back end, Shannon was the, the basically the core one of that one mm. and every single year, oh as Lizzie Wellgorn gets absolutely punted, every single year Shannon Eckstein would finish on the top of that because he's he swims with the best of them. I think the only thing stopping him from having six or seven surf race titles was Kai Hurst yeah. was there racing with him the whole time. So it doesn't surprise me because I copped the beating in a lot of those surf teams as well. So thank you for bringing so up the past, I... Jenny Parry. I really appreciate that. But if you want to jump in the fetal position oh, in the corner for a moment, I've, I can carry this I've from here. I've gotten over it now, but it was the same in the Tapman Relay. Yes. It wouldn't surprise me if he had six or seven Tapman Relay gold medals along the way. And Shannon Eckstein... He's the greatest of all time still. And I know Ali Day's entering the argument and people like to say Kai and people like to say a lot of others, but when it comes to big, big surf, when it comes to getting it done in those team events, for me, Shannon Eckstein, Zane Holmes are mm. one and two because you could put them in any of those team events. You name it, you put it in it and they get it done. Ski relays, board relays, surf teams, taplin relays, the belt race. I think rescue tube, rescue, you put him in the beach relay, and I think Shannon would have got it done yeah. early on in his career, maybe yeah. not a little bit later on, but he truly is one of the all-time greats, and he's a special man, and he still gets around the beach. We see him sort of once or twice every year. Have a look at that. Talk about special. Tiani Massey got up and over that one. These are highlights oh. for earlier today. I think they're just making a few adjustments to the program down there. I saw a team managers meeting going on, so maybe mm -hmm. we're getting a little bit of adjustment. So we're just seeing the highlights now. These are the open Ironwoman semifinals from earlier in the day. Out in front, Electra Outram did Oof. everything right except go sideways, and in the end, she missed out on that final. No. And I tried to have a chat with Electra earlier on today. She wasn't too pumped on it. I think she's having one of those days. So Which poor you're old allowed Electra, to have. Spot on, you're not, without a shadow of a doubt. Tiani Massey, I caught her after that one, and it's business as usual, which is a scary mm -hmm. thing for Tiani Massey. Mm -hmm. There's no highs, there's no lows, there's just, I'm getting through round after round. And have a look at that, Tiani Massey, Georgia Miller, and then Lana Rogers. Imagine being One, on two, the line, three. drawing that as your semi-final, and you're like, yeah, thanks, livehates.com. Really appreciate that. Um, but of course, as you want to keep an eye on the uh, results, the draw, and all oh, these waves today, this is where you're just hoping 
someone's got me on the live stream. Someone's got a camera on this as well yeah. because these are the sorts of things that you remember 5, 10, 20 years on from the Aussies. It's rarely I got a silver medal in this or I yeah. made a semi-final or I had a bust up on the line. It was like, do you remember that wave that I got yeah, the from out the back? Yeah, we've all caught waves that we didn't want to, that we didn't mean to. Like, it's pretty special. And I can't I, I can't imagine the waves get smaller as the year goes on either. Oh, tripling. Two, two feet last year, four feet the year after. It was 12 feet after a few beers and a big chat around the uh, around the table at the surf club and that's what it's all about it's the memories yep. and I'm a I'm a racing competitive kind of guy but I love a story and that's what the Australian Championships is whether you win or you get knocked in the first round there's a story that goes with it and whether it's the season you had whether it's the uh, the lead up or you get to your accommodation and it's terrible or you get there and you're in the penthouse and you're loving it there's always a story that goes on and I was ahead of Clint Robinson or I was ahead of Shannon Eckstein and they got a wave and got lucky I can't believe that they won the gold medal and I didn't you hear a lot of that over the years because everyone's got a perspective and a story out there and that's what we love about the Australian Championships and it is the stories that make this event and make this sport something very very special and you bring up something about Shannon and I've got a story we yep. start to talk about Mal Allen and you've got a story about Lani Pallister and um, that, that's really what it is we're storytellers and I guarantee my wife and everyone around us is sick of hearing the stories back in the day but when you sit under the tent and you tell the stories that is what makes the Aussie Championship special and I think that's what differentiates our sport to all the others because you win an Olympic gold medal and there's something very individual and there's something very, um, I guess, it's very ruthless about it because you have to put everything into it. If you're the guy who's running 16th and you get a wave and you win an Aussie gold medal there, there's something that's oh, a little bit of luck and this is how I did it. And it's just different. And the beauty of it is you've got both those things here in Surf mm -hmm. Life Saving. We bring it together. It's the gathering of the clan and it's become bigger than Ben-Hur over the last couple of years and, and maybe a little bit too big at times. But that's what makes this sport great is you have everybody from everywhere getting together once a year on the Sunshine Coast this year and they get the opportunity to rewrite the stories for themselves. Yeah, it's pretty special. I feel like Aussies, there's, it's the reunion yep. each year. Uh, walking along the beach yesterday, we saw Matt Sutton, who's uh, over in New Zealand now. He brought some New Zealand kids yep. over. So it's not just the Aussie Championships anymore. It feels like it is becoming truly international. We've yeah. actually got our international club guide up here here in the booth because we need to keep an eye on everyone That's and it. especially once we head to the beach sprints and the beach flags there's I think six or seven Japanese clubs yep. represented and that's not counting all of the international competitors who race for an Australian, Australian club clubs, yeah. already so everybody wants to be part of it uh, Andrew Crook from South Africa messaged me this morning hey where can I find the results from Aussies yep. everyone's watching and that's what makes it really special so I see these new athletes who come through every year who get to race at their first Australian championships and and they've heard these stories yeah. they know what it's all about there's the excitement of packing the trailer you know getting your gear yeah, each yeah. year and I love that everyone's walking around with all their fresh kit um, yes, at the moment so. and now they get to be a part of something huge that they will remember and they'll have their own stories and the best part about Aussies is what is the, what are the stories that we are yet to write come Sunday afternoon what is it that we're going to remember that will stay with our village and with our athletes yeah and it's not the stuff that you, you think it's not the Australian championships it's not it the, really is it's all the other things it's packing the trailer afterwards and and one year having a food fight with the whole of the trailer pack up it's it's all the little things that go into making the Australian championships great and don't get me wrong if you leave home with a gold medal it's always better if you leave home with any medal it's always better but if you don't at the end of the weekend I think it all gets lost in the wash a little bit mm. and you just enjoy your week there with your friends and your family and you've had a hell of a blast and whether you win, lose or draw there's always something you can sort of say oh it was this fold or that fold or whatever it was and Beautiful part of the Sunshine Coast here at Maroochydore Beach. Obviously down at Alexandra Headland, we've got the boat competition going on as well. A few of the boaties on the live stream, they're going to run, we're going to have a live stream a little bit later on with the mm -hmm. boaties later in the competition. Dedicated None of it live today, stream. just the boaties. I know you're loving it out there. If you want to catch any of the action for today, liveheats.com is where it's at. For the beaches, Tonight at Malula Bar, I think 5 o'clock, 5.30, somewhere start in there. That will have the beach live stream in there as well. So don't stress. You'll see the boaties. You'll see the beach competitors as well. And we're here at Maroochydore. We're going to go to a quick break now. We'll be back with all the action when we kick things off again. I think men's ski racing is up soon, so stick with us. Here on the Sunshine Coast, you'll find sunshine makes the sea sparkle. The skies pastel. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger. Most
moments longer, hearts beat fast, and time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment for real. And if you are around at Aussies this weekend, and we talk about the stories, we'd love it if you're creating some new new ones to keep us in the uh, conversation, hashtag Aussies2024. That uh, conditions report is going to be so, so important. I think the conditions are going to be a little bit different everywhere from here all the way through to Sunday. We've seen quite a few seasons in one day. That is going to uh, continue, but it's all worth it when we get to uh, hang out at this beautiful uh, place on the Sunshine Coast. And Joshua, we're mentioning Maruchidor, Alex Malulaba. We've actually got the board riding happening up at Coolum as well. So if you love a wave, highly recommended. Jump in the car, head a little bit north, rock up down to Coolum. Great bakery there. I mean, if you want to know swimming pools and bakeries, love I it. am your girl. 100%. Let me be your guide. But it's been really wonderful to uh, bring so many people to the Sunshine Coast. And uh, while Munners the other day was saying, no, 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 don't tell anyone. We're I like, was... people, the, the, the secret's out. Yeah. Everyone moved here. I think <laughs> we all want to be party. here. Yeah, well, I blew into this town as well 18 years ago. Yes. and that's the that's my favourite story. I mm -hmm. rang my old man and said, I'm never going home, mate. This place is too good for me. So that's what the Sunshine Coast is all about. That's what we love. And you're spot on. There's a couple of hidden gems all up and down the coast. The surfing this, this week will be very good. And people laugh a little bit about the surfing, but you, you look at the people that have come through there over the years, and there's some really, really good surfers. The big one for me, Jesse Molly Dyer, who is yes. now... Well, in charge of the women's WSL for a long time and now I think she's just running the show completely. She started here in surf sports, great board paddler as well and she'd win a couple gold medals in the surfing around those early 2000s years and decided that being a professional surfer is probably better than a board paddler and Hey, I'm not going to judge her decision. I don't know if it's good or bad, but we see her on that WSL coverage a, long to a lot of the time. So she made her start here surfing at the Australian Championships, did really well, was a board partner as well. So there is the next generation, and I know we've had the junior stuff the last couple of days, and it'll be good to see the big guys and girls go around. I know... I know uh, Harry's from uh, Bondi Rescue gets mm -hmm. around there in the uh, longboarding as well. Yep. So big shout out to those boys as well. Huge shout out. I've got to make one as well to, Ma to Max Beatty because I was making the point before <laughs> that he had a tough sort of 12 and 18 months. And I was sort of making the comparison between him and TJ and how TJ had a kid and not Max Beatty. So for anyone out there who thinks maybe Max Beatty has a kid and he didn't tell anyone, that is not the case. So big shout out to Max and the Tent Talk boys in there because they're giving me a bit at the moment about Max Beattie having a child. Heat one of the open men's single ski race is up next. We've had a bit of a lull here on the beach in the racing. The, uh, the finishing flags are out. The boys are on the line. We're getting set and ready to go. If that women's ski racing yesterday was anything to go by, all I can predict here is carnage and heartbreak because that's all we saw in the open women's ski race. Yeah. It was one favourite after another going out, going out, going out. And I looked at the start list today of the women's ski race, which will be on on Sunday, and I cannot predict a winner for me. It is the most open I have ever seen in a long, long time. So that means this one is going to be just as good. Conditions may be dropping off. They're still very difficult with a lot of water movement in the water at the moment. You can see that first one on the line. And just getting off to a start is going to be very, very difficult. Harris Roebuck, Kevin Morrison, good to see him. He finished a double ski with half a paddle mm -hmm. yesterday. Nick Ford from Point Leo, Slossy from Karawa, Borgie from the Newport Club, Shakespeare from Bondi, Senior Skinner from North Bondi, Tano Linden, Alfred from Maruchidor, Matty Gilling, Setterblad, watch from him from Seacliff, can go. Pete Mitchell, we'll see if he's recovered from that double yesterday. Maxi Brooks will be in the final if everything is fair. Michael Georgiaris, I think they got... A Masters win the other day, George Aris from the Wanda Club and Maxi Ward from Half Moon Day didn't get off to the start that he would have wanted. But it's Tan and Linden in the lead already and Pete Mitchell coming up alongside him. Yeah, this is what we want to see, the open men's single ski. We uh, talked about, you know, how many rounds you need to get through just to make it to an open men's single ski final. So lots of rounds to get through today. I think in total it is going to be 16 heats. 16 heats in total. It's an incredible race, and we can see, oh, the surf just continuing 
to uh, rack up some casualties and this is tough racing especially if you don't get your craft back up quickly if you go 90 degrees to a wave as well but we're talking about stories earlier Josh and I think one of the best stories that I saw yesterday that um, again it was it was back in the field to be perfectly honest but I saw um, Sam Roy from Surfers Paradise yep. and his partner in the double ski yesterday they missed the start completely in one of the qualifying rounds like they were absolutely gone and there was another club behind them that was gone as well and that other club just went we're out we're going to paddle back home see you later Sam and his uh, team actually kept on going through the grace of Maruchidor Surf made it through to the next round and for me it was just the most wonderful example of one Sam Roy's a champion and we adore him but don't give up like yeah. just because you're not on there at the start and because it is such a fast race I can understand how everyone else was like mate we're done thank you so much for coming Aussies is over the fact that they kept on going and Sam Roy's on, on screen at the moment we're just confirming because there's multiple races in there at the moment but that never say die attitude was on show yesterday and it was rewarded they got through the next round what an absolute superstar superstar dr roy and i love it they're one of the best blokes in surf sports without a shadow of a doubt and then a little bit of confusion there as the boys were going out and around so that was quarterfinal number two one is on the line now so we've just had a quick adjustment of a couple of the semis there they've had to bounce around a little bit so that's one on the line two was in the water that one with tan and linden winning and it was absolute chaos out there at the moment so semi-final number two in that other area Area. Uh, sorry, heat number two in that other area, heat number one in this one. We'll bring you all the results a little bit later on. Courtney Hancock is on the beach. I am. Thanks, guys. I'm just down here with the legend, Marty Kenny. And we're just talking about you had the double ski yesterday, and now you're into the open men's heat one of the ski. Yeah, no, heat three, so heat one's about to head out now. So uh, it'll be interesting. We've got a, some surf. Like you're saying, it's fantastic to be racing in some surf, and Richard is such a great beach for for uh, clubby racing. It's uh, all over the place, so be interesting. I'm just going to drop your age. You said you're 55. You certainly don't look it, and you're still here. You know, you you're up against. I guess you've got 20 year olds out there, and I guess how do you, how does your mindset do you go up against these young tuckers? Uh, look, it's it's all fun and games for me, so I can't really uh, look. It's worse than the Masters because you can't hide behind your age. So uh, look, it's a challenge, and I, you know, I still feel reasonably good so it's just a bit of fun we'll see how we go can you please tell us your secrets i know you've got josh minogue he wants to get back and not race the masters game the opens can you just tell us what what's those secrets that you've got oh look i enjoy paddling you know i enjoy the training we you know i train with uh, grant and, and lemo and and uh it's fun and we come over and train with the squad every now and then and uh just mix it up and um you know if you don't feel like going at our age you don't go um, some, you know, we've done a few paddlebacks recently and just finish at Lemos and have a few beers afterwards. So I think it's just uh, getting the enjoyment out of it and um, picking your events and, and uh, give yourself time off when you need it. But uh, I think being consistent and not stopping, that's the hard thing. So you got to try and hang on to a little bit of fitness. Thank you so much, Marty. Good luck. Thanks for your secrets. And Josh will certainly be writing those down. Josh, yeah. oh, stray bullets, stray <laughs> bullets up in the commentary booth up here. But I do, I, to be honest, I don't want to part, uh, paddle like Marty at all because... I just want to look like him. He might be the best looking bloke on the beach and as fit as for the wrong side of 50, that is for sure. Heat number one in the water. Heat two has gone just a little bit ago. Cooper Bristow from Christie's Beach, closest to us. Bo McGregor, Sam Roy, who we were speaking about. Sam Norton, watch for him. Newling and Louie from Manly. Elliot from Bulleye. Murray Stewart, the Olympic gold medalist from North Burley. Campbell Bowen, watch for Campbell as well out of Redhead. Have a look at, uh, sorry, out of... Half Moon Bay. Have a look at this swell coming through. This is going to test every single one of these guys. Jermaine from North Bondi. Galea from Allura. They were great in the double. Oh, absolutely cleaned up. That's Kendrick Lewis swimming alongside his ski there. He looks over. He's got to get back in there. Grabs that strap. And I think oh. that might be race over for Kendrick Lewis. Roe, Campbell, Ellis and Rice in there as well. Out in front at the moment on the far side. That might be Bristow from Christie's Beach down south. Off to an absolute fly. Snuck around everyone. And Bowen in the centre as well from Half Moon Bay. Have a look at the Half Moon Bay boys go. They were on fire in the double ski yesterday. Third place there on the blue with the blue, uh, the blue Rashi as well. That is your Murray Stewart. That's your Olympic gold medalist from 2012 in the K4. One of the best races you will ever see by a country mile. That's him right there. Campbell Bowen just in front of him. And I think maybe a couple of the boys on the far side have snuck out as well. So very tough. Either end of this field's got off to a fly. And it might be Lockie Campbell from the Surface Paradise or Jaden Ellis there from Noosa who've gone off absolutely blistering there. And when you sneak out, you sneak out. And poor old Kendall. 
Henrik Louis wondering what he did wrong. Oh, wowee. And this is what we love. This is just heat number one of quite a few to get through here. The boys are they're going to have to go through round one, then round two, then a quarter final. And uh, I think if we looked at the uh, starting lineup, this isn't what we would have scripted for the boys as they head out there. Loving seeing that Half Moon Bay uh, cap out in the mix. I think they had quite a few teams in the doubles yesterday. But uh, Murray Stewart is safe, just getting it done here at the moment. Quite a few crews in the mix here. And... Uh, I don't think that's even Norton from uh, no, it's Northcliffe. Tanner Baxter that's there. Baxter. And that was, uh, I was about to say, I'd expect to see a Northcliffe clap at the front of this race, but it's not Tanner Baxter. It was Sam Norton's I expected to see off the front, but he got smacked on that inside. He is so far down and got to work his way back into it. I think he's just turning around that first turning can now. So it's going to be a very, very tough ask for the big fella to get back into it at the moment. Lockie Campbell doing a great job there. No Sam Roy at the moment. He was another one of those guys I would have expected to be on the front end, but it looks like a top seven at the moment in the back half of this race. They've still got to keep fighting to stay in the ski race because there'll be one spot available for these boys. Baxter doing a great job. Campbell as well. Here comes Murray Stewart on the blue. Have a look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see what the most elite paddling technique looks like, have a look at Murray Stewart there. It's power and finesse all packaged up to into a great bloke on the top of that ski there, and he's starting to wind up, and down the far side, a couple of these boys getting into it as well. It's just the heat, and I think we've already got a couple of boil overs. Sam Norton, Sam Roy are in a little bit of a trouble, and there's a wave out the back, and if you don't get it, it's going to either clean you up or you might miss out on it. This wave will be very important in the big scheme of things. Oh, good choice from Tanner Baxter. Get off this one and have a look at Murray Stewart there. He's going to have to ride this one and do a fantastic job. Campbell, he is home and hosed. Oh, Murray Stewart no. leans back, tries to keep he's it, but okay. he's done a good job. Get that one back round. And you can see the urgency in his stroke to get it around. The next wave, I think, might test some of the boys as well. Oh, how good is Lachlan Campbell coming through there for a nice, easy win as someone loses the ski? Two are off out the back. Murray Stewart looks like he's going to be absolutely fine. And that uh, blue and white uh, flag there I think is going to be under a little bit of pressure yep. as the sweep really starts to uh, grab a few of the boys. They're going to have to come back. Tanner Baxter there from uh, Northcliffe. Not the first Northcliffe pat we were going to we thought was going to come across, but these are the stories that we write. This is where it gets interesting. Half Moon Bay is all turned around. The top eight only are going to through. Henry we... Louis gets yes! himself through there. So does Sam Roy. We wow. thought both of those boys were gone, but they managed to fight their way back into it. Exactly like what you said. You look up and Kendrick Louis got a huge pro Program as, as the young Norton boy there, he's going to struggle to get through that, and I think Bowen as well. He could have looked up and gone, I'm out of that, I'm no shot, there's no way I'm getting through. But he got back on, he started to fight, he found a wave, and he got himself a spot through there. Galea trying to get in Norton as well, and he'll be blowing up with himself. He hasn't had the weekend he wanted. We wait to see whether he gets through. and Tough one all round for these boys, very, very difficult. Campbell, no dramas. Lockie Baxter, no issue at all. Murray Stewart, Cooper Bristow from Christie's Beach. He will get himself through to the next round. I think you had Kendrick Louie and Sam Roy in there. That's six. Adam Rowe from Redhead. Charlie Germain from North Bondi. And I think that is all she wrote. And we say goodbye to, well, at least one who I would have thought would be one of the favourites from this one, Sammy Norton from the Northcliffe Club. Courtney Hancock, you're in the sand. And a little bit of drama already. Heat one of the Open Men's Ski Race. There certainly was a bit of drama. I'm just down here with Lockie Campbell's Surface Paradise. You just made that look easy out there. Yeah, look, I had a pretty good start. We sort of stuck on the south southern side and just sort of opened up for us and got to the can in a pretty good position. Yeah, can you tell us, is it is it fun out there? Is it stressful? What's kind of before you start, what are you feeling? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Like, you got to pick your wave coming in, that's for sure. Um, getting to the back, it's hard to see the cans, really. There's so much water moving and lots of runners to take, but... Yeah, you just got to know and race safe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so competitive. This open men's ski is definitely one of the hottest fields going around. How much would it mean to you to make that final? Oh, it would mean the world. Like, you know, we train with the best people up here and we got the best role models. So to race with them and to make the final with them would be a dream. Thank you. Look, I know how hard you work, so all the best for trying to make that final. Thanks, Gord. Thank you very much. Cheers. Oh, fantastic work, Courtney, and uh, congratulations. Lachlan Campbell makes it through there. Fantastic racing. This is what we want to see, and uh, Heat 2 off-camera has been completed.
Tatton and Linded, Peter Mitchell, Kev Morrison are through, Max Brooks, Brad Rubok as well, Nicholas Ford from Point Leo, Michael Jajoris from Wanda, and Pat Harris, we think. If they're taking the top eight, that is who is through. But coming up next, we have got a race for you. It is heat number three, and this is where we've got quite a few caps that look very similar. It's going to be a great race. Ben Cochran from Northcliffe on the far left-hand side of the field. Marty Kenny from Alex Ewan Monaghan from Christie's Beach. Identical caps, the Alexandra Headland centenary cap. <laughs> In there as well, Will Savage from Burley Heads Mowbray Park, Logan Phillip from North Bondi, Connor Cook from Alex, Liam Askew from Surfers Paradise, Lachlan O'Grady from Bulli, Noah Kaplan from Bondi, Jared Kaplan, uh, Jared Campbell from uh, Alex, Tom May of Seacliff, everyone's favourite there, James Eakins from North Bondi, Josh Patterson from Southport, Caelan Montgomery from Terrigal, Point Leo's Lachlan Robinson and Kent Jenkinson from City of Perth. So lots of caps lots of states lots of ways again we're thinking top eight will go through this is tough we've had some early casualties already remembering it's early days we have got 16 heats in total for the open oh, men's big. single ski this is just round one yeah it's a big event that's for sure and a couple of names we don't sort of see all that regularly i think we've got 244 confirmed athletes in this one off and away and like you said, very interesting. A couple there butchered the start. One of the lads, I think, you and Morgan from uh, Monaghan, sorry, from Christie's Beach, absolutely butchered it. There, Jared Campbell getting off and away, no dramas at all. And when we talk about those caps, Alexandra Headland, they have their hundred year cap. We've spoken about it a few times. That's it there on Jared Campbell in the lead. Exactly the same as Christie's Beach. That yellow and black corded cap. So that's going to be very, very tough. Logan Phillip got off to an absolute fly from North Bondi. That is a distinctive cap there. And Tom May just behind him as well. Top eight through to the next round there. Bulai Lad goes up and over Lockie O'Grady. He was a good young Iron Man as well, Lockie O'Grady. Bit of time away from the sport, comebacks. Has a bit of a social paddle, but comes to the Aussie titles. And that's what we like to see here. And it would be good to see the old man in the seat, Marty Kenny, get through. We heard from him before. That's him on the yellow there, just sitting in the mix at the moment, but very, very wide. And turn and run it on the way home. Nobody is better at finding runners in the ocean than Marty Kenny. You want to you want to talk about stories? I've done a cool and got a gold prep. I was probably 20 weeks into that. I was as fit as I'd ever been. We decided to do a paddle back. Marty Kenny, his first paddle of the season, gets on there and beats all of us by about five minutes because... <laughs> We were just <laughs> chopping away, struggling to get runners. And Marty can find a runner. He can find a ripple in a pool. That is for sure. One of the best in the business. That's years of experience. And he's done a really, really good job. In the lead, it's Logan Phillip from North Bondi. Alongside him, Tom May from the Seacliff Club. When you talk about ski paddling in South Australia, you've got to talk about Seacliff. They've been so good for so long. And I know the Jones guys have a lot to do with it down there. And... And they're very good, and we love to see it. They always end up with a medal or two in those junior ski relays, and they come close to the mark. I'd love to see them win an Open as well. Jared Campbell, Will Savage in third and fourth as they head round. Ekins as well in there as well. Lockin O'Grady and uh, Marty Kenny in the mix. And it just seems maybe the pace is down ever so slightly in this one compared to the last one. The last one was fast and frantic, and I think those waves coming through had a lot to do with that. This one's been a little bit more comfortable, more of a traditional ski race, but they'll start to wind up now on the way home, and you can already see those runners start to come through for our leaders. And we get those gorgeous shots back towards the beach with a uh, very grey skyline back towards uh, Maroochydore Beach. But you talk about the experience that's in the field here and having a few chats yesterday when we were just commenting on, you know, respectfully, very very, very respectfully, some of the combined ages in those double skis yesterday, having a look at the North Burley crews. Ski paddling, it really rewards experience. It rewards time in the boat, time on the water. Like, I don't want to say it's an old man's game. That is not the phrase that I'm trying to find. But when you see the experience and you see the longevity that, that some of these incredible paddlers have in the sport and you see them do things like this, it's it's such a, again, we talk about the Aussies being special, life-saving life -saving being special. You can be part of this for as long as you want, and you can be at this top level as long as you want as well. Yeah, Tommy May there really putting one on. it. You've got to be a little bit older. You need that pure strength that, especially on the men's side of things, doesn't come in until you're in your sort of mid to late 20s. And you can be a Connor Mags and be fit as you want, but if you don't have that pure grunt that some of these mm. ski paddlers have, that a Pete Mitchell or a Lockie Tame have, and that just keep growing it time after time after yeah. time. You just can't compete because it's pure power at the end of the day. Tommy May gets it done out in front. Have a look at that. Very, very strong. And you can see he's got shoulders like boulders down there. Gets across the line. An easy victory 
for the big fella there. North Bondi in second place. Jared Campbell, Will Savage across the line. Here we go. The sprint's oh. on there. Marty Kenny, and I think that will be our top eight across the line. Lockie O'Grady might have got there as well from the Bull Eye Club. I don't know, but I think that is eight across the line and all she wrote for the rest of the boys. So Marty Kenny lives to fight another day. The best looking 50 year old in the tie. Oh, country holy there. cheekbones, Batman. I absolutely. I love it. I love it. That's for sure. So we say goodbye to the rest of the boys in this one. And that was heat number three of the open men's ski race. Heat three of, what did we say, 16, 16. Oh. But this is what we want. Like, I know it feels like a grind now, and we're, people might be watching this going, oh, I don't want to get through this many heats. This is what makes Aussies great. You've got to get through 16 heats. You've got to get through round one, round two, before you're even close to being a quarterfinal. You want to be an Australian champion in the open single ski? This is what it takes. And I look back now and I'm thinking, how did Clint win 15 of these or something ridiculous like that? I'm not great on ski stats, but it makes you realise the people that won consistently in tough races over multiple rounds in this sort of surf, my gosh. For the ski paddlers at home, in the last 15 yes. years in the ski race, there has only been five winners in the entire 15 years. And to get multiple ones is very, very tough. Marty Kenny gets himself through there. Very, very, very good job from him. But we take a look at the guys who've won. Riley Fitzsimmons, mm -hmm. obviously last year, Olympia not coming back. Jack O'Collins went back to back. Riley Fitzsimmons again, Bill Bain, Nick Crilly, Lockie Tame. That is it. So maybe six guys, sorry, there in the last 15 years. So Courtney Hancock down on the beach with another man trying to write his name in the history books and a big win there for Tommy May. Oh, no, she's not. She's with someone else. Courtney, who you got? <laughs> Hey guys, I'm down here with Logan Phillips from North Bondi and you just absolutely dominated that race. Oh, it's tricky out there. Um, a lot of water moving, a bit of a luck of the draw getting through that surf. So luckily you're just going to go off the start hard, punch through and then navigate your way around the cans. Hard to see them. We ended up going, I think I was aiming for the apex at one point. So got to cut back and then coming home, just really switch on, paddle all the way through. Yeah, the weather's certainly getting a little bit dark and gloomy out there. Can you just tell us, what's your thoughts if there's a massive six-foot bomb out there? Are you going to send it or are you going to be conservative? Depends where you are. It's Aussies. If you're out the back, there's always a chance. These conditions, people slew. Um, if you back yourself, lean back and keep paddling, good chance you'll hold it. If you're out the front and you're comfortable, probably better off throwing the legs over, getting on the back of it, riding the back of that wave, pushing over at the front, so we're good. Well, we look forward to seeing you sending it down a bomb. Thank you so much for your time, Logan, and good luck. Cheers. Thank you very much. Fantastic work there. We can see heat number five is lining up now. We're making our way through here. Some familiar faces, some familiar caps as well. Michael Rawson from Burley Heads Mowbray Park will be on the very northern end. Bailey Copeland from Coogeon. George Wenman from Mermaid. Benjamin Snook from Sorrento. Carl Allen in the mix there from Currawa, Jack Defour from Northcliffe, Lachlan Carl from Burnie, Isaac Byrne of Allura, Tom Clothier, we saw him in action earlier today, North Bondi, Bailey Connolly from Swansea, Isaac Costello from Redhead, Tom Lamb from Warrnambool, Luke Egger from City of Perth and Mail Tissier from Northcliffe with Russell Fox. Again, we talk about boys who have runs on the board, boys who have a bucket of Aussie medals. Uh, Russell Fox, one of the uh, absolute stalwarts there like, of oh. Half Moon Bay. Great to have him in the mix here. Super excited to uh, see what is going to eventuate here because the conditions just deteriorating a little bit down there on the beach. It's looking a little grey. It's looking a little bit rainy and tense everywhere on the beach. It's uh, a tough day out there. But uh, you can see this is what we love about yeah. a ski start line up, I mean, hand up, I'm not happy here, I'm too deep, I'm too shallow, move it along, yeah. toughest job in surf spots doing starts. Yeah, that's it there, and I love a couple of these guys on the beach, that is for sure, and you're spot on, it's it's so tough, and I spoke to the starter today, and he said, oh, you gave me a you gave me a bit of a, a bad rap saying mm -hmm. I wouldn't start him now, and I did, and I said, mate, you did a good job, and yep. he said it's so tough out there to just... To get even water, and that's the difficult part, is yeah. you're not even you're not even looking for that much of an even start because there's plenty going on out there. But you just want even water for the guys. Let them get in the boats and let them get going because it's so difficult there. And he, and I think all the ski paddlers were very happy with the starts yesterday. I don't think you could do much better given the conditions. You can see how much it's washing around. You can see him pulling them back there, saying, come back to me, come back to me. They're going to creep forward. They're going to go back and forward. And there's just so much going on at the moment. So it's a thankless job. But... Yeah, there's a couple of favourites in this one for me, especially the Fox from Half Moon Bay. That's him there with that orange and white ski. 
Half Moon Bay have been my standout. And I don't know why it surprised me because they've been a very good ski club for a very long time. But they were my standout yesterday afternoon. They had a lot of teams and mm. a lot of semis in those doubles. And I expect more of the same in the mixed doubles this afternoon. They stayed at uh, my mum and dad's place one year. They oh, travel no as a pack. They love it. Yeah, they're a fantastic group of guys and girls. And there's just so much water movement down there. So I'm expecting big things from the Fox at the moment. But... It's all about getting on and away clean. You can see Isaac Costello there, the yellow nose of his ski. He just keeps pushing out and pushing out and pushing out. He isn't worried about coming back. And very difficult start for these guys. But if you can get in and away, I think that's half the battle. Absolutely. In terms of uh, happiness with a ski start down there, I think it's always a bell curve, right? You're going to have people who are ec ecstatic. I got the good end. I got the good start. Everything's good. Middle of the range, fairly neutral, and someone who's always going to be unhappy. So I think really if you can get uh, most people in the middle of the bell curve, yeah. we are happy with Spot that. On. Tough start here, this white water, and it wasn't just about the uh, the waves coming in for that start. There was backwash, there was sidewash, there was a little bit of chop. I love that we do have the drone back up there to the operators yeah. who are doing an incredible job to bring us this oh, vision. Wenman. Thank you. Wenman oh, Wenman and no. Copeland in there. That was the green ski and the yellow ski. George Wenman and Bailey Copeland have been obliterated in the side there. I thought they were well, they were doing a great job out in front. Big hit there in the centre as well. Isaac Byrne from the Allura Club has absolutely copied. A couple of those guys on the other side. Maybe the Foxes snuck out. Isaac Costello snuck out. The Cos Dog got, to, got through that one very, very well. So he's gone up and over. Maybe Kyle Allen as well from the Karawa Club. Absolutely flown out and around. I don't know if that is Clothier from the Bondi Club or City of Perth. Maybe Clothier there who snuck out and around. So the Fox on the far right-hand side, absolutely flying. No issues at all. And these boys have got out and the rest of the field absolutely obliterated in the centre. You've got to feel bad. I think that might be Kale from oh, Bernie no. there. Oh, no, here on the way back to the beach, City of Perth, Egger. The poor bloke has lost the ski all the way back to the beach. Not what you want, not the way you want to start your competition. Yeah, really. when you've come all the way from uh, WA, that is a tough way to get knocked out. Well, we'll see what Life Heat says, but uh, likely to be locked out here. But it's been a big race already, and we're loving these conditions here at Maruchidor. And this is where heat number five completely turned on its head. There was a few uh, a few great starts out the front. A few of our crew got a nice little um, a nice little start there, but this is where it got tough. And we can see the boys out the back so happy to get the jump on it there. I think that could be Tom Clothier from uh, North Bondi out the back, but we'll grab them as they come through. But Allura just swallowed up there. Yeah, yeah, you can see Clothier going around at the moment. <laughs> Unbelievably bad luck for Byrne there in the centre. I've got a feel for him, and you can see how strung out they are at the moment. The big fella making his way back to the beach, and all you can do is smile yes. at the end of the day because... When the wave like that comes through, absolutely cleans you up. And the big fella uh, there, Luke Egger, hopefully he'll be back in a couple of ski relays and a few more races on the weekend. To go out in the heat like that is not what he deserves. Out in front at the moment, it is the Fox. Russell Fox there leads the charge there. Clothier from North Bondi in second place doing a fantastic mm. job working his way through. Maybe Lamb from Warrnambool in, uh, in third place there. Oh, no, it isn't Lamb from Warrnambool. One of the other boys there working their way back to the beach now. So doing a great job. That might actually be Kale from Bernie working back into it at the moment. We can see Alan from Karawa out the back. And the Fox supporting, well, supporting the, uh, the moustache there. He looks very, very good, and he paddles the ski very, very fast. Watch for them in the ski relay later on. Costello cuts across out the back. That's the yellow nose, white ski of Isaac Costello, the coach there at the Redhead Club. He's getting back into it, so a top four looking very, very comfortable. The Half Moon Bay cap, very distinctive. Oh, the Fox has got oh. to get down this one, but he looks comfortable. I thought for a second there he was going to get thrown over the falls, but no stress at all from the big fella. He will roll through that one, and so will the boys on the next wave, but it's the wave after that that are going to be interesting. Top eight through to the next round. Only heat number five of 16. We've got plenty more ski racing going this afternoon. Plenty of action. So sit back, relax and enjoy. But out the back there. Oh, one's come down at there. Somebody's going to get sucked up maybe from... Oh, is he going to go? No, sideways there. Bernie's gone sideways. One of the other boys has gone over as well. So very, very tough. And Kale from Bernie went sideways. Hopefully he's brought it back around and cut across. Tissa there, or Darfour from the uh, Northcliffe Club, has gone across out here 
these boys everywhere, left, right, and centre. I can't pick who's gotten through, who's gone off. Sorrento's over there, so Snook from Sorrento is swimming alongside it. A couple of the boys are trying to get back across, and you might be a shot if you're coming across the line right now well, because we're chasing it. eight. And you've got to get inside that uh, blue and white flag. We can see just some of our competitors coming through. And I don't know, Kujan could still be in this one. You never know until the until we get everyone across the line. This is tough racing. It's what you expect, though. And this is what a this is what a Maruchidor messy afternoon looks like. Unfortunately, there's going to be more of the same. And as we start to think about that finals package on Sunday as well, it could be more of the same. I tell you what, Courtney Hancock, she's in the middle of all the action down on the beach. Courtney, Courtney, I'm just down here with Russell Fox. I was just saying, what, that's a celebrity name and a half. And you're from Half Moon Bay and just took out that, that heat of the, um, the open men's ski. Did it nice and easy, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, well, maybe it looked easy. <laughs> didn't feel that easy. Um, I think it's just a bit of luck, you know, just try and pick your line, get out there and then just be smart on the way home. Have you found the conditions to, like much more challenging since this wind has come about? Uh, well... To be honest, I prefer a little bit of wind. Uh, we paddle a lot in Port Phillip Bay and you train a lot in wind chop, so this probably suits me, although probably just a bit too much swell, like it makes it um, too much of a bit of a lottery. So uh, I don't mind the wind though, the, the waves could be a little smaller. <laughs> And I have to mention your cap, Half Moon Bay. You've surely got one of the best caps on the beach. I love the moon. Talk, you don't have to say anything about that, but I'm just mentioning that. Yeah, no, I like it. We, uh, we red and blue quarter cap used to get confused a lot with Stockton. So they've got red and blue as well, just um, opposite sides. So put the little moon on there and that, you know, helps us not get so confused on the line. Nice. Well, Russell Fox, I had to say your name again. I love it. One of the best names I've heard. Good luck for the rest of the titles. Courtney, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Courtney down on the beach with Russell Fox and uh, I think we have the, the uh, conversation every single year, what's your favourite club cap or if you could design your perfect club cap or your, your new club cap, what would it be? Yeah. I, I think Courtney's already got a few early favourites. And I think Courtney's a big fan of the Fox as well mm. because he's a big summer surf athlete for a long time. He's been very, very good. He gets a win there and he really sort of travels around. You see him a lot in Queensland and that and we love it. And what does the Fox say? The Fox says I'm through to the next round, that is for sure. Costello, Darfur, Clothier, Kyle Allen, Kale from Bernie got there, Tizza from Northcliffe, and Mick Rawson was the last one through. We say goodbye to everyone else in dramatic fashion, that is for sure. Do you he, want me to, uh, he's number we seven. He's number go. seven coming up. Yeah, Brendan Sarson, another name. Great to see them back in the mix. Brendan from uh, Trig Island, Brad Dewan. Took out the uh, champion lifesaver earlier in the uh, competition as well. Now uh, trying his hand at ski paddling. Uh, Charlie Winklemeyer coming through. We've got Kieran Peters from North Court. Nathaniel Drummond from Seacliff. Jeb uh, State from Brighton. Jordan Ringrose from North Cot. One of our favourites as well. Sam Jordan in the mix. Uh, you might have heard his beautiful voice in the uh, commentary box earlier today. In the doubles yesterday. Hoping for better luck in the single. Chris Bolt from Northcliffe. Callum Sutton from Terrigal. Fletcher Armstrong from Newport. Benjamin Smith in the mix from Brighton in South Australia, Jesse Coulson from Surfers, Harrison Torrance from Newport and Sam Cummins rounding out the field from Terrigal. I could give you five that I would say, oh, they're definitely through to the next race or, or, already. I don't want to say any of those sorts of things. I have been wrong in, I think, the past three heats that we've seen here of the open men's single ski. So yeah. Brendan Sarson on the far left of the field, Sam there Cummins from Terrigal on the right. Yeah, I don't want to put a mocker on anyone as well. No. If you put him in the flat, Fletcher Armstrong's the best paddler here by a country mile. He's in part of that, um, the kayaking program there, part of the, uh, the developing sort of program coming through. He won the Hayden Kenny Classic on the ski and he absolutely blew them to bits to the point where the rest of the paddlers were like, I didn't know Fletcher Armstrong could go that quick mm. and he blew them apart. But it was in kind of flat conditions, not a lot of waves on offer and he really went hard off the line here. So you put him in a bit of surf, it's going to slow him down obviously, but the boy from Newport can go, that is for sure. As you said... I spoke to, uh, to Brad Dewan earlier in the week. He mm. won the Champion Lifesaver. I think that's four or five, yeah. this one. And that Champion Lifesaver team, uh, sorry, the first A team, I think it is, from Alexandra Headland, they got put in the uh, Hall of Fame as well for surf sports. So Brad Dewan, he does a great job, the big fella. And uh, he can paddle the ski well as well. Yeah. So he's not out of this one by any stretch of the imagination. Brendan Sarson, from one guy whose best days are behind him to another, I think his best days are definitely behind him. But... He might be in this ski final if everything's fair because he can still move that ski. But when we talk about Brendan Sarson, 
let's say five, six, seven, eight years ago, mm -hmm. he was one of the best competitors in surf sports yeah. by a country mile. A great Ironman, but probably came to the fore in those Trig Island ski relays, double skis, that sort of thing. He'd come to the Aussie titles, you see your name next to Brendan Sass and you go, oh God, I don't want to be in this one because he is as good as it gets. And an all-round good bloke as well. One of those guys you see, and there's a lot of them for a Trig Island. I don't know what it is about Trig over there, but they, they, they get it. They, they build the club up. They have a good time. They, they enjoy being part of surf sports, and they come back year on year on year. So that is what it's all about, and we'll see how he goes here. And now we've put a wrap on him, he'll probably go out, that is for sure. And, of course, the voice of surf sports, Sam Jordan, in there. He's spoken about it all morning. Let's see if he can walk the walk and not just talk the talk. <laughs> he is in the centre. He's got the blue cap. The yellow stripe down the centre of Redhead on the Newcastle region of New South Wales there. It's going to be a good one here. We'll wait to see what these boys have got. That's Nate Drummond there from the Seacliff Club. Kieran Peters from North Cottesloe. Obviously, North Cot, great paddle as well. Off and away, there's Sam Jordan there. Have a look at him go, the big fella. Probably spent more time in the commentary booth than he has on the beach so far, but he's gone off like he's been shot out of a gun. Sorry. It's an emotional time for all of us seeing Sam on screen. It's all good. <laughs> but another fantastic start across the field. However, it is going to be the waves that make the difference. A great start from uh, Sam there in the middle of the field. Also, I see the uh, white cap of Kieran Peters, North Cottesloe in the mix. There's a few little waves start to come through. I want to say they've just got to get through two or three more and I get that cameraman who's out there with the uh, camera and the fins needs to uh, just be a little careful there and uh, great to see Bolt in the mix there from uh, Northcliffe for probably a quieter season he was part of that uh, incredible ski relay that took out the Queensland Championships from Karawa a few years back great to see him racing here for Northcliffe oh no dramas oh, no. at all so at, off, yeah on the inside the leaders out in front Sam Jordan Fletcher Armstrong no issues for those two boys maybe Harrison Torrens as well so both the Newport lads the rest of the field has been absolutely Absolutely smashed. They ran the gauntlet down the centre mm -hmm. and went off to a flyer. That is Armstrong on the right-hand side. Jordan there. You can see the muscles in the back there for these boys. They are big, strong lads, and they get these skis moving very, very quick. But at the back, they were getting absolutely belted on the inside, and they were really struggling to get through that break at the moment. Bolt there has got himself up and over. That white rash vest, black and white ski as well. He's had no real issues getting out. And I think Jesse Coulson, that is him with the Surface Paradise cap. So I mistook, mistook him for Jesse Coulson. And it is, uh, it is uh, sorry, for Harrison Torrens, but it is Jesse Coulson working his way up into third place. So a great start from the Surface Paradise competitor as well. These three boys have done a great job. There's a big gap back to Bolt from Northcliffe and then another gap back to the rest of the field. And because we're chasing eight, all of those men are still in the hunt. You've just got to be in the top two or three in that group and you'll get yourself into the final. Especially when you've, they've opened up a lovely gap like this on the rest of the field it just means you could maybe say no to a wave that comes through. You can yep. be a little bit more strategic Safety in those first. decisions. I do love it when the big ones start to jack up and you can actually see even the legs go over the side like the handbrake goes on and the boys say hardest of passes. I am not going right now but this is what we can see here. We've got the, we're in the blue and white arena and you can tell that by the uh, blue and white cans out the back and uh, some of the boys going fairly wide around the cans as well and that just means that they get that beautiful view back to the coast they get to see where the banks are they would have picked out a landmark uh, back on the uh, beach here as well as we see sea cliff making their way through this is where it gets interesting this is where we want to see the uh, runners come through because these boys will pick up anything out the back but it's as it starts to get shallower that's where they may uh, choose, to, may, may decline to go any further. Yeah, I think that was Drummond and, uh, and Sutton there. Drummond of Seacliff, Sutton of Terrigal coming around as well. We can see back to our leaders now. Fletcher Armstrong on the left-hand side. Sam Jordan on the right. Behind them, Coulson's picked up an absolute cracker there. He'll ride that one the whole way through. Exactly what you want from mm -hmm. those two boys. Maybe the commentator's curse doesn't exist because we, we picked these two to be at the front end of this one. And Fletcher Armstrong... He's a class above here, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me at the end of the week if he stood on the top step of the podium in this ski race, but there's a hell of a long way to go. Sarsen's trying to get down one. So is Drummond at the bottom of the screen as well. Here are our two leaders across there. Sarsen's got to get a wriggle on there, sitting four, five, six, seven mm -hmm. at the moment. You don't want to get in that sprint finish. These two boys cross the line very, very comfortably. Here's Drummond at the bottom, Sarsen at the top, side by side, heading back to the beach. The water, you can see it start to change colour, and then it gets really difficult. You've got to get your ski speed up. You've got to keep yourself working very hard. Fourth will be Bolt across the line. 
there, no issues at all. So probably five Sars and six Drummond, and we're chasing two more after that. So good job from all of these boys, and he'll be one very happy man because I know he's a little bit nervous heading mm, down to the he beach. Was. He's watched everyone getting obliterated ah. all day long. Someone goes sideways. Oh, a ski's off there. That's Bolt there from Northcliffe. Drummond comes across. Bolt swimming alongside it. Someone's lost their ski. It's either Pete. I think it's Peter's. From Northcott. From Northcott yeah. as well. Maybe some, maybe Ringrose that's come across. I haven't quite picked the cap. Both those Northcott boys there, but they'll miss out, I think, as these two guys go sideways across there, and that'll be our top eight and all she wrote in this one. Yeah, and just uh, seeing uh, Kieran Peters from Northcott uh, having to uh, head back in with his ski. We saw similar scenes yesterday in the women's ski qualifiers. Jordy Merson, and she had that beautiful lead on the rest of the field came through, just lost her ski at the end and unfortunately didn't cross the line on her ski. She still had the paddle, but the ski went in by itself. Yep. And the rules are that you need to cross the line in control of your ski. So she actually had to go into the sand, grab the ski, head back out, cross the line, and she still got number one, which was absolutely incredible. But all the action today is down on the beach with Courtney. How's things? Yes, I sure am on the beach. I've got one of our team members. I'm here with Sam, who's gone from the booth, part of our media team, and here you are racing, and you've gotten through. Yeah, it's a lot easier sitting up in the booth. I'd much rather be up there at the moment watching the racing, but um, after commentating, I guess, this morning alongside you, Court, it's nice to get out there this afternoon. It's lots of fun, yeah. So the notes that you were jotting down, I'm just making that up, obviously. Well, do you reckon that helped, I guess, seeing being in the booth and seeing the drone shots? Oh, look, it's really tricky. I, I think we've all got the understanding that, you know, like Harriet spoke really well about this morning, that, you know, you have to have the skills for these conditions, but there's a big part of luck in it as well. More so just about making sure that, you know, you, you've got a clear mind to make those decisions when they pop up in front of you. Like, you can't be thinking too far ahead about a set that might break in three or four waves' time. So... Um, yeah, one heat down, but there's still a fair few rounds to go. And who are you going to back? Who's the man to beat in this open men's ski? Oh, it's so hard to call. Like, particularly in conditions like today, you know, every year once you get to the quarterfinals, it really is any of those paddlers are good enough to be in the final as well. So I've got a few in mind, but I don't want to put the mocker on them as well. They'll kill me if they then get knocked in a later round. So um, ask me after the semi this afternoon. I'll tell you that all my predictions made the final. So... You're too kind, Sam, but it's so nice to see you out in the water and on the beach, and best wishes for the rest of the day. Cheers, Court. Appreciate it. Oh, the man on the sand. He was up here with us a little while ago. Good to see him. I thought we'd seen enough of him there, but he did a good job to get himself through, and his goal, he said, yeah, he wants to be through nice. to the final 100%, and, so good. and that's what we want to see him do, and hopefully good luck to him there. We've got another one of these ski heats coming up, 16 to get through. We take a look at the boys going in the water now. I think this one might be heat number nine. Yeah, Brett Cassidy from Northcott, Ezekiel Lamborn from Ocean Grove, Oscar Bartos from Christie's Beach, Harry Hewitt from City of Perth, Jonesy, Luke Jones from Newport, from South Australia originally, races from Newport, one of the best blokes in surf sports, without a shadow of a doubt. Let's see how he goes. Krasetsky from the Wanda Club, Mackay from Karawa, Jackson from City of Perth, Jaden Murphy. Cameron, uh, Callum Dobby from Bernie. Jimmy Walker, we heard from him before. Big Jimmy, the Olympian. And, well, I think he's... I don't know. I think he's got an Australian title in the ski race. I'll have to go and double-check, but he's gone close a few times. Zale Outram, Jack Borden, and Taylor Gab. That is heat number nine. Nine of 16. We're rolling mm -hmm. through them, Jenny Parry. A couple of good young paddlers in this one. Yeah, the official's doing a great job really just powering through uh, the program. And this is what I love about when we get to open racing. You've got a few of our junior competitors who go, do you know what? I'm feeling good. The surf is on. Why wouldn't I get an extra race in for our specialists as well? And if you don't come from a club that has a whole lot of team events, you're just looking for every race you can get. And uh, I love that we've got some juniors here just really giving it a, giving it a shot. They're giving a few kilos in a few years to uh, some of our, uh, our bigger competitors here, some of our established opens. But you can see here as heat number nine or heat number... Nope, heat number nine is down here on the line. Just the amount of water that is moving around, it's just so important. Find your line, hope for the best, you know, just keep that ski nice and high and... Uh, tough conditions down there on the beach but they are away and closest to us here Brett Cassidy from Northcott a little slower off the start but he'll make his way through the phone the, through the field from here Ezekiel Lamborn and if I can say one of my favourite caps is actually Ocean Grove there I do love that one the dark blue the light blue yeah. with the yellow down the middle yeah I love it the Victorians they love to get out and involved and have a look at them go 
Maybe Vaselli there from the Newport Club off to an absolute mm. flyer. Jonesy just alongside him there in the purple ski. He will go up and over. We'll see him later on this afternoon in the mixed double as well. But it's all about survival here in the opening rounds. And you spot on. You see those nice caps. I think Jimmy Walker on the other side's got off to an absolute flyer there. So... For a guy on the wrong side of 50 racing these boys, he manages to find a way to get himself into the final or there, thereabouts every single year. And he still works hard, coaches down there at the uh, North Bondi Club, and he's putting on a great show here today. So Vaselli there from Newport in one, Jimmy Walker in two, alongside him Luke Jones from the Newport Club, and it might even be Taylor Gabb, another one of the Newport boys on the other side. So imagine trying to get into a Newport ski relay team with these guys here, and I'm sure there's a little bit of drama. Zale Outram from Sunshine Beach. That's little brother of Electra Outram going around as well. Good young competitor. Tries very hard out there. Gets out and involved in everything. We see him going around in the, uh, I, th- I think the quarterfinals of the Ironman earlier today. Did a fantastic job. He might have even snuck through to the semifinals maybe. So good young work there from the young bloke from Sunshine Beach. But out in front. Have a look at these two. Very comfortable. And you can see how much the ratings dropped. And it's just pure power. Yeah, feeling good. Feeling safe. But uh, just maintaining that control out here and I do love, I love how much Newport loves a good ski race. We saw yep. them in action yesterday in the doubles, Maroochydore definitely uh, some great memories from them when they did that incredible one, two, three yeah. in the uh, double ski a few years back and those young boys continuing the tradition, uh, taking the win yesterday. We'd lo- they'd love to stack this final, wouldn't they? Unfortunately, before we get to a final, we do have to get through quite a few. We've got to get through round one, round two and then we're into the quarterfinals but Newport won two at the moment, uh, Jimmy from a North Bondi. We saw him in the doubles as well yep. yesterday. With his son. Yes. Yeah. And for some of these uh, some of these athletes, you know, they've had a few races at Aussies and here comes a nice little runner. Could Jimmy Walker get this from the can? Oh, it oh, might just quite. fill up. Jonesy won't pull back on it, that is for sure. He yeah. likes to go. He's run that one down, so I think Behind Walker was Gab there, maybe Jaden Murphy of the Burley Heads Mowbray Park Club, maybe as well a couple of the lads from City of Perth trying to get in on the mix. Maybe even Dobby from the Burnie Club, but they're running all over the ocean at the moment. You can see Jones down to the far right-hand side. Jimmy Walker there, Vaselli as well. You can see that push at the moment. Mm. If you get a nice little run, it comes down like that, and Jonesy on fire alongside Jimmy Walker. Well, he's a very, very good paddler, and he's showing up. And to be honest, Lukey Jones, not the youngest bloke in the field either. So the old bloke's getting it done out here, and I don't think they'll mind too much me saying that as they get into that white water. The next wave on it, this one's going to be a little bit tougher. Vaselli there from Newport and uh, Murphy from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. But this will be our winning wave. And there, he's just saying, I think he's like, I'm coming across, I'm coming across, because they've got to get themselves (laughs) through that finishing gate. Yeah, there's Murphy and Vaselli there. He's coming across there. Stay away from each other. Oh, he gets around, and that's enough. Crosses the line there. Jimmy Walker with a smile on his face. He gets across. Vaselli sneaks himself home through around that flag, along with Murphy. Four across. We're chasing four more. Jenny Parry. Oh, it is a tough one. It's all about eight, the magic number, who is going to qualify through, and who is going to qualify through safely in the right spot within the flag. And we see the flag go back up. And again, you can see all of our athletes this weekend wearing a wristband. Um, and they're doing an incredible job. They're getting marked off as they go through. So it is all happening down there. We're just trying to grab these caps for the last few competitors across the line. And it is uh, Zico, Vess- uh, Zico Vesley from uh, Newport. That is the big number one there of heat number nine. And uh, we can see all of the results coming through for the even numbered heats. They are in a different arena. Jump onto liveheats.com and you can track the progression of all your athletes. This is uh, Jimmy Walker just on the line. Keep an eye out. I think there's a flag in his very immediate future <laughs> he says I'm coming across I'm coming across he knows he's got to get around it he's oh, going to be no. tight and that if you get the ski sideways you might end up in a little bit of trouble but he does a good job there puts the head down and just, just gets, oh perfect <laughs> oh, no. perfect timing there old Jimmy around and in but he got across the line there That's still enough. counts love his work Vipes the official there got out of the way good job Vipes down there we love the officials <laughs> They do a great job. So it's official. Uh, we saw Vesely earlier, Walker, Murphy, Jones, Outram, Angus Mackay, Taylor Gavin. Just one spot yet to be determined. But for now, we're going to head back down onto the beach with Courtney. Yes, I am down the beach. Jimmy Walker, can you just tell us about that dramatic finish you took out the pole? Yeah, it's always dramatic with me, isn't yes, it? There's always something happens. But uh, look, it's so tricky out there. And uh, it's a really long paddle. When I was coming in, 
I surfed a really good runner and I got it to go south. I looked up and I could only see one flag and when I was coming in, I was like, oh no, I'm out of the area and the sweep is so strong from the north to the south. Lucky Luke Jones, who I've known for a long time, so I was able to call out to, hey Luke, I'm cutting right, I'm cutting right, otherwise we're going to run into each other. But you know, I hit the pole flag, but I got around, so I'm still through. That's all that matters. You got through. You got in, you got through. And can you just tell us, these conditions have certainly changed. As you just mentioned before, the sweep and the wind. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. It's, it's sort of, it's a three-part race for me, and I think it is for everyone. It's the start and getting out, being safe and negotiating it. Then you've got to be strong. It's really dead water. And when you're coming in, the runners, because the tide's pulling out, the water's moving out. So it looks like you're going to go fast, but you go slow. And then you've got to have saved enough energy to when you come in to make smart decisions. And I'm from North Bondi, where usually the surf comes straight. And at Maroochydore here, it's coming from the right, but then pushing to the left. 18 foot long craft, little tiny rudder, takes all your might to keep it going straight. So everyone who's competing going out and back is doing really well. Oh, we love you, Jimmy. Your energy is always so high and so good on the beach. And yeah, we wish you the very best for this next race. Thanks, Cor. It's great being with you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Courtney. Fantastic uh, work to Jimmy as well as we progress through another heat here. This looks to be uh, 11, we want to say. Heat number 11 for the Open Men's Single Ski. There you go. Confirmation coming through. <sighs> Led off by Jet Kenny himself from Alexander Hedlund. He'll be on the far left-hand side of the field here in that special centenary cap for Alex, the black and gold. Tom Schneider from Tugan, Clark Allwood from uh, Half Moon Bay, Jack Walton in the mix from ben, uh, Mermaid Beach. Our Queensland champ, Ben Carberry, in the mix. Lachlan Field from Coogeon, Joel Piper of Maroochydore, Wes Gould in there from Northcliffe, Will Morris from Alex, Zach King from Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, Ollie Monaghan uh, from Maroochydore, Sven Meiser from Sorrento, Connor Peabody from Burley Heads, Mowbray Park, James Mace of Northcliffe and uh, rounding out the field, silver medalist from the double ski yesterday, Dan Bowker all the way from North Burley. Yeah, this is an interesting Oof. one. One I'm pretty... It'll be interesting here if you're a real fan of surf sports because Benny Carberry has been probably the best ski paddler going around in the summer mm -hmm. surf all year long, yep. without a shadow of a doubt. And then you get some of the pure ski paddlers come back, your, your Fletcher Armstrongs, your, your Lockie Thames, who probably don't do as many rounds. And Dan Bowker's one of those guys. We know he's in good form from that double. So we're about to find out whether that was a little bit of false form from Benny Carbs and he was just the best of the Ironman or yes. the best of the guys going around at the summer surf, or whether he can really win this ski race. And I know he's had silvers in the past, so to, to say can he win the ski race is a bit understated. But... Ben is in as good a form as I've ever seen him on the ski, and I think he's just a genuine force in the ski race, full stop. No matter who's there, you put the Olympians back into it, I think he can still win it. So it'll be interesting. Bowker's in this one and Carberry, and we're about to find out who really has that pace and who's going to go a long way towards winning it off and away there. Jet Kenny's got absolute speed to burn on this side as well, so he's closest. Carberry there alongside him there on the white and black, and in the centre, Wes Gould. Talk about Ironman in good ski paddling form. Wes Gould is another one of those lads who is absolutely flying at the moment on the ski. And he is there on the right-hand side, that yellow ski going up and over this one. They're going to be met by a couple of little waves. One of the lads from Coogee and Lockie Field absolutely swimming at the moment. But on the far side, maybe Connor B, Peabody will lead them out, along with Dan Bowker as Benny Carberry goes up and over and just manages to survive. So a bit of luck for a few of these boys going through. Will Morris as well has got off to a flyer. So has Jolly Pond and it seems like maybe eight or nine have got out and the rest of the field's been absolutely belted. And especially if we are taking eight through to the next round, that really allows that front pack to get a nice gap on the rest of the field and this could be the difference nice and early. And as we saw from the uh, Newport crew in that previous heat, this is where the boys will just settle into their rhythm. You can see a lovely cadence just starting to form up here as they take a little beat, take a moment, reform. I can see Ollie Monaghan uh, really rocking the uh, bleach blonde. Uh, oh, the m, &M look. Yep, yep. The real Slim Shady in the race here. I love it, yeah. Bowk's out in front at the moment, looking very comfortable. Wes Gould in there as well, just behind. And this is what I wanted to see. Dan Bowk, I would say, is mm. the standard at the moment. He's been there so for a long time. And you, and you can see the size of the blade. He's got just that extra large, massive <laughs> blade that you put it in. And I don't even think I'd be able to pull it no. through the water. But he just cuts that thing like a knife through butter at the moment. And this is what I was looking for. Carb's got a little bit hit on the way out, so you could probably give him a little bit of grace there. But... The ski paddlers, 
if they've got the skills, they'll do very, very well out here. And these Ironmen, if they've got the strength and ability, they'll be able to get themselves into the final. And it's that interesting mix when you come to the finals. Are you an Ironman coming to the ski? Are you a ski paddler specialising? And it looks like at the moment, Dan Bowker has gotten the run of it at the moment. Jack Kenny gets around there. He's got a bit of work to do if he wants to get himself into the top eight as well. And Walton from Mermaid Beach sitting right in the red zone. They are not out of it, but... If they don't get a wriggle on here, it is race over before it's even begun. And I think this is nearly the point in the race uh, from the previous heat, heat number seven, where Jimmy Walker actually got a nice little wave practically on that last can coming through. So the boys would have seen that. They're in the same arena again. They're learning from every race. They're learning these conditions as they come through. And I'm really glad you actually pointed out the uh, size of that blade there. I can't stop looking at it now. Yeah. I think uh, the sizing in the catalogue must be small, medium, large, and Bowker. What yeah, would you like to be? 100%. And I tried to order a Bowker, but I said, no, <laughs> oh, not me. Enough. This is You're not you. man enough at all. Have a look at him there, the big lat coming through, and he's a very, very good ski paddler. Zaki King gets one on the far side there for the Burley Heads Mowbray Park Club. Starts to cut back. He's done a fantastic job to work his way back into it as well. So he's done a really good job. Burley, Burley, and then Benny Carberry as well. But out in front at the moment, P, uh, sorry, out in front of the moment, Bowker from Wes Gould, Peabody and King there, Carberry as well, and the rest of the field battling it out for the final sort of three spots. That's King in the centre, Peabody closest to us, Ollie Monaghan, Peabody goes down the mine, he's got to keep it straight, he's got to keep the paddling going there, because if he loses it sideways, that's all over for him. Zaki King does a good job in there, the big fella, small business owner, Zaki King, there he's got his own little business back energy there, so good luck to him there. Benny Carberry across the line, and well, that's what I wanted to see. Bowker or Carberry side by side, and we are none the wiser. Wes Gould look good, Zach King across fourth place. Five is Peabody there, Ollie Monaghan six, seven, and Jet Kenny gets home in eighth place. So I thought he was done for all money, and I thought Marty was going to be the one. A little shake of the head from Jet Kenny there. He knows that he battled hard for that one, got smashed on the way out, had to fight, and he managed to fight his way back into it. Yeah, that was really impressive. We're loving just our, our live heaps updates at the moment, just making sure they're uh, getting through. The officials doing a great job grabbing these boys as soon as they come off the line. And we are powering through the heats here in the Open Men's Ski. It's official Dan Bowker in one, Ben Carberry in two. And uh, we're getting through these races as we should because the uh, quality in every single heat in round number one is impressive. We can see the boys making their way through four, five, six. This is how they land, and we're just waiting for uh, Jet Kenny to get that that uh, eighth and final spot as they start to come through. It was a rough one, but uh, Josh, this is what we're here for. Yeah, that's it. I'm loving this ski racing now, so that's enough for me for the day. I'm going to hand over to Harold in the commentary booth here. You get the best of it, all the ski races coming up, but yeah, this afternoon's action is going to be spectacular. Yeah, Harold, we saved all the good races for you, and um, as I sign off and hand over to uh, Christy Munro, Courtney Hancock has all the action down on the beach. Yeah, the action is still happening. I'm just out here with Benny Carberry, one of the favourites on the beach, and you always make that ski leg look so easy. Yeah, it's um, super tricky out there, actually. Um, I started on that left side, struggled at the start, and then sort of found myself out the back, just lengthening out, hit my strokes, and then just chased the runners back in. We've seen so many of the athletes today really find it really, as you said before, really tricky coming in, and you, you turned off a little bit sideways, but you've got so much skill to turn it around straight. Just how hard is that to do? Yeah, the water's really ripping across that bank and the waves are quite tricky because they're coming from different angles and they're hitting your rudder and your rudder's shaking and you always want to go with the wave and it's trying to turn you the other way, so it's quite, it's quite tricky, so yeah, no, it was good. And you had the Iron Man earlier this morning, you've got the semi coming up later on the week. How nerve-wracking was that this morning? Yeah, it's always nerve-wracking when it's the first race of the day. I don't really warm up the best, so I like to get like a race under my belt before I do an iron, but having it first up is not really an option, so... Got to try to rip in, go hard, treat it like, like it's my last race and, yeah, just go from there. Well, Benny Carbs, you probably need some carbs at the moment. After that big race, I'll let you get back into it, recover up and good luck. Cheers, Colts. Benny Carberry, one of the most honest men you'll meet on the beach. And surprise, surprise, Christy, the weather turns good and the other two superstars hop out of the commentary box whilst we've been in the elements all morning. There's been wind, there's been rain, a few tears from the athletes, a bit of jubilation, but it's been tough conditions for all of them been a day of all seasons yes I've had the jacket on off the umbrella up and um, can see a little bit more sunshine coming down now hopefully for the rest of the afternoon um, as we get through um, the remaining open mail ski heats we're up to I think we're up to maybe heat 13 um, of 16 
of 16 heats, so we are almost all the way through. Um, I haven't um, seen too many upsets. We, of we often see those in the maybe the next second round or quarterfinals. Um, so tough to qualify through here, not only with um, the, the field, but obviously the circuit that they've, that they've got to contend with today. Yeah, it's just the size and the strength, isn't it? We've had a few discussions on the beach with the different team managers around whether or not the under-17 ladies are going to be able to get out on the skis because it is really tough condition, strong. And just being able to hold those waves coming through like we've seen the last few races here on the live stream, it, it really is the best of the best that are making their way out and in. Yeah, on screen at the moment, we've got um, Max Hewitt from Half Moon Bay, just popping through that wave there. We can also see Jay Finesse from Cronulla closest to screen, having a little bit of a look across to see, are they going through this? Are they waiting? It was a really tricky, tricky du double up um, across there to Saxton Coke's uh, Burley Heads as well. So the field pretty even, nothing really opening up at the moment, although I see a little bit of speed. So, oh, oh and a roll closest to screen. I'm not sure if that was Jack Baker from Terrigal having to roll under that one. One out already in the lead at the moment, and it's going to be no surprises to see that it is Lockie Tame, one multiple medals at the moment. And the seas have just parted for this young man with the burly heads cap on. New ski, they're looking fast and comfortable. He'll just treat this like a cool down now. So he's got through the break, put the work in, understanding the conditions, and yeah, way too strong for the uh, multiple Olympian. And yesterday's double ski winner, what a race. Yeah, I saw Lockie this morning um, to congratulate him again on his double ski and he said, I forgot how um, much those races hurt. <laughs> Single skis hurt and I think it's, you know, obviously the, the doubles, um, you feel like you're sometimes pulling your partner along even though you're both working equally as hard. So Lockie just out of screen, we can see um, Newport there in second place and this is our chase pack, so this is third, fourth, fifth and sixth couple of names in there as well. Head coach from Mermaid, Kai Hurst, having a run out there as well. So again, embarrassment of riches. The guys are out there. So many Aussie medals in this race at the moment. And you just see Kai there with the long rash on that inside right. They're cruising through at about fourth place at the moment. Wow. He looks pretty impressive, doesn't he? You can see Kai there, as you mentioned, long sleeve rashy and the yellow and grey ski as he comes up on our screen. Marucci door, Burley Heads. There's the cap there of Terry Gould, yeah, Cole North Graham, Burley. Yeah, strong. Big squad there Bernie at the moment. sneaking through there. And Allura. So um, spread out as we saw that huge set come through. No troubles at all for our leader, Lockie. That's the way you want to qualify through in a heat. I'd say he'll be um, starting to switch off now, knowing he's pretty safe, and um, he'll have the luxury of potentially picking the wave that he wants to ride home on. Yeah, most definitely. Solid, solid lead there at the moment. It might be Matt Bell from Newport there in two at the moment. Top eight are going to make their way through to the final. A bit competitors there for him. So, Brendan Mackin from Burnie. Good to see the guys from far, far south in Tasmania working through. But as we say that, see Tame just picking up that rate, trying to pull over the top of that little runner to secure his spot through to the next round. And as we get close to that wave zone, choices need to be at a premium, but Tame always makes the right one, right one, and he's making his way through, so he'll qualify comfortably. Yeah, in the chasing canter. that small wave there. Once you get hold of a small runner, you don't want to let that go and risk the wave that might be coming behind you there. You can see Kai Hurst on the top of the screen on that yellow ski. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think that might be still Maruchidor. Um, sitting there in about third or fourth, but um, our leader now on a wave, Lockie Tame. Looks comfortable, doesn't he? So confident, I think, that win yesterday would have given him a massive boost. And um, although you have to come back to the beach and reset for the wa for the races that you've got ahead of you, it, it, um, it is something that you'll still just have in your back pocket. Yeah, and we spoke about that a little bit on the beach yesterday, Chris. You're just having that muscle memory. So having the reps, you know, from you know your juniors, your 16s, 17s, 18s, 19s, the whole way through, having those reps at such a young age and then coming back out, you know, I guess as a master's age competitor, but still being able to put it down with the best of the best and... Some of the best from New South Wales there on screen. Jay Finesse, huge man, so solid across, you know, I guess, all, all three, swim, board, and ski. Yeah, he had a really strong um, showing earlier in the, the swim team's final, um, backing it up now, qualifying through to the next round in the skis. But, yeah, you're right. There are some athletes who, um, having done it for so, so many years, they just know how to, to rise to the occasion of a national championships. And... Um, no matter what their preparation might have been, they're just here to race. And there are some athletes that are just just racers. Um, seeing some of the minor placings come across, 
the line there now. We'll um, wait for the update from Live Heats, but can confirm the winner of that heat, uh, Lockie Tame from Burley Heads, Matthew Bell from Newport, Jay Finesse from Cronulla. Courts, as we wait for those minor placings, have you got someone down on the beach? Yes, I've got, um, yeah, champion. You all know this face, Kai Hurst. We're just talking about how wonderful it's to see you back out here racing. Oh, thank you, Courtney. It's, uh, you know, certainly nice to be back, but it's like I've still got the trainers on, you know, the, the training wheels. It, everything still feels really wobbly. It's been a really long time, like almost eight years since uh, you know, I've competed at this level. So it's like I'm starting all over again. And, uh, yeah, testing, tricky at the same time, and, and especially these conditions. You know, in the past, I used to absolutely just thrive and wish for this kind of stuff. Uh, these days, a little less, but uh, you know, I'm really happy to have it. Well, it's so great to still see you on the yellow, keeping that tradition, but how do you feel the competition's changed? I mean, we're up to, I think you were number 14 heat. We've still got a couple more to go in this open men's ski. How good is the depth of surf life saving at the moment? You know, in just sheer numbers, it's fantastic. And this is what we're here for. We're here to showcase to the rest of the world, the rest of the country, that, you know, we are confident and we're here to save lives. And that's our number one priority is surf life savers. So, you know, to be able to come here and, uh, you know, put on a show for, for all the spectators out there and you know, all those people that come down to our beaches, you know, we got the best beaches in the world in Australia. So, you know, they should know that they're, they're, they're safe between the red and yellow. And uh, that's what we're here, for, here to do, you know. Put, put all our skills into test, into play, and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, get through it. We'll let you recover and also get back to coaching as well. So, But it's so nice to see you out there. Very exciting. Amazing. Thanks, Coach. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Clyde. No worries. One of the legends of the sport. Interesting that actually says that. One thing that sort of probably does get missed a little bit, we've got these elite athletes, but first and foremost, we're lifesavers. Yes, absolutely. Everyone's done their patrols to get here to compete this weekend. Um, not only patrolling their beach, as Courtney mentioned, a lot of our competitors are giving back in the coaching arena as well. Um, so um, I, I would like to look. I would like to look like Kai does, as he mentioned. They're feeling like he's got training wheels on. Imagine looking that good and paddling that well, and um, still feeling like you're wobbly. I think um, if this is a little bit of a mini comeback for Kai, we've got lots to look forward to. Yeah. Most definitely. So Heat 15 on the line, last ones to go through. So again, top eight making their way through the final. It looks like the conditions have gone a little bit benign, but very unforgiving camera angles because it has been pretty heavy down on the banks all morning. Um, probably another interesting thing, I was talking on the beach with a few of the guys down there, and this morning, again, it's one of those times when you're at the beach and the only reason you would actually be at the beach is for a surf carnival if it was any other day you would not be anywhere near this place there's water moving everywhere it's heavy swells and realistically probably 99.8 percent of the world's population would not be able to go out in these conditions and it's just a testament to how amazing these athletes are Yes, and this particular arena, the uh, the open men's arena, is where that, that bank is probably the shallowest across this stretch of Maroochydore Beach. So um, really probably difficult to assess the difficulty of, of what we can see on screen. When you're down there at, um, at wave level, you can really see just how powerful these sets are breaking on that sandbank. As we say that now, this heat, I think probably sneaking through the best of what we've seen, not having to negotiate too much white water at all. So they'll be really happy with that start that they've been given. Um, as we're watching here, that's Nick Roger um, from the North Cliff Club doing a great job, probably the early leader at this stage. Yeah, tucked into the inside, Cody Gads there from, from Cronulla, one of the youngest athletes coming through really fast, obviously really strong. And then what have we got? Nathan Neal out there from Allura. So again, been doing this for a long, long time. So powerful through the water. It, this, one thing I do love about the ski is that it is all about power. It's what three and a half, four minutes of just raw energy, making decisions out there. And it's a lot easier to compete at this level. I shouldn't say easier, but you can maintain that elite level for a lot longer. And it's just so good to see the upcoming athletes and these legends of the sport still fighting it out. Yeah, it's a real strength-based um, discipline, the ski. So if you can keep your strength up, um, obviously you do need your fitness um, and your speed, but um, you can really rely on the strength, particularly on days like this where the surf is pumping. You'll see some of the, the stronger athletes um, probably come to the front of the field. So we're on board here. We can see we've got North Cliff. I think that's a Newport cap. Um, trying to pick up that black cap, that dark-looking cap. Is it a green Mornington? Have we got a Mornington action there? Maybe, maybe not. Taylor's mistake, oh, mistake from New Zealand, maybe. But we'll see what transpires. But at the moment, out in front, Jake Rees from Newport. Along, yeah, Quint's out, oh, sorry, and Nathan Neal next to him there. And just these little runners, just trying to pick up something. 
urgency levels not too much for the lead through at the front but as soon as we make our way around that black and white can this is where it needs to set in the guys will be having a quick count to head check see who's around see who's behind and see what's happening with the waves because this is going to be i guess the risk is going to come into it, so trying to get through another five competitors to get into that top eight. Yes, we saw one of our Terrigal competitors just sneaking around that turning marker as we had about five skis um, trying to negotiate that one can. So the field fairly spread out across our lead um, paddler there, Jake Rees from Newport, looking like he may have a wave on his own. I think he looked behind to decide whether he's going to take that one or not. He's happy to let that one pass under and maybe pick up a smaller little bump behind. Nothing too much out there on the horizon. And so I'd say there'd be no trouble at all with these paddlers negotiating the, the break and um, hopefully qualifying safely through. Yeah, uh, Patrick Ely from Sorrento on that outside right. Uh, double ski, oh, the ski finals last year, so, so fast. Massive squad out there uh, that I guess you know, culminates with that Fremantle Doctor race at the end of each year. But Jake Rees looking comfortable, strong, confident. No issues there for him at all. That's our top three across the line as we pan back now to our fourth place. Fifth and, gosh, sixth, seventh and eighth is going to come from this last rush of waves here. We'll have to wait and see. May, may even only be a couple of spots left. I think we've had a few sneak through. Oh, oh. a couple of slews. Well, more than a couple, only one or two paddlers actually making it from that wave. So I'm not quite sure if that's our seventh and eighth paddlers. And I think it might have even been Nick Roger, one of our early leaders who um, who came unstuck on the shore there. So we will wait for those official results. Um, just as we said, it looked like it was going to be fairly comfortable to get back through. There's Nick there. I think obviously he knows... Um, his ski campaign here at Aussies might be over. And it does come down to those decisions. Unfortunately, only two spots available, five on the wave. Last one coming through from behind has to take the risk and unfortunately knocking out the last two on there. So we got through to the top eight. Courtney on the beach. Yes, thank you. I am here on the beach with Patrick and we're just talking, this is your third interview. So soon we'll be swapping roles at the moment. But can you just talk to us? It's so tricky out there. Yeah, super, super tricky. Um, but really good fun, Mike. You know, for guys like me that probably aren't the quickest, it gives us, you know, a little bit of a chance through the break and stuff. So, yeah, look, well, I'm happy it's, you know, how it is and hopefully it favours me, you know, as the rounds keep coming. And and back home, where, what beach do you go to look for for surf to practice in? Um, probably to our two hour drive up to Seagrass Harbour, that's probably our best bet. But we don't get anything, you know, close to this. So, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge for us coming over, but... You just got to go for it, hey? Yeah, absolutely. You've made the trip over here and you've just got to yeah, absolutely send it. But we're just talking before, you do have a lot of races today. So what do you do for that recovery in between? Um, for me, mainly just go back, uh, eat, you know, hydrate and, and lie down. Like, resting is probably my, my best. Well, the best for me I've found over the years. So, yeah, we'll hopefully go home after this and have a nice lie down. Absolutely. Big sleeps ahead. Thank you so much, Patrick. And hopefully I'll tell the others not to get you for another interview because this has been number three. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think unintentionally it's the fluoro green cap that draws everyone to it. Patrick Ely there making his way through. It's, I thought it was quite funny. He was saying he's not as fast as the others but still coming through quite comfortably in that top three. Yeah, and I was actually one who interviewed um, Pat earlier today after he took out... Um, I think it was the semi of the boards. Um, I'm not sure if it was the quarters or the semi. So he's having a fantastic carnival and um, looking so calm and so relaxed. So um, good luck for you, Patty. You just got to um, not do so well in the interviews and we won't keep grabbing you. A wordsmith he is. We've got the under-19 skis now. So again, a lot of aggression, a lot of power. Probably not as much surf knowledge or... What's the word I'm trying? I'm trying to put it nicely because these boys are going to be so aggressive around the cans. Yeah, absolutely. I just haven't probably had as many years on this craft. Um, we start paddling skis in under 17s, and so um, compa compared to some of the you know the age and the experience that we've just watched in our open men's ski qualifiers, the 19 men's have yeah still I guess honing their skills, building their strength. Um, they'll have a lot of the surf skills, but um, transitioning those over from the swim and the board onto the ski takes a little bit of time to develop. Yeah, most definitely. Alex Woodhouse there in the middle of the screen from Ruchidor. Solid state championships. And 
Again, being the Aussie titles, we've got a nice spread across the nation here. Jules Friedenand from City of Perth on the right of the screen with that bookend. So James Merlington on that far left. Inside him, we've got Clifton Beach getting in there as well. Dan Reardon. A lot of boys in there. And again, the toughest job in surf life saving is the uh, starter of a ski race. Yeah, you would, I would not be trading my job for that one, um, sp particularly on days like this. Even flat water days, it's difficult to get an even break across. So he'll be watching sort of a wave or two in front to make sure that um, everyone's got the same amount of white water in front of them. He's got them away to a fairly clean start. We were just um, looking there at the Mermaid Beach competitor who had a great start there on that dark navy uh, ski. That's um, Brock Neal from Newport with the yellow cap and the two maroon stripes and the quite bright pink rashy, so that's nice and easy to pick. That might be James from Alex just um, coming unstuck there, but a, a long race, so still uh, plenty of time to make up some ground, and particularly what we've seen, anything can happen on the way back in. Yeah, but leading us out, no surprise to see Alex Woodhouse just tucking in second place behind Jake Morris on the green and blue ski. Ultimately fast, a lot of flat water training, but a lot of surf there as well. So I guess, you know, Morris has always been fast, but Jake probably being the premier ski paddler in the family, I said it and will stand by it, leading <laughs> us out at the moment. I'm sure he'll be happy with that um, with that title. And, you know, we did say the, these 19s are still building their strength and experience, but um, Jake seems to have that well beyond his young years in these under-19 age groups. It feels like he's been paddling skis for a very, very long time. Um, so he is showing us how it's done out there at the moment, ahead of Alex Woodhouse from Maroochydore. And um, maybe maybe um, that might be Aidan McMahon from Alex sitting there in third or equal third. There's a fairly tight, um, tightly bunched pack. So what we've got there, the red cap with the two stripes down the middle, Gabe Cornwell from Portsea is who it is. And they're just in front of him there, Dan Reardon from Clifton Beach. That's our top four at the moment. And one thing I do love about this race is having the ski specialists in there. So we see a, a bit more disparity of caps from across the nations there because I guess when you've got open water, jump on a ski, there's nothing more fun. Yeah, and, um, and ski seems to be one of those disciplines where you really still have your specialists. Oftentimes our board paddlers and swimmers will um, come from maybe our Ironman um, events, but... Um, the flat water paddlers, the kayakers, and then the specialist ski paddlers. be interesting to see how our kayakers go um, this weekend. A lot of them, you know, do dabble in both, so still have some pretty amazing surf skills. Yeah, surf skills are going to be at a premium, and that's where we just saw a little bit more aggression, a little bit more cadence. The rate picked up that little bit there. Hands are still nice and high from Jake Morris, trying to pull down that first wave just to extend that lead at the moment. And then the back of the pack there, the boys are still working hard. We've got the probably a fair way out of it at the moment but clear lead at the moment Jake Morris yeah I think that might have been um, Jules who we were watching there from City of Perth doing a great job coming around the cans this looks like our chasing pack here Marucci or just pulling down that um, little swell but nothing stopping our leader Jake Morris leaning back making sure the nose doesn't dive in just you think you've come down the trickiest part and then it builds up again so um nothing easy about these waves here at maruchidor beach today but that's a fantastic win jake morris has a look around yep you're very clear here's our second and third place getters newport and maruchidor yeah so brock neal really really strong through there but just trying to square up to get inside the arena there and this is where we saw jake's one just come across a little bit there clifton beach on the inside so too gabe Cornwall from Portsea, and I think out of shot already is the second place. Alex Woodhouse making his way through. Yeah, top of the screen too was City of Perth, so I think um, our top seven haven't come across there yet. We'll try and um, pick up these caps. A little bit tricky to see from that angle there, and you can just see if you're not on a wave there, that dead water pushing out to sea, so great job. Mermaid on screen, Newport, Alex service paradise just got to be in some sort of control don't ne necessarily need to be on it but just need to be in control of the ski only drop your paddle just grab your ski and get across the line as soon as possible yeah and a lot of our paddlers are having to angle their skis up to the north which i think is where a lot of that difficulty is happening just at that sort of t uh, 10 15 meters out from our finish flag there so that competitor there you can see has not given themselves enough room to um to get to, to get around those turning flags to the north 
Jen, as we watch these last qualifiers coming across, who are you, on, who are you down the beach with? Oh, you, ju- you go down to a ski arena, you jump into a Morris, and, uh, mate, great paddle there, great to get through. Yeah, it's pretty good to get through that. Um, it's pretty tricky out there with the conditions. You've just got to play it safe in the heats, not be stupid, because a lot of good people have gotten out in these heats for just sending it down waves and slewing. And, yeah, you just want to tick it off one by one. Don't be stupid and get through. And it's bizarre. It's Thursday afternoon. I feel we've seen you go around the can so many times already. Aussies is such a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah, it's definitely a marathon. Five days. You're like day three in. You're like, oh, normally state's over, but you're like two more days to go. Um, with this swell, it makes drags out a bit longer. But, I mean, it's the last one of the year, and we love it, and that's why we do it. And knowing you've got a little bit of a break after this, you can go a little bit harder, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, we found out just before the race then that um, this was it for today. So I got double skis coming in, so I just knew just to get a quick start and get the heart rate up a little then drop it right off. Well, that feels like the perfect finish to your afternoon. Stoked to see you getting through to the next round in such wonderful style. Come back tomorrow. Let's do it all again. Yep, all again. We love it. Hey, Jen, quick question. Oh, we got a quick question. Uh, is uh, Jake officially the best ski paddler in the family? Uh, we just want some confirmation. Uh, are you the best ski paddler in your family? Sorry to put you on the spot. It's all Harold. It's not me. Oh, I don't want to say that, but I mean, they're still like Zach's so so strong, but you just got to get him, I don't know, in the ski more and working hard because he's so powerful. Like you see, he starts off the beach, even when he's that swim team was fast. Mitch is just big and powerful because he's a big guy. So we're all fast. It's just I don't know, more skill related. That's how you get the best. I don't know. I don't want to say I am the fastest because we'll see on Sunday if we get there. There you go. We'll decide on Sunday. Harold, that was a terrible question. You're dividing the Morrises. How dare you? Harold loves it. He does love it. That was a great answer, though. Didn't he dan- dance around that an- answer? And, yes, he, he didn't want to take the title. He, I think he's going to let his paddling do the talking. Which he usually does, but he can get a job in media if he's going to toe the line like that which is always fun. So we've got a few more ski races. I've actually got some updates on the beach. They are going to be running the under-17 ladies ski through to final. Today? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So it is only 2 o'clock, so that is going to be exciting. So we've seen the boys getting out there strong. We've seen a few skis going up in the air. We spoke on the beach earlier about how tough the conditions were in that pink and green and gold arena, which is the furthest north. Um, what are we going to expect with that tide coming in this afternoon? Well, I think, as you mentioned, higher tides, so a little bit more um, fullness in those waves. The men's arena has been where that shallow bank has been, so the more difficult area, in my opinion, to paddle ski. So hopefully, um, with that tide pushing in and that, um, those waves filling up, it will be a little bit more forgiving for our under-17s. I know we've got some really keen girls who are very excited to get out there and test their skills. I'm sure there are equally just as many nervous ones watching these races, these ski races, all day today. Uh, the thing I'm going to be watching, especially in the uh, green and gold and the pink arena, the pink arena has been running so fast, so the cans are set at the exact same distance, but most of the board races this morning within the pink arena were probably getting through two to three minutes faster than that of the green and gold. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see mm-hmm. what transpires, to see what the draw is and see they hold up the skis through the, uh, as we get through to the afternoon. Yeah, I think that is that famous Maruchidor rip that's, that's pumping out in that pink arena. So makes it fun and potentially a little bit easier going out. But um, as we see on the skis, if you're paddling in towards the rip, that's what makes that wave suck up. So um, plenty for our ski paddlers to have to negotiate. And um, I'm really excited to see the under-17s get a chance to show us their skills. Um, as we know, a lot of work goes into their season, their preparation. A lot of them have travelled from all across the country um, to, to contest these Aussies. So um, hopefully with that fuller tide, we'll see some nicer conditions for them. And what else we're going to see is the mixed double ski. Is there an event that's more fun? It is a lottery. It is about the club. You've got your two fastest, male and female, on there and just ready to get out and see what happens. I love watching that event. <laughs> I love watching it. I used to love contesting it. Um, it's really, you know, you have to be in it to win it kind of thing. Anything can happen in those double skis, particularly the mixed double skis. Um, yeah, it's pretty fast and furious. So I know that the ladies' skis get a little bit aggressive. Is there a change between a men's double ski, a women's double ski, than having that mix? Is it a little bit more polite out there, or is it still on? Oh, it's a, it's a lot more aggressive in the mixed double ski. I think that the women's double, um, while yeah, while that's very um, difficult strength-wise, you, you can absolutely tell the difference when you step up into a mixed double ski. Um, obviously, we can choose where you sit. You can have you know the female at the front or at the back of the ski. I think most of the time that the men will choose to paddle up at the front and so it can get very interesting around the cans um, when you're sort of sitting at the back and you just have paddles clashing every which way. So um, 
It's, it's a fun event, though, and um, I think it's certainly one that everyone looks forward to either being in or to watching. So finals of that this afternoon, I think that's going to be um, definitely one to stick around for, one to watch. It's funny you say that most of the time you usually have the men at the front, but sometimes with the double skis that the club owns, because in these sort of conditions, you, you don't really want to be asking other clubs to borrow a double ski, because if something happens, you're probably going to be in the hole about six and a half to $7,000. And then the jig, the jig length, sometimes they can only be extended so far at the front. So I know with your Voca guys at the moment, Big Gordo Jones, six foot four, behemoth of a man, can't fit in the front of the ski they've got. So he goes, I'll just drive at the back and then Holly will be at the front and we'll hold on and see what happens. Yeah, and I don't really know if there's a particular combination that works better than others. I've certainly had some um, ski, ski partners that I've paddled with who have wanted me to paddle at the front because they've said, you know, you make quite good decisions under pressure um, and so when you're negotiating the turning around the cans you want someone who does have a fairly cool head um, you know and can, can choose their path on the way out and the way in and maybe make a call on what waves to take or not well I think Jake uh, officially coined it as stupid decisions <laughs> <laughs> so we're back on the line some more under 19 skis coming up we're just waiting for the course to be reset and you can just see how deep that finish line is at the moment usually it's a little bit closer to the bank but because we've got that middle gutter and like you're saying right on the bank there we're having to get that out a little bit further so the second toughest position to be in today is going to have to be on that finish line yeah, exactly right there. Um, you can see just to the top of the screen there, I think that is potentially um, Heat 4 that's underway. So we've got two arenas running here for our 19s ski, and I think we're waiting for a start in Heat number 3. So we'll wait to bring that start list to you. But um, everyone looking on fairly keenly with the race that's in the water, just making sure um, everyone's happy with their tactics or their decisions, their alleys. Not that you necessarily have much of an option. Um, everyone gets drawn a random alley um, and that's that's the way that you'll walk your boat into the water. Yeah, and we'll be talking about the hardest job in surf life saving, which is the ski starter. Having that the ski set that little bit deeper in, but then trying to find that gap in there. Obviously, the longer you're holding it, the more tired the athletes get. So sometimes it's just a matter of just pulling the trigger and whatever transpires, transpires. Yeah, it, it is difficult to hold your ski steady and straight as you've got those white waters um, obviously breaking to the front of your ski but also washing you to the side. Um, and looking at that stretch of water that's in front of our ski paddlers lined up there, there isn't really um, a consistent a consistent line of waves or water movement. So um, a very difficult uh, job for the starter and he's obviously um, under instructions to get the carnival moving through so you can't spend five or ten minutes waiting for the perfect um perfect start but absolutely doing the best job under these conditions yeah i know that earlier in the day we saw a few of the uh the ladies in the green and gold arena the left hand side was a little bit deeper so when the gun was going the water was nearly up to chest height the other girls at the other end had it on the bank but the rip was on the left hand side so even though you were the last one to get in the seat and then the you know, last one to get your first five or six strokes in and, and be somewhere between you know one boat to two boat lengths behind uh, you had that best line out. So sometimes it does work out, then other times it doesn't. But for this morning, or oh, sorry, this afternoon, I should say, within this arena in the blue and white, it's been pretty fair. Yeah, and we'll have our, our coaches and our team managers um, on the beach looking at the conditions, assessing the conditions. And if they think that the start line needs to be moved, maybe... 10 to 20 metres, they'll often um, pitch that idea down there to the sectional referee and um, they're really receptive of making those decisions. We want to get the best, especially when we're at the Aussie Tiles, we want to get the, um, the best line of start we can possibly have. So um, sometimes you will see a little bit of a break in the program while we do reset or realign the course. And you see... That Again, tide coming in a little bit. Some nice full waves coming out in the back there. Not too much issues on the far screen there. The boys making their way through. That's going to be so, the heat number four making their way through. But what are we up to? It's only six, which isn't too bad. So they'll get through one round, make their way through to the final. So heat number three now making their way through that gutter out onto the bank and will be underway very, very shortly. For heat number three, 2024 Aussie Championships here on the Sunshine Coast-ish. Yeah, <laughs> <Sunshine Coast> -ish. <laughs> we, no we normally have some beautiful sunshining days, but it wouldn't be a surf carnival without one rainy day. We all pack our jackets and it's great to be able to get them out and, and to use them. Hopefully that, that rain that has come through earlier today has, um, has gone for the time being. 
Um, we'll just see now, they're just following out uh, the check starter. There's a little bit of shallow water once you get through that first gutter. So I think they're going to line them up out onto that bank, um, which I think is where the starter has decided is the most even spot for a start. And talking about even, it looks like the guys in the middle are going to have the waves converging on them from left and right, which is going to form that peak in there, which is ideally where you don't want to be because that's you're going to have the two waves worth of power just checking that ski at the start. But there's going to be an embarrassment of riches in this one. Maguire Reed there with that pink rashy underneath from Newport. Double ski with Jacob Clues yesterday, winning that one of the 19s. Mm. Joel Steiner from one there as well. Next to him, Northcott's Kalani Lock, one to watch there as well. So, again, it's Aussie titles. Everyone's going to be fast. Yeah. Roman Higgins on screen there from the local club of Maroochydore. So he's on the far left of screen, closest to our Czech starter. Probably in the deepest water there is um, is Roman, so um, we'll see how he gets off the start line. Mitch Morris on screen for Northcliffe. Can he replicate what his twin brother has just done? Dominated through the break and then technically, what did he say? Shut it down. <laughs> yeah, and also said, um, you know, you really got to draw on those skills, skills for today. So if you can hear us down there, Mitch. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you'd be worrying about our commentary because Aaron will be down there on the beach watching intently. James Fullerton there from Clifton Beach on screen on the left-hand side. Next to him from Lawn. Welcome, Jude Entercott. Good to see some more competitors from the bottom end of Australia. Looks like starters now in line yelling at everyone. Keep in line. The boys are actually pretty well behaved there at the moment. So there's not too much creeping forward. And that looks pretty good. We'll be underway now. First one in the seat there. Just a little bit of a hiccup from Morris, but Maguire Reed out with a bang. Yeah, Mitch Morris getting off to a great start there. Ryan from Chugan and James from Clifton Beach. You can see um, Morris, who we were calling earlier on the red ski, just getting some early white water falling on his lap. We're on screen now with Newport Maguire Reed, I believe that is. So. He's maybe got one more wave to negotiate before he'll be into some green water. And it might also be a Cronulla cap, I think, just out of screen at the moment. See um, Maguire having a little bit of a look over to see who that is. And I think it might be Noah, maybe from Cronulla. Yeah, Noah, the shit, Catherine there. But yeah, really, really tough stuff. So we haven't seen that too often on that right-hand side. The boy's getting absolutely slammed through there. Driggle on the bottom of the screens. Callan Parsons making his way out there as well tucked in on the inside of him. So what have we got there? Eight or nine on screen at the moment with Maguire Reed leading us out early, tucked in behind Joel Crane from Tugan there as well. Tugan? Yeah. Tugan. Tugan? I say Tugan. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been corrected, so I'm hoping we're saying that right. James Fullerton from Clifton Beach also out in that clear water. Everyone looks to have um, almost negotiated that break there. I think um, Kalani Locke from Northcott um, probably getting the most of those white waters on the lap. So nine on screen at the moment, two already out of, out of uh, screen at the moment. So that's going to take us through to 11. But Joel Steiner in the lead from Wander at the moment. Really nice paddling program there at the moment. Wander boys, really strong. 17s, 19s, doubling up. Bit of a dual age group there. A uh, few of the uh, boys in the 19s already in the open ball team. So it's great to see uh, Nathan Smith you know, building that squad once again. Yeah, had a, a quick chat to Nathan on the beach this morning. He was um, very excited to be um, more in the coaching role. Obviously had a bit of a run around in the Masters, um, but pl passing on plenty of knowledge to that next generation. So um, you can see Wanda there on screen ahead of Newport. So they're our one and two in this heat three of the under-19 male ski. And good decisions there. So again, just wanted to check that a little bit. Nothing stupid. I'm going to keep saying that. Thank you. Uh, Morris there because we want to make good decisions to make sure we're getting that through nicely but one and two comfortably at the moment Maguire Reed, Joel Steiner comfortable yeah and they and they are comfortable which gives them that option of just being able to slow the boat down have a little a little bit of a look at what is coming you can see them doing that now just having a look over their shoulder um, paddling a little bit to the north as we know the Finnish flags are situated a little bit more to the north so trying to posi position themselves out in that green water so you're not having to try to cut across once you're on that wave deciding I think to take this little runner yeah, little armchair right there. That's nice and full. That's comfortable. 
You can probably just see very, very short. Oh, just double up on that inside right. Oh, we haven't seen. Mitch Morris there, comfortable in third. And then we've got two caps from Tugan in this race, Joel Crane and Ryan Muggeridge. But one of the caps is looking strong at the moment. Maguire Reed leading us out at the moment, just paddling in over the top of that whitewash, and there'll be no issues there for him at all. Yeah, paddling in um, behind a wave, which is something that we do try to teach our younger paddlers. You don't have to necessarily take off down the front, as we see um, Mitch just also pulling off the drop there. And um, there's still a lot of momentum that you can sort of see just behind that white water. So if you can let it sneak underneath you and then put the power down as we're watching happen on screen now, you'll just get dragged along just behind the wave there. Yeah, and there's great skills there from Joel Stein. And like you were saying, there's, there's no need to risk anything at the moment. That wave was small enough. Probably could have went down the face of it. But again, just needs to be in that top eight. Let's minimise the risk, make good decisions, and then we'll just cruise through. Yeah, you can see Mitch there being super safe, just legs over on that red ski. It doesn't take much at all um, just to kick these skis sideways. I think that's four across the line there now. Five, six, seven, and eight. So I think that will be our top eight across the line. Only one ski washing in, but that was pretty calm and straightforward. A little bit of work at the start. So on that right-hand edge, again, we hadn't seen that earlier. Great start. They all got on the seats nice and clean, but Maguire Reed, Joel Steiner snuck out through that outside right. Looked really good through that one there as well. Ryan Muggeridge in three. Back to you on the beach, Jenny. Oh, hello. Down here with uh, Maguire from Newport. How good is that to get another race through? Uh, yeah, it's good uh, to just tick those ones off. Like, it's tricky out there, so... It's not like last year where you can sort of guess what's going to happen. It's always it's so unpredictable out there. So, yes, yeah, nice to tick that one off. And how did you recover after the uh, highs of yesterday on the uh, first day of Aussies? It's a big day, but you've got to keep your head about you. What was, Did you get to bed at a good time last night? Yeah, it was first of many days. So, yeah, made sure I get a, get a massage, get a flush out, ice bath, and then, yeah, good dinner, and then bed early. I had an old coach always say, when you get to Aussies, you just want to hang around with winners all the time because that beautiful feeling just continues to grow. It must have been a great vibe under the Newport tent arriving back for day two of Aussies today. Yeah, it was good. Some of the boys went home because they, they finished up their events for the day. So when we saw them all this morning, it was good. They all said congratulations. And yeah, it brings a smile to the face every time. Uh, but a quiet day for you today, you're saying? Maybe only one or two more races left? Um, yeah, they've, they've decided to do only a few rounds. So... Yeah, should be only one more race. Cannot wait to see you in the Opens. We'll let you go and get ready for that one. Thanks so much for a chat. I'm, I'm a little disappointed you're not wearing your medal right now. Is it underneath the Rashi? No, nah, that <laughs> one's at home. Hey. They are rare. They are precious. We're going to keep them safe. Thanks so much for the chat. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Oh, I think the medal's at home with his razor, Jenny. Far out, McGuire. Unbelievable <laughs> how a 19-year-old can do that and look cool, and I look like a creep. But anyway, moving on, we've got a couple more to go. Christy? Yeah, he looked strong though, didn't he, Maguire? I really enjoyed watching his um, double ski paddling yesterday. Just very cool, very calm, um, getting the job done, ticking one race off at a time. And I love that recovery protocol too. Um, ice bath, massage. Not too bad, is it, these, these young kids? They get looked after by their clubs. Were you an, a fan of the ice baths? Uh, yeah, the Uvaca crew had the ice baths downstairs yesterday at our apartments, but yeah, we haven't got um, massages in the budget yet. Well, or ice, to be honest with you. <laughs> but we're in there, small club trying to compete with the best. But you know, it, it, it's whatever's around, and you know, even if it's, there's no ice baths, it's so important to get your hydration, your nutrition, and your sleep. Yeah, I used to make sure I'd always do one more swim lap out and around the cans at the end of the carnival um, before I'd go home. The last thing you feel like doing, but you're always happy that you've done some form of recovery when it comes to turning up on the next day. Your muscles are always going to be a little bit sore, but you can help them. You can help them a lot by um, just what you do in those sort of hour or two after you finish your racing. It is these little things that make the huge difference, right? So, you know, you see after a lot of the races, the coaches are down there going, oh, I'd really like it if you guys could get out there for, um, you know, just a cool down swim. So it shouldn't be, a, I'd like it. It should be a direction. Get out there, do it because it's important and you need to ensure that you can maximise like, all the work you've done for six to nine months to perform over the five days. Yeah, and it, sometimes it's, it's a lesson that you have to learn the hard way. You know, you, it, you'll certainly um, soon um, burn out of energy or your muscles will just stop producing for you if you don't look after your body. So particularly over the Aussies, we've, we've heard everyone say it's a big five-day. Jenny just mentioned it as a marathon event. So, um, yeah, you, you really do need to, um, to look after yourselves. 
I think we might be actually looking at maybe the round two of the open men's ski on screen now. So that might be the last of our 19s ski. Um, we know we were working those over two different arenas. So um, Yeah, so hit number one. So Josh Murphy was just on screen there. Again, another one with a solid moustache. Will Morris from Alex next to him, Tanner Baxter. So round two, top eight, will be making their way through to the quarterfinals. A couple of the old boys in there, Mick Georgiaris, one of the ski coaches there from Wanda in the middle next to Justin McMullen from Redhead. Russell Fox from Half Moon Bay, been in multiple finals, been fast for a long, long time. And there he goes, first one in the middle of the seat there on the green boat. Orange tip and leading us out perfectly from Half Moon Bay. Russell Fox putting on an absolute masterclass and you can do that when you're one of the best in the business. Yeah, wow, a ski length lead already, just ducking the head underneath that one. Um, losing a little bit of um, of his advantage, but not too much. Probably still equal there with our leaders. Decisions there. So interesting to see. So Mick Jarris there on that white ski just in the middle. They checked his stroke a couple of times, just trying to be patient to ensure that when he was going to pound through that white water, he was at maximum speed. And that's obviously paid dividends there as the Flying V now has formed and everyone is out in, I guess, in chase mode trying to chase down the Allura cap in front of Nathan Neal. Yeah, Nathan Neal there at the top of the screen, just ahead of Surface Paradise, and I think that's um, Newport. Yeah, Ben Blakeney on the outside. So interesting. So the right-hand side on this race appeared mm. to be the ones that got out first, which is why the racing has been so exciting. You cannot predict anything. You know, it's been throwing out everything for us today. Yeah, you can't assume you've picked the good alley or necessarily the bad alley. We've seen it break so unevenly all day. Um, but the, the northern end seem, seeming to be the best of it for that one so far. You can see the North Burley kept there, Joshua Meyer. I think that might actually be um, Cooper Bristow from Christie's Beach. Yeah, Michael Booth just tucked in next to him with the fluoro cap from Sorrento. Justin McMullen from Redhead just in front of him here. So we've got Nathan Newell in front from Allure at the moment, all comfortable, looking strong, but not too much purpose from the chase pack at the moment. Everyone just happy to be thereabouts, and as soon as we turn this apex, a little bit more panic stations, a little bit more intent, and that power is going to be uh, thrown out. Yeah, our leader looking really cool and comfortable, but you can see there just at the back of that pack, the pace is on. That's where the danger zone is of potentially missing the cut here in this second round. So um, this is where you'll see that the paddles start to um, start to race. Michael Booth there in a nice little spot. Oh, look at that runner just from around the, the cans there. Ben Blakeney just trying to pull down in front of that one. Josh Murphy on the white and red ski there. Been paddling really strong for the Swansea Belmont Club. Russell Fox trying to hold on at the moment. And again, like we said, turning that last can, picking up the power, trying to pick up any sort of runners. And decisions are going to be a little bit more risky as we get through to the final stages of round two, heat number one. Yeah, Ben Blakeney there from the Newport Club was going a little bit wide you can see him now cutting back up to the north just making sure he's on target there for the finish flags so um that might be first at the top of the screen second here with newport so they look fairly safe there allura newport that might be redhead yeah so mcmullen on the outside right far left is still neil looking after it at the moment blakeney just coming through the middle that's going to be our top two at the moment Power now coming and trying to keep the back of the ski out of that whitewash and not fast enough there. Was it a little bit too risky? Can we hold on to it? Left leg over. Oh. Nearly some great skills there, but Nathan Neal going to take this one comfortably at the moment. Get back in your seat because the race is not over yet, Benny. No, he's done a fantastic recovery to um, to spin the ski and having it facing back into sea. We've got another ski paddler just losing touch with their ski but that's our first two across the line yeah, so josh this. murphy there from swansea belmont two redhead half moon bay on the inside there what's that five christie's beach looks to be across oh that's got to be eight there i'll call it <laughs> <laughs> that's our unofficial eight across in heat one of round two of the open mail single ski no major upsets michael booth um coming across now has booty missed out We'll see. There's still a lot of effort going in there. Mick Georgiaris from Wanda just paddling there in front of Jesse Colson from Surfers. We might have been... Maybe that was the top eight, but we'll see what happens. But that was an interesting race, that one. They got it clipped a couple of times on the way out. But just watching that pack from second through to probably 13, it would have been. Just happy enough to get around that apex, and then decisions were made. 
Yeah, and there weren't many waves on offer um, further out to sea, so they did get um, sort of, I suppose, into that wave zone, into that late, late takeoff zone. So we'll wait for those official results. But um, for now, down to you, Jenny, on the beach. Don't be fooled by the rocks that she's got. She's still Jenny without the microphone on. That's all right. You just need Courtney Hancock back sometimes, don't you? <laughs> but for now, great work, Allura. How are you feeling after that big race? Yeah, really good. The conditions are so fun out there, like I was just saying before. I just snuck out on the left-hand side, so... Yeah, I've got to be lucky on the way in as well, so no, it's good fun. <laughs> Nathan, there is nothing lucky about this at all. How are you feeling down there on the line? There's so many heats. Round one, you're into round two, you're into the next one as well. Quarterfinals beckon. So, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow. That's the end of the rounds today, so, yeah, looking forward to tomorrow. And what's the rest recovery plan? What are we going to do to make sure you get through to the semis? Um, well, I've actually got mixed double the Savo as well, so I've got a big Arvo the Savo, but... Have a big dinner tonight, carb load up, and yeah, we'll go again tomorrow. So. Highly recommend the Maruchador Surf Club if you need that. But tell me more about Allura. Have you got a big crew here at for, for Aussies? Yeah, we've got a lot of youngsters coming up, like in the 17s. So we'll have a good shot in the uh, mixed half one, which will be exciting. This will be our first time entering that event, so yeah, it'll be good. good. Fantastic. You heard it here first. Hot tip Allura in the uh, Taplin. So thanks so much for the chat. Go and get ready for that double. Looking forward to seeing you fly. Thanks for that. Cheers. Looking at the results here, um, we, were, we were talking about Michael Booth. He has just scraped through in eighth position. So um, did have a little bit of difficulty with that wave on the way in, but has done enough, um, we think, to survive to the quarterfinals. Yeah, interesting. So Nathan Neal there from Allure in one. Josh Murphy from Swansea Belmont two. Blake Neal looked really comfortable from Newport. So too McMullen. Josh Meyer have been doing it for a long time, getting it done for North Burley. Russell Fox from Half Moon Bay in six. Cooper Brist, though, we didn't say his name because it wasn't from Alex. Sorry, mate. Did well from Chrissy's Beach, getting it through. And again, Booth sneaking through on that one. So heat number three on the line, in the water, ready to go. Again, some big names in this, starting with Tom Norton on the far right. Yeah, you can see um, a little bit of deep water there for Tom. Um, so he's looking across, making sure that he's in, in line. Jared Campbell on screen at the moment next to James Johnson from Corumban and on the other side, Lachlan O'Grady from Bulleye. Wonder Watch, probably going to be the fastest starter here today. Green and Black Ski on the right-hand side. Fletcher Armstrong from Newport will be one to watch. Connor Peabody there in the middle from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. Hugh Clothier from North Bondi. Again, Jake Rees from Newport, second in on the left. And then we've got Jordan Ringrose from North Cottesloe up and away. But it's Jake Rees getting out with a bang next to him. Pete Mitchell from Pearly Heads Mowbray Park coming off his gold medal yesterday in the double ski. Pete Mitchell always fast, always out, but getting clipped on that right-hand side. On screen now is Fletcher Armstrong from Newport trying to get that nose out. Jeez, this is tough. Tom Norton next to him. Fletcher Armstrong, yeah, Tom Tom Norton, southern end of, of the screen, looking as though they're doing the best at the moment. Jared Campbell there, centre of screen, just popping over that one. So four paddlers look to be out the back. We've got Corumban, James Johnson, also in green water, just having a little look across to count the numbers to see where they're at. Yep, yeah, lead strongly at the moment. So Armstrong just out there at the moment. Top eight making their way through. Left-hand edge was where it's at. Just trying to find out... Whereabouts Jake Rees is because he was out really quick. We're just trying to find that big white ski for He might have got clipped a couple of times and still be trying to get out through that break. But, you know, amazing shots there from the top. Jimmy Johnson on screen from Corumban. Hair's a lot shorter than it used to be. Trig Island on screen. Brendan Sarson. And then we've got Bulleye, Lachlan O'Grady on that outside right. But Fletcher Armstrong comfortable getting us through at the moment. Pete Mitchell there on the right from Burley Heads Mowbray Park as well. I think it might have been our other Newport paddler, Jake Rees, who um, was at the other end of that start line and I think having a little bit of difficulty early on. So a fair bit of work to do there for Jake Rees, um, the, uh, the second Newport paddler that you can see just um, heading towards the back of that pack there. Back on screen now with Fletcher Armstrong from Newport. Here's our early leader in heat three. This is heading back now to Corumban. We've got James Johnson and um, the white cap there. Is that City of Perth? Uh, just try and pick up. North Cots, Jordan Ringrose is who it will be. So we're in there, one, two, and three, just tucked in behind. And we've got Connor Peabody there from Burley Heads Mowbray Park. And then Trig Islands at Brendan Sarson just tucked in. He's our top. What's that going to be? Five at the moment with one out in front. 
Yeah, I think there might even actually be a few more out in front. There might be three or four ski paddlers ahead of this pack. So um, that's why we can see the pace is on. They'll be counting numbers. They'll know exactly where they're sitting there. So that might be even four, five, six, and seventh. As we can see, um, a paddler to the top. Here, here's our lead pack here. So we're back on screen with Fletcher Armstrong, Tom, N Tom Norton. Um, I think was it one of our Burley competitors yeah, it was as well. Pete Mitchell just tucked in next to him. So Pete Mitchell, first season competing with Burley Heads Mowbray Park, still resides on the Central Coast. Uh, but yeah, it's just sometimes you need to have those extra teams in there to keep you involved. Uh, but he's been an absolute godsend this year. He's been taking a lot of the ski sessions with the young girls coming through. And you know, well, you know, once. You know, you've got someone like that helping lead the squad through. It's good to have him around. But yeah. look at this at the moment. Armstrong trying to make a right decision. Jared Campbell has decided. I'm not sure if he wanted that one or not, but um, he looks fairly safe at the moment. You're going to have to probably go. Yeah, he's backpedaling there. Wow, so oh. decisions. So we just saw Armstrong and Mitchell trying to hold off, trying to get away from these breaking waves. So he's going to be in a bit of trouble here. Back in the seat. One slew in there and off. That's the purple ski. Not too sure who that is. But Mitchell and Armstrong were the ones who waited patiently. They didn't want to risk it too much. Uh, then we've got Jimmy Johnson outside right with the grey ski. And Tommy Norton was the one that was comfortable and through. So he's already out of screen. Five on this wave is going to make it. Our top five, so four plus one is yeah, five. So is yeah, so that's our top to five. I think that might be Jared Campbell's ski coming across. He held it through that first one, but um, had the second one. And so patient there was Fletcher Armstrong. I think he let at least two or three waves go past. So really smart racing. Um, it is still only round two, so... Um, he was backing him, himself in, in terms of letting the back markers catch up a little bit and knowing that he still has that speed through that whitewater zone. So it was Tom Norton across the line first in that one. Fletcher Armstrong in two. James Johnson from Corumban in three. Is that King there? A uh, little, I saw Jake Reeves snuck through early, so he was in about sixth or seventh. There probably would have been a little bit of angst from him at the start because it looks like he got checked a few times through there, but he wasn't able to get to that lead pack but you've got to stay with it but again just talk about being patient and having poise and that's what we saw from Mitchell and Armstrong coming in so look at this Armstrong at the back of the black ski just holding off but here we go sometimes the decisions are made for you right? Yeah Jared Campbell knew he didn't want to take that first one um, probably should have just kept paddling forward but what do you do in that situation it is really a no a no win situation did well to actually hold on to the ski it's actually this second wave where he ends up losing contact with the ski he just didn't get his feet back into the footwells um, and loses contact so um, such a disappointing end for Jared Campbell from Alexandra Headlands had done all of that early work and, and um, you can see those paddlers there just coming through on that smaller wave. Oh, so unforgiving, but we talk about you know, poise and making good decisions, and that happens with years and years of racing, and that's what Tom Norton's done. Taking that one out for the heat number three, round two, Fletcher Armstrong from Newport in two, Jimmy Johnson from Corumban in three, Brendan Sarson from Trigger Island was comfortable, looked strong in four, Mitchell from Burley Heads in five, Jake Rees got through in six, so he's through to the next round, Zach Keaton from Burley Heads in seven, and Kevin Morrison from Northcliff, top eight, moving on to the next round which is going to be the quarterfinals. Yeah, so um, that little bit of difficulty for some of our paddlers um, played into the hands of Jack Reese, who didn't have a great start but um, it gave him that, that chance to, to catch up and nab that sixth spot and um, as you mentioned there, coach Kevin Morrison from Northcliff, he's still alive and will progress through to the quarters. We're just waiting for our next race to hit the water. And, and I was just saying to you off air briefly before, when Nathan Neal was on screen, he didn't have your typical ski paddler's build. He was big upper body. He was he was slight. He was not as big as some of these boys. So like just talking about Jake Reese, he's one of the biggest human beings you'll see on the beach. But yeah, I guess it's it's all about that leg drive, the power and being able to keep that motor going the whole way around. Yeah, and I guess that power to weight to weight ratio comes into play. Um, you know we do sort of see, I guess, that typical um, broader, bigger shoulders for our ski paddlers. But um, a lot of these athletes, too, um, are fantastic swimmers and board paddlers. So um, not really a particular um, body shape that will come out on top. But um, we'll wait and see. We can see there that orange cap of, um, of Point Leo on the left-hand side of the screen right through to Bernie from Tassie at the other end of this start list.
Uh, so two in on the inside. So we've got, like you said, Point Leo on the left there. Jai Duffy from Northcliffe. Next to him, the cap of Orewa. So James Scott making it the trip across the ditch. So many Kiwi competitors. Love seeing you all. If you are actually watching from the land of Aotearoa, uh, we say kia ora to you. And it's good to have you as part of our Surf Life Saving Whanau. So, yeah, it's really nice to have them all here. Yeah, it is great to see them. Um, I saw Matt Sutz down on the beach as well. He um, spent a long time over on the Sunshine Coast training when I was here, now doing great things in that coaching space in New Zealand. We do share a lot of our, um, our knowledge with our friends and um, obviously a lot of them come over and, and become training partners and, and vice versa. Or I'm not too sure how many of us brave the cold of New Zealand, but we love having them come and join our, join our squads here. Yeah, so we're going to be back with some more races shortly, but we have a couple of words from our sponsors. You'll find the sun shines from above and from within, making laughs linger, moments longer, hearts beat fast, and time moves slow. Come find your sunshine moment, for real. Join the conversation, guys. Hashtag Aussies2024. If you want to see my stupid post, jump on there, check those out. Daily condition reports are on there daily. And again, this couldn't happen without the support of Sunshine Coast. The Sunshine Coast Council, Sunshine Coast, Tourism Queensland. Uh, it is a beautiful place and you're lucky enough to live here, Christy. I am, yes. Um, I sometimes feel a bit weird telling people that I've actually never lived anywhere else other than the suburb of Alexandra Headlands since the age of three. I really can't remember my life before living here. I've travelled the world, travelled to lots of places, but um, only ever lived in the one suburb. And if it's going to be one, I feel like I'm pretty lucky to call it Alexandra Headlands. And then when people ask if you're local, you, you are as local as, as can be. Pretty much, yes. So, um beautiful coast. We're real, really, really proud of what we have here on the sunny coast. Obviously very proud to be hosting the Aussies and welcoming all the visitors from across the country and, um, and our international visitors as well. Hopefully everyone will stay on for a little bit of a holiday. Um, we obviously love visiting the beaches, but there's so much else to see in and around the sunny coast. Um, so hopefully everyone stays on for a few more days and um, really gets to have a look around and enjoy themselves. Yeah, Tourism and Events Queensland, major sponsor, ensuring that everyone here is enjoying their time. I'll be ducking up to Harvey Bay next Tuesday. Never been there before. Beautiful part of the world. Yes, another close close neighbour, only a few hours up the road. So um, lots of beautiful waterways. This is just a shot here of the southern end of the sunny coast, Caloundra, and out to the Glasshouse Mountains that you can see there in the background. What, yeah, well, one thing I'm a little bit upset about, no games of golf while I'm up here because there's a lot of good golf courses up here and unfortunately mm. the schedule doesn't allow it. No, you do probably need a good half a day for that, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> we, would, we would notice if you went missing for that long. And when I say schedule, I'm referring to my wife. <laughs> so Heat 5 underway very, very shortly. So Point Leo, Miles, Irwin, Jai Duffy next to him. Ben Walker from North Bondi, Jaden Erskine from Currumbin. Kai Onling from Coogeon Headland. These guys love the swell, they love the chop, they love the wind. And uh, you look for Kai to be there about to end. Mitch Stitt from Surface Paradise. Lockie Tame back in there again. That was a little bit too easy, his last one. Can he replicate that again? Yeah, we've got Angus um, Mackay from Karawa. Sam Cunnings from Terrigal. Max Brooks, one to watch from Newport. Oscar Jones from Manly. Connor Levings from Allura. And we've got Tugan. Alex and Bernie, of course, as I mentioned, you can see there the competitor there from um, Point Leo just getting through that deeper water. The starter is walking them out onto that second bank where um, it's a little bit more of an even, uh, even starting line. Yes, the tide filling up there at the moment, so the boys cruising out there. It was quite interesting. It's not too often the guys get to do a, a practice start getting out to the start line. So the last hit before, a few of the boys are just getting that one last confidence boost and getting the butt in the seat nice and quick, getting sure and get that left hand up nice and quick for that first stroke because if you're missing that first one or two, there could be no space for you to get out. There's no space to get out. I get the paddles in the water. If the paddles aren't in the water, you ain't moving You're not anywhere. moving, no. And you might have a little bit of room for error maybe in our opening rounds, but it's starting to get a little bit more to the serious end of qualifications. Round two through to quarters, 
semis and finals. When we talk about serious, Oscar Jones from Manly flying through the season and he's just making his way out through that right-hand side. Max Brooks from Newport loves the big surf too, but Corumban on the screen. Jaden Erskine looking strong, but Oscar Jones leading us out on the green ski or aqua turquoise. I'm not, I'm not a favorite with all the different colors, but Corumban about to roll. Jeez, we haven't seen too many of those. Great skills, right-hand grab up and away. Sunshine just behind surfers, I should say. Yeah, absolutely no option on screen there for our paddler from Corumban. Top of the screen now, the ocean's gone a little bit flat, as it has for um, Point, Point Leo sneaking out there on the left-hand side of the screen. So that's probably where our leaders are coming from. Point Leo, Miles Irwin, can't see him at the moment. There's Dry Duffy also, who was on that left-hand side of screen. So feel sorry for these guys still battling in that break that looks like it not sure if it's manly or if it's allura they'll both side by side on the start so um what kind of leadings there i think from allura but one person we don't feel sorry at the moment just tucked in behind burly heads at the start which is pete mitchell is the white cap with the red stripe and the blue either side which is james scott from orewa the country of new zealand will be pumped up he's holding on to that top eight spot there at the moment getting through to the next round but Lockie tame leading us out again comfortably yeah, Lockie always seems to find a way to the front no matter where he's positioned on the start line. So Lockie is setting the pace in this heat number five. Still seems to be um, a fairly high rating at the moment. I'd say they won't really probably turn things off until they can turn that apex um, and head for home. But um, Lockie's certainly a comfortable leader there. The pack pretty tightly condensed after that though. Yeah, there is it is going to say condensation because that's completely wrong. But condensed it is Miles Irwin from Point Leo just trying to get around. Outside is probably not where you want to be. But James Scott from Arewa looking strong at the moment, but not as strong as Lockie Tame out in the middle. A bit of a move coming on the inside now from Oscar Jones from Manly. He'd be having nothing less than a finals berth top 10 as his goal. Yeah, well, he's in the right position to um, to be getting that result there. You can see him making quite a big move through the field there, just deciding to um, go back out and around the outside. I think he was on the inside originally, but he's had a bit of a pause and decided he likes the look of the outside. So he's come almost right up alongside Lockie Tame. Light and shade, you, you don't see it as strong and the balls are in the surf race but the light and shade power on power off and again as we see a bit more power on the outside there from kai only from cushion headlands tame just navigating just trying to see where the rudder's taking him feeling the the ebbs and flows of the ocean comfortable at the moment tucked in behind james scott from Orewa. yeah and they would have watched um that earlier heat and seen the decisions made to pull off some of those waves so um Hopefully we won't see the same size set come through. We're on screen now with Manly and also Burley Heads, Lockie Tame and Oscar Jones almost coming together on this wave. But that looks like a reasonably sized one, so they're not wanting to let that one go. Oscar Jones getting it done at the moment. Just the double up, triple up from behind, trying to make decisions here. Oscar Jones, what is going to happen here? Just happy to sit in, tuck behind it and chase that whitewash to get out in front. Top eight is the number. Slew on the outside right there. Kai only unlucky there. Max Brooks from Newport. But walk in the park here. Yeah, it looks like our top five will come across fairly comfortably. That's Oscar Jones from Manly. He'll take out position number one in this heat. Lockie Tame there in second. Got Max Brooks from Newport. A little bit of a late slew on the line there, but um, that won't cause them too much trouble. Miles Irwin also from Point Leo, and that's the dash across the line there, which will be our eighth spot. Yeah, James Scott from Arewa lives to fight another round. But just yeah, It's just interesting to see, seeing that the levels of ski expertise, especially the, from the two leaders, Oscar Jones and Lockie Tame there at the front, just so relaxed through the shoulders, hands still just below their eyes, rotating, solid heel drive, getting the hips moving from left to right. That's what you want to see. They look so comfortable, almost um, as one with their skis. You really want to be able to um, not be worried about your balance and your coordination when you're in surf like this. You just want to be able to focus on your paddling and your decision making. Um, you can see the paddler there from Chugan, probably just realizing they have not qualified through along with our competitor there from Bernie. So. We um, will wait for those official results, but um, Jen, who have you got for us? 
down here on the beach with Miles. We saw the bright orange cap. We wanted to have a chat. Welcome. Tell us where you're from. I'm um, from Point Leo down in Victoria on the Moines Peninsula. Um, it's only a few of us, but we're giving us the uh, best crack. Yeah. We have had the chat earlier today about what your favourite club cap is. This would have to be in the top five from the colour alone. You can pick you from anywhere. Yeah, it definitely stands out. You get a few comments about it. <laughs> now tell us about that race. A pretty hot field, but you threw comfortably. That's got to be a great feeling on the Thursday of Aussies. Yeah, yeah. Um, had a bit of bad luck yesterday in the double, so good to uh, get through a couple of rounds today. <laughs> yeah. Have you got a few more in you across the week? I think I do, yeah. Yeah, we'll be right. <laughs> yeah, we like the confidence from Point Leo. Thank you so much for a chat. Go and get tagged in. We'll see you in the next round. Uh, did you know that Miles actually took that cap from Water Safety Gym? <laughs> I do love that cap. It's, um, it's a commentator's dream, really, isn't it, when we're trying to pick the different stripes or the different quarters and the different colours, but no mistaking the Point Leo cap there. Um, as we're getting these official results filter through from heat number five, Oscar Jones from Manly, Lockie Tame from Burley Heads, Jaden Erskine, er Erskine from Corumban, Max Brooks from Newport, James Scott from Orira, Miles Irwin, Point Leo, Ben Walker from North Bondi, and Mitchell Stitt taking that last qualifying position from Surface Paradise. It must have been a really solid finish for Ben Walker. Didn't see him sort of towards the middle of that pack, but then again, it is coming down to good decisions when we're coming through the swell. Now, looking at this, does it feel like the wind has picked up somewhat? Yeah, you can see our banners there along the um, the railing there. So, uh, I don't know. I think like the, the wind feels like it has been up for most of the day. Um, so many skis on the sand. It's a little bit of a maze making your way down to the start line as the competitors are trying to find a spot to, um, to put their skis, whether they've finished their heats or they're just getting ready for their next one. I think we've still got a few more rounds of the open men's round two and um, we got a shot a little bit earlier of that that wider shot it might be some of the under 17 girls lining up as well yeah most definitely i saw my daughter lucy's ski on the back end there so good luck to you lose that's actually heat number eight they've got on the line so they're moving through those in quick succession at the moment and this is something that is synonymous with surf life saving Repairs on the go, so, and that doesn't look, doesn't look like a duct tape fix at all. No, I know. And also looking to um, to adjust, I think, adjust the um, foot pedals in that ski. Um, so that might even be in preparation for our mixed, mixed double step. coming up a little bit later on. So um, excited to see that race and preparations underway. Some of the skis take a little bit longer to adjust than others. So um, just making sure that leg length um, is correct so you've got a really great handle on the pedals don't want to be able to um, not reach and and steer your way around the course uh, one thing if I give can give a bit of feedback being way too gentle get the fist out because it needs to be whacked hard because there's salt and sand jammed in there in order to get that <laughs> leg length right so mixed level skis coming up shortly that is Gary G on screen at the moment from the Cool and Gatter Club helping out does he know what he's doing yes he's all over <laughs> it Gary G uh, Masters competitor for Cool and Gatter. Yeah, as we said, the um, the mixed double ski going to be a highlight a little bit later on, but um, still plenty of ski races to get through before we will um, see the clubs line up for the mixed double. Support dog on the beach because that's the only way there'd be one allowed on there. So good to see uh, the support dog doing yeah, its thing. Beautiful looking puppy. Here's a shot back to um, the northern end of the beach. That is the women's arena. So that might be our under-17 females just getting ready to negotiate their ski rounds. Yeah, and looking through the results here already, there's a, a lot of races with a, a lot of did not finish in there at the moment. So tough, tough conditions. But again, this is Aussies. It is the best of the best. And then uh, the girls will be... Uh, you know, excited to be out in these conditions because more than likely a few of them would have trained in conditions consistently like this at their local beach. Yeah, absolutely. They are prepped and ready to go. Um, I know a lot of the Sunny Coast clubs have um, come here to Maroochydore in the last sort of few weeks to a month just to get used to the beach and the different banks and rips that Maroochydore has on offer. Um, obviously, some of our um, further away clubs haven't had that luxury, but I'd say most competitors will have been trying to find that more open beach um, practice because that's what we have on offer here at Maroochydore. We're not really protected by a headland or a bay so um, plenty of practice on those open stretches of beaches to prep for what we know we are going to find in terms of conditions at Maroochydore. 
conditions is what it's all about. It looks like more rain, wind, it was hot, it was cold, it was windy, it was no good, but we're in the ivory tower at the moment. Loving bringing you this action. Let us know where you're watching from because we are bringing you all the action today. Tomorrow is Friday? It is. It is. Yeah. Today is Thursday. <laughs> We've been here all week already. We're having fun and I'm excited. Have you got any highlights or races you're looking forward to over the next few days? Oh, probably more towards... Um the end of my career I definitely dabbled more in the ski races so the open women's ski final is one I'm very very excited to watch uh, I was talking to Geordie Mercer outside a little bit earlier today and um, she's got herself through to the final of the open ski and and, and, and the, the board, board race. and the board race so um, she's very very excited and prepped for that and as we know getting through to a final at Aussies if you've banked yourself a spot in that final you've got as good a chance as anyone so so I'm really looking forward to, to watching that and um, also a few more of the beach events. Um, I believe we're going to get a bit of a glimpse of those later on this afternoon. Yeah, I'll be down there. I can't wait. Jen, what's been your highlights so far? Oh, Sophie's choice there. Those uh, double skis yesterday afternoon were fantastic, but I think just seeing a, a lot of the clubs celebrating each night, sharing the results, and, you know, it might be, oh, little Jed made a semi-final or Harold made it to the second round of the ski. I love seeing the clubs celebrate those little wins because, you know, there's incredible stories under under every tent on the beach. Well, yeah, Jen, uh, we just got a phone call. The cafe on the street wants its <laughs> umbrella back. What is that? <laughs> This is my uh, my uh, best umbrella. If you ever need to find me on the beach, anyone, if you want to have a chat, if you want to do an interview, just look for the rainbow and uh, here I am. That is insane. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to the mixed open taplin. That's always exciting because you've got your big super clubs that can you know you know put in multiple you know men's taplins, female taplins, but to have your best three male and females from these massive squads in. You know, there's some arrogance with it. There's, you know, you've got the small clubs that can still get in there. I just love watching that because it could be anyone. Absolutely. That was one of the highlights of the Queensland State Championships and uh, a little bit different uh, there as well. We have obviously three of three of each there, but you could choose whether or not you sent your uh, guy or your girl first. And that is the same rule that's being adopted for Aussie. So I think one of my uh, favourite moments of that race from the Queensland Championships was uh, Naomi Scott lining up against Benny Carberry in the swim. And it came down to uh, a bit of a sprint finish. Zach Morris from Northcliffe just took the win, uh, out sprinting a few of the ladies up the beach. So that's why we want to do it. It's such a tight finish and expecting nothing less at the Australian Championships. Speaking of sprinting up the beach, Jen, I believe you're going to be <laughs> heading to Malulaba. Maybe not sprinting there, but you're, no, I'm on the, you're beach. on the beach. I love the beach. I might even put my, my play clothes on, so I'll be on the beach checking out the fastest runners in the nation on their Jen gets the air conditioned comfort of the booth, which is where we are today. Who will we yeah. be? What? Who are we watching out for at the beach? Who's your pick? Well, I think the uh, big news is around Chloe Mannock's power from Northcliffe. She's had incredible results on the sand, but recently took out the store gift over Easter. So very excited to see what she can put together. But the excitement is building. I know a lot of people have been asking on the stream, when are you going down to the beach sprints? I promise we will be there uh, this afternoon. And the flags later in the, uh, later in the event as well. There's just so much action up and down the beach here. We're trying to get to as many events as possible. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to the, uh, the fastest men and women on sand tonight. Yeah, full finals package. Jen tonight under lights, hopefully with no rain at Malulaba. And there's something about Malulaba just on the concourse there. Great job to the council. The grass area, the tents are low, so everyone can see from the top. And then just the, I guess all the uh, cheering. Yeah, it's a nice. fantastic atmosphere. Um, not only being under lights, but just with that sort of a bit more natural amphitheatre that Malulaba Beach can create. It's a real spectator's. Well, spectacle really. So, um, encourage every, anyone who's local to come down to Malula Bar a little bit later on this afternoon to check out the beach. Otherwise, the live stream will be still up and running. Yeah, and another good thing about it, there is no sunset. There's no chance of my sunglass mark <laughs> getting any worse. But yeah, exciting times. Double skis coming up shortly. Looking forward to that. We're going to have a few heats of that. I just probably just want to go talk about this morning. We saw the iron semi finals for the ladies going through. A couple of uh, big, big notable omissions, uh, a lot of smiles on face. We saw the Lizzie Warborn lost mm -hmm. the ski early, um, and, but you know just went around with a smile on her face. But she'll be uh, you know coming back in all the teams events. But this is the ski event at the moment. Looks like it's under 17s at the moment. Right hand side actually is my daughter Lucy Marshall. So I'll find her name here. <laughs> You'll be able to list. find her heat. So but, this um... is heat number eight at the moment on screen. 
and again, decisions, strength, power. It's going to be ones who are going to be patient but brave. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good combination. You've got to be, you've got to know when to when to wait, and then know when to go. We can see that competitor at top of the screen. You can see that the paddle rating picking up, and that's when they've made that decision. They've seen that gap, and they know it's now or never. I've got to go for it. Yeah, and all about the lines there. So in this water area, in the pink right hand side, was not the place you wanted to be because that's where we're getting a little bit more of the waves closing out. Left hand side is where it is, and. Obviously, same again. We've got a couple out the back already. A few skis upside down. The top eight will make their way through. Be patient, girls. Yeah, and um, at the moment, you know, using their balance really well, it's um, it's very, very difficult to, once you pop up and over these white washes and you're in that really turbulent and aerated water, it can be very, very difficult to keep your balance with the paddle going in and out of the water. We see one of our competitors just choosing to roll, which is a really smart decision um, when the white water gets over a couple of foot um, it's it's very risky to, to sort of pop up and over it so a roll in these early rounds is a great decision yeah on screen at the moment Alexis Jane from Janjuk looking really strong that's a beautiful stroke through there but way out in front at the moment no surprises to see Katie Breeze from the club of Swansea Belmont good in all conditions Zoe Pope on screen there from Terrigal and the girls are just working hard just trying to be patient keep their butt in the seat to ensure that they've got every opportunity to get out past the break. But bravery, strength, power is going to be required to be at the premium there. It looks like we might have one ski upside down at the moment. At the moment, at top eight, it looks like we had three or four out through the break. And it looks like it just opened up a little bit there for Katie Reed from Noosa Heads just on the inside left, trying to pick that right up on the blue ski. Go for it because you are going to be out there at the moment. But lead paddler at the moment, Katie Reese. Yeah, she's done a fantastic job. We were obviously watching some of our competitors trying to still negotiate that break. That break here are our lead two um, races from Heat 8. I think one of our competitors who had um, fallen off the ski, still in contact with the ski, but has lost her paddle. So that's the difficulty there. You can't do too much without your paddle. Um, so she's probably just deciding what she's going to do. Now, what are we going to do here? So Katie Reese, solid lead at the moment. These girls could take as much time as they want, but you don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. We saw that in the men's arena. A few of the guys just getting that little bit too far. Wait for the bigger ones to come through and then chase them from behind. Yeah, some, some big waves still building. So I'm hoping that Caitlin has seen that. She has now. Legs just go over. Um, I don't think she's too far in. She's decided to keep that paddle ticking along. I'm not too sure. Um, I'm, I'm assuming coming from Swansea, her surf skills are going to be pretty good. Pristine. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine she'll be able to take on one of these waves. She's picked a great little size there. So our lead two have, um, have seen the wave they want and they are going for it. And that one might even um, almost catch up to the wave in front. And um, a beautiful size wave. Really smart racing there. Caitlin uh, Rees from Swansea Belmont on screen there on the rainbow ski. That's a beautiful and easy ski to pick. Um, amazing skills on display there from the Swansea Belmont paddler. Yep, so yeah, Katie Rees way too strong. Actually competed in the uh, the weekend of paddling over in Perth last year because someone pulled out. Dad's like, oh, why don't you just come across and we'll have some fun. Uh, was second in the under-19 age group. So absolute legend. Tara Collier on screen, bottom and there. So she'll be training with Nathan Neal and all the boys from Allura. So we want good decisions there. Tucked in behind, it looks like it's going to be Caitlin Breed at the cap of Noosa Heads. And tucked in behind, that is Lucy Marshall from Avoca. Go loose. Yes, is that a Maruchidor cap as well there, Grace um, McManus? Oh, sorry, I saw that as a noose one. You know that cap better than I do, being a <laughs> local girl. So look at that. And that's a little wry smile on the face. That's what you want to see because these girls will be nervous trying to get in and out. Tara Collier making her way through Allura. What a paddle. Good on you, young lady. She's very happy with that. And, um, yeah, she's done a fantastic job. Negotiated the massive surf here at Maruchidor. We mentioned earlier some of our open competitors um, are finding this tough. So our under-17 females haven't been on these this craft for too long at all. Just deciding at the back there, will I take that? Will I let it go? Yeah, I think this one's going to be made for Lucy coming in there. So this is kind of one of those ones where the girls will get to training. They'll be like, no, no, we're going to go out in the surf. And they're like, well, can we just go on the lake and just get some efforts in? But this is why it's so important to keep the skills up. 
And here we go, Avoca trying to hold on to that one, trying to get out through the break, but it might be fourth or fifth place. Little Slew there holding on to the scoop because that is important. And then the cat coming in from behind. A lot of carnage, a lot of in and out of the seat. There's going to be some bruised hips, some bruised shins. Yeah, that's the cap of um, Papa Moa, Jessica Pilbro there. It's also, it's a navy and yellow corded cap. So it looks a little bit similar to some of our other caps that you've seen, but um, that's one of our New Zealand competitors. Yeah, chee, get into it. Look at it go. Papa Moa from New Zealand getting through. Hold on, get those feet in the stirrups to hold on. Uh, still in control. Lovely work there from the ladies, so we're not too sure how many is across the line. And that was the North Burley competitor before, it was Rebecca Timmerman Curvin, which has got all the syllables in it, or, KT, or RTK for short. Yes, she's one of, the, one of the longest names on the program, so she's come across there in fourth place. That might be a City of Perth cap as well, or maybe the Noosa Heads, um, yeah, Kate, Caitlin but, Reed. Yeah, let's call that one there. So there's a Caitlin Reed and a Caitlin Reed. Don't be confused by what we're saying. Their last one across the line, that's probably going to be seventh or eighth. But even just to get the skis out and around just shows the uh, strength and the courage of these young ladies in the under-17s uh, and the fact that all these skis came up on all the trailers and got used. Is it better? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, the smiles on the faces there that they're through to another round, but just also smiles that they've... Um, got out and around the course with as we've said a lot of um, DNFs or did not finish coming through in all age and divisions over the weekend so um, looking at live heats as these uh, results are being updated we had Jan Jux, Wansi, Allura, North Burley, Lucy Marshall from Evoke coming in fifth, Caitlin Reed from Noosa in sixth, Jessica uh, Pilbro from Papamoa in seventh and that was Kendra Henderson who we saw from Talabadra taking out that eighth position. Great results from our under-17 female ski paddlers. Um, back down to you, Jen. Oh, hello. I've made a few new friends from Jan Jack down here. You threw in the under-17 ski. How are we feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah, it was good fun. <laughs> now, Alexis, you were saying there's actually a few here from Jan Jack, maybe seven ladies in your age group? Yeah, there's seven girls down here, and there's a few other boys up in the other age groups. <laughs> now, tell me more about the conditions down there. We're in a different arena to what we've been seeing. Any tips for the ladies about to head out? I think you've just got to race smart, you know. If you see a massive wave, just kind of play to your strengths, do what you can and just time what you can as well, yeah. And are you enjoying your time on the Sunshine Coast? Are you having fun at Aussies? Yeah, 100%. The water's much warmer here. And even with the rainy conditions, it's still much more warmer than what we get in Vic. We're normally snuggled up in about 15 layers, so it's quite nice. Well, it's wonderful to have you here. I can see the support crew off to the side as well. Who do we need to say thanks and hello to? Oh, well, obviously, thanks to my parents for getting me up here. And just thanks to Juck in general. They've brought us all this way. And what's the best thing about being in Jan Juck? Oh, I think it's just the community. You know, we've got a great coach. And we've got a great group of girls around us. I'll tell you what, big waves down the camera here to Jan Jack. Your girl is through to the next round. Can't wait to see you. Hopefully some finals on the horizon. Fingers crossed. The Jack. Is that what they're calling it now? The Jack. Oh, I'll stick with that. She's from there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. They've always been a very, very strong club from Victoria. We're just um, trying to work out what we have on screen here for you at the moment. I think we've gone back down to the open mail arena. We're up to the round two um, open mail arena. Heat seven. So, yeah, a few more sheep stations on the line here. So, the boys have had a couple little runs through, comfortable, but round two, heat seven is where we're at. Exciting times. Again, a little bit of effort, but you've just got to be in that top eight. Can Patrick Ely get his 100th? interview for the day. <laughs> I did notice that he was in this heat. Yeah, it's, it's very, very hard to miss that very bright green cap of Sorrento from Western Australia. We've got Coop, Cooper uh, Bessel on the left-hand side of the screen there from Dickey Beach. We've got some Newport caps in the mix there. In the out, nice and clean at the moment there. So through the middle, we've got a bit of, what have we got? Point Leo's back in there at the moment. Corey Taylor from Northcliffe and Reuben Crichton from Northcliffe. Not quite sure. One of those boys had a fantastic start. The middle of the field seemed to be doing the best of it at the moment. One of our Newport... Mitch Trim. Uh, Mitch Trim, of course. Yes, we would expect him to be out very, very fast. He's got a huge amount of speed and um, he'll be happy to bust his way through those breakers. We can see that bright orange cap there of Point Leo. Uh, we've got to know that cap well in these ski races. 
Yeah, it's Lockie Robertson there. But what have we got about top four at the moment? Two packs of four. Sorry, pack of one at the moment there. Looks like we've got Fergus Morgan there from Early Heads Mowbray Park chasing through at the moment. But Mitchell Trims just looks like he's doing a, um, a technique duel at the moment. Well, he did his work at the start, Mitch Trims. So um, he can now dictate the pace of this race. I'd say that he'd be still putting in a fairly solid effort. You can see Marty Kenny there from Alex still surviving through the rounds. He's been racing since Monday in the Masters. So amazing job there, Marty Kenny. And just tucked in front of him is another one that's been racing since Monday and been racing for a long, long time from Coogin Headley and Scotty McCartney. Oh, Scotty, yes. So um, they're well and truly warmed up. So what have we got just around that first can now? We've got about eight on screen at the moment, but Mitchell Trim looking comfortable and strong. So what have we got? Corey Taylor there just tucked in and two at the moment for Northcliffe. Look at that. Big, strong, loping strokes moving all the water. Six on screen at the moment. Top eight are making their way through. But again, as we saw before, as soon as we ran in that last checkered blue and white can, it is going to be trying to pick up any sort of runner. What way is the ocean taking us? Because it's just all about letting the ocean taking us back to shore as quick as possible in whatever direction it may be. Yeah, Mitch Trim in front there. Corey Taylor doing a fair bit of work. I'd say that they'll be wanting to give themselves a little bit of buffer so that they've got that decision-making time when they come into this wave zone. Nice waves on offer there from Kujin and City of Perth also pulling down a nice wave. Yeah, Kent Jenkinson up in the big bright lights at the moment. You can just see the difference in the size of the frames too, but like you said, it's all about technique and power to weight, weight ratio. Top five on that right hand side, a bit of work to do from the guys at the back. Who is going to be making the move? Nathan Drummond from Seacliff still got a bit of work to do but not much there for the man with the biggest smile and surf life saving. He does, doesn't he? Mitchell Trim is having a really good look around, making sure that he's making the right decision on the wave. He's going to go down. Running off the back of that, I'm not quite sure if that will um, turn into the wave in front. I think, it, I think it won't, but waves coming now for the back markers. Marty Kenny is looking like he's going to take that one. Mitch Trim has no option but to take this white water. I think he's fairly comfortable, though, as he paddles out in front. Marty at the top of the screen has negotiated that one, too. He'll have to angle back, though, to get inside these finish flags. You can see him there just cutting across the back of the screen. Mitchell Trim across there comfortably, I think, as well as our Burley Heads. Corey Taylor from Northcliffe, probably our third one across the line. This might be fourth and fifth. Yeah, Scotty McCartney trying to make his way around, but it's, it's, it's that Nathan Drummond from Seacliff there just tucked in on the right. Sixth, seventh, and maybe this is eight on this wave now. So yeah. going for the eight qualifying spot. Oh, maybe the red ski of Northcliff, but we will leave that to the official judges. Yeah, that was really, really tight. There's Saxon Coast from Burley Heads thereabouts as well. But look at the big smile on Marty Kenny's face. Having an absolute ball out there. Grab that ski, give him a hand, something. <laughs> no, he's all right. We used to um, say, if you can't paddle it, you've got to carry it. Man on screen for the 12th time today. Patrick yeah. Ely, it looks like he's not as happy as he was before, but even just to get through, what are we at? Round two, all the effort there. We'll just see that who that top eight is going to be because there was a lot of angst, a bit more, I guess, purchase from the guys trying to get through that little gutter to get through to that top eight. Yeah, we'll wait for those official results to come through, but possibly um, not enough for Patrick from Sorrento. Is through the final of the board, though, so we'll get to see him back on our screens, which we love. Um, but certainly safe through Mitch Trim from Newport, um, Fergus Morgan from Burley Heads, and Corey Taylor from Northcliffe. They were our clear three in that Heat 7. Um, Jen, down to you on the beach. I am down on the beach. I found Mitch Trim just uh, couldn't even blow out a candle right now after that one. How are you doing? Yeah, it's um, really tricky out there. Um, your heart's in the mouth the entire way going around. And, you know, the, the hardest part is you think everyone thinks going out, but it's even harder trying to pick a nice one in because you can come unstuck. So I'm um, just happy to keep knocking through these rounds and, and just think about the next one. Well, thinking about the next one, it nearly feels like we're getting close to a Newport Club champs. There's so many of you here and you just keep on progressing. There are a few ski paddlers um, within Newport, but, you know, we just try and just um, 
really get a really nice culture going and, and, and get paddlers to enjoy the sport for what it is, um, you know, week in, week out, because it's a big summer and, and hopefully we can get results off the back of it. But anyone's race out there and it's been a bit potluck. It's been a massive summer, a massive winter as well, I feel as though you've all been racing for such a long time, but the, what, the results we're seeing right now, this was built months and months ago. Oh, totally. Months and years ago, you know. Like, I've been doing this sport for, in an open ski paddler for, you know, 10, 12, 13 years. So it's just continuing trying to improve and, you know, some years doesn't go your way and, and hopefully some, some they do, but we just keep turning up. Well, keep on turning up at Maroochydore. The uh, surf lottery is running at the moment. Stoked to see you in the next round. Big waves down the Cambridge to Newport. We'll see you in the next round. Thanks. Jen, quick question for you. Oh, wait, uh, Harold's got a question. No, no, Sorry, no, no, Harold. Tr Trimmy can go away. It's for you. So Trimmy can, Trimmy can go away. The question's for you. Oh, it's for me. There you go. You're off the hook. <laughs> oh, deep burn. <laughs> What do we well, got, Harold? Well, my, my question's actually going to be about recovery. So a lot of these guys that have just raced in the Opens have now got to go onto that mixed double ski. What's the feeling like down there? Who's fresh? What, what's happening with the teams? Honestly, it's just a big feeling of excitement down here. We just came back through the arena. Everyone is setting up the skis. They're adjusting the foot length. They're going, oh, no, you're in the front. No, 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 I was in the front last time. I, I'm in the back now. So a lot of negotiating down here on the line. It's generally just excitement. The beach is absolutely packed down here. They're marshalling centrally. They're sending paddlers absolutely everywhere. The weather's not great, but honestly, this is the place to be right now on Maroochydaw Beach. Thanks, Jen. Love your work, and apologies to Mitch. I actually wanted you to recover and enjoy your paddling. So, <laughs> Yes, I wonder if we will see Mitch line up in one of the mixed double. I believe that's what we've got coming up, and I was having a little bit of a look through the teams um, for Heat 1 of the Open Mixed Double Ski. We have got, of course, a few of the Newport teams. We've got Fletcher Armstrong and Piper Harrison. Oh. That's going to be a pretty amazing team. Also another team there from Newport, Jake Rees and Jasmine Locke. Um, and one also I think I'm going to have my eye on, the team from Sorrento, um, Michael Booth and the Olympian Jamie Roberts. Oh, get out of here. Is that a team? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be exciting. It's going to be on. So there's going to be a few rounds. Like even just, uh, you've got an old boys team. So that last team that's in there, so Mick Georgiaris and Chelsea Sutton. So Chelsea Sutton's in the Youth Australian um, K1 marathon team. So Ken Padalaski, surf skills still building because she's an under 19, but having someone as like Mick Georgiaris at the front who's done it over and over again, you know, this could be anyone's races. So exciting. Yeah, you can get away with, um, you know, maybe still building in your skills capacity because it's going to be just about timing with the paddler who's in front and throwing some of those um, some of that strength in so um, Jen have you got any of our mixed double teams down there with you yet? Is it Southport? I do I've got Southport South Australia not to be confused with the fried eggs now Sadie you're just saying you're excited for this double ski you're ready yeah I'm frothing well I don't know I think we'll do okay <laughs> we did a ride at States but it wasn't it was there was no way to say so it was actually flat um, so this will be a test of our competence but we'll be fine now tell me about this big guy who have you got with you I've got Leo Oliver from Southport um, he's pretty good he's good on the ski he's a bit of a kayaker um, but yeah he's just an all-round frother I must say so that's all I've got to really say about Leo he's a good guy good bloke Five stars would recommend. Now, tell us, it's been a big few days already. We're lining up for the double ski. The nerves are high. How do you rate your chances? Oh, it's anyone's game at the moment. Like, you could have a cracker start and just get caught on a wave on the way in, or you could have a terrible start and catch a great wave in. So we're just going to do our best, and hopefully we have luck on our side. I tell you what, Southport is going to be cheering for, for you. I've met a few of your teammates across the weekend. They will be watching this as well. I need big waves, big number ones down the camera here. Sadie Oliver, good luck. Woo! Jen, another quick question because that's what I do. Um, what is a frother? And has Sadie Proctor just knocked off a whole bag of red frogs or something? <laughs> Harold wants to know what your red frogs consumption has been like today. Well, it's actually been... Um, it's been dinosaurs. Um, I've had quite a few, but yeah. Well, I tell you what, that is, woo, as we get taken out by a few double skis here. Everything's under control. Sadie knows what's happening. I'm in good hands down here. Crew, good luck. Thank you. Can you answer that? What's a, what is a frother? I think it just means they're excited. They're ready to go. They're ready to get out there. So um, I, I might add them as a, as a team to watch. I'm loving that energy. They're certainly confident said that they've done well at their state championships, although it was flat. So um, 
We'll be interested to see how the team there from Southport, South Australia go in the waves here of Maroochydore, but um, confidence gets you halfway there. Yeah, and it needs to be in rhythm, it needs to be in sync, there needs to be a connection, and no team has a better connection than that of the Newport E team of Harry Torrance and Sasha Torrance, the brother-sister combo, both flat water specialists, but also ski specialists. They'll be out there trying to make their way through. Again, embarrassment of riches. It's exciting stuff. Jen, you've got more frothers. It's a frothing everywhere. There's Froth Central down here. I've got Georgia and Huxley from Shelley Beach. Georgia, we're looking at the conditions. Have we got a plan in place? Uh, paddle through the waves, not stopping one bit. And if I'm off, keep going. <laughs> and if she's off, are we keeping going as well here? We're going to keep going. And once we're out the back, I guess just wait for her to get there. <laughs> Now, we've had a lot of chat in the commentary booth today about who goes on the front, who goes on the back. What's the plan here? Hux is just going to power it out, and I'm just going to keep up with his stroke rate as best as possible. Are you on board with this plan? Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> it's a fully endorsed plan down here for Shelley Beach. Now, your juniors were great. We've seen you in action everywhere. So great to have you here as part of the Aussies in the double ski as well. Good luck, crew. Thank you. That's definitely the um, aim of the game if you're sitting on the back of these skis and um, the stroke rate will be up off the start. It's, um, it's not an easy thing to keep in time and keep up sometimes with the excitement of the paddler on front day. They will be going for it and your job is just to slot in behind and keep that pace. Yep, so Huxley Lungtungan is a K1 specialist from the Central Coast Academy Sport. Big guy, solid paddler. Georgia Ray came up. This is her only team event this weekend because her team and if you're listening at home are only coming up for mad monday on friday night and chose not to compete which is kind of weak so kira if you're watching uh we are judging you from a distance because <laughs> georgia needed more team events to enjoy her aussie's experience of 2024 so they are still coming but maybe just for the off beach activities correct all right, we do, we do love that. Well, they're lost, really. They're missing out on all of the fun and all of the action. And um, I like that, that tactic of just power through the break, no matter who falls off, and I'll meet you at the back when I get there, was the, um, was the plan there from Georgia Ray. Yes, it would be lots of energy from her, as per always. Now, the thing I'm looking forward to, we watched back on the replay the double ski men's yesterday. Decisions are a lot more aggressive because these big, heavy double skis will hold pretty much any wave. Yeah, on the way in, absolutely. I don't think we'll see them stopping and waiting as much as we have in the single skis. And probably the same on the way out. We can see the start list, a lot of the teams that we've been talking about already um, for this first heat of the open mix double ski. I don't know if we'll see as, as much um, stopping and waiting on the way out either because once these bigger skis get up and moving, they will punch through um, a lot of these swells. So um, it'll have to take something pretty solid um, for you to see the paddlers stop and wait or, um, or something even more so dramatic to see a double ski roll. Yeah, it would be interesting. So the one thing I noticed, especially watching that race yesterday, it's, it's about the timing and getting in sync as we get out in front of that wave. So catching that wave in, letting it shoot down, and it's, it's the decisions that, that Lockie Tane made that actually got them across the line there. So the ski just, they sat back in that wash for a little bit, and then when it was all systems go, hammer was dropped. So again, you've got to be in the swell for so long to know when to make these right decisions. Yeah, they're just getting their final instructions there from the starter. He's saying it's going to be a whistle start. Sometimes um, they're probably a little bit more used to the gun start. So um, they've been given their final instructions and um, they'll be ready to line up for a start. Yeah, so Darren Warren are there, the starter giving his final instructions. Double skis, they're so much fun. Does there need to be more specific ski carnivals where we can get the double skis out there, things like that? Because it feels like it's only branch, Aussies, state, and then maybe when a new person's trying to learn to paddle a ski at your club. Yeah, the doubles aren't taken out a lot. And um, there, is a, there is a lot involved in terms of uh, organising the crews and, as we've mentioned, um, adjusting the skis. So it can be a bit of a time-consuming event to add to the program, which is probably why we don't see it at all of our events throughout the summer. They are also a very expensive craft, so we do want to take care of them. Um, but definitely a highlight, I think, of our states and our Aussies. Always so much fun on screen there, the team from North Bondi, just a little bit deep at the front. And the decisions have been made here as well because we're trying to have just enough 
I guess, space to jump up and get that button to see because if it's too deep and we've got sometimes we've got the ladies a little bit shorter so much harder to get back in that seat right yeah sometimes um, our front paddlers who are edging out aren't always aware of how deep the water is for our paddlers behind but the crew's holding a fairly steady line at the moment the check started there fairly happy got the flag up so the starter knows that um, he can get them away as soon as he is happy that there's a clean break he's Calling them back now, he must see that there's a bit of a disadvantage to some of our crews. So Clifton Beach on screen at the moment, Lawn next to them, Shelley Beach, Southport, South Australia, all the energy in the world. There's Clifton Beach on that ski closest to screen starter has got them away and it was the couple of crews there from Newport in the middle of the screen there almost a ski length lead across to I think that is the crew there from um, Sorrento Michael Booth and Jamie Roberts with those bright green caps also off to a great start but there's the team of Newport or one of the teams I should yeah, say arms, so Fletcher Armstrong Piper Harrison they're looking really strong making their way through at the moment Jake Reese jazz lock just tucked in on the right hand edge of them we just see a little bit more boat speed Jake Reese just checking that one there Armstrong ducking under that one with Piper Harrison and geez Sorrento trying to make it to some moves out the right one out of the seat already yeah Sorrento look to be clear now there with Seacliff Seacliff and Wanda so that um, southern end of the beach out clean along with some of our strong paddlers there from the center you mentioned the two crews there from Newport Trying to pick up the caps in the middle of the screen there. I think that's um, the crew from Bondi, the navy and white lawn. striped ski. Lawn, is it? Yeah, I was looking for that there before. <laughs> so Newport 1 and 2 at the moment. Clifton Beach, get in there. Go on, son and lady. Go on, sons. Get in there. Whatever they're doing, <laughs> paddle fast because they're looking strong. And that is a team of Courtney Dowling and James Fullerton making their way out. But top three at the moment, just cruising at the moment. We picked it, didn't we? The two crews from Newport and also Sorrento. So um, three crew, three crews. I couldn't see that one out in front. So that's our top four there with Clifton Beach probably coming into fifth position. You would assume top six would be making their way through at the moment. So the uh, what have we got? Jake Rees, Jazz Lock there in one at the moment. The team of Armstrong and Actually, it might be the brother-sister combo of Harry Torrens and Sasha Torrens. Regardless, Newport's taking through the top five spots at the moment. They're looking comfortable. Shelley Beach got some work to do. So, too, uh, the rest of the teams at the back. But one, two, and three with Newport and then Sorrento in four. Yes, just got some confirmation from down on the beach. Actually, 10 going through from this open mixed double ski. So, fairly comfortable cut there for our qualifiers. So, once they are out and around, I'm sure they'll be taking some very, very safe options on the way back through, not wanting to leave anything to chance in these early rounds here. So top 10 going through means we have a round one quarterfinal, semifinal, and then a final. We will be bringing you all this action here on Frothing Thursday afternoon. Wave out the back. Someone's sending it. Some isn't. What? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Filling up, I just I get nervous watching that, knowing that it's top ten need to go through. We don't need any, uh, as per Jake Morris, stupid decisions. <laughs> I know, and it's a little bit tricky sometimes from the camera angle to know actually how close they are to that wave zone. Are they just runners, or are they really about to break? I think the um, the, the Newport crew have seen something that they like. They're happy to maybe go for this smaller wave that they're on now. That's a really great choice. They look across to see that they are comfy. They are home. So that's our first place getters in round one, heat one of the open mixed double ski. So I wanted just trying to pull down that one into the way with fifth and sixth, but Jake Rees, Jazz Lock, comfortable, too good, too fast, two paddlers. <laughs> yeah, they'll have a look back there and see their teammates also quali qualifying through the other two crews there from Newport, Sorrento. Wanda. Wanda has come through. That's it. So they're the, um, the team that you also picked at the start there. Um, the experience and the youth coming through there from Wanda. Yeah, so Michael Georgiaris, biggest shoulders in the world. Chelsea Sutton, comfortable there. I don't know what's up with the design on the board. Rabbitohs must have been <laughs> on sale. That is terrible. <laughs> 
Yes, and, and you'll, yeah, you'll see the, um, the paddlers obviously um, sharing the load. These double skis are, are fairly heavy um, to carry up the beach, and we've heard that they'll have a few rounds to go through, so um, they'll be wanting to conserve some more of that energy. They'll place the skis down there now, wait for those official results. We can see some more of those qualifiers coming through lawn there on screen. So I'm interested to know, you've been competing for a long, long time. Um, the evolution of craft, uh, we used to have the secondary uh, fin in the middle, just in between both the paddlers. Do you remember those? On the double skis or the single the skis? The double skis. Uh, yes, I have. I don't know if I've paddled one, but I have seen them. And they're yes. still so heavy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. I mean, it, it's, it's a bit of a... Um, a link between you know the durability and the speed so we, we have seen a few of these skis um, cracking half over the last couple of days so um, can't make them too too light and too fragile but um, yeah certainly certainly not something you'd want to carry up the beach on your own. Jen have you got a few of our um, open mixed double paddlers on the beach with you? I do. I have some of our newest qualifiers. I've got Courtney and James from Clifton Beach. This, it feels more like relief at the moment rather than excitement. Yeah, absolutely. That was a pretty good race. We got out nice and clean, which was the plan, and um, around the cans nice and clean, got a nice little wave back in it. It was good, but it's certainly a lot warmer than down home back in Tassie. So. Well, as soon as we saw the cat, we knew we wanted to have a chat. So great to see you, and quite a few other clubs repping Tassie here at the championships. Yeah, we're having an awesome time, and I think that was, that's probably been one of my favourite races, doing it with Courtney. Um, Courtney's our coach, so I was pretty, pretty glad that she picked me to go with her in the, um, in the Clifton A team. So, yeah, that was an awesome race. Got heaps of fun. And Courtney, congr I, I would always pick myself in the A team as well. This looks like a winning combination. It's actually our first time racing together and even paddling together. So, um, yeah, it was really good. It was lots of fun out there. Um, a little bit scary early on, but we got around pretty clean, as James said, so it was really good. Now we've got the tally going up in the booth. Who's in the front? Who's in the back? What was the strategy here? James always in the front. <laughs> I trust him. I trust him with everything, so it was good. There you go. We're trusting James with everything down here in the double ski. We'll see you go around again. Clifton Beach, thanks so much for a chat. Congratulations on a great race. Thanks, guys. Clifton Beach getting it done, or half your minor, as I like to call it, because it's a similar cap. So great work, great interviews there, Jen. So much action. We're moving on to the next round. Number two? Yes, I believe this will be heat two of the open mix. We just saw Clifton Beach being interviewed. They took the seventh qualifier with Burley Heads Team D taking the eighth spot in that first heat. So as we look towards the heat on the line here, yes, I believe this will be heat two. We've got the team from Alex, Burley Heads, Northcliff Team D, Northcliff Team B, Seacliff, Northcliff, Manly, Burley Heads, Port C Team A, Southport, Christie's Beach, Clifton Beach, Maroochydore, Manly and North Bondi. So Alexandra Headlands closest screen. Northcliff Team D. Yeah. Come on. So Tom Norton, Danny McKenzie, phone back in. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be fast top 10, so they, they'll just want to get in the seat nice and comfortably. Anyone else notables in there you think is quite exciting? have a bit of a look as we um, scroll through the list. We probably can't count out many of the, the Northcliffe teams. Um, I like the um, the look of Burley Heads, uh, Kirsty Hardstaff and, and yep. Peter Mitchell. Um, very, very strong on the craft, both of those athletes. A bit of Woodhouse action from Maruchidor, Alex and Phoebe. Yep, yep. We will see young, so. Young competitors, but um, definitely a crew to watch. Local knowledge, perhaps. Maybe we will see, but I can probably guarantee they haven't had the double skis out too much because even though the surf club is just up the beach, again, so much effort to get it out. Yeah, and um, we do hear a lot of the crews. They may have just maybe jumped in for a warm-up today, but not necessarily a training session. So a lot of their skills being honed in their single skis, and um, they will probably just jump on and hope for the best in these doubles. Um, not too much difference in terms of technique, but um, probably just sort of the combination of the rating. You need to sort of have a similar rating to get the boat moving as efficiently as possible. So Christie's Beach on screen at the moment. That's the team of Cooper Bristow and Amy Butcher. In the starter's hand, flag is up. Everyone's happy. Everyone's comfortable. Probably just waiting for this one to rush through. Gun in the air, and we are off and away. And have we got any fast movers yet? And it's going to be through number fourth position at the moment, which is the Northcliffe B team. 
but the Northcliffe D team just tucked in next to them, making their way out. So it's Tom Norton, Danny McKenzie, Northcliffe Team D on the right, just about to go over the screen next to them. Jai Duffy, Caitlin Gilliman. Wow, a couple of ways punching through. Left hand edge getting the clean water at the moment. Yeah, left and right hand. We can see the crew there. Um, Tom Norton and Danielle McKenzie. Definitely our early leaders. You mentioned Danielle's been... Um, she's she's a Kiwi, um, but has been uh, racing over here for many years, but has done the summer in the kayaks, really um, aiming for the Olympics. So um, <laughs> there's the crew there from Alex. They have come unstuck, so jump back on. Summer Rolson just having a little bit of difficulty. You want to get those feet back into the footstraps before you hit that wave. So they've just managed to do so. You can see another crew beside them. So um, maybe not out of it yet if they're taking 10 through to the to the next round. Jai Duffy and um, Caitlin Gilliman also have come on stuck. Jai pa patiently waiting there for Caitlin so to make her way across. So the 17 starter, 7 will miss out. But yeah, if it, I guess there's more issues at the front. Panic station is not too much at the moment. Northcliffe, Manly, out in front at the moment. And I think that might actually be the crew from North Bondi as well. On the um, so the leaders just out of screen there. They are there. Our lead crew from Northcliffe, ahead of Burley Heads, Manly, Northcliffe, Seacliff, I think as well. The black cap that you can see on screen, Francesca Kidd and Tom May, also very well well renowned ski paddlers. Cap of Southport also popping into screen. So all of these crews well and truly inside the top 10. Yeah, so Hayden Smart, Anna Wilkinson was that team from North Bondi, Anna Wilkinson. I believe she's still in the under 19. So again, the mixed open double gives that opportunity for the younger paddlers to, you know, to get more racing experience, but then also get into the races with the older boys in there. But out in front at the moment, and just moving so much water with that big, heavy stroke. Jeez, that's good. Yeah, and we've seen um, yeah, Tom, Tom Norton uh, obviously paddle with his wife many, many times, but um, they've got a little baby now, so um, matching it with um, Danielle McKenzie, as you mentioned, flown in specially for the race. I didn't see um, Danny taking on the single ski, so um, she will be fresh and ready to go. Beautiful timing of the crew there from Northcliffe. That's a, an amazing demonstration of how it is to be done. You can see the gap there back to second that they've opened up just by working those little runners. So whilst they're coming on, I want to have a quick discussion around workload. So we're going to have 16 teams in the final, which means they're going to have four double ski races back to back to back. A few of these boys would have had probably three individual ski races as well. Ski paddling is so taxing on the shoulders, just you know, r rolling them over and every stroke is so important with so much power. Yeah, the, the strength that's involved, it's it's difficult to compare to board paddling or to swimming, just um, what what you need to pull out of your muscles. And you, you do need to rotate and twist and use all of your muscles in a ski race. But what you see so often when the surf's massive, you do just rely on that shoulder and that forearm strength. So, um, yeah, certainly a, a lot of energy going into, um, particularly for the men who have done their qualifying rounds and now backing up into three or four races of these mixed double skis. Yeah, so we're going to call this a half slew, but then again, I was just saying, saying earlier, you've just got to take the runners for what the ocean and where it's going to take you, and a couple just trying to finish inside the arena because on the outside right, it looks like two or three more are going to miss it. Northcliffe just sneaking through. You don't get any closer than that. Oh, but top ten, looks like we might be up to seven, maybe? Your guess is as good as mine. We see a couple of crews coming together, everyone just trying to get in and around within that course. So that might be the team there from North Bondi and Seacliff coming together. Southport there as well. All fun, all smiles though. Everyone's enjoying themselves out there. We've got so much double ski action. We've got round one with all the heats, which is going to be five through two of the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then the final this afternoon for the open mix double skis. And then it's going to be the ladies double ski tomorrow. Jen's lurking around on the beach to see who's around. I'm not too sure who it's going to be. I'm just guessing it might be someone with a black cap. It's looking beautiful down there. Jen's so nice. um, put her brolly away. The sun's come back out. So we'll wait to see who we will, if we'll get to have a 
chat to anyone. We've got another race underway here, the quarterfinal of perhaps the under-17 female ski. Yeah, Lucy on screen again. Somehow I've already got this one up on the screen. <laughs> so we've got Abby Carter from Karawa, Eleanor Shervington from Bavoka, Brooke Durst from Newport, Claire Spicknell from Morilla Break Point, Ava Crellin from Northcliffe, Phoebe Lechner from Manly, Tara Collier paddled really strongly before next to her, Lucy Marshall, Scarlett George from Wanda, Midway from New Zealand, Emily Petro, Jan Jack, Bonnie Jarrett from Maroochydore, Porter from Noosa Heads and also Reeve. But Jen, you've got a quick conversation down there with us. I do. I've got Toa and Francesca from Sea Cliff here. We love seeing the all-black cap. How good is it being at Aussies again? Oh, yeah, it's good. I haven't been to Aussies for the past few years. Um, I, well, I missed out last year, I think, um, because of work. Couldn't get work off, but it's great being back. And what's better than being on the Sunshine Coast, even though it's not quite as sunny as I hoped. I turned the waves on for you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Waves are on, messy on, but we love it. It's... Um, Almost like our home conditions if we went down the coast. It's cold, it's rainy, it's messy, it's wavy. It's, it's all those things that we are trying to get used to. Well, it's wonderful to see you out there. Now, Tom, we've seen you in your individuals. You're backing up for the doubles. How are the forearms? Are you all right? Yeah, no, all good. All good. Fran was giving me most of the power back there. So, uh, yeah, she got us through. And is this a, a pairing that we've had together for a while? Are we experienced? What's the story here? Yeah, probably, like, we've grown up together, like, doing nippers, and uh, we've been paddling together for four or five years, so, no, it's, re it's really enjoyable being able to do the double with Fran. Oh, and, well, she's pretty fast. I'd be picking her any day. <laughs> a absolutely, for sure. There you go. See Cliff through to the next round. Go rest, recover. We'll see you soon. Big waves down the camera. Thank you. Yeah, get into it, Jen. Loving your energy, loving your work, but at the moment, it looks like it might be Emily Petro there from Midway. Quarterfinal number two, under 17 ladies. I think I've got that right. It could be Noosa as well. Caitlin Reed, Jess Porter from Noosa heads up the road. But a couple of girls having to roll aggressively, staying underneath, getting out to the green water, but clearly at the moment. Yeah, plenty of sets coming through there for the under-17 paddlers. Our leader has done um, the best of, of that. We're thinking it might be the paddler there from Noosa heads. We've got Jan Jack on screen as well at the moment that might be is it Lani Steele from Janjuk so she's out and around our apex course smoking it at the moment an absolutely amazing putting job. on the show look at that nice high hands there looks like we've got the top eight going through so we've got three just on the apex and as we see just the ladies trying to make their way out before decisions need to be made there so one coming through nose over the top one back shotting Marshall there from Evoca on the roll, grabbing that right hand to that left front strap, staying underneath. And then this is where the parents who pay for the skis are like, sweet Lord baby Jesus, please don't have any damage. <laughs> yeah, and it is, as those skis come together, it's very, very tricky to get back on and get the paddle in the water if you don't have that space between you and your next competitor. Back on screen now, I think we are there with um, the, the crews from Janjuk and maybe Newport. No, is that's that... Abby Carter from Carroll. I just saw a bit of white and blue in there. Absolutely flying. But look at this coming on the outside right there. That looks like a seasoned professional open paddler there. But as an under-17, having that sort of stroke rate, drive through the hips, is unbelievable work. But Abby Carter on screen at the moment there, along with Lani Steele from Janjuk. I think it might be Bonnie Jarrett as well from Maroochydore just on that blue and white striped ski as we can see Lani Steele from Janjak coming down a nice little wave. I think that will be certainly um, small enough for her to manage comfortably through. She looks pretty relaxed in her face there, doesn't she? Unbothered is what she looks. She is too good, too fast. She's going to get through to the next round there, so too on the outside, Abby Carter there, and your, what do we got? Say, so Bonnie Jarrett from Maroochydore, that was some great work chasing those runners. Great work, ladies, great skills shown. You booked yourself a spot through to the next round, which is the semi-final at Aussies on a ski, which is amazing, some of these girls are bottom age. Yeah, Lani Steele coming across there. Abby Carter from Karawa. We'll wait to see uh, Bonnie Jarrett cross the line. She was holding down third position from Maruchidor there. She is there now on the blue and white ski. Just being joined maybe from a manly yeah, competitor. Phoebe Lechner, I'm going to call that there for her. So that's our top four? Yep, that's four across the line. Last one coming through. There's five. Eight will make their way through to the quarterfinals. Five might be... Um, oh, Scarlett George from Coogin Headley. Get in there, young lady. So that's going to be five at the moment. Three more positions available. And as the one more making their way through the pink ski. Yeah, 
just can't quite pick up the colour of her cap there. We have another competitor who will hopefully... She's just pulling that back across the, the, the finish line and you do need to go across it in control of your ski. So she's done enough there to, um, to also book a spot. Yeah, it's either Caitlin Reid or Jess Porter than Ava Crellin was just on screen before from Northcliffe. Just pulling that ski out of the water. So, again, tough skills shown by these under-17 ladies in really testing conditions. Sun's out. There's going to be another one coming across the screen. It's going to be Brooke Durs of Newport, I believe. Eight is that magic number. Tough, tough. I mean, they're so hard to sit on. They if are. If you haven't done it. They are extremely hard to sit on, even in the flat water. So um, with the the waves and the chop and the rips and the currents, um, these athletes making it look fairly easy for perhaps some of them their first year on this craft. Yeah, and it's fun. So just pulled it on screen there from Noosa making her way across the line. I'm not too sure if she's done the count, but that might be enough for her to sneak in to eighth. No, she just missed out. So Ava Krillin from North Cliff got through in that eighth position, so they're going to be into the semi-finals a little bit later on. I believe they're going to be taking it straight through to final because of the way the swell is going. They're going to struggle to get through with the swell coming Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, great decision there from our officials. You can see um, certainly challenging, but um, our under-17 competitors are handling it amazingly. Jen, are you down on the beach with some of our ski paddlers? I am. I found Emily from Midway, one of our international competitors here from New Zealand. Emily, welcome to the sunny coast. We've turned on the waves. No dramas for you at all. Yeah, it's good fun out there. It's definitely very different from our beach at home, but it's good to have something different. And you were telling me earlier that ski actually isn't your strongest leg. You're actually now in the semi-final at Aussie, so I think you're telling fibs. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely surprised. I was just trying to not fall out of my ski, not lose it. But, yeah, it seemed to <laughs> surprise myself as well. Now, we're loving seeing some different caps in the mix here. We've actually got a reference guide up in the booth to make sure we know all of the different caps. So great to see Midway represented. This is a proud moment for you and the club. Yeah, it's so good. It's good to be here. It's a good experience for us. Yeah, definitely very hard. These skills are good, but, yeah, it's good. Well, thanks so much for coming over. Wonderful to have you as a part of Aussies, and we can't wait to see you in the semi-final. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jen. Love seeing those smiles on the beach and um, also our fellow competitors from New Zealand, Midway Beach being represented there. We are taking you back now to heat three of the open mixed double ski finalist. We'll um, have a bit of a look at the start list here. All I do get a little bit, uh, what's the word? Uh, distracted whenever I hear a Kiwi accent because all I want to do is sing Slice of Heaven. <laughs> I can't say I, I think the same, but I do love listening to the Kiwi, Kiwi accent. Looking through the start list, I'm um, already drawn to the team from North, uh, Newport A, Gemma Smith and Mitchell Trim. I think they're going to be very, very strong in this heat here. We've also got um, Manly Team A, Ella Garrett and Oscar Jones, who we've seen throughout some of these individual rounds. Alex, Emma Woods and James Porter also strong and Karumban always so good on the craft Kirsty Higginson and Jaden Erskine again embarrassment of riches out there the one I'm looking for as well is the Seacliff 18 Sabian Cedarblad and Anika Kidd making their way out couple got out really clean on that left hand side but just a little bit too much deep water maybe on the right because we've got four teams stuck so far behind really that's Malulaba, Mermaid, Karumban and Southport at the bottom of the screen, but through the middle, looking ultra fast, is the orange ski and the white skis of, what's that, we've got? We've got Noosa Head, so Geordie Mercer actually sitting on um, the back of that ski, so we might actually be watching Heat 4 unfold here. We'll just have a look, yes, Jordan Mercer and um, Christopher Kether, she mentioned this team to me earlier and said, um, Christopher Kether, I think she said he's moved up from South Australia, a really, really strong ski paddler. So she was very confident with that combination. We've got a couple of the crews there from Trig Island, two crews closest to screen, also out in clear water. The girls making their way through. 
And the boys, it's interesting. I had a look at the North Kirkwell team. Glenn Slater, the ski coach there, jumping on with daughters or Macy Slater. That's always always fun to make new memories, right? Yeah, that's a pretty special, very, very special moment. Um, see the two crews from Trigg still in contention there, probably sitting second and fourth. There's the crew from Noosa just tucked in behind Burley Heads up ahead there. That might be Kate Regan and Lockie Tame. So expect them to make their way through the field. She's looking comfortable there at the moment. So we've got the teams from Trigg Island. So the, the A team, Reese Baker and Jazz Shipway Carl will be leading us out there at the moment. Just cruising at the moment. There was that Dickie Beach just tucked in next, next to them. Yeah, just trying to pick up that cab, yeah, I believe. Cooper, yeah, Cooper Bessel and, and Anastasia Huey. Jeez, and looking strong, comfortable there, tucked in behind Malula Bar, and then the second trick team. Let's go. Yeah, beautiful looking ski there, the one from Dickey Beach, the green and yellow stripe. So these might actually be our chase pack. I think that could have been the team from Burley Heads, maybe out in front. We can see them just rounding that final. There they are there, yes. We can see the Burley Heads team. We would expect them to, to definitely be making their way to the front. Kate Regan and Lockie Tame. Surely he's not going to win two from two on the double ski, but we'll see because within an hour we will be crowning a champion. But a little bit of congestion around there at the moment. We've got five just in that pack there, two out in front, and there's not too many that do it better on a double ski than Lockie Tame out in front at the moment. Yeah, Burley Heads out in front. Noosa tucked in there in second place. Chris Kether and Jordan Mercer. So um, they're doing it fairly comfortable. Now, now the looking around starts. Let's just pick up a little one. I'm not really sure if um, Kate's getting much of the decision making, but the steering is happening at the front. So Lockie's got to pick a wave that he's happy and comfortable with holding. As we know, ten going through in these open mixed double skis. So um, fairly comfortable qualifying numbers. I'd imagine all of the crews on screen. Dicky Beach closest to us, going across. Oh, just taking that dip there fairly nicely. Oh, slew at the top of the screen. I'm not quite sure what that crew was. We've got Noosa coming across the line there. Burley Heads, Newport. Can't quite bring you the other crew there just with the glare on screen, but that might be our top four. That across. would have to be four there, but I'm just questioning decisions sometimes. Just get the legs over, just pull back. No real need to do anything, and then... This is why we need to have better decisions because finishing outside the zone there possibly could be curtains for the team of Matt Bohr and D'Andre Godoy, but they're about oh. to take out the flag. No, all good. Possibly snapped it, but we are good. <laughs> no one else can see what's going on, but it's, 10 is probably going to be that last one across the line there from, I'm going to call that Dickey Beach. Yeah, they um, seemed to make that turn really, really late there, the team from Newport. So... Maybe they thought the finishing line was just on the other side of that flag. I thought they would have maybe noticed that finish line a little bit sooner, but they may have done enough just to sneak around and claim their spot in the next qualifying round, which we believe will be the quarterfinals. Yep, so back to the under-17 ski arena at the moment there. So we've got sort of the cap of Dicky Beach out there in front. So the next round coming through, you see Katie Reach is popping around behind Zara Green from Terry Gould. Sorry. I should have known that is Liv Clues there. Just made the Australian flat water K1 team, so she's a legend on all craft. Jen, who have you got down there with us whilst we're looking at the 17 skis? I've actually got the uh, C team here, but you wouldn't know it from the result that they just got. It's Patrick and Paige all the way from Trig Island. Quite a few of your clubmates in this event as well. Yeah, no, it's good to be across here and good to see Trig getting up. We're sort of rebuilding with our ski program at the moment, so a bit of fun out there today, so it's been great. It's such, it's such great conditions out there, and I said there was a lot happening behind you. There's just a lot of relief when you come through and you know you're through to the quarterfinals. Yeah, no, looking forward to it. Not sure if it's being run today still, but hopefully. Feeling good. Paige is feeling fresh, so <laughs> ready to kick some goals. Alrighty, Paige, how does it feel being over here repping Trig Island, doing so well already? Uh, thank you so much. Um, we have a great girls crew down at Trig, and it's just so good seeing all the depth of the competitors doing so well in all the events. Um, it's a great club to be a part of. <laughs> Well, there's actually a lot of depth in the uh, mixed double. If we look across the beach at the moment, it is absolutely packed down here. It's something wonderful to be a part of. Yeah, I think we don't get a lot of opportunity to race with the guys, and it's really nice to come together for one event. Well, big waves down here. The Trig Island C team, probably soon to be the A team, let's be honest, guys. Great to see you through. Quarterfinals coming up soon. Go Trig Island. Thank you.
Yeah, thanks, Jed. Whilst we're back on screen, the under-17 skis, Raywood, Bianca Raywood there, just slewing a little bit, and then just a little bit of T-bone action there for Liv Clues. She would have been having nightmares because she had the reverse happen to her at one of the summer of surfs, uh, where she wore a ski straight through the nose of hers, and then that is the new one she's got there, but she's comfortable. She is through to the semi-final. Going to be tough to beat, and that if she can make through that one more round. Yeah, she looked really strong there, and... Um Navigated that well just around the ski there of Bianca Raywood. Hopefully she was able to jump back on and get herself across the line. We believe eight going through from the under-17 qualifiers. Here's Bianca Raywood on screen. So just wasn't able to hold that one straight. Um, the next best thing is to try and keep in contact with your ski. You can see there Liv probably not too sure what to do, just trying to hold her balance and... Um, can see there she just gets around the nose of Bianca's ski so um, keeping themselves out of trouble there which is what we want to see in these heats yeah so great, great racing from the ladies there so again top eight are going to make their way through we don't have those official results yet of heat four from the under 17s taking you back now to maybe one of our last heats of the open mixed double skis Just seeing how they're lining up is that going to be maybe a team from North Bondi and beautiful the... scenes there setting sun here as we get the 345 Thursday afternoon day 2 of the 2024 Aussies Championships here on the Sunshine Coast and the sun is back and shining hopefully we've had the last of the cloud the wind and the rain because we want nothing more than pristine conditions that are going to be exciting as we make our way through to final day on Sunday. Yeah, it's actually looking beautiful down here at the moment. Maroochydore Beach giving us what we want. Jen, who have you got with you? Oh, I'm just hanging out with Olivia Clues from Newport. That was a pretty hectic race. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's been um, a pretty hectic day actually in the past week, but um, I feel like staying relaxed during this uh, carnival is key for the racing. Well, it's only Thursday afternoon as well. You've got so many races ahead of you. How are you managing this each night? Um, I feel like getting a good night's sleep and making sure I top up on the hydration and keep the food down is um, key. <laughs> well, I walked past the uh, New Newport recovery booth the other day. Oh, my gosh, you have everything up there. They are looking after you well. It's an amazing team. We've got Dave Rees and, you know, everyone at the Kinghorn Academy has just been so helpful for us. And it's a real village up there. It was absolutely packed. You've got some great team events coming up soon. What are you looking forward to most? Um, I feel like the ski events I'm really looking forward to, but as well as the 17s and 19s teams, just to get around the club culture is good. Well, we're loving it. Go and get stand in, see how the girls went. A few more rounds coming up for the skis. Good luck. Thank you. Jen, whilst you're down there, do you reckon you could get us a start at the uh, recovery centre just for uh, me and Christian here? <laughs> I'll leave that to her. That's some no, homework. but you know, go back no. tomorrow and see what they say. <laughs> Jen, Jen said we can. That was a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them Olivia Clue sent you. That should get us some credibility. Something, someone, anyone. Back to the double skis. What have we got? We've got Heat 3 here of the Open Mixed Double Ski. Malulaba Team B, closest to screen. Mermaid Beach Team B, Crumb and Team A, Southport, South Australia. Alexandra Headlands there in the mix. Manly Bondi Team A, Christie's Beach, Kujin Headland, North Bondi, uh, Newport, of course, Sea Cliff, Alex, and Sea of Perth. Kirsty Higginson, get back amongst get it. Back amongst How good it. is that? Yes, yeah, she um, she hasn't really lost much at all. Looks like the team from Newport, centre of screen, just getting through that wave there. But north north um, end of the beach there, we can see. Uh, the team of Kirsty Higginson and um, Jaden er Erskine from Corumban. Closest to screen next to Emma Woods and James Porter from Alex. Also having a great start. Trying to pick up that crew there in third. Malula Bar also now out of shot. Well, that's um, Southport, South Southport, Australia. South Australia. So, yeah, Alex Porter is the leaker seat of lad. So she's... God, teams are looking strong at the moment. Probably the best start we've seen. So we've got two, four, six, nine on screen at the moment. Top ten making their way through. A couple popping up from underneath. So it looks as if we only get through a couple more rounds. We won't get to finals of with these today, which I guess means some more racing tomorrow. Some more double ski action. 
Yeah, they might be actually happy to um, to wind up competition for the day. We've seen many of these paddlers out and around the cans numerous, numerous times as we're watching the crew there from Mermaid Beach, Dylan Thompson and Madeline Thompson just out of screen at the moment. So it's Corumban closest to screen, Alex, Manly, Newport, and I think maybe another Alexandra Headlands crew, or is it a Christie's Beach? It is a Christie's Beach crew also sneaking in there, Laura Campbell and Ziggy Humphreys. Can I just say great work from you there, Christie, to pick up on that <laughs> one because I sure wouldn't have, but on screen at the moment, Mitch Trim, Gemma Smith making their way around. Uh, Gemma, notable omission from the ski final this coming Sunday. Got absolutely slaughtered a couple of times trying to get out yesterday in that semi final. And being amongst T oh, T Mitchell Trim in this one, they're looking comfortable and strong. Took out the state titles comfortably. Can they keep that momentum going as we make our way through Heat 1 with a couple more rounds to go? Yeah, look at the speed up there now. We've got Corumban. But we're back with our leaders there, Newport, Gemma Smith and Mitchell Trim, having a little bit of a look around to see what's coming. And that's Oscar Jones and Ella Garrett just putting it down at the moment. We saw Oscar Jones have a couple of really strong paddles there before, making strong decisions as he got around the can. Trim pulling off that one because, again, top 10, we don't need too much angst. We don't need too much aggression on these waves. Find and pick your spots, but Oscar Jones has gone, you know what, I'm done. They're happy with that one there. And see Corumban, I think they're happy to take that one. These are our lead two crews. We've got Manly, Newport looking comfortably across. We'll have a look back to our third, fourth and fifth place getters. Just in the centre of the screen there. You can see how tricky it gets as those waves double up and run into the wave in front and that's when the nose of, you can see the nose and the tail of that ski just completely underwater so great job there from the team from Manly to hold that um, to hold that ski straight that was very very tricky tricky Ella Garrett and Oscar Jones class paddlers so doing it very very well there's our first three across the line we've got Sam HT and Sophie Wall from Alex right there next to Emma Woods and James Porter also from Alex, the two Alex crews qualifying through Corumban coming across the line there. I've lost count, but um, we'll wait for the live heats update. There's the crew from Mermaid. Mermaid. Jeez, so many teams through their top 10. That's got to be at least nine at the moment. It looks like we had one team shooting through really fast. So the Manly team, I have Garrett and Jones in one, Smith and Trim there in Newport for two. I thought it was quite funny. You said Oscar Jones looking really comfortable as they were coming in. He did. He looked so strong. You get to see Ella just trying to maintain that rate of the power <laughs> the whole way through. Didn't look as comfortable. But Ella, great job. You've made it through to the next round. Along with the Newport, we'll just wait for the rest of the scannage through there. A couple of skis upside down getting dragged through. A few more events to go here on the Thursday, day number two. Yeah, I think that was our crew there from Christie's Beach just getting their ski across the line. We'll head back down to Jenny. Who have you got? I have got Oscar and Ella. It would not be an Aussie Championships or a good surf carnival if I don't get to talk to you two. Congratulations getting through in the mixed double. It's a big afternoon of racing down here at Malula Bar. It has been. It has been. We've had a jam pack day two. But nonetheless, Jones and I are always ready for mixed doubles, no matter when it is on the day. Uh, I'd say we pulled out a pretty good race. We're definitely confident, calm, relaxed, and put together, I think is the way to describe it. Essentially the opposite of the commentary team that you've got, trying to bring you all these <laughs> stories. It's been such a big season for you guys already. Individually, you're wonderful. But together, this feels like something special. It's definitely special, it, it is for sure. Jonesy is just the best, best paddler to paddle with, and I consider myself very, very grateful. <laughs> Jonesy, do you echo those sentiments? Are you lucky to paddle with Ella as well? Yeah, oh, she's doing awesome. She made the Open Women's Final this on Sunday. So, yeah, no, it's, it's a privilege to be able to paddle with her. Um, yeah, this, the boat's been good. We've been on it for a few years, and we're quite a young crew together. So <laughs> experience comes to maturity, and, um, yeah, we want to eventually get there. We had we got in the final last year, but maybe we weren't the position we wanted to get. So just going through the motions, round after round, and just see where we can go. And that experience is so important, especially when you're facing conditions like this together. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit tricky. Um, exactly, just working the boat together and being in time and knowing, sort of preempting what the other person's going to do. You know you've been in a boat for, together for long enough. You can sort of, you know what someone's going to do in certain situations and it's good too. And you have a, a crew that you've been together for quite a long time that you can, you can create that. 
Well, we're loving seeing you guys paddle so well together. Give us a big wave down the camera. Manly absolutely on fire in the mixed double crew. Cannot wait to see you go through quarters, semis, finals. Let's bring on the big ones. Loving the clear articulation from Oscar Jones, letting us know all the ins and outs of double ski paddling. What a legend. And look at this through here. So this is where you said, looking comfortable, you said Ella's getting in a couple of big breaths at the back there. And then, yeah, just reunited and it feels so good for those two making it through to the next round. Yeah, it's a little bit trickier for those back paddlers. The, the front paddler can um, can rest and pick up the paddle and keep paddling whenever they want. But as a back paddler, you just need to be ready and and um, ready to keep in time. So you've really got to just keep staring at, um, at it maybe either the left or the right side of the paddler in front. So all crews doing an amazing display of that on screen. Uh, I was just going to say, one thing I have noticed, especially coming through the double ups, one thing we haven't really spoke about is when that nose comes down, sometimes the fin comes out at the back, so you've actually got no ability to keep control mm. or steer the craft. Yeah, we have seen a little bit of that happening. So um, huge amount of skill for, for all of our paddlers getting those crafts out and around the course. We've got those results there now of Heat 3. So it was, of course, the team from Manly, followed by Newport, Alex, the two teams there from Alex, Maloolaba, Currumbin, Mermaid, North Bondi, Southport, South Australia. And I believe there may be one spot left up for grabs. So they haven't confirmed that 10th qualifying spot yet from Heat 3. It may have um, been the crew of Christie's Beach. if they were. It was, in fact, the crew from Christie's Beach that's just been updated. We saw them trying to get their ski across the line. So... Um, we believe they will survive through to another round. Live to fight another day. <laughs> well, maybe another day. We're not sure yet. Will they be run this afternoon or maybe come back for tomorrow? So probably hopeful um, for tomorrow morning, just to maybe rest some of those arms. We've still got one more heat, heat five of the mixed double ski, which you can see there just on the start line. While we're waiting for that race, Jen, back down to you. Oh, it's a sea of allure down here. I've got both of the crews down here. How are we feeling? Oh, yeah, heaps good. I love it all together on the start line. Conditions are getting a little bit better throughout the day. All happy with it. So it's an Australian Championship, but also the Allura Club champs at the moment. How are we rating this team? Oh, I think we're rating pretty good ups against the other one. <laughs> no, no, anything can happen in the surf, so we're just out there to have a bit of fun, the Salvo. Well, it sounds like the race briefing is underway. We're going to let you go get to it. Allura, good luck today. Thank you. And once again, Live Heat's doing its awesome work in the random draws. Team A and B for Allura next to each other. <laughs> Very random indeed. So um, we have got our last heat about to hit the water there. Heat five of the open mixed double ski. We've got Swansea Belmont, Newport, Alex, Avoca Beach, Mermaid Beach, Northcliffe, Coolangatta, City of Perth, uh, Point Leo, Kurrawa, Burnie, Sunshine Beach, Allura and Allura. So the teams from Allura will be at the southern end of the starting line. Here they are there. We've just um, run through those. I'm thinking I really like the team from Newport, Hannah Minogue and Luke Jones. Hannah has won a national ski title um, on this beach here of Maruchidor in really, really big surf. She had some um, uh, some bad luck in her individual ski, so I think she'll be looking for some redemption in the mixed double ski. I know she loves this event. Is it bad luck or is it even worse luck? So bad luck is missing out on the race, but missing out on a final and then also having your ski snap in half is pretty bad. I know. I wasn't going to mention it because it is, it's, yeah, it's definitely, it was a sad day for Hannah Minogue yesterday. So up and away, up and in the seat, waiting for that clear lead at the moment. Looks like it might be the orange ski through the middle, but waiting for some waves on that right-hand side and just getting clipped straight across the chest there. Just draws the Karawa team there. It is on the Karawa ski, getting hit really hard. Next to them on the outside is the Bernie team of Brad Roebuck and Elsie Menzi. But again, waves on offer, but fly out on that left-hand side and no surprises that it's Eliza Johnson and Josh Murphy, both elite paddlers, both fast, both in time, and they'll be looking to get through this one comfortably. Yeah, Swansea Belmont just out of shot there at the moment. Oh, huge wave on the nose there. Are we looking at the team there from Karawa? They've done well to straighten that back up again. Hopefully they'll have a little bit of speed to hit that next one. The team from Bernie there just having a little bit of trouble. I think they have actually lost contact with their ski. 
Two skis there. Wow, we haven't seen that all, all afternoon. So that setting top, that sun setting, another ski gone there. So the team of City of Perth, Allura struggling there as well. That's going to be curtains for them. Top 10 are going to make their way through, but you still want to finish the race. But as we pan across, we'll see that the team of Swansea Belmont A will be way out in front at the moment and the rest of the team chasing their way through. Here they are there. You're exactly right. There's the team from Swansea just to the top left-hand side of your screen. You can also see Mermaid doing really well. Point Leo. We've got Northcliffe in the middle there. I think a team from Avoca yeah, Beach. That's, that's the uh, the coach and the student there. So Gordo Jones running the squad this year. Head coach at Avoca for the season. Holly Ayres holding on. This is the event they're both looking forward to. Bit of fun getting out there, doing it for the club cap and then for themselves. But out in front at the moment looking really strong. Are we calling that Allura? I think it might be still the team from Swansea um, on that blue ski. We'll just have to wait to get a little bit closer to pick up that club cap for you. It is Allura. They've taken the lead. That's you why are, I'm here all week. Allura in the lead. Eyesight. Swansea <laughs> Belmont in two. So a couple of Allura teams. So the A team and the B team. But we're going to call that one the 18 because it's Nathan Neal and Montana Murray. She had a couple of good ski paddles there today for Allura, making their way around. Second place is Murphy and Johnson for Swansea Belmont. And then Mermaid making the run as well. So two, the team from Northcliffe. Newland and O'Leary from Mermaid Beach there in third position. And Sam Norton and Emerson Hardy from Northcliffe, Team A. So, so strong. Certainly a team to watch. There's the orange caps of um, Port Leo also maybe top five yeah Port Leo in there and as beautiful as that view was we can't see anything we're back to the front view Allura looking strong so to the team from Swansea Belmont tucked in behind them we've got Mermaid Point Leo and Northcliffe that's going to make it five decisions going to be made and look at that Nathan Neal looking strong Montana on the back there that's one and two a little bit of rate coming up here I'll but. just negotiate that drop. They're in a nice part of the wave there, so um, probably the trickiest bit is um, if they will go up and over this wave in front. Looks like they might, but um, no problems so far for our leading crew, the crew from Allura. Uh, Allura. Some of the crews deciding just to pull off the back of that one. Oh, decisions here, guys. Top 10, have a look behind. Keep the ski straight. One's going to clip you from behind. Well, Leo had slewed, so hopefully they can regather. They're oh. fairly close to the shore, but they've gone right over the top. Was that the crew from Mermaid? Yeah, I think it might have been there as well. Evoca trying to hold on that outside right. Coming through the middle there. Is that the club from Alex, possibly? Yeah. We've got Jared Campbell and Lucinda Kelly staying out of trouble. So Alex banking a spot. There's the Northcliffe crew. So Sam Norton and Emerson Hardy staying out of trouble as well. So it's at four, five and six on screen. No one, the ghosts on that white ski washing in. And there's anything, one thing that hurts more than getting hit by a ski is then getting hit by a double ski. <laughs> yeah, Lucinda just um, helping get that ski out of the way there for our crew who were unlucky enough to lose it. One of the crews coming across the line backwards there. The Voker across the line there as well. So, geez, they're doing a quick scan down there. The results are coming through. So it was Allura team A in one, Northcliffe in two, Swansea Belmont in three. Got to run up the beach, grab the ski, have a count. Are we still in it? Got to go back across the line to technically finish in control of your ski. So 10 teams going through. They may still have a chance. The team there on screen from Mermaid Beach, Newl Newland and O'Leary. They looked so strong all the way through. Newport coming across the line there, Coolangatta there as well. And just funny, interesting to see that there's what the confirmation from the judges going, are we across the line? Can we get back across? Can we finish the race? Can we be in the top eight? Top ten, I should say. Can we race again tomorrow? We will definitely have to wait for those updated results as they come through. Allura Team A were certainly our winners of that heat five of the open mix double ski, Northcliffe Team A took out second. Swansea Belmont came across in third. So our remaining seven, we will update you when we can. Jen, you're down on the beach.
I am. I've got Dan and Miranda from Karawa. Hectic conditions out there. I said, don't ask me where you finished. I'm not sure. Do you know? Oh, I know that we're through, that's for sure, but you're right. It's a lot of fun. There's water moving everywhere. It's, it's anyone's day today, so you just have to get off the beach fast and really bring it home strong. I saw Tannen on the way up here and he said, this is what it's all about. This is what we're at Aussies for. We love these conditions. Oh, 100%. Like, you can either be on the bad end of it or the good end of it. Like, you just really got to stay smart, stay calm, and, you know, it should all work out your way. Well, bad end, good end. Miranda, you've got a great partner here as well. Lots of confidence in this guy. I do have a great partner. I've just got to follow him out there. He leads the way and I've just got to stay in time. And a quarter final at Aussies is always a fantastic result. <laughs> Definitely, but hopefully a couple more races still. <laughs> There we go. A few more races for the Karawa crew. Congratulations. Let's go get you tagged and see where you're at. We'll see you in the uh, quarterfinals. Thank you. Oh, here you go. Happy to get through to the quarterfinals, but they said we'd also like a few more. So they've got their eye on the final for sure. Here's a little bit of a replay of our crew there. There they are, the ones who have just been interviewed. The Karawa crew did an amazing job to stay upright through the dump of that back bank. You can see them there next to the crew from Bernie who didn't regather just as well so Karawa were able to straighten back up get through those next two waves and still book themselves a spot in the quarterfinal. Allura were our easy winners though of heat number five Exciting stuff, I thought we might have seen a little bit more carnage this afternoon Christy but we got through the five heats with not too much damage. The top 10 making their way through. The last team was the Coolangatta A team of Gary G and his teammate of Elizabeth Radland, Hannah Minogue, Luke Jones, sticking their way through as well. Uh, Holly Ayers, Gordo Jones from Avoca in 8, and Point Leo, uh, Sunshine Beach in the 6 and 7. Yeah, lucky to sneak through there for Hannah Minogue. They were um, well and truly in the race out and around the Cairns, that new port crew, but just um, losing touch on the way back in. Still have done enough though to survive through to the quarterfinals. You can see there a lot of our arenas are finished up for the day. Our very, very northern arena still racing going on there. The ski races there for our, um, our junior competitors. Perhaps still our under 17s going through their rounds, hoping to get through to the finals as we mentioned um, today while the surf conditions I wouldn't say that they've eased off, but um, at least we know what we've got in front of us. We're not quite sure what we're going to wake up to tomorrow. Perpetually changing. Different <laughs> conditions all the time. And it was, I was talking to Courtney Hancock before on the beach, which is saying how important it is, especially for the clubs who've got athletes competing across the whole beach, is to have someone with eyes on every arena, just being aware and knowing what's actually happening because we see the left-hand edge is sometimes the one where it was the spot to be. And then 15 minutes later, we get the change, head hard right. So, And what we see happen at, um, at Aussies quite often, you might be racing in one particular arena and then you qualify through to the semis or the quarters and they get moved up the beach to an area that you haven't yet raced in. So um, I'm sure a lot of our clubs will try to have coaches and team managers um, in all of our different arenas so that when our athletes do move across, they can give them a quick heads up of, of what's happening in that water section in front of them. Um, but as you mentioned, probably changing from hour to hour as we've seen the conditions. We can see very far in the, um, in the distance there we've got the boats happening at Alexandra Headlands. But I feel like that might be most of our program through, uh, through for today, the second day um, of Aussies, Thursday afternoon, but, um, but not completely finished. And in the conditions, so we had a beautiful sunsetting afternoon. This was this morning. So much rain, so much wind. This is the under-19s surf team's final. And again, interesting additions. That gutter trying to get through that. Then it's a solid and long wade. Waiting in that wade zone. Picking and choosing a moment. Same as what we just saw before with the double skis. Picking and choosing the right moment. And on the right-hand side, a couple of big butterfly strokes is the one that got them furthest through to the beach, minimising their points for these surf teams. Yeah, we've had a lot of changes in terms of what you mentioned there with the, the sun and the rain. But one thing that hasn't changed is the swell. It's been pretty consistent all day long. We, um, yeah, we had uh, certainly some amazing races on display in those surf teams, under-19s. And we also had the open male surf team races decided. So gold medals decided earlier today. Nothing better. Day two medals getting handed out. Again, keeping that momentum through. 45 minutes later, we had the opens go. Obviously, the sun was out. 
Beautiful drone footage there. The boys just keeping their feet that little bit more through there. Zach Morris, look at that. Wide hips leading with the heels, opening them up, getting out nice and quick. And that's what it's all about, right? He led this race from start to finish, Zach Morris, and set it up in that run leg you could see there it was um, still low-ish tied so um, plenty of bank for our competitors to get out and around there he is hits that first can first um, Benny Carberry there in second place for his Burley Heads team but it was the team from Northcliffe who took out the open men's surf teams and ominous signs, right? So this is an opportunity for you to race well, race fast for your team, but then also just to put a bit of doubt into the other competitors' minds, knowing that they're going to have to chase you in the next events coming yeah. up over the next three days. Everyone's taking notice of who's racing well, whether it be the heats, the second rounds, the quarters, the semis. Here's the sprint up to the line of the open male surf teams. Very, very valuable points on offer, but it was Zach Morris. It was just too good too good he's gonna obviously the best swimmer of the family they're taking it out but i'll tell you what on behalf of surf life saving australia we thank you for your company but stick around because we'll be back later on tonight 5 30 for the sprints package i'm going to take put on my jammers marashi be down there with the best athletes harold marshall here with you christy munro how much fun was this today it's been amazing we've got the best seat in the house thank you so much for joining us please tune back in 5 30 for the beach events and i will see you tomorrow morning Yo.
connecting it up and uh, the left track can send Paul Rudd down the road into Team Miles. Just try to bring these cars this afternoon. Can you be more active, more annoying? Gets on the way in the 19th drive, gets out smartly. Also, now Mitchell Rowan going nicely, but there was some. We're tying off there, Mitchell Rowan picking up Jimmy Dodd, Angle Field, the far side. But all oh, of the ball is going to be going out there. Mitchell Rowan picking up Jimmy Dodd, Angle Field, the far side. Oh, that's a from City of Perth. Thank you, City of Perth. Amelia Kirby there from Allura coming out of lane three. Brittany Inga from Northcliffe. Uh, sorry, Cara out of four. Out of five, Cara Blackstone from Allura. Tamara Gwini from uh, Sydney, New South Wales. Abigail Morgan from Anglesey. And Annabelle Penny coming out there from lane and racing south. Maruga. Before we go through. We're away, nice line gets out, Cara's going to go nice here, Lura putting the, uh, the pace on there with uh, Fraser, motoring up on the far side, South Maruba, Penny for thoughts there from South Maruba, going through, Lura might look good in one, Fraser might look also good from City of Perth in two, Penny there from South Maruba, no lane number eight, look for so in that uh, top line.
one, two, three. Now, guys, they're getting out of the blocks pretty smart here from Richie Moore. Mitchell and Molly Mook there for near looking pretty smart. Also, Mitchell coming out with Molly Mook to the inside. Ooh. Another close one last quarter. Number 90, Mal. Yep. Hand mic, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And effects, clicking in effects now. Awesome. Cool.
This one, um, Thank you. 
Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the live stream. And we now take you to Malulaba Beach. And the conditions are good here as we work through the quarterfinals and semifinals. And we're culminating tonight with the beach sprint finals where we'll crown some new Australian champions here for 2024. And I've got Jenny Parry. My name's Nathan Breen. Hello. Jenny Parry alongside me. It's great to be working alongside you. Malulaba is there much better arenas for beach sprinting. Oh, I know that we have been enjoying the gear, the uh, water conditions down here at uh, Maroochydore, but all day people were saying, are you going to see the, bre the beach sprints? Are you going down to Malulaba? And yes, we are here. We would not miss this for the world. Hello, everyone. Nathan, so great to have you in commentary. You've been experiencing the beach conditions. You've been down there at Malulaba, and it's so exciting to really celebrate these uh, athletes in their own arena under the lights. It looks absolutely stunning out there. I think we actually might catch a few of the qualifying rounds as well, which is super exciting. But the uh, big ones, I love it when I know that we're about to hand out, hand out some Aussie gold medals. Certainly is. So we've just finished the, our quarterfinals for the under-17 male. And what I'm very much looking forward to, let's preview a little bit some of the opens because Chloe Mannix Power is going for, I believe, her third straight here. She's just won $40,000 at the stall Gifts. Yes. Uh, so if you've watched on Easter Monday, she is one of the favourites in that. Michael Hanna is back as well. Um, he won his title a couple of years mm -hmm. ago and looking to get one up here. Um, got second last year, so I'll be looking for a bit of redemption. But it looks like we're on the start line here for the next event up, and I believe this would be I think this could be heat number one, or quarterfinal number one, we should say, to the Open Beach Sprint. Carly Grayson from Northcott on the uh, top of your field, and then closest to us, Lara Davis from Malulabar, the home club. Have a look at that, Nathan. Is there anything better than beach sprints at Malulabar? Yeah, look how comfortable. This is the defending champion here, Chloe Maddox Power, easing up very comfortably there, and her teammate, Sydney Rafferty, as well, another one to watch. So this is the quarterfinal we're up to now for the Open Female Beach Sprint. And I believe top four will be going through to that final. How does she make it look so easy? Oh, it is skill, it is power, it is technique, and we are so lucky to have her in this incredible lineup of ladies here. And if you'd like to be tracking these results as we are, liveheats.com. Liveheats.com is where you want to go. You'll grab the draws and the results. You'll notice um, our athletes tonight are all wearing a wristband that is linked to the Live Heat system, and you'll see our officials actually tapping their wrists with a phone as they come through for those officials, for those uh, results once it's officially known. 
phone. And essentially, as soon as that gets tagged in, you will know as soon as we know, which is, uh, we were saying before, Live Heats has changed our life for the better. Excited to see. And I tell you what, I don't think we, we saw enough of Let's Zoe Mannix Tower. Let's go Let's again. Let's have a look at the replay. So she was a little bit slower underway here, but uh, you see Peyton Williams gets away to a quick start. Lucy Flanagan in there as well. She's the under-19 Beach Flags champion of Australia from last year, but now Mannix Power way, way too strong. So, and really put five, six metres into him at the end there. So, Colleen Maddox Power with the win, Sydney Rafferty in second, Peyton Williams in third, unsurprisingly her getting through as well, and Carly Grayson of North Cottesloe in fourth. They had a very good year last year as well on the beach section. And we now turn to our second quarter final here. So we've got Rumi Tomesu in one on the ocean side, so lane one on the inside there, Ellie Winningham of Grange in two. Elizabeth Forsyth, a name we know very well, particularly in the Flags Arena. She goes well in the sprint. She's been on the podium twice in the last two years at least. Mayor Spencer of Anglesey goes next to her. Gabrielle Reddy of City of Perth um, next to her. Anna Plessinger of Anglesey, which we're going to see a few of as well here tonight. And Jacqueline Lord, the second of the City of Perth representatives closest to your, closest to screen. So, yes, Jacqueline Lord, City of Perth, closest to us, and then Ruby Thomasu from Coogee, down closest to the water's edge. And uh, having this purpose-built beach sprint a little further up, it just means it's a very smooth, it's a very even, and I have heard a very fast track following a little bit of rain earlier today. It is fast, it is even, it is flat. We're just about set here for the second of the quarterfinals for the Open Women's. And the South Australian champ from Grange, second from the top of screen. Here they are. So Ruby Tomesu got away the quickest here on the inside. She's the one to catch at the moment. Up alongside it, Forsyth now starting to push ahead and put some distance into him here. And just behind her, Gabrielle Reddy as well coming through there. And EJ, similar to uh, Chloe Mannix Power in the previous heat, just deciding, yep, I'm through, I'm done, I've done enough. And I love that we get these instant replays. These girls are quick. We need to watch it at least twice. So, Reddy, I believe Gabrielle Reddy used to be Gabrielle Murphy of City of Perth. So, um, she's... And we have another look here. So, got away well. You can see how low they stay through that drive phase, trying to keep that uh, stability and also balancing it with the speed and Forsyth... Just pulls away there in the end. She'll have plenty of challenges, though, come the semi-final. So top four automatically through and confirming there. Elizabeth Forsyth, Gabrielle Reddy in second. Ellie Winningham in third from Grange. And Ruby Tomesu in fourth position. And we can see the next heat lining up already. Uh, Nathan, something that we were talking about earlier today was we need to get our notes ready. <laughs> we need to have our club, cap, club caps handy because we know that these officials are not going to muck around at all. You can see the girls at the end of the field here just waiting for that uh, official result. It's the most nerve-wracking time of beach, beach sprinting where you just wait to see who is going to stand in my lane. What number am I going to get? Please let me be in that top four. I want to be in the semi-final. So the nervous wait. It's an Australian Championship, so mm -hmm. you've got to get it right, don't you? And great to see uh, two from Anglesey in the mix here. Yep. You did mention we will be seeing more of those looking very much forward to their beach relays later in the program. And uh, a special hello, a special shout-out to Abby Lutus, a former Australian representative uh, from Anglesey. She was part of the uh, 2006 World Championships team, called up out of retirement. She ran for the beach relay in the Masters, and it just shows that if you're part of this beach sprint, this beach flags community, you, there is a spot for you for as long as you want it. Welcome back, Abby, and welcome back, Anglesey. Very, very good stuff to see the depth. And I tell you, in the last couple of years, we've seen some big changes as well in some of the clubs that are becoming more prominent. Northcliffe, we know how strong they are in the water, but now they topped the medal tally on the beach section last year in the sprint flags and relays. Now, quarterfinal three, tell me what this club is. I Anna. you know exactly what that is. Welcome to our international competitors who are racing. Not only do we have our Aussie club caps, we have our international club caps. And a huge welcome to uh, Anna Abravable in uh, lane number one on the beach side there. That's Biarritz Savatage Cotier oh, from well France. Done. I was not going to attempt that. No, Julia. it is. Yep, you go. <laughs> Sorry, Julia Phillips next to her from Anglesey, Kate Walker, Carla Bull, Alex Rampoldi, Olivia May and Zara Richter. So May away quickly here. Also there, Julia Phillips from Anglesey looking to continue this dominance. And Anglesey just ahead, I reckon, here. And here she goes, Julia Phillips just driving through there, putting three, four, maybe even five metres into them. Close for second between Carla Bull and also Olivia May. 
And you mentioned the school store gift earlier, obviously Clomatic's power, our reigning champion. Uh, Carla Ball has taken out that title in the past as well. She has, she has. It's been, it's, there's a lot of beaches who've yeah. won that title in the past. $40,000, thank you very much. So, so we have a look at the replay here. You can see how important form is. We know the last 20 or 30, even if you're exerting slightly more energy in that middle stage, you do tend to feel on minimising that contact time on the ground, which is exactly what Julia Phillips did there in the third quarter final to get herself through. She was fourth last year. No one wants a chocolate medal, do they? Oh, it is tough, but at the same time, we are at the Australian Championships. This is tough, and we get that gorgeous shot back towards the Mooloola Bar Surf Club. There would not be a spare seat in Mooloola Bar Surf Club right now. It would be packed. They'll be hanging out on the balcony as well. It's such a natural amphitheatre. I mean, between this and Perth, it's a tough call with that flags pit, but wonderful that the uh, beaches, they've got some nice weather. They got a gorgeous sunset earlier, and we have got some fantastic racing. And it looks to be uh, Alex Rampoli from North Cronulla. Unfortunately, Fortunately, just uh, just uh, ahead of uh, Anna from Beer at Savatage Cotier, one of our French competitors. But this is not just the Aussies anymore. This is a truly international competition. Well, world champs coming up in Gold Coast I'm as well. I'm so excited. So. I cannot wait to uh, welcome so many of our international life-saving friends to the Gold Coast in a few months' time and seeing so many of them over here early, training with local clubs, being a part of it all, trying to make their national teams, their club teams. The world is coming to the Gold Coast. Do you reckon that's played a part in why there's more international? This year. I do hope that it is. I know we had a few of them uh, either race for their home club internationally and a few of them have joined Australian clubs as well. I know Bobby Whitaker, one of our Great Britain competitors from the last World Championships, he's racing for Northcliffe now, made the Queensland Ironman final. There's some really wonderful success stories coming through, but we are here for the beaches. So from the inside, he called a final four. Olivia Matz on the inside. Hadfield, Ravalski, Cardi, Rampoldi, Larkin and Lane. Really quick start by Emily Rampoldi. She has motored away. She's had success here before. Nairi Hadfield not far off the pace. Olivia Matz are up there as well. Rampoldi holding it at the moment. And just getting through, doing the job. Olivia Matz was right up there too. Close for those minor placings in behind them. With Ford of Graham grabbed through. So Emily Rampoldi. As we have a look at the replay, let's see who got away the quickest. Had filled away quick. well, but Rampoldi, you can just see the big arms there swinging. Minimal, minimal contact time on the ground. Very different to track running. You've got to lift. You can't just rely on that reaction force off the ground. So Emily Rampoldi confirmed as your winner. Olivia Matza very narrowly behind. She gave her a good run. And then back to Nairi Hadfield, who gets a spot for Cronulla in the semi final. And then Emily Cardi of Karawa. Karawa. Very strong beach relay team this Open Women's last year. So we'll see what they are able to do. And that is the fourth and final quarterfinal for the ladies in the Open Bench Sprint. If you've got your live heats tad open, it is time now to switch over to the Open Men's. The quarterfinals up next. We could see the boys just getting ready. They are lining up next. And uh, I hope you've got your club cap guide ready as well because we have got so many clubs represented. It's wonderful to see the diversity, not just in the water, but the beach events. Everyone is here at Aussies and and uh, we're about to uh, open the account for some of these open men in the quarterfinal. Very much so. And Grange, Kian Bird representing here in the first of our quarterfinals. And when we talk about Grange, they have been pretty competitive over the years as well. Last time I was at this venue, I remember, they got three medals last year. So expect them to look to build on that from the South Australian club. So Kian Bird in on the inside lane, Connor van der Ploe, mm -hmm. did I say that right? From Maroochydore, Jake Leach of Newport, a name we know very well. Matthew Lloyd, the defending champion of Australia from North Cottesloe. And weren't they happy when he won it last year? Samuel Ross of Maroochydore next to him. Second of the Grange competitors, Joel Dunlop. Second from the outside and Keenan White from Wombrell. I think we need to pause for a moment and just reflect on how incredible Matt Lloyd's run was at Northcott. I remember being down there on the beach with you. It was hot. That uh, terrible climb back up the soft sand to get to the surf club was absolutely brutal. Softest sand in Australia oh, as well. Oh, but to see Matthew Lloyd from Northcott, Northcott race so well, be celebrated by his club, swamped by his teammates as he came across the finish line, it was such a spe special race to see. And now the defending champ, he's back. Can he do it again? So we'll have a look at the history of this event. There's a number of athletes who've won it four times and some of those have gone on to representative honours. There seems to be a theme with Beaches and then going on to start them in Rugby League as well. Mm -hmm. We know Damien Cook, that's referenced a lot in the Rugby League commentary, but there's plenty of others as well. We're going to talk about them later on, but Rex Phillips, Johnny Bliss, Nick Yakich, 
all the way back to the 60s, won this four times. But Jackson Simons recently won six titles in the Open Men's Beach Sprint. We don't have anyone here challenging for that many titles, but there's a couple of defending champions, a couple of past winners in this, and we'll see Michael Hanna go later on as well. Michael, in the third quarter final. Yeah, Michael, actually the current world champion as well, competed for New Zealand at the 2022 World Championships. And uh, just looking back at heat number one, we've also got the current Queensland champion in Sam Ross from Maroochydore. The uh, Black Swans had a fantastic showing at the Queensland Championships just a few weeks ago down there on the Gold Coast. Aussies, though, a whole new ball game. Everyone is here, and I'm really excited to see how these, uh, I was going to say interstate, international competitors challenge them as well. So just about set here for quarterfinal number one. Jake Lynch, another one to watch. He was fourth last year too. So away quick is Keon Bird. Van der Ploeg next to him got away well. Matthew Lloyd, the defending champion, as we said. But he's being challenged, though. On the inside, Jake Lynch and Newport has it at the moment, I reckon. Maybe not on the line. I reckon Lloyd potentially just got there. And Keon Bird was good as well on the ocean side. Yep, the boys, always good to get that uh, first big run done. Now, they did have to do a run around one earlier, which is wonderful to see so many competitors racing that we're only at quarterfinals already. But uh, Ross keeping that head down, but Jake Lynch moving through the field. Yeah, just stayed low a little bit longer than the others through that drive phase, holding that momentum. Look at the knee lift on him as he goes towards the line here. We still haven't got the results here on live heat, so it's a tough, it's a tight one. All four of them in the line, so they're well clear. Daylight back to fifth, I believe. So they've done the job, but they're running right to the line. They're not being complacent. I haven't seen a single race where Someone's eased up yet, except maybe for Chloe Maddox Power early. But. Well, I think that's the really good coaching coming through as well. How many times as, a, as athletes have we been told you run through to the finish line for water, for beach, you do not stop. You never know what is going to happen. And we've all seen what happens when it goes wrong or when it goes bad. We certainly have. So Matthew Lloyd has been confirmed as the winner from North Cottesloe. Good way to get the confidence up heading into the semi-final. Kian Bird in second from Grange and Connor Vanderplug in. Oh, sorry, we have yet to confirm third place. You're getting too keen, Nathan. You've got to, you got to pump Lynch. the brakes a little bit. Jake it's a Lynch. big night here. We are bringing you the 17s, the 19s, and the Opens. We are going all the way through to finals. Jump onto liveheats.com, and that is where you will find all the information that you need. You'll get all the results as we see them as well, which is absolutely wonderful. Still uh, two quarterfinal or three quarterfinals yet to go, but a great start for Matthew Lloyd, the defending champ. His stride length is absolutely epic. I, I will admit that I don't know the most about beach sprints and things like that, but I love watching his technique and the way that he crosses the sand, the coverage that he gets, it's really special to watch. Yep, it's uh, frequency and also length. Same in the ski, same in the board, same in the ocean. Two ways to generate speed through length of stroke or length of stride and through frequency and rating too. So this is the second of our quarterfinal, Max Geronimo there, just doing some gardening work. Just make sure everything's firm and ready to go. So, field here. Yeah, we've got uh, Will Adams closest to the uh, water's edge there from Ocean Beach. Joe McKinnon in the plain black cap there. We saw him in the uh, Super Surf Teams League across the season. Connor Loughnan from Karawa. Tim Delahunty from Corumban. Brendan Peters from North Cap, North Cot. That is the plain white cap. Max Geronimo from Cronulla and rounding out the field. Paul Boland, another of our local competitors on his home beach from the Lullabar. So Connor Loughnan, the silver medalist in 2022. He's probably one of the favourites here. And a couple of making the step up, that step up from the under 19s to opens. We know it's a tough one. I think 17s to 19s is tough, but 19s to open even more so. And it was really great as we were doing our prep here, looking back over the uh, state and the Aussie results, seeing a lot of those junior competitors starting to challenge when they uh, race up in the opens. Now we need to be, I feel like we always need to be quiet for the even start we here as them. well. They can't hear us, but we want to uh, respect the uh, process here. So, really quick start there by Connor Loughlin Karawa. He did rise pretty quickly, though. He's got the power at the moment as he works his way through. Also coming into a Dilla Hunty, but clear in the end. Loughlin, and he did ease up then. He was able to afford to ease up, and Joseph McKinnon from Seacliff will be right up there, too. And I don't know if you saw it before he eased up. He had a little sneaky look over no, his right he? shoulder as well. We'll probably see that on the replay, just going, am I good? Am I fine? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> the luxury again. to be able to do that in a race. It would be good being that quick, wouldn't it? So he just he popped up a little bit, but he's held it really well here. Look at the core strength he's got to have to make sure that he doesn't exert any extra energy as he works towards the line. Let's have a look for this head look. Well, I think he's, he's already done it. He's got a clear margin, <laughs> he really. He did it early. <laughs> he did it early. Bless him. Bless his quick little cotton So just stops. leaning back, that's all he did. It's the only just changing pace by just leaning back a little bit. And Timothy Dillahunty in second. Joseph McKinnon and Will Adams from Ocean Beach will qualify through to the top 16 beach sprinters in the country. There you go. One, two, three, four. These are officials not, uh, not mucking around at all. And we did talk about at the uh, Queensland and the uh, New South Wales Championships, when you've got quite a few uh, competitors in each age group, in each division, we think about the sprints being short, sharp, fast. You've actually got to do quite a few runs. You've got to really work through here. So how much do you uh, save yourself in these qualifying rounds? How much can you ease off? Especially if you're not a Connor Lofton. Not many of us are. It's a tough gig, but it'll be really interesting to see how the boys manage their energy across round one, quarters, semis, to perform in the final. It's one of those things at Beaches, they don't see each other, they're interstate competitors a lot during the year as well, so there's a bit of an unknown into, into form um, coming in, so particularly for our juniors, but even with our Opens as well. Like, Connor was six last year. Um, he was second the year before, as we said, but six last year, just showing how fickle it can be. And here's the champion from two years ago just preparing for the third quarter final. You got the privilege of interviewing him after the I race. I did, I did. I get to uh, get down on the beach when they'll have me down there and it is wonderful to chat to uh, to each of our competitors down there. There's so many stories. We talk about the stories that we get to tell after each Australian Championships and Michael Hanna has definitely had a few special ones. As had as has the man in lane number one, Sam Zusevich, from Molly Mook, closest to the water's edge there. The black cap with the two white stripes. Peter Thorogood from Allura is next door. Seven Mapu from North Cliff, Mitchell William Swain from Coogeon Headline in the middle of the field. That's the white cap with the uh, blue star on top. And then our world champion at the moment, um, that's Michael Hanna from Allura. Race for New Zealand at that event, but next to him, Louis uh, Valletta from South Brighton in New Zealand and Jet van der Wallen rounding out the field. And one of 92 international competitors here. Just about set for the final number three. So away, pretty quick start by Peter Thurigood. He was uh, second in the New South Wales Championships. Got at the moment Zustovic up there as well. So those two and also uh, Michael Hanna getting through. So Allura might even got one, two, at least one and three there, I reckon. At least two in the top three. So and Hanna and Thurigood and Zustovic and... I was just saying, we've got a beautiful shot there as they finish. Just how much uh, extra distance we need to leave at the end of the track because they are travelling at such speed that we can see here in the relay and we want to keep our eye on those blue caps. I think it was Allura, Allura, Zustovic and maybe Kujan in, uh, in fourth. Yeah, Mitchell Williams Swain got the jump on Hannah. Hannah bit of, had a bit of work to do in the first 20 metres and, yeah, I think he will be safe, Mitchell Williams Swain to the semi-final. And here's where they need to uh, slow down. They'll grab the barriers at the end there just yeah. to make sure everything's good. But it's Zustovic from Molly Mook who gets the win here. Now, we know him as one of the best flaggers. Let's face it, the best flagger in the world. Won the last World Championships. Peter Thorogood, Michael Hanna and Mitchell Williams Swain. One, two, three, four. Safely through. Semi-final to come. The boys will rest, recover, recuperate because they've got to, uh, got to be ready to perform again. In that fantastic squad down there, which we're going to talk about um, down in Mollymook as well, the South Coast have been so impressive. They were fourth on the beachy medal tally last year when we look at it, eight medals. Gold in the in the 19s was their strongest age group. But Zusevich will be looking for a bit of redemption in the flags. I think last year wasn't super happy with his performance in the amphitheatre there at Scarborough, but he'll be very competitive in the sprint as well. Absolutely. So quarterfinal number four lining up now. We can see the boys are just taking a moment, getting the uh, blocks dug, just making sure that there's no divots uh, in there. We want to make sure everyone's ankles are okay. Jack OJ from Altona will be closest to the water's edge. Kai Thompson from Noosa Heads, consistent performer. Looking forward to seeing him run. And then we have Jake Stewart and Brock Scrivener, both from Molly Mook. I mean, this is shaping up to be a fantastic beach relay already, combining with Sam. Well, they, got, they got first, third and fourth at New South Wales champs. So Scrivener... Oof. And Stewart drawn next to each other, got first and fourth. Zusevich was the bronze medalist at those New South Wales titles. And Peter Thurigood, who we just saw, 
uh, in that previous quarter final was second. So we're yes, love that they've bought the entire team bus here. Everyone's coming to Aussies and rounding out the field. We have Jackson Rogers from Maroochydore, Jason Goff from Northcliffe, and Rory Wallace from City of Perth, closest to screen in the bright pink togs. Thank you so much, Rory. We want to be able to see you all down here, and I love it when when the competitors wear something a little different different to let us uh, know who they are. Kai Thompson also rocking some uh, pink togs tonight as well. There you go. Must be the theme of the night. So the final quarter for the Open men's. Two Molly Malt drawn in the centre. Really good start by Jake Stewart there. He got the jump on Brock Scrivener here. Now Scrivener starts to come into his running. And also Jackson Rogers and Maruchidor trying to push up there. And also Kai Thompson, noose ahead. So watch out for him. He was keeping it on us all the way through. Scrivener and Stewart will be safe, I reckon. As oh, well. Boy, just having a little handshake down there. Wonderful sportsmanship, as always, on display for the beach sprints. And I love that we get these instant replays to relive so quickly. Goff had a fantastic start, but wow, Kai Thompson moving his way through the field. Yeah, he looked like he stumbled a little bit there as well. Um, but Thompson just looks right. Very clear look. <laughs> Stop Only the looking, second boys. look we've Stop seen. looking. You're making me nervous. But it's official. Brock Scrivener in one. Jason Goff from Northcliffe in two. Kai Thompson from Noosa in three. Jake Stewart from Molly Mook is four. Unfortunately, we say goodbye to uh, Jackson Rogers, Jack O'Day and Rory Wallace. And that is the four quarterfinals for the Open Men's Beach Sprint. We move now to another division. And it looks like maybe the 19 boys lining up behind them. We will just have to wait and see. I know the, the 19 girls are up to their final already. Ah. So Ah, so there the, you go. So the 19, but the 19 boys, I think they've got a couple more rounds to go. I think they might be up to the semi they are. Mm -hmm. So I think they're next. And yeah, two semi-finals to go here. And this is one of the most intriguing age groups. So we normally talk about the Opens, but in the under-19s, we've got all the under-19 and under-17 medalists return and come together as well. And a couple of newcomers that we haven't seen before. Love that. So... Even just qualifying through for these semi-finals was going to be a tough effort. So they might not be the biggest age group in numbers in under 19, but the quality isn't lacking here. That is what we want to see. And if you are having trouble recognising a few of the caps in here, we say hello to some of our New Zealand friends as well. In lane number one, closest to the water's edge, we have Hunter Robinson competing for East End in New Zealand. Uh, Bradley Vakavisa from Sorrento in Western Australia. Molly Mooks, Bo Anderson next door. Sam Johnson from Anglesey. Asher Ward, the big unit from Northcliffe in the mix. And Tom Johnson, our junior Aussie representative from the uh, 2022 Aussie uh, uh, World Championships from Mar it all will be closest to us on screen. So Tom Johnson, the under-17 champion from last year. We've also got Asha Ward, who was the under-19 bronze medalist in this one. They're drawn next to each other, closest to us. Sam Johnson will also be very competitive too. He made the final, the under-17s last year. And I love watching the race prep at this point. The nerves are building. They know they're in a good position. They know that an Australian championship final is about what, less than a minute away now? <laughs> no. Pretty still condition. You see the flags. Those flags blow at anything, though. It's a uh, little bit of a breeze, but nothing too much down there. And the boys just held on the line here, making their last preparations. That is Tom Johnson, one of the uh, Black Swans, as we call them, from Maroochydore, one of the home clubs for this uh, this year's Australian Championships. And it has been wonderful to uh, share those hosting duties. Maroochydore, Alexandra Headlands, Malulaba, and also Coolum hosted the uh, board riding. We cannot forget that, essentially, if you're coming to the Sunshine Coast this week, you cannot avoid the Aussies, and we don't want you to either. We want you to be part of it all. And if you're a uh, Posting any social media, hashtag Aussies2024. Well, I hope that we get some new people to the sport from them walking along the Esplanade there at Malula Bar and they just see, oh, wow, what's, what's this? This looks exciting. Whilst they're grabbing their dinner at Malula Bar Surf Club. <laughs> Imagine trying to get a booking tonight. <laughs> oh, I think they're going to be in and out. They're just going to be rushing people through Take the door. Take away only. Eat your meal and get out. Oh, we can see uh, the officials doing a great job here. You can see there are waves and waves of competitors lined up. And this is the tough part. You're down to your racing gear. You just have to wait and see. Again, loving loving the night events, loving that they're not out there in the sun as we see Anglesey just getting psyched, getting ready Sam to go. Johnson He's there. ready for a big race. Sam Johnson, the visualisation, the self-talk. You can mm -hmm. see the close-up of 
the process they go through to be mentally in the zone. It's interesting as well. You see it in the water events too, and some of them are like to be at chatterboxes in the marshalling, and just before the start line, like to have a bit of a joke around with the officials and their other competitors. Some are just laser focus. Yeah, this is what we want. The boys just getting ready. And you might have noticed uh, when we had that lovely close-up there on the angle C cap, which is the white cap with the green, green stripes over the ears, has number 215 on his cap. Is he two, he's the 215th gold medalist at the Australian right? Championships wow. for angle C. What a great initiative. I like that. So underway here, good start by Vavisco of uh, Sorrento, Western Australia, and coming through, he's got the lead at the moment, Robinson, the New Zealander, coming through, and on the inside, Asher Ward, Ward's going to get it, I think, just ahead of Vakavisa, Sorrento, Western Australia, I like his name. Yeah, we've got some rock star names in this sport, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, look how much time he gave away there, Asher Ward. So if he fixes his startup, he's going to be pretty hard to stop here in the final, rocking the budgies as well on the inside. Uh, so Asher Ward is, I think, just confirmed. It might have been the head look again. But of course, they've Bradley Vargavis, but they've got the job done. Just making sure that he's inside the four. Brilliant sp sprint finish as well on the on the inside, or sorry, outside, closest to us. So we can see now livepeats.com. Yes, there it goes. We get the update. Asher Ward from Northcliffe in one. Bradley Vakavisa from Sorrento in two. Chom Johnson is through. Hunter Robinson. Great to see the East End competitor all the way from New Zealand over here in fourth. He lives to fight another day. He lives to fight an Australian Championship final. Certainly does. And the boys celebrating, enjoying the moment. And just blowing the cobblers out. It's really important these rounds here. But we are up to the semi-finals now. They've already done two. We had a round one, we had a quarter. And we're up to the second of our semi-finals here. And Ashton Neal is one of the big guns in this one. Silver medalist in the 19s last year. He'll be second from the left of your screen when they do come back in a second. Luca Vardy was very strong as well to win the New South Wales title. Oscar Smith as well is another one to watch who's the defending under-19 champion. So all the under-19s... All the under-19 podium last year were in the younger age group because they're yep. better. And we know that Oscar Smith is also on form at the moment. He took out the New Zealand national title just a few, I want to say a few weeks ago. That was back in March um, over in Mount Monganui. So Oscar Smith bringing the uh, New Zealand flavour, racing again for his Australian club of Northcliffe. And I think he's actually taken out the uh, junior-senior double at the New Zealand Championships before. He was probably about eight years old when he did that one if he's only in uh, under-19s at the moment. So another one to watch, that is the Northcliffe cap, the white cap with the maroon star on the top. He is going to be, I think, second from the top of your screen. And a little bit of trivia for you, Nathan, while we're here. Actually, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to keep my trivia until after this semi-final. So Vardy, closest to us. Neil Boland, Stanley Smith, Nakagawa as we work our way towards the water. So Nakagawa got away really well. And also Ashton Neil here. So Ashton Neil away. He's going to be challenged, though, maybe by Oscar Smith. It's them two on the line. Pretty close. They have more to give. He's clapping. Oof. He's happy with that one, Ashton Neil. And Paul Boland from uh, Maloolaba takes a tumble there as well. This just shows you the boys willing to put their bodies on the line for an Aussie final. They sure. Look at the reaction by Noah Nakagawa on the inside. He is unfortunately a little bit sideways after that just stumbled a bit to give the others a bit more momentum ahead of him but oscar smith powerful through keeping the elbows in driving through the stride length is there and he's just got pipped there so ashton nearly won oscar smith in two the new south wales champion luca vardy gets third cooper stanley another angle see through they're going to be happy the victorian club so we have a look at the crowd here start to filter yeah, through yeah, the yeah. next generation yeah, maybe inspired thinking i want to be in this arena one day yeah absolutely I'd, there'd be a few nippers uh, keenly watching these events not only on the live stream but down there at malula bar and uh, i promised you trivia and i will deliver actually no Please let's do. confirm who's in there ashton neil oscar smith luca vardy and cooper stanley from anglesey comes through fantastic work and uh we saw earlier in the junior championship, so we, even though we're on day two of Aussies for the Opens, the youth were in action Saturday and Sunday just gone. And Charlize Duncan from Fitzroy Surf Life Saving Club over in New Zealand, she actually won uh, the under 15 flags. Now, because she's an international competitor, that means that the second place finisher or the first, first place Australian finisher also gets an Aussie gold medal. So it was wonderful to see Charlize Duncan recognised with an Aussie gold medal, but one also went to the uh, first place Aussie finisher 
finisher as well. So, so it should just to well. let you know how we treat that, how we uh, recognise and celebrate our international competitors, but Aussie gold medals on offer for the first Aussie finisher as well. But huge congratulations, Charlize Duncan. You're an absolute superstar, third in the sprints, first in the under-15 flags at Aussies. What do we reckon? 17 girls up next. Well, I think that Let's could check. be. Who have we got? Yep. There it is, the semi final time. That's Emma Atwell from Cottesloe, closest uh, on the water's edge. So and, great and start by Emerson Liebeter in the centre here, and she is in strong form. The Swansea Belmont Club one to watch, and Cole as well from Morty Alec. Could that be? Battling it out with Emma Atwell on the inside and charging home late, I think, was. Josie Holmes, I know Pippi Barlow is one of the strong contenders in this one too. So close on the line there. Let's have a look at it again in the replay. So pretty quick start by Holmes to Marucci Door. She'll be happy with Jen. And then Emma Atwell on the inside. Pretty well untouched at the moment. As you can see, Cole from Morty Alec just muscle her way through. An almost draw level. She might even get there potentially. So close on the line there. So that fourth place is close. So Lee beat up. Might have just missed potentially if she did get in, it was by the narrowest of margins, but close, close racing here in semi final number one. And I think the girls know that it's close as well. You can see no one's letting out the big smiles on the line just yet, no one's claiming a victory or a uh, progression through. Wow, we didn't even have time to uh, read out the full list then for the for the uh, start line. The officials really moving through, and we congratulate Pippi Barlow from Maruchidor, just sneaks in in fourth position there ahead of Emerson Ledbetter from Swansea Belmont. So Josie Holmes, Maruchido, Suede Cole from Wadi Alec. Gee, she looks strong. So Emma nice. Atwell and Pippi Barlow. So silver medals from the state champs knocked out. That's how competitive it is here uh, to get through to the final. So Holmes, Cole, Atwell and Barlow through to the gold medal race. And I better get in quickly in case these officials turn this around yeah. again super quickly. Semi-final number two for the under-17 seven, under 17 women. Amelia Byrne from Coogee, New South Wales, will be top of the screen, closest to the water's edge. Akela Fairclough from Sorrento is next to her in the bright green cap of Sorrento. Lily Alford from Tugan. Amelia Rowe from Sorrento. Phoebe Doran from Swansea Belmont. Hayley Mann from Queens uh, Mindari. Mia uh, Graken from Cronulla. And Felicity Ruzek from Avoca Beach. And... Uh, I saw a pretty special post uh, a few weeks ago about Amelia Rowe. She's an absolute superstar. We know that she can run here on the on the sprint track, but she's, uh, I think, the under-20, 400-metre Aussie champion on the track. There you go. The Shane Championships at the moment, so a couple of them juggling both here. So just about set in the second of the semifinals here for our under-17 girls. So away from the inside, Burn from Coogee got away well. Greeson up there, man of Quinn's Mindari. In the centre, Rowe trying to push up, as well as Ali Alford of Chugan. Really close on the line here, potentially just Rowe. Doran right up there as well in the second of the semis here. So let's have another look at it, because there was plenty of changes in the middle third of that race. And you can see at the moment, it's just Lily Alford holding it. Fairclough is right up there too. And Alford and Chugan and Quinn's Mindari. Just a little bit of work to do there. So getting the win, I think, will be Amelia Rowe from Sorrento, Western Australia. Phoebe Doran, Swansea Belmont. They are very, very much one of the club to beat in this age group alongside Marucci Door. Both of them got three in their respective state championship finals. So it's Rowe, Doran, Lily Alford. Orford, the Queensland champion, gets third. Amir Grecian through to the national final. Mayor will love me saying this, but I was a PE teacher last oh, year. Oh, thanks, Mr. Breen. <laughs> there you go. And I need to give a little shout out as we line up the next race. The, the reason that I know a little bit of trivia about Amelia Rowe taking out the uh, under 20 Australian 400 metre uh, championship, and she's off to the world championships as a result of that, I need to give a shout out to the WA Beaches Instagram account. I get so much. They do an incredible job. So whoever manages the WA Beaches Instagram account, you have a firm follower in Jen Parry and the commentary team thanks you for your efforts. There you go. So if you don't think we're looking at your Instagram accounts, <laughs> we're think everywhere. again. It's our great source of research. <laughs> Alrighty, 17 boys are we thinking? Well, they don't look... Yes, it would definitely be the other 17s, I reckon. 
Yep, I think that is correct because I see, and I'm very excited to see, a few Forest Beach caps in the mix here. Now, they were the yes. superstars was... of the Queensland Championships. <laughs> Five of the top ten mm -hmm. Queensland champs came from Forest Beach. So what are they been doing? I've got to try and talk to work out who their coach is and talk to them about what the, the secret is to their success this year because... They've just come onto the scene. They've done but some burst wonderful. onto it, not yeah. just gradually. Oh, I think they've been growing for a while, and now they've actually got the opportunity to come down and race at the state and now the national championships. Yeah, really but we can see Swanbourne Nedlands, uh, that is Lachlan Broomhall. Now, I got a hot tip about him from the VIP area just this afternoon. Swanbourne Nedlands in the red cap closest to the beach. So away, really good start by Harry Pierce. Port Elliott, watch out for him in the beach flags as well. Harrison Scurra of Morty Alec trying to keep up there, but have a look at Harry Pierce at the moment. He's the one to catch. Will he hold? Yes, he will. He will. Right, but look how close it was for a second. Lachlan Brumall was right up there. Zimali Ramirez as well. Very close for those second, third, and fourth place qualifying positions through to this final. So the top four to do it. Have a look at the aggression here. Harry Pierce, Lachlan Brumall. Of Swanbourne, Netherlands, I reckon maybe just getting there in second. Yes, he'll just hold on, but really close as well. Dylan Kincaid from Foster, some, a club we don't see a hell of a lot of, but they'll be very proud of him to get through and cheer one on in the Australian Championship Final for the under-17 male beach sprint. And, and great course. to see one of our Forest Beach friends making it through as well. Uh, Mashak David makes it in. Forest Beach has an Australian Championship finalist for the Under-17 Beach Sprint. What a finish. And Harry Pierce definitely a crowd favourite from the uh, Super Surf Teams League a little earlier in the season. Great to see Harry and his uh, glorious mane of hair in action here at the Aussie Champs. So Mashak David, I reckon, so he was fifth at those Queensland titles, so he's probably exceeded his expectations here as well to be top eight in the country, but as we know, as soon as you tow the next start line, it's all even game again. And I think and once boys. you make a splash at the yeah, Queensland Championships or people start to know who you are, that's when the pressure starts to build. But wonderful to see that uh, these boys are really coping with that beautifully. And we can see heat number two is lining up already. Luke Newrick from South Maroubra will be closest to the water's edge in this semi-final. Deacon Wright from Shelley Beach. I tell, I've got to tell you, this is semi-final number two in the under-17 beach sprint. Shelley Beach, they were everywhere on Maroochydore Beach today. They're such an incredible club. They're small but mighty. They punch above their weight every single time. They've got Deacon Wright uh, in this one as well. Andy, Andy Josefsky from Point Lookout, one of our little island clubs. Archie Minster from Morty Alec. Kobe Sorensen from North Cronulla. Connor Holm from Anglesey. Evander Ban, another Forest Beach competitor. And rounding out the field closest to us in the green and gold, that is Jack Mitchell of Glenelg. Very good. And we've got, so Luke Newrick, the one closest to the ocean, is the Australian under 15 champion. Oof. He was second New South Wales title. The only Aussie medalist from last year returning to contest his under 17 age group. So we'll see what he can do here. Probably the favourite, but you never know in these races. Kobe Sorensen, New South Wales champion, four from the left. So underway here, very quick start by Newrick is expected. Sorensen's up with him at halfway. Also in there, Minster of Morty Alec. They've had a terrific championship here on the beach, but have a look at Newrick on the inside. So impressive. And North Cronulla's Kobe Sorensen as well. Pretty clear in second place there. And I am really impressed. I must admit, I have a soft start for Angie Tosevsky. You can see he nearly did a standing start there. Just went down at the last minute. Really built his way through the field. He's third from the right-hand side there. He gets a little fist pump on the line because that, that is what it means to make an Australian Championship final. Well done to Tosevsky as we await the confirmation. It looks like fourth will be... Archie Minster, Morty Alec. Now, Archie Minster also Good put his in. hands up in the air. I'd be claiming an Aussie Championship finalist as well, especially as you said, this is a tough age group. It is. Certainly is tough, and you've got to be on your game and just back up, not put a foot wrong. You're going to see that even more in the beach flags. 32 to 40 times to go around in that, but even going through four or five rounds as they do here, round one, quarter final, semi final done. The boys still don't know. We do, but they don't. <laughs> I feel like we've uh, got all the spoilers up here in the commentary booth. And it is Luke Newrick, Kobe Sorensen, Andy Jaseski from Point Lookout and Archie Minster from Morty Alec, one, two, three, four. Unfortunately, we say goodbye to Evander Band, just missing out there, one of our Forest Beach competitors. But 
we still do have Meshack David from Forest Beach in the final, which we will bring to you tonight on the live stream. I feel like we're getting to the pointy end of the competition already. There are less and less competitors yet, yet to run. It looks like the open women are up again next. So the defending champion goes in one goal. The last two years, Storm Gift winner, as we said, Chloe Maddox Power, Sydney. Rafferty goes into, she made the final last year. Can she do it again? Carly Grayson, North Cottesloe in lane number three. Gabrielle Reddy of City of Perth goes in lane number four. She's always right up there. And last year she was fifth in the national final. Ruby Tumesu, strong competitor from Coogee, Peyton Williams, who was third in this event last year in lane six. Julie Phillips in seven, Anglesey, Olivia May on the left of your screen from Karawa. And Olivia May had a real breakout season last year. It was wonderful to see her really develop. And then she took that big gold medal with her Karawa teammates in the Open Women's Beach Relay. That was one of the celebrations of the carnival. Wonderful to see Olivia and her friends there from Karawa rewarded for a big season's effort. One of their four medals on the beach in the Open Female Beach Relay for Karawa. But it's a pretty impressive one to win. Talk about the Taplin Relay, the beach relay, it means... All mm -hmm. the ball with your club as well. But all focus at the moment on the individual sprint. For our open females. I'm going to narrow it down to the top four in this one, the top four in the next to make our Open Women's Beach Sprint Championship of Australia. Semi final number one. And we were talking earlier today for the beach event. Sometimes the nerves for a semi final are worse for a final because you know you're so close to making exactly. it. You've just got one more good run, one more big swim. Well, the amount of people in the board and the iron who scrape through in the semi oh. and then and then do well in the final, it's mm -hmm. all you need to do. Yep, the, I can feel the rounds. nerves through the screen right now for the girls. They're ready for a start. This is semi final number one for the open women. So the defending champion on the right of your screen. She gets away okay. Also away well is Peyton Williams here in the centre. Ready, still in it here. But have a look at Maddox Power on the inside. She streaks ahead of him here. No one's nearer. And we see Julia Phillips from Anglesey. I reckon get through for second. Rafferty will get uh, third there, I think, for Northcliffe. They'll get two in the final from the first semi. Let's have a look at it again here because Holly Maddox Power, she got the reaction as well. And on the inside, it's harder sometimes to be on the inside. In your peripheral vision, you've only got one line of it, but she has absolutely put the foot down well, well clear of the field. And you'll see you get another one through to the final as well. And I love that before that replay even started, Chloe Maddox Power had the number one <laughs> next to her name on LiveHeats.com. There was no doubting that at all. And a huge congratulations to our Aussie finalists, Julia Phillips of Anglesey, Sydney Rafferty of Northcliffe, and Olivia May of Karawa makes the final. Yeah, Olivia May, seventh in the final last year. She'll be looking to better that. Sydney Rafferty, as we said, was very impressive too. She got eighth. On Julie the hands Phillips. go on the head, the relief as well of making an Aussie final oh. saying, I've got one more in me. I think I can do it. I've got one more big one. But, oof, lining up against Chloe Mannix Power in the form that she's in at the moment is uh, a tough ask, but these girls are up to it. Heat number two is on the line already. Emily Carty from Karawa, closest to the water's edge. Yes, Emily Carty, Ellie Whittingham of Grange, Olivia Matz of Northcliffe, Carla Bull from Northcliffe, Nairi Hadfield of Cronulla. The Rampoldis, they're drawn next to each other. Mm, love it. You couldn't write this stuff. Alex Rampoldi on the right of Emily Rampoldi as we look at it. And Liz Forsyth will be on the left of your screen when she does come back to her marks here. So, Nairi Hadfield, very good flag. Won plenty of junior flags titles. Good to see her back and in good form for the Cronulla Club. Four from the left. Carla Bull. On to watching the centre as well. Emily Cardi on the inside. So Alex Rampoldi and Emily Rampoldi. Very, very strong competitors as well. And I do love that I can see just as we get a few crowd shots every once in a while. I, I spy a few water competitors who were down here earlier in the day down at Maruchidor for the, for the Aussie, Aussie champs. They've jumped on the courtesy bus. They've, they've arrived at Mooloola Bar Surf Club. They are here to cheer on their competitors, their fellow athletes, and they're ready here for a start in the uh, semi-final. 
So away here in the second of our semi-finals. Rising well there, Ellie Whittingham of Grange is right up there. Carla Bull and Livia Matzer trying to get up there as well here. Close across the track, maybe just Whittingham. And also Forsyth on the outside of Emily Rampoldi as well. Getting the better of the two Rampoldis there. But Forsyth and Rampoldi, I reckon, as we have another look at it. So Forsyth, Rampoldi, and just got the jump there. So Forsyth... You can see her coming to her running here. She had a little bit of work to do at halfway. She then mowed it into her running, found some rhythm, opened up the stride. Tell you what, M. Rampoldi had a last ditch effort to get up, I reckon. But those two, in the end, it was comfortable. Over Ellie Whittingham of Grange, who got a great start there on the inside of the track. And EJ, one of the uh, toughest competitors you'll ever meet. She's been part of the Australian life-saving team for quite some time. Actually took an incredible double at the last World Championships, winning the sprints and the flags, which is absolutely unheard of. And that uh, resulted her being named Queensland's competitor of the year uh, in that same year. So wonderful to see EJ not only repping the beaches, but uh, doing it for Queensland as well. So in the Open Women's as well, it's worth noting that it's been the same podium for the last two years. It's just Oof. swapped around a bit. Chloe's been at the top, but EJ was second, Peyton Williams third, and then it swapped around. Peyton was ahead of her the year before, so very interesting to see if that podium can be shuffled a bit or whether it will remain same for the third consecutive year, just depending on what order they're in. So our open mail's about to go here, about to fire up for the top 16 in the country. We've got here at Malulabar Beach under lights at the Aussies for 2024. I think this will actually be the last of our semi-finals as well. Every other age group is now up to finals. You can jump onto liveheats.com and track all of the results. And you can uh, search by club, you can search by competitor, and we can see the uh, men lining up next. Two semi-finals to come. And our defending champ, Matthew Lloyd from North Cottesloe, is closest to the beach there. He is number one on the line next door to Will Adams of Ocean Beach, Kian Bird from Grange, Michael Hanna from Allura, absolute superstar there. That is the bright blue cap with the uh, darker blue trim. Sam Ross from Maritchie, the Queensland champ. Jake Lynch from Newport. Mitchell Williams Swain from Coogeon. And then Sam Zustovich from Molly Book. Now, I know there are no easy heats. I know there are no easy finals. But, geez louise, this is a snack stack semi-final right now. Certainly is. And they're not drawn next to each other. So, two champions drawn a few lanes apart. Lloyd on the inside. Hannah in the centre. Sky blue cap. With a white and dark blue around it. And we can see the boys just going through their final preparations now, getting things ready, getting things right, because now is not the time to take chances. Now is not the time to try something new. Do not deviate from the plan. You're in an Aussie semi-final. No mistakes. You need the perfect race right now. It's cliche, but focus on the process. <laughs> what can you control? We know Zustovich will get away well. 100%. Death taxes and Zustovich getting a good start. <laughs> Absolutely. I love the focus he's displaying right now. Closest to you on the screen, the black cap, the two white stripes. That is Zustovich next to Mitchell Williams Swain of Cushion Headland. So away here. Really good start actually by Will Adams and also Jake Lynch. So Jake Lynch really set himself up well. Lloyd on the inside pushing hard and Hannah. It's the two champions from the last two years close to the line. Zustovich, I think, the third. And, and I am not guessing fourth at not all. Not at all. Superhuman to pick that. So let's have a look at how Lloyd gets away. Okay, got a little bit of a jump. So, or gave a little bit up to, uh, it was Will Adams of Ocean Beach. So he just got away really quick. Now he gets into his running. The tall figure on the inside, we're looking at in the centre. Michael Hanna, the 2022 champion. He is in great form heading into the final. And he's taken the win ahead of Matthew Lloyd, the current champion. And Sam Zustovich gets third, third New South Wales titles, third in semi-final number one. And I think the delay right now is because there is a group of officials huddled around an iPad somewhere on the beach. They are determined the to get this trust. absolutely right. They are not taking chances with the final spot, well, I should say, the final spot in this semi-final up for grabs. But Michael, Hannah, Matthew Lloyd, <laughs> Sam Zistovich, that's a top three right there. That's, a, that's an Aussie top three, let alone a semi-final. It sure is. In some years, that would be more than enough a field worthy of more than a major championship final here at the Aussies. 
And you can hear they're hearing it on the beach right now. Kian Bird from Grange gets the nod. Congratulations. Grange Another doing well. South Australian in the mix. And uh, we've got to get ready. We've got to go back. The, the next semi final is lined up already. Peter Thorogood from Allura will be closest to the uh, water's edge in lane number one. Brock Scrivener from Molly Mook in two. Tim Delahunty from Corumban in three. Kai Thompson from Noosa in those bright pink togs. And next door to Jake Stewart from Molly Mook. Connor Loftman from Karawa. Jason Goff from Northcliffe. And Joe McKinnon from Seacliff on screen at the moment, digging those blocks. The all black cap there, Joe McKinnon from Seacliff. So Jason Goff fifth last year, Connor Loftman sixth last year, Scrivener third last year. We talk about how strong the first is, but I tell you what, it's not much. I don't weaker. want to be in the second it's not much one. Much weaker. I don't want to be in either. There's no good That's options. That's why we're here. This Semi final number three by yourself. Yep, we can see the uh, the guys just getting ready here. And uh, you can also see in the background there the coloured jerseys, and they will be used in the finals. Uh, Nathan, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the uh, the colour party that awaits us? Yeah, so each lane gets a colour. It's more of a prestige thing, the fact that you get to wear that bib. It's, it's like a laurel wreath or something that they sometimes use in athletics. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a prestige thing to get through the final, make it more... Well, easier for us commentators as well if you can't quite pick the club caps and it's going to help do it judging in it's helping judging as well yep. because if you might not especially if we've got you know strong clubs like molly mook in here if you if you're thinking oh it's molly mook one and three oh gosh well it's molly mook in yellow molly mook in red but here we go the nerves are high the boys are ready the last semi-final before we start the big finals package so scrivener goff Loftman's probably the ones to watch he's very good in Thurgood's been good too. He's closest to the water and we get underway. So Peter Thurgood got away well, really well though is Jason Goff and also Connor Loftin of Karawa. So on the inside, Thurgood, Scrivener right up and shadowing him there on the line and they'll be one and two. Lanes one and two I reckon will get one and two. Thur Thurgood, Brock, Scrivener in second place. Let's have a look at Scrivener's reaction there. Pretty good, not blistering out of the blocks but Still pretty impressive there. Jason Goff was brilliant through the early stages too, so it's thoroughly good Scrivener, I reckon, on the line. And have a look. Look at the mullet out the back of his cap, and he does a look to the side. And as soon as Peter looked to the side, Scrivener looked to the side, and then we go back to third, which is a photo. I reckon Jake Stewart. In fact, it's confirmed. Well done to Jake, to Molly Mook. In the top three there. Continuing on, Nate medals last year and they have been very strong in the 19s and showing that they're going to be a force to be reckoned with for quite some time. Connor Loughnan, Loughnan was fourth there and gets himself a spot through, looking to better his sixth from last year and try and get a little bit closer to his silver medal performance from 2022 and he's confirmed Timothy Dillahunty missing out just so close I tell you what Peter Thorogood that uh the long flowing locks the bleach mullet out the back delivering the win there Peter Thorogood from Allura Brock Scrivener and Jake Stewart from Molly Mook with Connor Loughnan just in there from Karawa as well so a fantastic finish there because it's not just uh these two here we now have three from Molly Mook in the open men's beach sprint final that is a display of strength it surely is a display of strength, and Marucci Dor, we've seen how strong they've been. They've been one of the big improvers, I reckon, over the last couple of years, the Marucci Dor Club. And Marucci Dor and Malulaba, both those clubs, last time the Aussies were here on the Sunshine Coast, they thrived. They, <laughs> they thrived under it. the pressure. They, they really do rise to the occasion. I know we're having fun already at the Beach Bridge. The finals are coming up next, but the Beach Relays, where it's everyone in, the entire club, they bring the team bus, they're all there, they're all lining was, the uh, surf club. Actually, I was actually on the South Maroubra team bus before because it was too long for the show to get there. I don't know what was happening. Anyway, Thanks I went on the Maribra South Maroubra. Looking after us. I had my Cronulla gear on and I accidentally said, oh, Coogee's got a lot of good beach, beach sprinters, but South Maroubra and Coogee have got some great sprinters through as well. We're going to see them in the final. But Anglesey, we've seen a couple through Grange. So it's going to be a pretty a widely spread finals package in terms of the states represented and a couple of internationals as well. And I think this is representative of what we've seen at the Australian Championships already across the youth and the open competition, not to forget our Masters as well. I feel I've seen more different club caps at the Aussies this year than any other year. It's not just uh, the familiar, familiar clubs that are dominating and it's not those smaller clubs that are just making up numbers. They're getting into the semis, they're getting into the finals as well. So we're going to need our club cap guide and I love celebrating all of these different incredible athletes 
because to be in an Australian final, I know for the water events, uh, when they're doing their huddle, when they're getting the briefing, the officials will actually say, congratulations, yeah. you've made an Australian final. I think that's worth celebrating. It's a huge deal. And people forget to actually acknowledge and take a step back. Sometimes you're always constantly striving mm -hmm. for better, but just the fact that you're on the start line yep. in the final is an incredible thing. It's such a competitive sport. 222 clubs, if the sheet in front of us is correct. Oh, it's and, correct. And we I'll tell you what, well, have a look at all the tents. Like, it's Tent City out there. And we talk about the numbers as well at these Aussies. We've only been to the Sunshine Coast, it's hard to believe, only five or six times. And We numbers, make it count when you come the to numbers, the sunny coast. The numbers this year have exceeded it massively by 33% from, from last time I was here. So in 8,000, over 8,000 competitors across all the events. And good to see the fact that they have to do multiple rounds to get even just to the quarterfinals and these sprints. I, when you talk to some of the old times, they talk about how... Oh, we used to have like 23 heats of the open men's sprint. I tell you what, we're getting close, close back to those real glory days. It's really good to see the competitive numbers rising. Again, it's isn't it? wonderful to see the competitive number ri competitors rising. And you talk about, you know, we're really building into the end of the season. And it feels weird to say, no, we've still got worlds. Like, we will yeah. take a little break. We'll rest, recuperate. We'll pick some national teams. We'll pick some club teams. But I feel like we're just hitting our stride right now. So if you're liking what you're seeing here for the Australian Championships, in a few months' time, the Gold Coast will be hosting the World Life Saving Championships. I just saw a call out for volunteers on their life saving page just recently. So if you want to be part of the action, be part of it. And someone who loves being a part of everything, <laughs> Harold, you you're down already, on the beach. Finals night here on the sprint track. Unbelievable atmosphere here at Malula Bar. Crowd is full. Everyone's on the concourse watching. And this is one of the best nights that we love about surf life saving, especially here at the 2024 Championships. We're up to the semi-finals. We've got the 17s, 19s and Opens. Really, really quick. Big numbers at the moment. Had a chat with Louis Tassone, head referee. Big numbers in the 17s, big numbers in the 19s, and the best of the best are here for the Opens. But I'll tell you what, Chloe Manic's power has been dominant, winning probably about three to four metres over each race. But we're going to take a walk through, have a chat with some of our officials because they've had a really, really long afternoon. Guys, quickly jump in. No, don't run away, don't run away. So, Ash, big crowd here, different atmosphere to last year in Skara. But it's good to be back here, isn't it? Malula Bar, under lights, finals night. Oh, it's an amazing place to come to. And, you know, having it under lights just makes the atmosphere even more special. So it's a great place to be. Weather was a little bit iffy this morning. However, su oh, sun's out, moon's out, bright lights. And we've probably got at least, what, 1,500 people on the concourse. Yeah, no, it's great to see the crowds out. We had a little bit of rain earlier in the day. But, you know, it's fined up. It's a beautiful evening. And, um, yeah, it's good to be here. And surf life saving, being about progression and efficiency, We've got, the, we've got the gates in today. We've got the electronic, uh, I guess, markings through there. It's added that little bit of extra, I guess, pizzazz to the night. Yeah, it does. You know, it makes it feel a little more professional, a little more, you know, like on the international stage, you know, like you see on the TVs. And, um, yeah, it just makes, it, you know, the, the results that little bit clearer. So, good. Uh, any hot tips that he think might be looking strong tonight? Oh, no, I couldn't be saying that, so... Maybe we'll get that off here. Let's go for another wander through here. So, so important. We're just going to go through here. Now, we've had how many races have we had through here at the moment? Races through here? Yeah. Oh, plenty. Loads. Yeah. Uh, several. So, we saw last couple of races, a few of the kids getting, I guess, tripped up through the middle there. Lots of races through here. Raking through. Is it something that we try to keep it as fair? Or that's on the athletes themselves to, to have a look through it there, Michael? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's sand sports. So there's going to be an inherent variability. But we try and keep it fair across the playing field. So if we've got a break before the uh, finals, then I think, you know, if I can just get rid of... Because this is where people trip over in the back year. So if I can just make this generally fair, then I think that's a good thing for the athletes. All right, let's quickly unpack that one thing around tripping over. Being in control over the line, what does that mean to you? That means that you're in charge of standing up as you cross the line, that you're not out of balance that you can't recover from. Out of balance that you can't recover from. So I'll be watching that first chest across the line. Yes. Uh, yes. That is it. All right. All the action coming up shortly. Back to you guys in the studio. Yeah.
does it if he's an all-round frother? He's been pulling eight-hour days as well, more. Minimum, even more. minimum. It's not just uh, up here in the commentary booth. He's been down watching the champion lifesaver. He's been handling for his daughters as they do the water events as well. But uh, no one loves it more than Harold, and we love having him a part of our team. The same way that we've got you, Nathan, our sprint specialist in the mix as well. Now, you're not going to mention this to anyone else, so I'm going to do it for you. You were in action earlier today. It's not just the sprints that we've had at Mullabar. The uh, 2K beach run was earlier today. Yeah, so shout-out to all our two-kilometre beach runners this morning. They've done a great job. It's always bright and early. So under-19 females will start things off here in the Beach Sprint Championship Arena. So... Big finals. Britt Inga from Karawa is in lane number one, closest to the water's edge. We see Annabelle Penny from South Maroubra, Sabina Rogers from Allura, Holly Fraser of City of Perth, Lara Davis of Malulabar, Zali Gallagher from Anglesey, Zara Lammers from Canala, and Misha Boniface from Molly Mook. Now, this is the first time that we've seen these ladies in action. They were already progressed through to a final by the time we came through. So excited to see what these ladies can put together. This is an Australian Championship final. Well, I was down there earlier, and it was really impressive to see Brittany Inga. She made her quarterfinal look like the most comfortable quarterfinal you could possibly ever run. But she's not going to have it all her own way, though. So she was Queensland champion last year. When she was interviewed last year, she wasn't happy with her sprint at the 2023 Aussie. She took the flags title, but she's looking for a bit of redemption here. She's got high expectations of herself, and she's starting in lane one. Annabelle Penny, she was fifth last year, but she is the New South Wales champion. She'll go right next to Inga. Sabina Rogers, bronze medalist, goes next to her. Holly Fraser, City of Perth, will go in four. And Lara Davis on her home beach. Jenny, Love that. Five. And Annabelle Penny, this is what I was going to ask you uh, at some point this evening now. Annabelle Penny from South Maroubra actually won the 19 and open double at the New South Wales Championships, electing now just to be part of the 19 uh, championships. That feels like a really smart strategic move. Potentially her last year in this age group, you'd really want to go out with a bang. It's even tougher as well to do at the state championships because mm. they do everything in one day. Mm. So they, as opposed to three days, they do the sprints, the flags, the relays, all the rounds, everything. Obviously not as many rounds, but if you're doubling up and doing all three of those, it's a tough ass. We're just about ready to go here for the under-19 FEMA Beach Sprint Championship of Australia. So on the way, who's going to win the first gold medal of the night? Inga definitely has set it up well. Sabina Rogers coming up as well. Annabelle Penny and unfortunately takes a dive there, but Brittany Inga, we saw how impressive she was in the quarter. Have a look at that for a winning margin. If that is not impressive, I don't know what is. Misha Boniface, I reckon, has got through for second. And absolute dominance we've just seen. That is incredible. Keep your eye on the yellow cap on the far side of the screen. And unfortunately, Penny from Maroubra, she's about to take a tumble. That is brutal. That is not how you want your Aussie beach sprint to end. Certainly not, but Inga, the rating is there. The stride length, the power has just been put down here at the Under-19 Female Championship of Australia. And Sabina Rogers diving for the line there alongside Misha Boniface. So Rogers looking to back up from her New South Wales medal. Misha said. Boniface from Mollymook looked good. I think she might have got there on the line, but again, I am not the beach sprint expert. And if you thought it was tough waiting for a result to see if you were through your heats in your semi-final, oh, wow. imagine waiting to know if you're on the podium for an Aussie medal. Number one is uh, is decided. Britt Inga, absolutely untouchable. Well, she's a first year under 19s as well. So she's third last year. Unless we're just waiting for our confirmation from our officials. It looks to be Inga. And really important that we get the uh, the uh, placings right all the way down to sixth position. That is how we do the club overall point score. Six points for a first place, five for second, all the way down one point for sixth positions. For the, so these girls not just racing for themselves but for the clubs. And that's why we're, they're wearing those coloured caps on their heads. That uh, shows who they're racing for, their home club. I still can't get over how much Bridinga won that race by. That was insane. Absolutely ridiculous. Clay Interesting Manic's to power see. look good, but wow, Brittinger. Yeah, it'd be so fascinating to see her go up against Chloe Manic's power and the top open girls. Obviously a different league, but really, really interesting. And I love it when the officials take the time. They know they've got to get this one right. There is no room for error well, at the Australian up Championships. On the <laughs> Forever. Forever. Put up in lights for eternity. 
and I have enjoyed um, as the clubs have all, you know, been ready for the Australian Championships and they've been sharing a lot of nostalgic throwback posts over the last few weeks and uh, I've seen some very baby-faced competitors over, you know, from the decades past across the boats, across the board of relays. I know Swansea Belmont has been doing it. It's been wonderful to see all the clubs celebrating this really proud history because we know how precious these Australian gold medals are. I'm pretty sure Brittany Inger has got another one in her pocket right now, but the judges really taking their time, deliberating now to understand who is two and three. We're waiting for liveheats.com to update. I feel like a sporting parent. I'm so nervous right now. Have they announced it yet? It doesn't look like they have, but... Oh, no, they're cheering. They're cheering. So Someone's the crowd got knows, something. but we don't. <laughs> well, this is awkward for everyone. I tell you what, whoever Harold ends up getting a chat with... And it was Rogers and, Rogers and Boniface in the, in the uh, medals and Inga. Well, I think we know who the medals are. All it's right. Louis Tassone, our race referee. Hello, just Louis. Just in front. He's been doing a great job. I tell you what, you, you open up the Live Heats tab and uh, this looks to be the 19 boys who are going to be up next. I will keep an eye on those girls as well because we do want to uh, recognise and celebrate our incredible uh, champions. But it's going to be Ash Award closest to the... Uh, the water's edge there in the North Cliff cap. That is the white cap with the maroon star. We've got Bradley uh, Vakavisa from Sorrento. Oh, no, I'm on the wrong tab as well. Ash Award next to Oscar Smith, Bradley Vakavisa, Tom Johnson, Cooper Stanley, Ashton Neal, Hunter Robinson from East End in New Zealand, and Luca Vardy from Coogee. Now, have you got some good news for us yet? <laughs> yep, we've got the results confirmed. Brittany Ingers, your champion of Australia for the under-19 female beach sprints and confirmed. Misha Boniface in second for Molly Mook. Sabina Rogers in third. It was a close one, so Allura getting one up here as well. They'll be happy. They've got a big, loud crew, mm. Allura, normally. Lara Davis on her home beach, fourth in Australia, is an incredible effort. Zara Lammers of Cronulla in five. Sally Gallagher back to Holly Fraser and Annabelle Penny, unfortunately, by that fall there, but still gets herself a spot in the final. Not something you can say every day, that's for sure. So under 19 men's, they're called to their marks here. The 19 men, yes. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. There you go. All yours. So just about set. So underway here, pretty even start. Varkavisa got a good start as well in the centre. We've got Johnson and Marucci doing the inside. Asha Ward. Asha Ward, the one with the target on his back. He looks right. He's got the win. And Oscar Smith was right up there, Northcliffe, 11 medals last year and have certainly shown that they can be a force to be reckoned with on the beach and in the water. But Ward and Smith, Ward third last year, Smith the under-19 defending champion in his second year in this age group. Absolutely incredible stuff here. And Luca Vardy on the uh, closest to us there on the in the blue cap had a really great finish. Let's have a look and you can see the different statues here as well so Oscar Smith on the right of your screen powering through he absolutely dominated and really clear in the end so I'll tell you what it is a Vardy I reckon who's challenged it's hard to tell from this angle but uh, a Vardy battling it out with Ashton Neal nervous weight. The Again. nervous weight it's the absolute worst and uh, liveheats.com is where you grab all of this and congratulations. Yes, we did want to make sure we celebrated Britt Inga from Karawa, Misha Boniface from Molly Mook and Sabina Rogers from Allura. That is one, two, three, your champions in the under-19 under female beach sprint. But uh, it's all about the men now, this uh, final nervous wait. And how would you feel right now? If you're not a flagger, you potentially, your Aussies could be done at the end of the beach sprints. You may not have enough uh, for a beach relay team. The boys know their season could be over right now. What a wonderful feeling. Yeah, something, something a lot of people don't realise as well. Like a lot of people do specialise, particularly in nippers, you don't. But once you get to these age groups, it's a very different event. Mm. And some people who thrive in the beach sprint, I don't expect, I don't think Chloe Maddox Power will be lining up in the flags and some of those others as well. Uh, Forsyth will, that's for sure. But... It's a very different um, energy system, very different event. Uh, explosive power, but that explosive power and being able to hold it, just having that little bit more stamina in the legs as well, because even though it's 90 metres on sand, it's more like a 200 to 400 on track. And you compare the two, 30 metres on sand compared to compared to that, it's a completely different event. And I love away. that we've got uh, Luca Vardy closest to us on screen at the moment in the uh, blue cap and the blue togs. You can see he was just having a little chat to someone off screen and they're like, oh, and he's like, I don't know. I don't know where I am. I'm hoping for the best, but you just got to throw your arms up, wait for the officials to uh, give you that final 
fun loop but uh, this is a wonderful time at the moment for our athletes to be recognised their centre stage and how good does Malulabar look under lights I'm sure a few of our officials were nervous earlier today when that rain started to come through but right now it's all about the 19 boys just waiting for that finish we can hear uh, John Hamry in the background hello John congratulations to you and your crew who have done an incredible job down in the beach sprint arena relays tomorrow flags on saturday and we can see that we can actually hear in the background that uh the uh the next race is being uh introduced already we're going to have to turn around very very quickly i can see you've got your uh, list up here already for the girls but the boys just waiting for the uh the official we results might, we might go through that field yeah, just go quickly for it. in case we're about to go so in lane one, we've got Phoebe Doran, who was second last year in the under-15s, goes on the ocean side. Amelia Rowe from Sorrento, Sorrento, Western Australia, goes in lane number two, the one who won the 400-metre championship mm -hmm. of Australia on the track. And we've got Josie Holmes of Maroochydore in lane three. Mia Grecian in four. And I think uh, Harold has got Britt Inger, our Karawa champion, down on the beach. Uh, Kara, uh, if you've got time, we'd love to have a chat to her. We'll catch up with that in a second. So, boys, no, we don't. The results here. Oh, wow. That okay, was... I think we're down on the beach now with Harold and Britt Inger, our champion. Here with the under-19s women's champion how special is it Brittany to be able to showcase your skills but actually being fit this year definitely it feels like a win all together just to be able to be out here and race um yeah it's definitely been a hard season for me um and being sick like all the time so yeah i'm happy to just finally put a good race together yep so a bronze medal last year in the 17th and coming through and dominating who do we need to thank at the carol club trainers um definitely my coach ryan hoffman um and also you know to appoint my flags coach simon um and yeah just my gym coach Nice. Here we have it. The best on the beach in the under-19s. Brittany Inger, congratulations. Legend. So, so good. Oh, she's an absolute superstar. She is, and three coaches there. So we talk about the people around supporting those. And it's really important. These girls will know it. It takes a lot to get to this point as well. The under-17 female beach sprint championship of Australia about to go. So Doran on the inside, closest to the... Ocean Row next to her, Josie Holmes, me Gretchen, and Ratwell. As we go down to another interview with Ash Ward, got it done again. Fit, fast, but close enough to a home crowd. Queensland, full crowd here. What does that mean to you? Oh, you know, it's I've been thereabouts, you know, the past couple of years. Um, just not putting it together in the final, but it's good to put one together and get the result that you want and that you train for. Um, but yeah, in front of you know, there's a bunch of people up there that are here to watch us and just to get the win it's yeah it's good uh, coaches who do you need to thank uh brett robinson um yeah train with him and um yeah all right and lastly who are you dressed by pepsi max i <laughs> 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 oh, love your work harold down there on the beach uh, asher ward absolutely dominant there and i don't know if that's happened before <laughs> The girls are lining up and just confirming those uh, play skaters in the under-19 men's beach sprint. We just saw Ash Award from Northcliffe took the big W ahead of teammate Oscar Smith in two. And a congratulations, Luca Vardy from Coogee in New South Wales is third on the podium. So that is your under-19 men's race. But the girls, 17 final up now. So the two favourites probably go on the inside lanes. Dorani one, row in two as they get on the way. Both of them with a pretty good start, pretty even across the board. But it's Amelia Rowe from Sorrento, Western Australia with a margin at the moment. Doran trying to get back up alongside her. But Rowe, it's all Rowe towards the line. Clear in the end, storming through. Closest to us was Tilly Orford, uh, sorry, Lily Orford and Swade Cole of Morty Alec, who have talked about a bit in this broadcast as well, shadowed her all the way through. And... Have a look at the effort here from Amelia Rose, Sorrento, Western Australia. Look at the form, very linear in her movement, absolutely brilliant how she held her form through that middle phase. It's easy to fall apart at this point, and she drives towards the line with Phoebe Doran, a great effort. We know how strong the Swansea Belmont Club have been on the beach arena in the last 12 months, and she's 
got herself right up there in the medals as well. Fantastic to see. No doubting our winner, but oh, the uh, choices and the decisions to be made to uh, confirm the podium. And I do thank the officials. I know it's Random Drawer. I know it's LiveHeats.com, but uh, that Amelia Rowe from Sorrento gets to wear the bright green cap with the matching bright <laughs> green jersey. This just feels like fate. It does. It was meant to be. And we can see the crew just waiting for the results now. It was quite the wait for the under-19 boys earlier. And I think that's just a, a bit of a delay between us and the live heats. But the beach, you've got to think this is where everyone is turning to their neighbour. Oh, I think so-and-so got it. No, it was definitely Roe. Who did you have in third and fourth? Who's going to get the points? And the girls having a giggle on the line as well. There's a lot of points to be gained in the beach section. No wonder cleaned up this morning in the two-kilometre beach run. 2x1k relays tomorrow, our beach sprint relays tomorrow night. The beach flags are still very early days in the carnival overall. The beach and the ocean section, but we can wait the results here. And it was a fantastic finish by Lily Alf, which is closest to us on she screen was. at the she moment. We can see the officials coming down. I think they're about to put their hands in the air. They're about to uh, congratulate our newest Aussie medalist. I think we're about to see Amelia Rowe from Sorrento walk forth. There you go. She gets the clap, she gets the cheer, and she gets the recognition that she deserves. Looks oh, like there we you might go. have a Marucci dog off that podium. Josie Holmes has got third and a favourite here for the Marucci Door Club. So well done to her and backs up with her from her Queensland silver medal. But Amelia Rowe defending her title. She won the under 17s last year. Now with the Sorrento Club, I think for the first time this year, so Really impressive to see her take the win again. It's it's difficult to stay up, to get to the top, but it's even harder to stay there. Yeah, congratulations and uh, commiserations to Lily Alford. Uh, I thought she had it there on the line from Chugan, but Josie Holmes, one of the uh, home clubs here, the Black Swan, she sneaks in and she is on the podium for the under-17 female beach sprint. Fantastic work. And now we are ready for a start in the under-17 men. Do you want to do the honours read through the list? Yeah, let's do it. Forest Beach, a club we've talked about so much. Five of the top ten of those Queensland champions. And Meshach, David, I think they're only representatives. But then Lachlan, Broomhall, Swanbourne, Netherlands in two. That's two for two in a row, right? The club preparation into being the fastest lady in the under 17s in Australia. Um, I just I just joined Sorrento just because, you know, it's a it's a really great club to be at and their their beaches are such like good community to be in and the preparation for this has been it's been long and I've been training really really hard um, and obviously you know I couldn't be happier it couldn't have gone any better. In front of the big round, congratulations, go and rest up, recover, a couple more days to go. Under 17s champion Amelia Rowe. Thank you, Harold. And we turn our attention now to the under-17 men's. For me, the two favourites come in. Luke Nurek here in... Luke Nurek, sorry, third from the left of your screen. We've also got Kobe Sorensen on the left of your screen. Run through the field. Meshak, David, Forrest Beach, Lachlan Broomhall, Andy Giuseppe, Archie Minster, Harry Pierce, who was impressive in the semi. Luke Nurek, Dylan Kincaid and Kobe Sorensen closest to us. And we're underway. Really good start like he did earlier is uh, Harry Pierce coming through here as well. David Meshak, Broomhall as well. Pierce in the middle. Pierce trying to get there, but it will be Nurek, I think, on the line there. So Harry Pierce, he's strong in the flags, and that power in the first 40 held him in really good stead. Nurek and the favourites came through. Let's have a look at Sorensen. Didn't get the best look at him, but he did raise a really quick reaction, Jen, Luke Nurek. Yeah, Luke Nurek, he is closest to us. Uh, as you see, the finish here is going to be on the far left-hand side of your field. I think he might even be in the top three, top four maybe, but look at the speed. Look at the strength in the middle of the field. South Marubra, gee, looks amazing. Luke Nurek, he wanted this one badly. Yeah, so have a look at those minor placings. You really cannot tell it. Harry, throw a blanket over it between Harry Pierce, Kobe Sorensen, also a couple on the inside lanes there as well as we await confirmation of this one. But I don't think it's... Anyone Kobe would argue. Sorensen looked good on the outside, though. He did. Oh. Very impressive. One of the North Cronulla contingent. They're going to get some good points here on the board in the sprint arena. Him and... Harry from Port Elliot having a bit of a chuckle to each other, but can we take a moment to recognise that I think Kobe has actually borrowed someone else's cap for this race. He's got I think his Zane. Name's, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know what's giving that away, Jen, but I, I believe you might be right. Zane's. I'm somewhat of a detective myself. 
<laughs> well, I didn't pick it up till you mentioned it. So. I do love that. We can see the boys. It's an absolute rainbow down there. But, oh, the nerves are real as we wait for those final placings. And uh, great to see Lachlan Broomhall from Swanbourne Midlands uh, in the race here. I don't know if we'll be in the podium, but I was like, uh, oh, there we go. we go. So it was an open race coming into it. We knew that. And that Luke Murick, the only Aussie medalist returning, has delivered to the expectation. He would have placed upon himself as well, as we see. Harry Pierce get himself on the podium, but in third, and Kobe Sorensen of North Cronulla with the silver. So a really, really strong performance there in showing that the future is bright here in the beach arena. Oh, future's so bright. We've got to wear shades down here in the beach sprint arena, and we are really working our way through the final. The 17s are done, men and women. The uh, 19s are done, and that means that there are just two big races left for tonight's final package, and they are the ones that have been worth waiting for certainly is now it's going to take pr something pretty special to be able to get over the top of Chloe Maddox power here it's all going to depend on the reaction and Harold is down with our winner Luke Nurek got it done under 17's fastest man in Australia old man as a coach another gold medal going back to South River just talk to us about the club, the sprinting, the training, everything that's gone into getting you to be number one in Australia. Yeah, the club is like really like, you know, helped us uh, on our club. They've gotten us really good. The training's really good. Yeah, overall, like, we've just like, yeah, it's going really good. Tough season, having Kobe there from down the road at North Cronulla, pushing each other every step of the way. How important is it to having that rivalry? Yeah, for sure. He trains with us sometimes, so it's pretty good to have that um yeah it's pretty good to have that you know it is very good now nah, relax mate all done fastest man in australia go and celebrate with your family number one in australia luke newrick from south maroubra yeah he certainly was impressive harold and i'll tell you what south maroubra well on their way to surpassing last year's medal tally on the beach arena i reckon but they're really impressive in the youth last year showing that they've got a great depth of talent coming through so we Turn our attention to the open women's. Yes, Olivia May closest to the water's edge from Karawa. Carla Bull from Northcliffe into Julia Phillips from Anglesey in the middle of the field. Ellie Whittingham from Grange. That is the blue cap with the uh, red and white tr uh, square on top. EJ Forsyth from Corumban. Watch out for her. The uh, green and white quartered cap on her head. M. Rampoldi from North Cronulla. And the one to watch, Chloe Mannix Power, your current stall gift champion from Northcliffe. Next door to Sydney Rafferty, also of Northcliffe, the uh, ladies. They are here to race. Cannot wait to watch that beach relay as well. Oh, it's going to be something special, isn't it? Northcliffe challenging Curra and also a couple of New South Wales clubs as well. We'll definitely mix it in with them. So third from the left, I reckon Emily Rampoldi's got a good shot here. We know how Forsyth will get away well, similar to the situation with Zustovic in the men's. But can she hold that and pressure Chloe Maddox Power late to Northcliffe. Two of the favourites here on the outside, I reckon. Or Chloe Maddox Power and Sydney Rafferty. Or will we see another uh, Brit Inga like dominance? Uh, gee, that was an incredible race. And uh, based on form, Chloe Maddox Power does look the goods for now. But all bets are off. It's an Australian Championship final. The ladies are lined up, they are ready. The nerves would be palpable down there on Mooloola Bar Beach right now. Well, the moment has arrived. Who's going to be crowned Australia's fastest woman? on sand for 2024. They're almost in the hands of the starter. Olivia May closest to the ocean. Carla Bull, one of three Northcliffe competitors here. Julia Phillips, can she go one better and get on the podium this year? Ellie Winningham of Grange has been impressive through the rounds. Forsyth as well of Corumban. Lost title, lost count of how many flags title she's won. <laughs> Emily Rampoldi, three from the left for North Cronulla. Sork Sorensen a really good run just before from the same club and Chloe Mannix Power, the defending champion two from the left and Sydney Rafferty on the left hand side, the nerves they're making them wait Jen, they're making them wait and they're also making the boys wait behind them you can see Michael Hanna in the uh, distance there it's probably getting a little chilly down there on the beach they are near the water, the flags are flickering a little bit, Michael Hanna's got the big jacket on out the back, you want to stay warm but girls, it's all over to you just about set for the Open Women's Beach Sprint Championship of Australia. So underway, good stop Olivia May on the inside and Maddox Power set herself up well to defend the title. Emily Rampoldi, Forsyth up there as well. Julia Phillips from Anglesey is also up there, but Maddox Power's a champion, three in a row I think. 
How good was that? And Julia Phillips, I think, has got herself on the podium. How good was that? That was, a, that was the race that we wanted, and that is the race that delivered Clomanix Power second from the left-hand side there. She's in the pale blue top. Great race for her, strong through the field. But uh, keep your eye on Anglesey. That is the bright pink top, third from the right-hand side. We think she might have snuck there, potentially a silver medal in her grass right now ahead of EJ from Corumban. But there is no stopping Chloe Mannix Power. Great last year, better this year. Yeah, so very close for second and third as well, between Forsyth and Phillips. So it hasn't been the same podium for three times in a row, mm -hmm. but it's been the same champion for three times in a row. Assuming we get confirmation of this, the store gift winner, she's got a look of concern on her face. And we've got Julia Phillips's. She knows she's done something special. She wants to know, do I have a silver medal? Do I have a bronze? She knows it was a great race. She probably has a little inkling. EJ just waiting for the result as well. Yeah, there we say. Chloe Maddox Power, I'd say. Uh, she I don't knows. think that's the official. I think it's no, I think that's probably more the photo op. <laughs> so. So impressive. On the grass at the store gift, transferred it straight away to the sand shortly after the Easter long weekend. And the girls just waiting, just waiting nervously. And only one race left to go for our finals package today. I can't believe we're already ending, or close to ending, the uh, second day of the Open Championships here down on Mooloola Bar Beach. We will be back tomorrow. You said the 2K beach runs there done. The relay's coming up soon as well. But tough racing everywhere you go down to uh, Coolan Beach for the board riding as well. And if you like some surf rescue comp, you should have been at Alex as well. <laughs> exactly. It's all happening here along the Sunshine Coast. There we go. So they're clapping. It's something. I think they've announced it. Yes, they have. There she's got it. So I think... Forsyth's on the podium based on that reaction and and also the Anglesey athlete. So happy for her to Julia Phillips. Fourth last year as we said. And Anglesey getting one on the podium. Mixing it with the big New South Wales and Queensland clubs. It's not easy to do but she's done it. And she's got third Julia Phillips. So Forsyth just edged her out and Sydney Rafferty not far off getting two Northcliffe on the podium there in the Open Women's Sprint Final. The rest of those results, Olivia May in fifth. She got away well. Emily Rampoldi was right up there to sixth place. Ellie Whittingham of Grange in seven. And Carla Bull, eighth position in the final of the Open Women's Beach Sprint. As we turn our attention now to the Open Men's. The final events on the Beach Sprint Finals package here at yep. Mooloolaba Beach under lights. Last one, fast one. Last one, fast one for the boys now. Michael Hanno is from Allura. He will be closest to the water's edge. But first, let's have a chat to Harold on the beach. It's kind of elementary, but it's not. Dominant the whole way through, but it had to be perfect, and it was unbelievable to watch you take out another title. Chloe Mannix Power from Northcliffe, still the fastest woman in Australia. Yes, it felt pretty good. Um, we rocked up today to win, and that's what we did. Win. Dominated. So, obviously, the support crew behind you, who do you want to thank at home? Oh, there's so many people, like the Beamney Northcliffe, my parents, my partner, my coach, my training squad, Viking Athletics, everyone. Relays, can you take out some more medals? Oh, we're hoping to take the gold. So I've got a competition. My partner's running in um, a mixed relay, so I'm hoping to beat that team. Watch it. It's coming up in a couple of days' time. Congratulations again. You, you are supreme, undefeated, so good. Chloe Mannix power, getting it done one more time. You. Absolutely loving it there, and good to see the rivalry as well. So, open men's time. Who's going to take this out? Two previous champions drawn in one, Michael Hanna, and in lane four, Matthew Lloyd. Who's your pick? Oh, I'm not, I'm not taking anyone at the moment, but let's just read across the field quickly before they go for a start. Michael Hanna from Allura, Jake Stewart from Molly Mook, Brock Scrivener from Molly Mook, defending champ Matthew Lloyd in the white cap, Kian Byrne, Sam Zustovic, Peter Thorogood, Connell Offnan, your Open Men Championship final of Australia. Just about set. Got to set it up well from the gun. Oh, a pretty even start across the board. The two Moima boys, Stewart and Scrivener, got away well. Lloyd's in there as well. Thurgood Zustovic, but on the inside, Michael Hanna, he's done it again. Two years apart, I reckon. I think he's done it. On the inside, but Michael Hanna, 2022 champion. Could he be the 2024 champion? Let's have a look, another look at it. 
Let's have a look at his reaction. Really quick, stays low in the dry phase. Zustovic away well, just has to hold it here. Thurgood was right up there too as we get another front on shot. So very linear here through. Power pumping the arms here. They drive the legs. And those miners are super close. Lloyd had a bit of work to do at this point, and he still does. So able to look around and get there he does. So second, maybe here on this side, Connor Lofnan. Mm -hmm. So he just made it through to yep. the final. And he scraped through, <laughs> and he's just got himself, I think, at least second, third at the absolute worst. And a look of relief on his face <laughs> as he turns to the Karoi crew. That is a fantastic race. I love that we had the bookends in here as well. That's always tough to call, especially when it's on the angle, but I don't think there was any doubting. Michael Hanna, he's won Aussies before. He's won Worlds in the past as well. Allura will be so proud of him right now, taking a big win. And you could see he even got a sneaky look around as well, and we can see the crowd going like, whew, I need a lie down. <laughs> Oh. I, need, I need a big night's sleep because Aussies is just getting started. Come back tomorrow. The live stream will be in action again from 8 o'clock tomorrow morning because we want to cover as many events as possible across it all here. But we are still waiting for confirmation. We need to know who the official's is. The getting a selfie. <laughs> uh, guys, still got a job need, to do. It's not done yet, people. I mean, they have had a big day. They to be fair have. They have. They were up there at 7 a.m. this morning. They were doing the, the beach stuff, the, the beach run. And we've got the results. Michael Hanna is your champion of Australia. 2022 adds another one. 2024 up in the Allura Clubhouse. Connor Lofnan in second place. Really impressive to see him get up. He was sixth last year. Silver medalist two years ago. So it's the same two from two years ago in the top two. And Matthew Lloyd, the defending champion, still gets himself on the podium again. What a race. What a race. Wonderful to be a part of. Wonderful to watch as well. But Michael Hanna, too big, too strong for the rest of the field. What a way to end a big broadcast, a big uh, beach sprint finals. And Connor Lofton, talk about taking an opportunity, oh, wow. scraped into that final, and then went, do you know what? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling strong. Silver medal for your effort, sir. Yeah, very impressive stuff. And I think we've got Harold with Michael Hanna, the man of the moment. Michael Hanna. Michael Hanna with me, fastest man in Australia over the soft set, second last year to Lloydie. Yep. That looked pretty swift today. It, f it felt good. Um, really felt good. Just really wanted to nail the start and then, um, yeah, sort of do what I normally do in the back end. So it was good. It felt good. But uh, yeah, looked really good. I remember last year we had a conversation that Junior State told us, helping out with the kids at Allura, about the programming, I guess, and the schedule not lining up that well. But this year, mate, peak form from you. Yeah, this year felt um, really good. Obviously, did a lot of track stuff this year instead. Um, but... Always love to come to the beach, and I'm so glad I was come to Aussies and to get the win. It's um, yeah, it feels really good. It does feel good. Squad from Allura, it's going pretty well. Thoroughgood was hopefully trying to get it in there. A little bit unlucky, two hundredths of a second off that medal. Jeez, yeah, it's real close. And he's first year open, so um, it was a really good run from him, and he's been doing some really good training um, back home. So it's um, yeah, really exciting to see how fast he can go next year. Let's keep the momentum going for relays. Yep, let's go. <laughs> let's go. You heard it here. That wraps up the sprint track. Michael Hanna. Rounding us out with the Opens with the win. Catch you guys on the scene tomorrow. Yo! Thank you, Harold. Love your work. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And Michael Hanna, it's hard not to love him. He's, he did the Australian Track and Field Championships as well, so it's been a huge week for him. So busy juggling both schedules. And now he's had some injury troubles as well that he's had to come back from too. So he did the 100 and 200 at the National Track Championships now crowned again fastest man on sand. Again. Yep, you wouldn't know it from that performance tonight. It's a wonderful way to close uh, close out today. Chloe Maddox Power taking the win in the open women's. Michael Hanna in the open men's. Come back tomorrow. We are going to do it all again. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we'll be back down here at Maroochydore Beach to bring you the best of the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. Nathan, it's been such a pleasure having you in commentary. I'm so excited that you were able to come back and bring all of your expert knowledge, the amount of prep you've done to uh, deliver a wonderful presentation this evening. Really enjoyed having you here. Thank you, Jen. Loving your work as well. And all the team from all of us at Surf Life Saving Australia, make sure that you tune in tomorrow. Surf Life Saving Australia Facebook page, the live stream of the rest of the Australian Surf Life Saving Championships. There's plenty of action still to come.